greatness. I live and breathe the culture that is fucking Satanism. That's what Satanism is. It's a self-help book. It's to make you a better person rather than be a worse person like most of society, like, you know, deems us or thinks that we are, we're bad people, but that's not the case. Because I was a cutter my whole life. I wore long sleeves until I was about 22 because I've had scars all over my arms. I have a scar from here to here. Like I was molested my whole life from when I was, I don't know, 24 months old until I was about 13. spirituality of course I worship myself my spirit will be with me until I leave this fucking earth when I die I don't know what's gonna happen I don't question it I'm not dumb I don't waste my time on fucking questions like that am I spiritual fuck yeah I feel something do I know it's gonna precede my fucking death no but I'm gonna fucking live life for now this is how my life was. I went to fucking therapy for fucking four years. When I turned 18, I left Georgia and went to Vegas. Because I got expulsion from school. I got permanently kicked out of any school in Georgia. I did hair and makeup. When I was 15, I got my GED. I left. When I was 18, I came to Vegas. I fucking had stupid, like, makeup jobs, and then I started hula hooping and erotica modeling when I was 18. Because of all this shit that happened, you know, it was like repressed, as in the Bible Belt. Satanism saved me. If I would have never found the Satanic Bible, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't have gotten out of Georgia, which was a totally repressed environment. I wouldn't have thought that there was other people out there that thought the same way that I did. That I could be as free as I was, even though the Satanic Bible was written in the 60s. And it was totally a liberal time then. Even more so than now. I'd have fucking never be here right now. ...that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... ...that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... ...that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... Holy fuck, baby wants to call in, exhaust me. Everyone's one, you know, it's exhausting. You're a very angry person. <laughs> I'm joking. What the fuck is that? Okay. Um, you have to excuse me, you know, I'm tired. It's 24 hours. Oh, this is the worst idea in my fucking life. <laughs> what the fuck was I thinking? I'm, I, I'm gonna end up sounding like Doug at some point. I'm gonna slow down. <laughs> you know, I've got a smart guy. So you notice Doug won't debate me. You know what I'm saying? You know that I'm with the best. Yeah, don't go all biting on him. What's that? So don't go all biting on him. Why, what'd he do? <laughs> yeah, it's the slow talk. Yeah, the talk that makes no sense. <laughs>
Are you anti Biden? No, I'm just. Uh, it's what it seems like. I'm anti all this fucking. Uh, yeah. I, I, I hate Biden. Wait, first of all, I'm anti Biden. I'm anti Biden. I, I like Bernie Sanders. I was cool. I like, I like AOC. I like all those people because they're fighting for human rights. But anyway. Like you said, the politician's a liar. The war is a gift. The art is the imagination. Yeah, the war is a very generous person. And they drive, they drive beasts like this. And so they're the few. They are essential. The scarlet form is essential. It's a magic. If you think that it's not true, you are never going to be. You have to be consumed by the flame. You must let the delay consume you. But beware. <laughs> it could eat you alive. And it will take a part of yourself. Anyway. What were we talking about? Well, we were talking about. I'm going to turn this interview on in a second so David could jump on. But I want to finish our conversation. And my point is um, I don't know what to say about don't be Biden slow. I'm Biden fucking slow at this point. i got to stay awake. I can't even take another nap. It's ridiculous. I mean, you have a list of stuff. The clips they play him make no sense. I'm like, what? I can't yeah. do this with the thing. Here, how do I do straight? <laughs> I hope everyone's enjoying it, you know. I wonder if they're being entertained. I think we're entertained. I think we're fun. Are we fun? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's go on. Let, let's, uh... If again, excuse me. So, we were talking about... I mean, Watch your damn foot. So, we were talking about, uh... <laughs> I don't, I don't remember anything. <laughs> Listen, my cash app, you know, Shane Buggy, I think, whatever. That's generous. It's generous. That's like a $20 deal. So I think that the last thing I was talking about was, um, like, black magic and its connection to Satanism and uh, the African. Well, not black magic. African. The, African. the roots of Satanism being in... Africa are showing the <laughs> what no, looks to the original Baphomet. Eh? To me, it's all the same. When you say black magic, I think Satanism, and I think most people do. I don't think you need to explain. If, if some, you go to somebody and say, "That motherfucker practicing voodoo," the average person will go, "Oh, that means they practicing black magic." The average, average person, person no, no, yeah, no, I think no, there is no. I've been in this world for a bit. I've been in this world a bit. I don't know too many people that are going to understand black magic as from Africa. No, no, they won't. They're going to understand it as but demon, Hollywood, voodoo, well, stick a pen in it. And that's what they're going to think, you know? Yeah, most people are just going to hear black magic and think Satan. Right, exactly. And that's what I was saying. You know, they don't need no actually You say black magic, voodoo, they go Satanism, okay? They instantly connect the two. And so, uh, okay. and so, the, what I'm doing, you know, in particular, is, is showing that, in fact, not only are they kind of right, but it's connected. The African stuff is connected to the Satanism and the idea of that freedom and rebelling against the machine and being the individual wanting that freedom. It was always about that. That was what the black magic, the voodoo, that be, you know, all of that is, was about that, you know. And I think that, um, you know, we were talking about spirit, and part of voodoo is possession. You know, you feel the spirit, and, you know, um, I try to explain it. It's beyond words. It's something you have to experience. But so there's you, a concept I can know. I can deal with. This stuff is like this is beyond words. Once people say it's a spirit, I'm like, yeah, no, I can't explain it with words. It's something you have to feel. You right. have to experience the possession. And when you go through it, that's when you have what people can call the mystical experience, the spiritual awakening. What time is it? You know, it's twelve hours. So that's what people, that's when they, uh, that's when they connect to it on the real level. And it's like, oh, spirituality is a real fucking thing. It's not just, I believe in the, the I believe in the, I believe in the ghosts and the, I believe in something. It becomes something that can manifest in you, you know, like with the art, with, with voodoo. If you were to go into the possession trance, you would be creating that art, but then you would understand why you were creating the art. You well, see, it's this oneness that happens with the greatest. 
Please don't apply things to me. I'm explaining the, the, the concept of the Voodoo guy, trance. Voodoo isn't going to help me understand things. I, I got my own shit. I can, so I can, we're I talking can, about the third eye. We're talking about that same can, thing. I'm just using different words. Right. You're, you're, you're applying words to me, but I can right. do all this stuff now on my own. Right. Like I, can, I can go I, deep. To I, me, as as the, the reverend, as the, as the shaman, as the two-headed doctor, whatever people want to call me, everything becomes mad. Everything is attached. To come, and I, you cannot separate me from it. So I, I automatically go there. You know, whereas you, you instantly separate so from saying, you know, we, from do different, it. Who has nothing to do with that? Right. I don't know anything about you. You're applying so, what I do to your shit. But what I do is natural. And it's always coming without without a rule book, without anyone helping me, without any guide. Mm-hmm. So my impulsive life has been all mine. And I'm not letting anyone take fucking credit for it. And I'm not letting even LeBay put that shit on me like, he's like this is your Satanist. And when he told him, I'm like, oh, I'm not I'm a shameless. So, okay? I told him that. I'm not a Satanist, I'm a shameless. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to apply... I, my impulse is me. Like, and that's what offends me when people are like, why'd you do that? I'm like, I don't know. It's because it's me. So, like, you know, get what I'm saying? Like, that, like that, that, that problem child that I am, when we talk about that movie, yeah. I, I, I don't know why i got to conform. I'm not really trying to hurt anyone. I'm not hurting you know on I me. Mean? I'm just being me. Let me, let me tell you. Okay. Let, let, me, let me give you some definitions that are going to help you understand why I think about it in this way. So, who do actually doesn't mean black magic or dark magic or anything. That voodoo actually means spirit. Yeah, I know what it means. The word means I spirit. I, I, and so it's born out of that raw, chaotic thing. It happens from a, a, ra- a random beat that everybody gets on. Like, get on that beat. You can, and then you go into a place. It's a random, it's art. It's a, it's a random thing. So a lot of people that practice it, you know, that actually, you know, call themselves the, the voodoo practitioners, voodoo, they, um, you know, typically go with that title. They do stuff like that. They create random shit, the random beats, the random art, has the aggravating symbols, the blankets. They do the same things that you're instinctually doing. Yeah, obviously, brother. I you know? um, um, and I, I think know, you're Tommy. Topic. I'm going to give you some definitions that you understand. Let me let me explain something to you. For Thirty years, I've studied underground religion and cult stuff. Mm-hmm. I've studied under some serious religious practitioners myself, mm-hmm. but I don't accept them. Because I just move back before I get into it. I, I, like I said, I've been, I've been in the house of serious new practitioners, and they yeah. told me. So I get what you're saying. What I'm yeah. saying to you is, you're not the definition and the understanding that isn't my. I understand what you're talking it's about. It's beyond enough. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't going to fit me. Right. It's yeah, how you when you see when that person saw me and said you're a griot, that's what they see. Right. But and that's cool. I'm like, what is that? And that's exactly someone else said. Oh, you're a comedian, or you're an author. So it's the same. It becomes like the same kind of thing, almost the same thing they're seeing. Griot. They're just using different words for the a spirit or the spiritual process. The adversary. I'm a, definitely an adversary. You know, it's, it's, we're trying to put words to something that's beyond what spirit right. is beyond words. Right. Right. So when I when that ever happens, I'm always like, like even Hartwell would say stuff about. I'm like, yeah, that's an apply to me. It's like you're a defender turned on. I'm like, I'm not. I don't even know what the term island is. So stop. Like, what I'm doing is just me. It's not, I'm not doing it for Turtle Island. But she goes, it's obvious. I go, that's cool. That's what you see. And I'm glad you see that in me because I'm not looking to destroy things. Unless I want to destroy things. See how that goes? It's Turtle Island, you know. So whatever's applying to her, whatever she's applying to me, I like it. I like hearing it. Like, it's like always positive. Like the Griot thing is like, and so your, your family's a kid, I'm like, what the fuck is that? You're making fun of me, and when it wasn't making fun of me, it was positive, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Thanks for seeing me. In white culture, in American culture, you don't have react. You have, when are you going to get a real fucking job? That's white culture. And when you when you make it as an author, what do you do for money? Oh, I, I, I sell poetry books. I don't know what he does. He's got a real job. That's what a griot is in America, in, in white culture. That's, that's uh, you know, I'm, I'm, but at least you have this great romantic fucking deal. You know, when I hear these names and Buddha names you're trying to apply to me, it's very romantic it's poetry. Really, it's not really that I'm trying to apply the name to you. I'm just using it to explain the process. So, um, you're like, with the possession, I think we're talking about the same sort of thing where you were like, I'm, I'm making this art. And I'm making this thing, and I'm fucking making it, and I don't know what I'm doing. See, I, and then you get to the end, and it's like, oh, what the fuck is this? Oh, don't take offense to me. I'm just a bitch. Like, right away, you're like, the possession. I'm like, nuts. Don't tell me I'm sick. I go, 
Right. And tell me that I know what I was fucking and it was not that. That word is not what I implied. To me. So I'm, I'm very, like, I've gotten to a moment, I'm very defensive about who I am, my character, my narrative, and now because it has been out of nutso, it's constant with me now. It's like, what is this? You know, but I, but I was. You're right. When you see it, I'm possessed, but I'm, I'm such a bitch now with this stuff. That's exactly what I start mumbling to my. But see, that's because people see possession as a, a negative thing. No, it's just, but it's, it's, just not. Like, it's just like I, I, I whatever it is. I, I maybe it's just a trigger. And it's some yeah, psychological yeah, talk to yeah. the for about a Tuesday. Yeah. And fucking Steve, don't tell me what's going on here. But it's just like I noticed I'm reacting when, especially with us, in, in this in this kind of like I'm not possessed. It's not about the voodoo. It's Shano. It's Shano. It's not voodoo. It's Shano. You know, it's Satanism. It's not. I'm not saying I'm not a Satanist. I'm a Shanist. Stop. So, I, like, I even stopped Lavey with that stuff, you know? I love the fact that and he laughed about water, it. and it doesn't really matter what name you give it. It's still magic. It's water. It, it, it's, it's pure. It, it doesn't matter what you call it. It is what it is. And hey, it's that process of creating. I'm going to turn this interview thing on. Do it. I don't know if David has the fucking thing. I almost don't want to encourage you. I'm afraid of David, actually. I don't want to know. You want to do an introduction before you come home? Gonna come on, he's ready. He's ready. That might have been a half hour. It's twelve forty. That eleven minutes ago could be a lifetime to a young person. That clock, eleven minutes could have been like, yeah, I, what was I talking about? What's up, baby? Did you go? You have the link. You have the link. Are you gonna come? But then you come. Is that what's going on? <laughs> Making me work. David has a mic right into this house. Somehow he's just able to all of a sudden go. Hey, Shane, the stream's not working, but now I'm texting. David, taking me jump the hoops. I'm confused, David. <laughs> I'm harassing you. How do you like that thing? I'm trying to follow the loop now. I'm tired of testing the other signals. No, you had to. This was inevitable. I'm going to give it to you, David. Just give me a second. I can send it to you. Oh, yeah, send it, send it to David on... I can send it to you. Okay, whatever's going to work. This is the live stream. You're wonderful people. Oh, we got that audio from you, too. Do you want to play the audio? Peter Gilmore. We got that audio. You can play Peter Gilmore. If it plays, we have a history. It works. Yeah, I set this shit up. It's gonna work. No, I mean the welcome to hell clip. You're trying to play that in silence. Oh, it'll work. It works. That's yeah. Heavy metal music going right there. I heard some. It may have just been whatever. Yeah, let me do that. Oh, don't jump in. There it is. Ah. Uh, I wonder if this is why we can put it for people to meet. So they can call, we'll do that later, right? Give them like, like call in. Like, pay you minimum wage for the work. Still, like, David, you're paying me minimum wage for the work? You're in California, right? Minimum wage there will make me fucking rich. 18 bucks an hour, baby. Two, four, maybe it's round up two, four. It's like almost 500 bucks. I'm holding to the 500 bucks, David. I don't care if you see two. The school books. Let me do it. Let me do it. But David, David, David. going to call David. I'm waiting for him. I sent you the link. We're waiting for David, everyone. The stream is dead because David is not calling us. He's <laughs> playing hockey games. You know, David, I should not be playing with you like this. I'm probably sounding like an abusive dad or something. That is not me. No. Let's play this commercial and give David a phone. You know, the problem with dildos is that you have to use one or both hands to get the job done. Well, what if I wanted to eat this burger or drink this beer at the same time? You click this button and the dildo drone flies right to it. And then you do the same thing right between your legs. Now I can enjoy three of my favorite things at the exact same time. Beer, burger, dildo. As a busy millennial, I struggle to find time for myself. Multitasking is a part of my everyday life. 
The dildo hoverboard allows me to squeeze in that much needed pleasure time. The device is fully adjustable and the easy to use control panel lets me pick my favorite thrusting speed and rhythmic vibration. But it's not just about multitasking, it's about making your commute to work a lot more fun. Hey, little dude, send your mama and daddy out of the room. I gotta get you up on this. You know who I am. Snake, Dylan and weed, coke, crack, your choice. Take one hit and you'll do anything to cop more. Steal from your mama, lie, cheat on your homeboys. But hey, that's the price you pay when you deal with dudes like me. Now, some folks will tell you that I'm dealing in poison. But hey, do I look like the kind of guy that would do that to a kid like you? Yes. Oh, what the fuck? Can you hear me? Wait. There he is. You can you hear me? Dude, David, the Bappy. How are you doing, buddy? No. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Oh, you know what I want to know? How are we doing? Is this legal? Can we talk to a 16 year old on the internet? Is this okay? Yeah, it's fine. I do it all the time. <laughs> okay. We got to keep it PG 16. <laughs> yeah. How are you, buddy? You know, I really appreciate seeing you. It's really nice to look into the future. Oh, I'm great. Uh, got about four hours of sleep last night. Found a little. Oh. I woke up just in time for the Carla interview. Well, I got two hours of sleep. You know what that means? Oh, Five years for fifty-four year olds. I'm not fifty-three. That means I got no sleep. It's actually I got yeah. two years. That's like yeah, it's not sleep at all, man. You have to. You have one mushrooms. So how you doing, bud? So, I'm good. Uh, we, I should say, we have a better. A user by the name of Airy. A user of the name of Airy. Uh, what does he say? Two hundred dollars for satanic feet pics. What? What? He's on the chat. He's on the chat. He's uh, willing to pay two hundred. Oh. Wait, no, 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 no. He's selling them for two hundred. Okay, never mind. Oh yeah, no selling. I, oh, I thought was, I, I was. I thought we were gonna get some money here. What's going on? I don't know, man. I thought there would be money too. Anyway, um, this is. The I had a question. Hey, Bobby, Bobby, hold on. Have you met David? I think we met through chat. This is the gentleman. This is the young man that is running the satanic, the infernal church, which is yeah, the infernal yeah. church. So not to be confused with the people we insert. We're not talking about those. We're talking about who did we remember, circle? Remember on the live chat in my group, we were talking about, oh, we're circling you. That the other people, they're the other. You're part of like, there's the infernal circle too, right? No, 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 no. We, we were, we were uh, popping them up last time, and I was saying, not your, um, your yeah. you guys in the infernal church, uh, infernal church. You guys are like a study group, right? See what I just think? I have my hands on here. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. We host like a lot of lectures. We have resources on Satanism. We're for those who seek to learn, I guess you could say. Are you a Satanic fashion class? You should tell Not me yet. You know, we're looking into opening one. You say no? Hmm? Not yet. Not yet wasn't a no. So how did you... I think it's Satanic fashion. I'm on my phone because my computer is a piece of crap. Oh, okay. Could I make yeah, money? This is all the satanic fashion I got. Oh, look at that. What's that? Thank you. I shouldn't be asking you that. I was about to ask if I could make money selling my feet online, but, but, but you're not of age, so. I mean, that. Uh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Well, look at this. See the back? Look how it's worn out. 
There we go. Worn away. My slightly more silver. So, I had a bit of a question for you, Shane. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So, earlier you were saying that TSD didn't include breasts on their Baphomet monument for some type of male supremacy, right? Yeah. All right. So, in, what's your opinion then on uh, – I got to grab the book. Um, the Satanic Scriptures from Peter H. Gilmore, he has a similar portrait. It's a male bafflement. There's no, it's purely male on there. So I was wondering what's your opinion on that? I doubt it. I doubt it is. Do you think it was used for the same purpose? I can't see it, so how could I comment on it? There's no way I can even see it here. I, I would doubt oh, that it is. I, I, don't, I don't know why. Hold on, Baffy. Let me tell you. I can't see it, though. I'm letting mm -hmm. you know. And right there, it looks like there's moms on the breast anyway. You can see it. You can, I, all I can see is gray here. What? So the, the, it looks a little bit. It, I don't think it's the same thing as the Satanic Temple, and I would love to see it. The bathroom is that I say you have a meaning of the heart. The, the, the Satanic Temple is not, not like that. You can see it clearly. Oh, yeah. In, in the context of what I'm saying, Doug has defended it as, yeah, we left the breast off for a reason. Mm -hmm. So it does, I don't know what Peter Gilmore is using. But I would imagine Peter Gilmore understands this conversation really well. As he's also pointed out the odd sexual nature of the Satanic Temple of Babylon. And Peter Nature knows the history of Satanism like a motherfucker. Like, so I, I don't know what he's using. I haven't seen the book. But it has to be in that context. I'd have to hold the book and look at it and see what he's talking about. You know, not just the photo. Uh, probably, because, I mean, like, the breasts are a very crucial part to Baphomet. Because, you know, Baphomet represents balance in the occult. So having features from both genders represents balance of genders. Right, that's why I'm saying that, that. So it has to stick specific in that context. The Peter Gilman one, Peter would agree that the bath they has breasts on it. I, I've never heard him go against that. Probably. He's definitely, yeah, he's definitely more educated, although disagreeable. Yeah, but he's, he's definitely going to stick with the fix on the bath because it makes no sense about this. There's no balance. True, true. It is about that. It is a, you know, it is about that kind of balance and understanding that we're, you know, more, you know, we have a feminine side or a masculine side. So sometimes we have more, 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 more. I, I see that as a momentary, I see a gender static. That's all. I think it's a momentary thing. So I, I think that's more of a feminine nature or a feminine sensibility, that feminine side that people have when they make artwork. When they're doing stuff like that, it can, it's, a, it's a soft or it's a different thing. So when I do something else. Yeah. yeah I mean, couldn't hear that last nice thing, but it's funny. What'd you say? What? What did you say? I couldn't hear that last bit. Speak up. Sorry, Mom, that's the end right there. You got to keep the, the projecting voice. Maybe that's I don't. Maybe that's the occult secret. You got to figure it out. <laughs> you got to record it. You got to rewind it. You got to hear what's going on. I might have been speaking in tongues. Mm. I will speak up. One more speaking. What? here. <laughs> I got um, it's I, I it's off and on, but I can hear you well if I turn on the Discord. I imagine, but let me show you my little setup here. Hold up, wait, did I just disconnect? Uh, shit. Oh, you're still disconnected. No camera. Hey, Daffy, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I think I'm just going to talk to you. It's working well. It's not much better. Okay, what's up, man? Oh, nothing much. 
Control this though, so I can mute you if I feel like this. No, it's okay. I just want to be, let's get this conversation going or whatever. I'm tired. I'm a grumpy old man. So let's know what the fuck is happening. All right. So, um, wondering if I could ask you about the questions Yeah. I mean. I want to do a lot of this stuff later on in the time, but if this is what you think is good, let's do this. Let's go. All right. So, um, during, when I don't, I can't pronounce that name, but thoughts on, uh, this law, which connects the sex Um, it, it it's C E D I S L A W A C A. I have no thoughts on it. Next question. I'm doing what I do in therapy, but I'm going to tell you my feelings right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to... <laughs> Did you hang up on me, Daphne? I'm still here. Okay. What are we doing? So, so what I want... What you should do... Oh, I'm, I'm going to give you some advice. What you, what, what you should do, Baffy, is talk to the, the, the other people in the group and tell them to put their questions in the chat, and then you write down the questions, and then if you want to call back in later and ask those questions, then we can answer. I like the idea of then just hitting this thing like before, right. well, then yeah. you hit the chat. Put it in the chat, yeah. I, I was seeing chats from your friends. They are like, hey, I'm Avi's buddy. So we saw it over on this on this thing, and it was cool, but we're just in a conversation, so I'm not going to... I don't know if people are expecting us to do that, but um, I'm going to do what I want. And um, that, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's streaming rules. And you got certain things, but it's just going to be like hanging out with the um, This This is this is the same podcast. Who gives a fuck what the streaming rules are? I, I gotta tell you, this lighting is good. We look good, man. Who gives a fuck what the streaming rules are? What was that? How much do you know, you are correct. As a, as a professional, I do definitely make sure I get a better camera. I've got a nice zoom. i got a one of those technical things you know, you bring the fucking noise and everything. That noise coming like you're, you're like Floyd Rice. There's a noise band going on. I got the Zoom QN4K. Uh, <laughs> probably my computer over here. Yeah. We actually have another question from here. It's about your thoughts on mobile 
I'm following obviously that it's who's she asking, or is that, I mean, who is that person asking? They um, looks like they're asking uh, both of you. Yeah, either. Both of Um, you know, I wish you would go as the hell you should speak first. Oh, that's fucking funny. Yeah, you, I like that. You speak first because when you fuck up, I think. I like that though. Is that my bad? Um, I, I don't really uh, understand, I don't I don't understand your what you mean by globalism. So that that becomes what do you understand is what I understand globalism is um, uh, probably what we should be doing a natural state of evolution of human rights. I would like to see people in Taiwan paid as much as people in Texas. And so I don't really like sending things over to Asia to buy little pins to sell to Americans. Because I know there's blood being spilled for that. There's slavery happening. Actual slavery happening to make trinkets for us to sell as jokes. So, I don't, as globalism, it, to me, it's just like, yeah, we all get one fair wage. We're all sort of in this together. I, I, I like that idea. I don't know how it could play out. But, I, yeah, I do think, like, as far as environmental issues, we do have to all concentrate on protecting the planet, not just America, not just Asia. So, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like the concept of we have these countries over here we can exploit. We can keep them ignorant. We can take the resources. We can make them work for a dime an hour and they're happy because we're American Empire. I don't understand all that stuff because I'm a high school dropout. I dropped out at 16. But that's how I see things as far as globalism. I think it sucks. If there's one person that's enslaved on the planet, if one person is enslaved on the planet, we're all enslaved. That's how this goes. So we need to fight for, as far as Satanism goes. We're fighting. We want that person to figure out how to free themselves because we probably can't do it on our own. Like we're just figuring out how to free ourselves. I'm figuring out that as a Satanist, I would like you to encourage you to free yourself, to figure, figure out how to. Sometimes. No, it's, 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 it's Avi brought a guillotine with him. That's all I'm saying. And you tell you, wait, you don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll so check, it out. check it out. Uh, I'll give my thoughts on this. I agree with what <laughs> Shane says, uh, but I think that globalism has uh, a high risk of being and easily turning into communism. There's no wrong with communism. You know, What's wrong with uh, communism? You mean feeding everyone? Everyone has houses. Everyone has health care. Have you ever met some old school Russians? Have you ever met an old school Russian? Have you ever met an old school Russian? They have like amazing education. Like they're like, like they're like a little broke black boy from Chicago. Hell no, I ain't met no old school Russian. Dude, you're in Chicago though. This is the world. Hold on, hold on. Um, I didn't go to Russia. I'm, I'm young. Uh, uh, I've never been to Russia. But this is Chicago. It's a melting pot. We I have, know that much. But we, let, let me finish. Never, never hear now. In America, in, I've met old school Russians in Chicago working with them, and they're working a job with me for like 50, you know, whatever, in this long time ago. And I talked, she's like, oh, I know how to play class piano, I was a teacher of this, I'm a scientist. Like, she had fucking two doctors. She's working here for nothing. But that's the education they were given for free. Every single Russian I've met that's come out of that era is intelligent as all hell. And I'm talking, most of them I would mean would be in the world of porn and pornography. So a, a lot of Russian women would, would enter the porn world in America to make more money. But the education system, the healthcare, how they eat is all better. Yeah, I, you and I have to sell me on communism. Yeah, I'm not going to that one. I think it's dangerous. Communism is dangerous because we, run into, we could run into another hit. Hitler wasn't a communist. You know, uh, I mean, but it's, it's sort of in that same Mind. Well, communism is just about sharing, you know. Communism is about, it depends on what philosophy, but communism is about, is an atheist type of thing. It's about not having a religion of the state. It's about everyone having an equal access. It's so, about we're all, we're at, like, it's about we're all actually the same. We, should, we deserve the same dignity. Yeah, but we're talking about. You just don't want to share. We're talking about, it's not that I don't want to share. We're talking about the stifling of the imagination. And communism no, it doesn't. is the death of the imagination. Every oh, my goodness. Would be the same. Every person gets that. Everyone mm -hmm. would. You, you want me to show you a picture that, that's everything. not true, though? I mean, that's, that's not true. Is. Have you that's seen Russian is. art? Oh, my God. Look at the Red Square. It's one of the most amazing, amazing things. They have a beautiful culture there. 
They had beautiful architecture. They had beautiful artwork, beautiful food. Everything is so amazing. But I, I, I feel like you can't compare the total definition of communism to that one culture that happened to make it work. Because we see some really shitty communism uh, cultures all well, I, so, you know, Avi, I exist in a, 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 I exist as an artist, and I exist as an underground artist, and it basically is communism. We all, oh, there's an honor of politics out there. We, uh, we and this is, sorry, this is a long fucking drawn out answer to this question, but I mean, it was a good question, you know, to get thoughts on this type yeah. of stuff. You know, because there's different ideas. We don't all have to agree. And that's one of the, the so, strong things you got to realize right. you know, on that hand path. Look, look, we, we know how to do this, the, the debating and look, disagreeing thing. Yeah, yeah, it was communism for me. As a, like, I think communism, how I've seen it understood, practices, it works in small groups, certainly. And as far as an underground artist, I depend on communism. And that means going to my artist and saying, and my artist friend saying, hey, can I use that machine? I need paint. I need to do this. And artists sort of work in a, when you're in an artist group, when you work with a group, artists, it's a communist kind of situation. You'll, you'll give each other art supplies and tools to get the job done. And you don't even have to like the person. When the person's struggling, you're like, yeah, I got some paint over here if you need that. Because it's for this, con and I don't believe in the concept of greater good, but it is for this, hey, we're all working towards building this stuff and creating. So let's help each other create. I do know that space. Even though, I don't like what you're creating, and I really don't Even like you. Even if you're my competition. Yeah, I don't like still, you. Still, as artists, we can still work together. Right, let's talk shop. And that's communism yeah. in a micro, in a micro model. Can communism like that be expressed in a big way? I have a great impeccable imagination. I can imagine that people could be great. I can imagine a world without guns. I can imagine a world without cars. I can imagine people getting along and being reason. But that's going to take so many generations at this point. Of like when I say earlier, I was talking about libertarianism. And I said, I think that could work, but you'd have to have eight to ten generations of socialism and universal income and giving people, bring it down to a fair level where we have a fair playing ground. Now everyone can run, and you see where you want to run to. You know how far you want to educate yourself. And that's where you're able to see a social stratification where people can be comfortable at who they are, their level of speed, you know, their speed. And, and, and so if I want to run and educate myself as much as possible, I should have access to all of it. Because my education helps. I mean, free, we don't need communism for free education. Education should just be free. It just should, knowledge should be free. It just that's just the way it should be. Schools should be free. Yeah, but those yeah. become part of a when you there's not a political philosophy called should be. It's a political philosophy of communism or socialism. There's a there's a philosophy where they say this should be a human right. This is a human right, and those are the philosophies. Communism is one of those philosophies that says yes, but we don't have that philosophy. Democrats aren't that. Republicans aren't that. So for me, when when people are like, when, when it goes on the screen, Russia's involved in the election, and Russia's going to take over America, and Trump, and I'm not a fan of Trump. I hate this guy. I hate, I hate all of it. I hate Russian conservatism, and their bullshit, bullshit like that, the conservatism I hate, but I don't think communism in general is a conservative type of idea. But, but um, when they were saying that, and people were like, oh, my God, Russian, Russian. I'm like, Russia's not my enemy. They didn't do anything to me. My country does enough to me to cause pain. My country's the one that holds, with, withholds insurance. My country's the one that withholds these things, not Russia. And as far as I'm concerned, Russia should, can take over America second if I get health care, if I get dental care. Please, please take over and, and give me those things. Because I hate to tell you, Avi, I live in a poverty where I pay attention to the people next to me and when they have diabetes and their feet are falling off and they ha are too stupid to understand that they, you know, like, they got them. Right. Of course you got it. Right. So why in the fuck do I want to serve this system? It's, it's a funny. sadistic fucking system. It makes me think of this meme I posted, which was the United States of Canada and Jesus land. And the United States was colored all the Jesus yeah, right. land. Right. <laughs> but uh, I had the, the Canada color, like the States. I was like, yeah, we need this. United States of Canada instead of Jesus land. So, so yeah. what don't you like about communism? Um, I mean, just mainly that everyone has to be the same. I hate uniform. But they don't. I hate uniform. I feel like that's, but that's what communism not, is. But it's not. Uniform, but it's not. Know? That's what America, that's what, that's what, that's what America has sold us as communism. But it's not. I knew a guy who ran this bar in Chicago called, um, I think it was the live, I forget the name now, it was real cool. It was a real cool underground bug. Pagazi played there. It was a great punk rock club in, in Winter Park when you couldn't drive into Winter Park at night. 
And this guy, you know, made his money. He, he left and went to Russia. An artist. Great artist. Great, you know, support art in, in the community. And he went to Russia because of the beauty. And I used to be the same way as you. I think about that. He showed me all these photos of the beauty of Russia and the people and the artwork and how different it was. And he goes, Every, all you're, you're informed by American propaganda about what communism is. But this is communism. And so he went there and he saw it as beautiful. So I had to look up the dictionary definition of this word because we talk about a lot of theories. Cool, and right, ideas. right, right. Let's define what it is. Right. So communism is a political theory derived from Karl Marx. Okay. Advocating class war and leading to a society in which all poverty is publicly owned and each person works in the state according to their abilities and needs. Right, stratification. Okay. So if we're going by, uh, it's similar to like state ownership. I know what it is. And I don't want anybody to own me. I'm not, I'm good. I don't they need didn't to own say me. they own you. They said yeah. get, the state said, we're going to be generous and give you housing. That's what they own you. No. But that's oh, oh, yeah, you're a free man today. Yeah. Give me a fucking yeah. break. Yeah, Give me that, a fucking break. That, right. No, so, we're not so what are you saying? There. Right. We're <laughs> owning this society. We're there. Right, and we're not guaranteed housing or medical. At least Russia's like, yeah, we got you, and we're going to put you in a house because we don't want homeless people on the street. We don't want unhealthy civilization. So which one is it? We fight for free or we fight for common? can't be both. You can't be free and, and say, oh, yeah, let's, let's I have no idea where you come from cause, because... Because if the state owns you, you're not free. If they own you and they pay in the bills and they can control everyone, if they decide, no, okay, we pay everybody the same wage, but you know what? We've decided to say, fuck you all. They obviously, yeah. but, but, they're, but they're not doing that. What, what you're, 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 you're creating this, this scenario. This scenario again, right. I'm going to have to hold the conch. Okay, because you're, you're creating these scenarios that sound dramatic, but that's not how it is. It's actually like, it, it's, it, it would solve every problem that we're looking at right now in the face that it's stopping you from any kind of freedom. Or what would we define as freedom? Would be joy? I would imagine working 40 hours to just keep a roof over your head is not too joyful. But if you have a roof over your head and your bills are paid, you have more time to sit and think and philosophize. There are more philosophy, philosophical people coming out of Russia. They're smarter people than Americans. That's why. Sound like to Korea. I don't need to tell it to Korea. What I'm saying is, Avi, if you're telling me that someone offering you a home and food is a bad thing, I would say that's sort of wacky. But I thought you just comparing it to Russia. You just say, oh, I like Russia's communism. But then you're looking over North Korea and how they're like, oh, get us out of here. But you, know, you, just, you just want a definition, and now you're going to that kind of slanted shit. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, the I'm definition. going on based off the definition. Right. The, def the, the state ownership part, you know? Yeah. Of property that they're going to let you have or live in. It's they're taking away landlords. Landlords suck. They evict people. The state's saying, you're an asshole. Move away. We're going to make sure people are housed. Castro's a good person. Castro showed us what communism can do. Now, not everyone in Cuba likes this definition of Pat, because he's really dead set against con ca uh, capitalism. So he keeps garbage like Doritos and shit out. And then, no. No corn chips will make them. But Cuba, when there's a dramatic problem like with COVID, you notice how many fucking... You notice what Cuba's full of? You know what their, their export is? Because they have nothing to export? Doctors. The whole fucking country's full of fucking Doctors. And they fly all over the fucking world fixing problems. So I would say communism has done some really fucking great things for that country, those people. I would rather be a doctor than a person who has to split big, big ditches. And Castor would say, there is great pride in this kind of work being a doctor. There is no pride in working digging ditches for McDonald's. There's, no, there's nothing there. That's why you're a broken person. Serve, serve, serve the people, which is the state. Yeah, call no, 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 I'm talking. I don't give a fuck. No, the bad, yeah, I'm in the middle of talking. So. Okay, let me finish my conversation. Okay? So, it's like that. It's like... I hate it up like that. It goes that's now. That's all I'm saying. Like, it's like, it's just like, it's a sharing. I don't see how you can see the state owns it. Like, it's like a shocking thing, but... Okay. As an American. So, Mr. Johnson owns so your house about, now. You're talking about Russia. You're talking about all these other stuff. As an American, yeah. we're here. We're, we've dealt with our government here. 
You trust them enough to go, oh, sure, take over government and give everybody what they need. I trust the political philosophy. You're asking about government a broad way like everything's bad. Everything is going to be governed. So to use shocking terms of shocking will never work. I'm a reasonable person. We're going to be governed. Anarchy, even with an anarchy surface, you are somewhat governed by a populist decision. Okay? So you are going to be governed by a community at some point. You're an anarchist community. You're going to be governed. So do I trust the government? I just understand it's a realistic thing that we are going to agree on certain beliefs or things when you, you're going to we're going to have certain rules and we're going to abide. Like I got a bag of rice here, even in an anarchist community, you come and get it. There's going to be consequences. We're governed. So that doesn't the word government doesn't shock me, but the political philosophy of our government capitalism is off and it's destroying everything in the fucking world. So what are our alternatives? Socialism sounds good. Communism sounds better than, uh, it sounds just as good. You know, I, they, they sound better. All of those theories sound way better than capitalism. I think that the problem is, is there's no separating from the capitalism and the capitalism and the communism at this point. They're going to be intertwined, and so therefore it's going to be a evil machine. You can't, you, can't, you can't intertwine them. You can't in, there's no intertwining sharing things. Uh, and there's no intertwine. There's no getting rid of capitalism. It's here to stay. It's one no, of the monsters no, like it is. No, there is. You can, you can have a political revolution and get rid of it. That's ridiculous to think that everything that we have to face is always going to be here. We can change it. I thought you believed in magic. I can change it on my own. You, don't, you, don't, you can't change it? Stay home. I'll do it on my own. That's what I do. I'm sitting there planting seeds, sparking things, and wanting to change things. Or one of the great communists, uh, I think Mao, talks about the prairie fire. The prairie fire is an idea that we can change things. One person can be a spark that lights the whole prairie on fire. Hence, the prairie is now a different thing. It has changed. So each one of us can be a spark that lights this huge fire, and we should be those sparks. And that is a communist kind of idea. So you want to talk about how people abuse political theory when you talk about Korea or other places. That's okay, because we live in that state where someone is abusing the concept of capitalism. This isn't a capitalist society anymore. I can tell you from a poor person who's had a soda pop, company who's had a radio, had, had, had run at capitalism like a motherfucker, had a fucking soda pop company that was, and it's all taken from me by... The real capitalists, which is the bank and the people who are hooked in the bank, who have some sort of wealth and, and, and power with their money, might, but they have that might with the city. So capitalism, I can't even experience capitalism because I come from a, the worst stock of person in this country. No one in my family needs. They have no credit cards. I've got no backup. No one's going to, you know, I, I've got back, you know, J.B. Ross took me in. So I could, I'll call my lawyer, Jay, and he worked for free. That's how I had help. That's how I was able to muscle up to, the, to whatever level I was in the publishers, because someone gave me... No, it wasn't even someone gave me help. I was willing to accept it, which is a big deal, too. Someone told me one day, they gave me a gift, and I took it. Therapy. person who faced my mental health. Care. And she's like, thank you for being so generous, taking that gift. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? And she goes, it's a generous act to accept the gift. It's all Always think about it. it really is. And so I know amongst a lot of the angry, with something, with something like that, yeah. angry toxic men that I know, men issues, they can't accept help. First of all, I know most of the men, if somebody would have came with them, like, oh, well, how would you like me to pay for you to go to therapy? You would have been fighting. What you trying to say? Oh, you know, I said, if any of you fuck it, you trying to say something wrong. Well, toxic, you know, the toxic shit, you well, know? Well, it was the right time in my life, and I've been there. I have. And I get it. And it was the right time in my life, and I really love and trust and Nikki. I love you. I mean, how are you? I love you. And I owe my life to you. There are a handful of people that helped me out. But it was, it was just that moment. I trusted her. She gave me great advice. Advice that led me to the point where I was, you know, and helped me see what was going on around me. Like, like I said, witches came to me. It's weird being in this business and say, can't accuse me. There's real witches that come to you and... and like I said in the intro video, I might play it again. Like, they weren't there to help or hurt. They were just to see what's going on, collect the information and the data, and sort of say, I 
read this book if I were you. Real and they wicked. gave me, they, they kept handing me this book called Body Keeps Still. I'd read this book if I were you. It's really hard to read, though. I don't think you can get through it. It took me three years. And three witches brought that book over three times, and they were in the small towns. So they all knew they were bringing the same book to me. They kept pushing this book to me. And I don't know if I've told you this before, but Body Keeps the Score is something that you should read. I implore you to read it, especially if you're invited to read You're going to understand why a lot of things in your life happen that are dysfunctional. But it's really hard to really understand it. And you read that book, who knows what just told me. It took them three weeks or three years to read it. A one had to go to a cabin to read it and almost died. It's really that hard of a book. It was crippling. It was devastating, actually. And to give me those answers is almost like a curse and a blessing all at once. Because then we'll go, holy fuck. I felt that way You're about it before. Me. Yeah, but when you read this book, it's really like, oh my God, that's why I'm doing that. That's why you're doing that. And it's all rooted in these really awful things that we keep reliving. I felt that way about a book before. Hey, have you ever read The Delectable Negro? No. I never heard of this. So The Delectable Negro is about a period in American history where black people were on the menu the things that people ate on the white people will go out and lynch black people and have a fucking barbecue. This is where the picnic, the word picnic comes from. They'll go out and lynch black people and chop them up and call all their friends out and have a picnic and, you know, eat black people for dinner. And this book is all about that fucking part of the history. God. And that book was one of the hardest things I ever, ever tried to read in my life. You know, I cried, I broke down, I'm like, I can't believe it. You know, um, the pictures that are in there, I'm like, I, what if that's somebody that's related to me? You know, I, that's just, that was one of the hardest things I ever did in my life. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and that's hard to hear. Let alone had those traumas carry me through my life. Just, you know, having to see those atrocities and, and, and things that could happen to me. You know, I have that, you know, what, you, what you're having to experience. I don't have the same, but I have, I have, I have traumas that I carry with me. And when things I see and stuff, I'm, you know, I, I, I sort of get it. But I also understand the magnitude. I don't. But the magnitude of people, black folks, women, people of color, the magnitude that they survive. Of, of traumas, I can only link their ability to survive that with the hundreds of thousands of years of culture they have under their belt. Because as a, I've survived a lot, and it's not nearly as much of them, and it's breaking. It's, it's, it's something that just is it's really hard. So, so. I just want to, I brought that up because I just understand a book that hits that hard. I could, I, but I mean, you're, when it hits you, it's like, when I think about this whole, all this concept, we talk about like this might is right, the racist stuff, I, it's, it's really heavy when you look at the layers of trauma. And then you look at the signs of how trauma carries over into your DNA or something that carries it, it becomes generational trauma. Genetic. Genetic, genetic, genetic right. What, what, however we want to communicate this, Generational genetic Gen thing. Right. Something that we can all understand. I can't always understand genetics, but I can understand that it makes sense generational trauma. I watched how my father acted and told me how his father acted. I'm, I'm watching this and know it was weird. Like reading that body keeps the score. Every, I'm the guy who breaks the cycle. I'm the one who broke the cycle in my family. Of everything. But all these cycles, it's like we keep reliving these mistakes. And it's just wild. And it's like that eight generation myth. You know, it takes eight generations to change. You can sort of see yeah. that. You can sort of see that's a, some sort of a reality. Like, it takes so long to break cycles or let new concepts absorb into a culture or people or what, into a society. It's wild. But we're almost there with Satanism. It's what much of what LeVay spoke of is this is the future. And what is that, at the fifth year mark, sixth year mark? I don't even know that. Uh, 66 was the year the flesh became law. 66, 76, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86
2026, we're at the 60 year mark. So David okay. is right there. He's going to see the eight generations. Oh, David, you're right there on the phone. I was about to say, bring him on. David, you there? The guest is muted. So, okay, I'm hanging up on you, David. Call back in if you need. <laughs> Why was it wrong? I told him not to interrupt. No, no, you. I mean, it, it, it's kind of rude. You know? <laughs> I was rude. No, that was kind of rude. That just jump in, you know. Okay, good. Um, David, you're cool to jump in. I, I, yeah, I appreciate yeah. you jumping in. As long as you can handle me saying something. All right, let me get some more coffee. Just curious. I'm cool. What am I going to put on? Uh, How fast is good? You come on, good baby. Hello. There you are. You look great there. Look at you. Better uh, that, That's not the perfect. I want to uh, apologize really quick for the jumping in. I thought you were finished talking there, so my bad. Oh, okay. oh no, dude. It's, it's good. It, I'm, I, and I would apologize for my tone as well. I, you know, I have a tone sometimes that I've got to really remember, like, I, I have this tone and it goes to everyone. And I'm like, you, I have to remember. You are an old man, and when you talk to younger people with a tone, it, it is a heavier thing. It's heavier when you hear an adult with a tone, I think, than when you hear one of your friends with a tone. It could be. Oh, I'm, I'm, no more. I don't want to be an abusive uncle. I don't want to sound like an abusive person. So. No worry. You're, you're my favorite uncle so far, so you're doing well. Okay, good, good, good. I, I love that. I'm your favorite uncle. I love that. You're going to send me a birthday card? You know what? Yes, I'll send you a birthday card. That's a guarantee. Don't start, don't start lying. If you're going to fucking call me uncle, dude, you're going to have to treat me like an uncle. Like, I don't have family. So I'm right, I'll that. send you one. Uncle Shane. I, hey, hey, let me get, grab this pillow. Uh, this pillow is actually on sale for $666. It's like actually, mm. <laughs> something I do. Which I don't mind. I is it on your art shop? I do want it. Yes, I love my, I love my shit news. I don't mind it. It says the tree ate me. Roots. Our tooth and claw. Booyah. <laughs> Goofy me. <laughs> I was living in a rainforest. What do you fucking want? Artwork is going to be about tooth and claw, root structure, seeing the trees as the alpha predator that we all think of. Very Levian language. One of the things. Let's just have you. You on there, Abby? You got you on? Abby, you on? Hmm? What? Uh, I was trying to get on the camera. <laughs> oh, we got two cameras. Oh. No, I, I see you from another camera, but the stream is from that camera you're holding. He's over there. What is your... What is your <laughs> this is, uh, this is trippy. Let me show you something trippy. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a side profile. It looks like you're infinite. Infinite chain. I am Kenobi. <laughs> okay, that was really <laughs> That was crazy. I love it. Anyway. Anyway, we got another question from Ari, in case you wanted to know. Actually, uh, we got a few questions. Cash App, oh, the, the question is, the Cash App is like, uh, is it the Cash and the, I think it's Shane Bug 9. Is that the question? <laughs> Hmm? Oh, no, no, something else. Hey, Pat, you want to Oh, I got cash up too. V it. Yeah, that, is that what, was that the question? What are, is, is, are you guys asking what a cash up does? Uh, no, 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 that, that's not the question. Oh, okay, what was the question? They want to know your thoughts on Kantianism, which is basically good and bad is determined by intentions over actions. Of what? Communism? No, Kantianism. Kant. It's good and bad is determined by intentions over actions. I would say that's a. I, I would say I, as an artist, I'd like to think. Here's here's the. I love this idea. As an artist, I'd like to think I know what my intent is. But you lie to yourself. Or it's a momentary, intent is a momentary thing, because when you look back on something, you're like, well, I had that intent, like with my artwork, like, but that's not how it turned out. I figured out I actually had a different intent. You know, so I think a lot of times we 
think you got to maintain when our subconscious, whatever you're calling it, spirit, is really like, you're just looking to get laid, motherfucker. You're looking to get laid, motherfucker. Be honest, the tense is pretense. I'm looking to say, you I'm looking to make it There's this, and you really believe it, but you're just looking for, for pleasures in so, life. So I want to jump in on that. Let me, let me help this. I can't pull this camera yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. I was trying I'm to stand it up. Yeah, I was trying to stand it up. <laughs> But, um, well, that that was good. I'll see, I see now. I could, I'm not, I'm not, okay, that shot, the computer is more on you, but, but anyway, I'm going to jump in on this. With, um, with that idea of <laughs> intent, people don't know themselves. You know, you really don't understand, and we're, we're, human beings, we understand very little. You know, so for someone to say, oh, yeah, you know, it's all about intent. Like Shane was saying, you don't really know your true intent. Sometimes you can lie to yourself. You see, you can lie to yourself and go, oh, this is exactly why I'm doing this. And then you find out at the end, like, damn. Or that's think not even, that's not at all what it was, you know. Or think about the Levee concept of uh, good guy badge. Intent is a lot of times a mask. Don't ever trust the good guy badge because it's bullshit. They're doing it for self gratification. It's never, it's usually never for you. Even if it benefits you, it's like, they're there for self-gratification. So that's usually your intent. So I would say, I'm probably not with Kantianism, I'm with impulse. I'm an impulsive motherfucker, and I think I'm unrepentant about it, and I'm not going to apologize for it, and I don't think I should be punished for it, and I don't think I should be bothered for it, actually. I just do it myself. When, when it and if I make a mistake, yeah, what that, so I'm an action person, and a lot of times that's held against me because I'm not supposed to act. It's like when I did a soda come like, you can't do it. I'm like, yeah, I can. I'm done. No, you didn't ask the chamber of commerce. I'm like, I don't have to. And I did a soda come. I had soda semis rolling in a small town. And they were just amazed that I just did what I wanted. So I think action. Maybe I'm missing the whole concept of time. So, you got it. I, you got I actually, in our opinion. I've taken a couple Harvard courses on the philosophical courses on class X. And uh, so I've got that. I, I mean, I've got some, you know, they, 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 I've got some Harvard. <laughs> Free class going on. It's a joke. Is that a dad joke? That one's not laughing back at you? Yeah. Um, I sort of agree. I think that morally intentions can hold some benefit because your true intentions is really the most you know about the situation and how you react to that situation. But then legally, of course, I think it should be more determined on action because people can always lie about their intentions. Exactly. Oh, I love that. You, you, you got it. That's exactly what I was saying. You can lie about your intentions, but when you do the deed, the actions speak louder than words. That's, that's the same thing. So actions speak louder than words. So what, what you do counts, you know? Yeah, well, you didn't choose one or the other. You're like, it's this balance. Good. Yeah, uh, and that actions... Oh, are you talking? I was going to say, with that, though, with the actions versus the words, I mean, I think that's demonstrated in real life. It's like, if you go out and you fucking kill someone, you can't talk your way out of it. They're fucking dead. You can't talk your words. At that point, well, the you words, can buy your way out of it. You know? But, but that's still action. Yeah, that's right. That's still action. It's whereas, it don't matter what the fuck your intentions were. Right. You see what I'm saying? It don't matter what the fuck your intentions <laughs> were. I think that's what you're saying, that right? Legally, intentions don't matter. Yeah, because people can always lie about their intentions. Or it doesn't matter. And sometimes people who don't even know their true intentions. Yeah, or, or right. you could say it doesn't matter what your intention is. My family member is still dead. Exactly. And I'm going to look for your head. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. so, and I thought about that too. Like part of my personal like belief system, my how I roll, is one of the things I believe is that if a person offers me an olive branch or like they want to make good on something, then I have to listen. to I don't have to accept it, that shit. But I do have to give a person time to, listen, i got to get a fucking better shot. You know, like, what the hell? We're like a boy band. Okay. I was going to do the great experience, but I'll leave it alone. What were you even talking about? I have to look here to see you, because there's like two different cameras, one for the eCam and one for the actual right, stream. Talking about it again, what was I saying? Hmm? <laughs> What's up, fucking with him? What was I saying? What was I saying? What were we talking about? Oh no, we were talking about the uh, the the con the the constant constant. Let's say the word again. Constant. 
Kant. Kantianism. So, what was I, I saying? I think it's based off of a philosopher called Kant, but I'm not sure. I, I stopped in the middle of a thought, and I keep asking, what was the thought? Did you guys like the Kant? No. No, but you were, you, I don't know what the fuck you were going to say. So, forget it. I think we said what we had to say, which is actually speak loud in words. Yeah, you know, what you do count versus your attention because you may not even know what the fuck that is. Oh, my philosophy. My, what, my part of my belief, I, I believe that you have to, if somebody extends an olive branch, I have to listen to them. Mm. If they, well, even if they murder my family, like they kill my family drunk driving accident, how am I never going to get for this? But they come to me like, listen, I really, I got an olive branch, I'm going to listen. I'm going to give them the moment to try. It doesn't mean they're going to accept But I have to listen. And I will always do that. That's something I would probably do. I, like, that's something I, I want to be heard. I think I'm going to be forgiven. But I want to be heard. And so, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm and kidding. that actions over words philosophy is probably the only thing I'd slightly agree with when it comes to social Darwinism, because usually I'm against that. But I would agree that if you believe in something and you want that thing to be remembered in history and you want it to go through, you have to show might and you have to make action. You can't just go on Instagram and post, oh, this shouldn't be or this should be. If you want that, you have to participate to make that true. I would say, I think a word might be determination. Might is uh, like an orgasm, it's a moment, the only thing that's a feeling. And strength isn't something we can depend on all the time. We're going to be broken, so we have to depend on determination and will. It's a pop, you know, like, well, those are things that are a little different than strength and might, at least for me. You know, Bruce Lee would say that water is soft, but it can penetrate rock. I love that. I, yeah, I, I love, that's why I talk about Satanism. So you can think that being the rock can be hard and being strong, having the might is the hard way, right until water shows up and destroys you. But like I'm saying, might is a momentary thing. Might is, might can smash rocks. Might, might, might causes, shreds, 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 shreds what mountains. Water shreds mountains. So water's the most powerful fucking thing. And so, yeah, it's just might. So what's more powerful then, strength or might? The power is power. Strength is finite, and might is of a moment. You don't always, you're not always going to feel might. You're not always going to win the arm wrestling match. You're not always going to win that. So that becomes like almost something that turns us perverse when we need to chase might. That's what kicking the dog, the captain's dog is like. The captain needs to feel might. The tight, I said this earlier, the, the captain's dog is this idea where the captain has a dog to kick the shit out of. Because if the captain on a pirate ship starts yelling at his crew, he gets thrown over. He's just going to throw him over. Right. You so he's got to be cool. He's like, they're like, yeah, I'm not fucking working today, bitch. And you can run. Got that? He's going to go, yeah, I got that. And he goes down and he kicks the shit out of the fucking dog. Because he can't feel might in that moment. He can't go, bam, smite you or say something. He can't do that. I'm the boss. You do what I say. You'll have a feeling of might in that moment when the person succumbs submits. So do that. So he has to be down and feel might. Feel that drug, like an orgasm for that dog and kick that dog. Right there. So might is something that has perverted our sweet And strength is something we can't always depend on. So I, I like to think of determination just like, because determination is something that is thought by like It's a thoughtful kind of thing where you're like, I'm determined to do this. And then because of this, I'm determined to survive because I want to. I'm determined to get out of this wreckage and swim to the surface because I want to see my love again. Those are the things that, we, that are really the strength that you're talking about. Where that determination can bring the weakest moment. You can be strong because you just want to get that. Love. Determination is about the goal setting. Before they talk about even determination, you know, they have these great, crazy stories like, an eight-year-old picked up a car to save their grandma. You know, they'll right, yeah, out of nowhere. We don't know how it happened. What's that? That determination. Like, I need... And there's where happen. magic comes in. Like, you're so determined. All of a sudden, next thing you know, I'm talking to Bathy 20 years later about something. We were really determined back then. We were really determined to do a lot of things in that moment, that group. And when we were talking, and it was about changing the world. 
bringing down the structure that is in the crippling us. And stuff like that. So there was a there was an intent there. And there was a there was this that determination. It wasn't might, it wasn't strength. Uh, or you could say, Doug is the stronger person because he has this bigger church or something like that. The strength goes. Next thing you know, it's Matthew. So it's that determination that that, that, that brought us these end results, the determination of our work, the determination to make this and think this. The biggest part of my job is sitting here thinking. That's great. Yeah, so it's, I think it's determination over every, over strength over mind. And determination is a thought for it. It makes sense, I guess, because... Determination can even give you both. Like you, determination can give you the might to do something, and determination can give you the strength sometimes I, to do something. I, again, I determine you to get the proper materials. I just an after the fact feeling. It's not something you have when you set out. You have strength <laughs> or will. Might is something you feel. Might is like an orgasm. You can continue to use it as strength, but it's not. We don't have the same thing. Might is something you feel in the gym after you lift weights you've never lifted. Before. Okay, that's how it is. And that's how chemicals release, and that's how we become addicted to those things, and that's some of the perversion that we suffer here. So, determination is a thoughtful might, I guess you could say. It's, it's a combination of might, strength, all of these things, but it's thoughtful. It's like mindfulness. When we talked about recently in psychology, it's more of Buddhism or whatever, it's mindfulness. You be thoughtful. How people's feelings are like you, you, you mindful of what you're saying. And that's something I've learned in therapy. So it's the same kind of thing. You being thoughtful of your strength, where you want to go, like determination is this, you know, like like I think we had 20 years ago. We had this determination that break through. And, and it wasn't a breakthrough so you could hear us. It wasn't like we want to be seen like rock stars. We wanted to be close enough to the Pope to punch him in the face. How can we climb power to get right next to you? Pope! You know what I'm saying? So we had this determination. And, yeah. And there's moments where I would have felt mighty, moments my ex-partner would have not felt mighty, and moments where Doug would have felt mighty. So I think ultimately what drove any of that was determination had a goal that I, I think, like we talked about intention, those intentions were stated in that moment, but over a course of time, we show, we, we see who was, who was telling the truth about their intention. And so, there we go. Hmm. Well, did I say something confusing? No, no, I was just saying. I don't know if you just said something. I'm in agreement. What? I'm in agreement. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I mean, if I were to, uh, you know, the book today would be Determination is Right. <laughs> A thoughtful mind, determination, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's. A new book, Determination is Right. So, yeah. so, I think determination is a good thing. And I think so it's, determination breeds courage. And sometimes people get their goal, and they lose their courage. I do. You lack courage, bitch. <laughs> but, um... Come on, son. Do I think, fight I think, me, fight me! I think one interesting thing is that, that I'm still here, is that, but the question that that Matt asked, it almost comes off as if, like, we're still saying might is right, and that's not it. We're saying that there was a lot of elements that were missing there, and that book is old as fuck, and it's not right, you know? That's why, that's why Anthony had to try to make take pieces of it, and that's oh. why we still having to talk about I'm it, because we need to explain this, this. We still having to talk about this book. Well, I yeah. think it's just that we're, his, uh, it, it, I, I think there's a, a that, that book has a lot of redeeming value as a piece of art, you know? It's not like something that is that it's emotional and it's a piece of art. It's like a poetry or a person, a rant or a screed. So it, it's valid. There's a, it's a valid word. It's surviving to this time for a reason. People are attracted to it and read it and like, whoa, there's a reason. There's some brutal truths in it. And, it, and I was talking to Carla about it. 
I didn't see this race. It's already been anti-Semitic. It comes from Jewish stock. She's looking at it like it was blasphemous. It was against religion and the state and all this stuff. And that's what my father saw. And that's what I understand when I see it. I didn't see it. I, and I, then when you find out Nazis take it on as their Bible too, it does take that makes take on a force of its own because they've endorsed it. But when Lefebvre's looking at it, he's interpreting it looking at it in a different way. And so when I interpret that, I, like I said, I, don't, I think the word might is wrong. It's a feeling that you get after a champion. It's not something you can carry into battle. You would have to carry determination and courage into battle. And if you were to say take courage, that's more of a Christian kind of comment that comes out of a biblical statement, take courage. And so we want to might and have it. But it's, it's that, you know, determination and courage. And then we're just playing games with words, but might is right, there's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of truth to the, to the idea that it doesn't, it's, it's, a, it's it, when you look at it as it, poetry and not a law, this person's playing with your emotions like artists do. So they're saying might is right. When I look at it, what they're, what I see is like that's exactly what's going. On. That's what is our rule. The rule is the might of the state. It becomes right. It becomes everything you have to do to stay out of prison or the wrong. You're going to follow the state, which is right, or you're going to be judged wrong and put in prison. So when I see that, that is exactly what is happening. Their might, the government's might, is overwhelming, and we will perform what they ask. Or we will be in prison. Or we will be in poverty. We don't have many choices as poor people. There's no outs. Their might is absolute. And America's might is so absolute, I don't think I don't think the rest of the world understands what grave danger they're in right now. I don't think people are paying attention because they're stuck in a history channel yesterday. But I can assure you, I can almost assure you, and this is how you call me a crazy prediction. But I assure you, if a Republican gets into office in the next 10 years, you are going to see atrocities like you've never even thought of in your most creative mind. You keep thinking, oh, maybe we'll see another Auschwitz. Cool. No. You will see something on the level that you've never seen. And I say this, when Trump got elected to office, I went and talked to Hartford and Chelsea. I went to talk to all of you great occult people that I knew that have studied and watched and just sat on a mountain and observed everything that goes on every hour of their day, all the fucking time for our Lord's baby. She's done it for 60 fucking years. All of these elders came to me and said, listen, man, these are really bad. What do we do? What are we doing? I'm panic. We'll do anything. Any day. What do we do? There's like, there's nothing going to fix this until a major destructive force comes in and smacks us in the face. Basically like that. Humanity will not get over this boiling thing until it overboils at some point. And when I talk to foreigners, they're like, oh, big deal if another Trump gets in, well, whatever. And, and I, they don't see it from an American perspective. We've got a lot of ignorant people that are politicians. And they're going to use might is right in a way that they're going to learn a lesson about might is right. They're going to wish you have never even entertained these kinds of ideas. And I can almost assure you, because the, the machinery we have to cause atrocities right now within our government is amazing. And they don't need to care about you anymore, David. They have robots to replace you. And so we are really fucked. And we are at a moment of our culling. I had that thought. It's not even. A, you can see it on the. You can see it sure. here. It's, it's all scary because, because what, you're you're saying you're saying something that I had a weird fucking. Yeah, that's what all these mystics. About, like, I, I'm talking. I go to all these people. Like all over the world, I like, talk to all these people. Like they sit on the mountaintop. And this is who I've access to. Like the Theosophy Society. It's no joke. Like I'm sure, not joking. No, I'm laughing because of how bizarre this. Okay, is. and they're all. <laughs> I go to an individual, and they're all like, "There's nothing going to help us here. There's no political theory." There's no nothing we can do. There's no tricks you can do this time, Shane. You can't create a satanic goofball session on TV and change the world. There's no Black Panther's going to fix us. There's no one going to get on the theater to assert to do it. There's no artwork that's going to fix it. We're in a moment that has to have something. And so when I keep seeing these things, I'm like, is this the fire of the devastation? And I'm like, oh, we have seen all of these devastations before. What all these people are talking about is we're going to have to see something we've never imagined. And Hitler's already imagined 
some pretty good atrocities, right? We've seen some pretty good atrocities in humanitarian terms. I want you to think of that times 10,000. And I probably, maybe I won't even get around for it, but when that happens, just think, I, I, I call them. Cause yeah, we really are in a very crucial moment in history. I think this is the time where we can either turn to make it a better future or a shit future. I mean, for some things, it's already too late. I was watching something, and apparently with climate change, we can't even restore the natural temperature. We can only settle for, like, a slightly hotter than average. So even with that, we're already sort of If you're listening to the kids, you can't believe magic. We can do things. We have to have the imagination to fix things. When people start saying can't, they're probably selling motor oil or some shit. I'm not listening to can't. Because I've seen too many young people like yourself change things in the, in the snap of a finger. Like, yeah, can't is something to scoop up all the fucking plastic for 70 cents. Okay? So you see that all the time. There's no fucking can. It can happen. Okay? We have to keep our minds there. If we get into doom and gloom mode, then why try? And, and I'm fine with that, too. Then why are you fucking working? Universe, like, you ever hear about what is it called, general strike? Why aren't we encouraging general strikes more? Why isn't everyone just stop working then if it's the end of the world? Why are we not, why, are we, why don't we stop working and start fucking? That's not happening either. So these concepts are just like insanity. Like, you know, it's the end of the world, but we're going to keep on with the grind. <laughs> Fucking yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. I believe it's the end of the world. Everyone's going to tell me it's, it's, yeah, it's always been the end of the world. Uh, Every fucking thing you read from out history, there's always been some nut job holding up a sign. End of the world. It's the end of their world. They're about to die. Yeah, I get it. The world's going to end too someday for me. But the world's probably not going to end in our lifetime. It's a pretty strong fucking thing. We might end. It certainly looks that way, doesn't it, David? Yeah. But it's really I, bad. What I dreamt really about, what I, I want to talk about this, because what I dreamt about and what was really bizarre is, um, because I have, I, I feel like dreaming is like meditation, but I'm not trying to go into the philosophy and shit, but my dream basically was that machines have replaced most of your hourly workers. They literally were just like, fuck it, we'll just get machines. And people became like this thing that was useless. We were like, oh, why do we even have to bother dealing with this? Wait, wait, here's the point. And I love what you say there. And I've heard that before. And I'm like, why did I have to be of use in the first fucking place, asshole? Not you. But when people but say, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's the problem here. I'm not of use, motherfucker. I'm of life. I don't want to be used. That's, that's what I'm happy the robots take the fucking job. Let me sit here and look out the window and think. It's almost like... The, the capitalism values the AI and thinks that the AI is good enough to be actual people. They can put up with AI, but they don't want to put up with well, other people. They, the AI can do everything we're doing. Now, that's, that's how, that's, that's that's how dumb we've been. We don't my have dream to. was was people that are toxic go, you know what? Don't need other people. Let's blow them all up and, and replace them with fucking robots. Well, but that's just, it was a stupid dream. But and that's what it was, and it was weird for him to hear you say it. Because I know others have had it, you know, that same sort of weird, are they just, like, is this what's happening? Are we becoming so inhuman that we'll just, we'll, we prefer to just have something that pretends to be human and, and can comfort us with well, that, you know, that's what I'm weird. not afraid of the tool. I'm not afraid of the tool. I, I welcome robots. I'm not afraid of it. I'm just telling you what the dream I had. Go ahead. I welcome robots just like I would welcome the wheel or the box. All tools are cool. It's who owns them and uses them that is the problem. Stephen Hawking, one of the greatest minds we've ever had, says robots will be taking over everything. And humanity and is going to figure out the true nature of pain depending on who owns those robots. So the person who owns, owns the robots is going to decide how much pain we feel. Or that's the deal. And what he's basically giving the warning of is control. We have to get control of that system before it gets control of us. Once that system's in place, we are definitely useless for the most part. And, and, and right now, what, what the workforce that can carry our society is like 10%. They only need 10% of the people. And they're all top-tier, like, coder. You know, they're all top-tier people. They don't need a lot. 
robots can build houses, dig ditches, everything. So they don't. A lot of the surf class and the lower class people like myself are not needed in this society. And holy fuck, now robots are making artwork like great, like great art. In in a matter of three years, when that started, start, I'm like, I saw a robot doing album covers or something. I was like, oh god, we're out of business. It has an imagination now. Mm-hmm. I thought that saved me from the fucking pit. No. And then the weird thing, and that's also a little bit, you know, it's a little bit concerning because if you look at population, most people, you know, usually the thing is, oh, there was, like overpopulation was a thing, but actually, and I was watching this thing with Elon Musk talking about this too, we're underpopulated. There's not enough fucking people. We're ending up with the point where the world is actually becoming underpopulated. There's not enough people, and we're ending up with more fucking robots. Yeah. And that's that's a fucking weird thing, dude. I think Elon Musk is a moron. I shouldn't say that word. I, I guess that's a bad word. Uh, a, a goofball, you know, I don't. I think he's a propagandist. I don't think half the stuff he's saying is true. We are. We do have a huge population issue. I mean, so what he's saying is wrong. Like we, I don't know what he's talking about, what concept of he needs more people to build robots. Because he just uses people, like, awfully. So he doesn't have real concern for people. He's, exactly. You know. exactly. So it's like when he's saying we're underpopulated, what has been going on in America and why they're fighting abortion rights is he's right about that. We don't have enough stock of bodies we can throw to war. So it becomes, we, if we don't have the, uh, that population to throw at wars and bodies, it lessens their power. We're cattle. And we're treated as cattle, poor people are. We're, we're the stock of America. We're, that's part of our value is how many people we have here. That and just and lo- so that's why they, they talk about that. They, they say the, the secret part out loud with the abortion rights. They're like, hey, we yeah. need more people. Yeah. So the weird thing is, is, though, we're talking globally, not just America. Globally, it's this weird situation of where, like, there's just not enough babies being born. And yeah, I don't believe it, it's true. like. And, well, I mean, this is a thing that, like, a... a Maybe they're not being born now, but we have a lot of people in the A census okay. sort of thing they okay. did to get these numbers. And so it, what's happening is there's actually more older people than there are younger people. And so the expectation right. okay. is that when when old people start to die off, there won't be a, enough... We'll start to get under, under... That, I believe, is true. I think that's perfect. The younger people are having kids, and, and why they're, and they're going to have robots, you know? See, that's what, that's, what the, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. And uh, that's what he was talking about. Like, oh, there's actually not enough people, and most of them are old. Go ahead. What you got to say, Matthew? You like want to say something? I, I think we got the upper hand with robots, though, sort of, because like, but where are they going to be the ones programming? Like, you know, us humans are programmed. Let's say our flight or um, our flight or fight response. That's a program in our brains. With robots, we can program them and determine how they will act. We can determine what they will like. We can determine what they will hate instinctively, of course. Right, who's, we, who's so we? we? You're right about that, but it's, again, it goes back to Stephen Hawking. It depends on who the we, we. is that's programming it, if, if we suffer the pain point. or progress. So you're right about that, but who's the we? And the we is usually someone like a Peter Thiel, which is a fucking Nazi asshole. Or works oh, yeah. Nazi, he's just a libertarian, but he just hires Nazi assholes. So it's like Peter Thiel's going to fucking own the robot, and he's not real keen on poor people or... Or, or humanity in general. He doesn't give a fuck. He's, he, he, you know, so it's like, yeah, you're right, but not a poor person's not going to be programming it. We got to be real fucking careful. Make sure. Or, or I, like that, like, I used to have a fantasy that like two 14 year old girls would destroy the world. Like, I mean, take down the government, like just with some drones and so they hack some shit. And I was there, like, how did this all happen? How did we win the revolution or whatever? How did this happen? All these two fourteen-year-old girls just fuck some shit up, like it's good shit. Like that's what I'm hoping for. Some like yourself to figure out a way to do something different to corrupt the system somehow. You know. Well, did you I, hear about in Russia? Like a group of teenagers that were um, DDoSing a few Russian websites to um, against the entire Russian-Ukrainian invasion. What about that? Hmm? Repeat what? that. What? Can you hear? Repeat that. Repeat Who, that. Who's that first? Oh, repeat that. Okay. Um, with Russia, there was 
um, a few groups of teenagers and other hacker groups that were working against Russia during the Ukrainian invasion. So they DDoSed a few big major Russian websites. So that does sort of happen. Right. That's really, that's all we have. That's what I put my, you know, wishes in. You know, with my whatever you want to say. I don't like to say hope or anything. That. That's that's what I am uh, optimistic about. That's all I can have. You know, but as a young boy, I remember from my childhood, 16, right around that time was the first time we were introduced to public cameras. So all of a sudden we had ATMs, but they didn't have cameras on them yet. You know, I started, or no, first was traffic lights. They started putting these cameras on the traffic lights. And people were like, yeah, you have these paranoid things. It's the government. Gonna, all, all these paranoid concepts. But younger people like myself, we were like, yeah, let's just we spray paint them. So we put like oil sticks and we shoot, we we try to damage them at the you know just slow it down. It didn't do nothing. Next you know a year later, eight all the ATMs had cameras, and then you know a decade later, everywhere there was cameras. But we still made an attempt to spray paint the first cameras that were put up. <laughs> you know, you make those attempts to try to hold that little piece of freedom. I suppose, but yeah, all it does is strengthen the system. Right. They're like, oh, <laughs> now we're going to put them up higher. <laughs> now we're going to invent the lens that just straight paint just drips off. Drips off, right. Drips off. No, nothing will matter. <laughs> the anti-paint lens. <laughs> yeah, so we just strengthen the system with our crimes. That's like, like, when I, I he came up with cop killer, da, 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 you know, yeah. we used to love it. Yeah, kill all the fucking cops. Now I'm like, yeah, you know, you really got to rethink that. Don't kill all the cops. Why? Well, then the robots come. Well, the robot cops you can't kill. Right. So we got to sort of keep the cops afraid. But if we kill too many of them, they're going to bring in the robot cops. So, and they'll be dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, right. So it's like, um, maybe we don't want to kill the cops right now. Maybe we want to try to scare them into the idea of thinking to join us. I don't know. But I'm not looking to spray paint cameras and encourage perfecting the police state. What are your thoughts on uh, Anton LaVey's essays about robots? I don't remember them all. I think he, I, 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 I have to read one like I would have to read it right now and be very specific. I think Anton LaVey was a great man, and he was prophetic. He was a prophet at some point. He, he, he said things that you would laugh about when he was around. And, like, I even laughed at a lot of shit when I met him. And I'm like, damn, you see the shit he was talking about fucking popping. Oh, wow, dude had some shit. Like, you know, sounds goofy when you hit when I was younger. It just sounded goofy old man. And then I'm like, wow, he really he really was a great thinker. And he really sat there. And, and what, the, what an artist, the, 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 the job the artist has is to look out the window and think. A lot of people would be like, what'd you do today? I sat in a chair and looked out the window and thought, but when are you going to get a real job? And that's my real job. And Anton LaVey did that, and, he, and the other part of being an artist is being generous. So he looked out the window all day and thought and read books, and then he was generous and shared with Tom. And so I find that anything he wrote about was very informed, educated, very thoughtful, insightful. And so that is what I respect. He really tries hard. Even I don't remember his. I, I would say he. It wasn't a hype. It wasn't nothing he wrote was hype. It was something he really believed. There was research and thought. This is the future. So he wasn't saying it to get popular. He wasn't saying it to make people think he was weird. You know what I'm saying? When he wrote that, whenever he wrote that, and whatever he wrote, he thought a lot about it. Like for fucking long skit, long thought, long thought. So tell me, what does this article say? What does he say? Oh, I, I can't remember much either. That's what I was asking you. I do remember one thing, though. He said that the boring people who, like, just fall in the societal line and don't do anything exciting with their lives will easily be replaced with much more entertaining robots. That's all I remember yeah. him saying about it. Well, that's, that, that is true. The, the, always he's talking about, like, whatever, like, the dregs always are going to be victimized or replaced or put out and that's probably could be true. I would think that I would aspire for a society where we try to figure out where we fit within humanity. I don't think we're all the same. And I remember Ian McKay from the band Fugazi Minor Threat said something to me and he's like, there's a bunch of dogs 
But not all the dogs are the same. One dog jumps up into the tree and gets birds, and one dog goes into the hole and gets squirrels. Or ground crew. So all these dogs serve a different purpose. They're all doing different things. They don't all do the same, but they're all of the same species. You see where I'm going, Shane? He doesn't say that, but basically I'm like, so that's how we are. We're all of we're, we're all the same species, but we all do different things. And we're, we're trying to figure out what that is. What do, where do I, what do I, how do I do this? What, what, where, where do I fit within the species, you know? That's part of that thing I was talking about earlier when we were talking about the symbols. With the, like, where do I fit in? I feel like the symbol can offer that. Like, oh, you know, your ancestors can leave something that says, don't forget us. Here's our fucking symbol. You know, yeah, so that the, story, you know. For me, the symbols were something of a useful thing where I was like, hey, I'm, I'm cool. How you doing, metalhead? Hey, explain your Hey, you know, but now I can't trust it. You know, old school bathroom Satanists were like, please stop this. We want we want our shit to stay special. Once everyone was wearing bath mates, we can't spot spot each other anymore. So now the bath mate could be a, a, an enemy. It could be an enemy to me. I can't see a friend anymore. I can't see a similar mind. So it's just uh, that symbol become nothing. I get that. I get that. Where it's like this was our See, this was our symbol for we could say, hey, that's, that's family right there. I have a pentagram on my wall up, up there, and I do it like people hang crosses in their houses. And I do that to represent inside my house because when come, people come in there, they're going to know that that's the idea of respect or, you know, tread lightly with your religious ideas. Thing. So I hang stuff in my house and I want it to be respected. But I wouldn't get a symbol outside of respect. I think that's awesome. Ready, Pappy? I'm here. Just looking if there's any questions. Does anyone on your server think my feet look worthy of money? You got some stuff there. Oh, yeah, 200 bucks, apparently. What's up, yo? Come on, I can, I'll send you some dirty sets as well. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing an auction, everyone. Satanic feet pics. Yeah, I gotta. I'll do it. You want some nails? If it's nails, it's a little extra. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm starving, man. What time is it? Food time. Oh my god, we got a meal coming soon. John the artist is going to be here soon. And he's bringing us food. Awesome. Oh shit, I haven't eaten all fucking day. No yeah, wonder man. my mind's going, you know, I don't eat anymore. Who needs food? I've been, I got a uh, different relationship with food now. And it's become almost dysfunctional, like, I hate food. All right, Bappy's gone. We'll hang up. Are we good, Bappy? Uh, I'm thinking about cooking something from this old book. All right. It's my book. That book won't die. But it'll... <laughs> hey, you're gonna have to suffer with the bad jokes. That's what you get, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, well, my favorite thing in there is the salsa, her favorite salsa. Uh, oh, her salsa? I mean, love salsa. We gotta cut that out. She has a neck with nectarines and strawberries in the salsa. It's very good, and it's especially good with fish, of course. But I eat that, I'll tell you, I make that fucking salsa fresh jalapenos, and I'll eat a bowl of it just like that. She's a talented cook and serial killer. And whore. Sacred whore. I mean, Scarlet Whore. I mean, I, I love the, I mean, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I don't say that in a derogatory way. When I say she ran a whorehouse, I think that's great. That's, those are the witches that are top tier to me. They're the whores. Who you know, the, don't love a good hoe? I'm just saying. Well, the Scarlet, you know, there's a long legend of Scarlet Whore. You know, like bringing the beast forward. You know, like, oh, that's what they do. And so I, I love, you know, Thea loved me and I love her. That, Part of the relationship. That's part of this. That she's hustling her, hustling her feminine wiles, and the satanic man is always dominated by her. So yes, we're basically mama's boys or something like that. And really, the feminine current. And within Satanism, no matter how many people are like, "Why is right?" All this kind of shit. 
they are controlled by the living of their life. And they are controlled by their feminine wall. Mother Earth. And those, <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. So the most dangerous of Satanists is the woman. And the smartest Satanist is usually, uh, the fem, the feminine, I should say. And the most dangerous and the smartest one is usually the feminine. Because we go by the deal one, we're the man, we're masculine, we're dynamic, we're, we're strength, we're all these things. And, but it just doesn't work that way in Satanism. It's, it's, uh, it's the flesh. Flesh runs, this, runs, this, runs us. It's so incredible how Satanism is so connected to the natural law and universal truth accidentally. But that's where yeah. Midas, Wright, Midas Wright plays on those natural laws. And that's, that's exactly where there's empirical truths mixed in with this hateful rhetoric. Right. And that's where LeVay synthesized that. And thought, yeah, there's no argument with that one. When you put those natural law elements in there, right. then it, you can't because it's, like you said, it's the empirical truth. And then you can put these political right. philosophies within right. polit- empirical truths and weaponize it, much right. like a satanic temple or anything else. And so that's what LeVay saw and, and, and synthesized that stuff, which I love. And I see, still see that work as a valid work. I under, But I understand, like, it's in, in influence now and the intent people put into it. And it, it, it needs to be discussed. Like, that just needs to be put out in the open. Like, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm never going to be an enemy of the book. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. Like, even with the Bible, as much as I look it up and stuff like that, it's a theatrical thing, but I don't have a problem with the Bible. I have a problem with the Bibles uh, that people don't understand where all that stuff is taken. You know, the history, like you're saying, understanding like just the African part of the dark arts of black magic or Satanism is really interesting. It's really you know what's funny is I have no problem with a book. A book cannot do anything. It's just a book. Yeah. The problem happens with the Bible is that people don't have that book labeled like the right thing, which is it's a picture. It's I, a story. I book. think the it's biggest problem is a book. And if it was in the fiction section, we wouldn't even have a problem. Yeah, I think the biggest problem with how books are weaponized or political ideals are weaponized is ignorance. When we keep half the populace without any kind of education or time to read at home, what do we expect? But Things be misinterpreted or taken on an emotional level rather than a thoughtful level. You know, I think that's what we're talking about with books is they're supposed to be taken on a thoughtful, reasonable level versus these emotional levels. Yes, 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 fuck, read this book. book. The funny thing, I think more Satanists read the fucking Bible than Christians. Yeah, we actually read the motherfuckers. They were like, oh, this is fucking stupid. Whereas the Christians don't read the Bible. Because if you read it, it would make no fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> it would make no fucking sense. I don't like the guests. They fuck up my shot. Um, You're fucking up my shot. I hate guests. I'm, I'm, David, you know, I'm sort of joking. Okay, you're joking back. Great. I love it. I'd be a dad to basically be a dad to But still, it's not the best shot. You're there. Your head's there. Come on. Hmm? Uh, a great shot. You're better looking than both of us. So let's go. Well, I appreciate that. Although I think my quality is kind of bad on the stream, but that's fine. I feel like you had a thought and then you killed it. <laughs> you said you derailed this. I'm a dream girl. Well, I, had, I had the perfect no, no, response. I'm I had the perfect response for all of you. dreams. Crushing dreams right now in my head. Oh. Hey, what do you expect? I'm in my home. And I'm like, what happens? This is what happens. Okay? Nope. Tony Dollins. Will you tell people the bonus? Do I see 400? Do I see 500? I see 500. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's going to become like the meme of this thing. Fucking get stuck like that. Oh, I saw you. You're right. I have to get on the wall sometimes. That's exactly what happened. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Oh, my God. You know, old is not the greatest. It's great for the mind. Like, you can survive. That is wisdom. It's so cool. There was a 50-year-old man once said, when I was like 25, he's like, listen, being 50 is the best age. And I'm laughing at this guy. I'm like, yeah, I'm 25. Fuck you, old man. He's like, it's Gene, Gene Hackman, this actor. And he's like, when I got to 55 or 50, it was the most relief because I knew who I was. There was no more struggle for identity. There was no... And, and, it, and it's sort of true. You're like, yeah, this is just it. 
I'm sort of up here. Let's roll. You know, you start, <laughs> you're, you're ready to pack it in. <laughs> you're just like, this is it. I'm going to take a bike right now. This is who I am. Yeah, bald and fuck off. I'm about dead. Such a man. You know, you sort of get that age. So it's sort of weird being at that age. Anyway. They say that growing old isn't for pussy. You know, oh, man. growing old isn't for pussy. Okay, let me yeah. tell you this. <laughs> you know when you see all people in their life walking like this, and they're doing these things? Do you get this and Yeah, I know. Look, look, I saw that face of disgust of, 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 oh, my God. Yeah, that's your future, David. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no. Listen. Right. Come on. Oh, okay. Okay. Time, time, you're going to be like this. You're going to be like right this. Now. You're going to be you walking walk like this. Walk like like this. So every day yeah. before you can't do that shit. You know, all you're going to be doing this. Walking down the block. You're like, what's up wrong with that guy? And then Oprah's going to say, Listen, they're old and they got arthritis in their shoulders because they sat like this for 20 years. And now they go, when they lift their shoulders, it goes, ah. That's what happens to me in the morning, okay? So always walk like a goofball like this. <laughs> you got to stretch, man. That stretch shit is so crazy. I'm looking forward to it. I, you know what? It is a privilege to get old. It's true. It's a privilege to get old. It's true. I'm happy to have been. Yeah, well, never wanted to. I wanted to die before I was 30. And I tried as hard as I could. And I tell you, you me and my ex-partner, we really tried to fucking die at some point. We were, we were going fast. Fast. Woo! Good you know, thing that train didn't go off the rails. Part of the goal was to go so fast you sort of slide into the grave. Like, oh, I gave that. that it's fun when you're younger, so I guess. I, I do want to have a little more life, so. I only have very little cocaine tonight. The doctor will only give me so much. It's like, you're very old. You can't have all that cocaine. <laughs> Depending on the thing, I don't think you can have much at all. I'm medi it's medical. Medical cocaine. <laughs> no. I've never heard of that. Well, but I'm a top-tier Satanist. So I go to a Satanic doctor and they give me shit that I can get. Satanists mm -hmm. have special drugs when you're top-tier. David, you're almost there. You're really close. <laughs> We're going to teach you a handshake in another six months. You're going to get the secret ring. I need the handshake. In a year. And David, then you're going to be able to go walk in the doctor, give him a wink, a shake, and he's going to hit, open up this wall, and there's going to be all these designer drugs there. you got to have the key first. Yeah, you got to have that. you got to have that. Okay, so that's the key. So there is, there is a... There is a the back door on Satanism is pretty fucking choice. Extra cream. Hmm? <laughs> extra cream. We get a, you know, if I gotta go get a donut, I got extra cream. What's that? Give him the pickle. <laughs> give, <laughs> give him the pickle. What's that mean? Like uh, McDonald's. You know, give him the pickle. That, that was their training technique. You know, that's how they got so famous, because when you went to McDonald's, they wouldn't argue with you. They'd be like, oh, I want extra pickles. They wouldn't charge you. They would just oh, give I you the that. pickle. I'm with that. I love extra pickles. Yeah, so they just like, give them the pickles. So if you go there and you ask your extra pickles, they shouldn't charge you. Because right. that's like the McDonald's logo. You know, they can't the that, right? What? Ray Kroc, when, now this is when I was younger. Here's funny. When they took over McDonald's, I was alive for that. And what happened is Ray Kroc was walking with the guy who bought McDonald's and said he invented but he didn't. He just bought it. He would walk in the parking lot, and he'd see all these pickles. People would pick up their, their burgers. And he's like, stop putting pickles on the burgers. Make people ask. Because it's all filling up the parking lot with these burgers. pickles. No one wants them. And then when he did that, everyone complained. Where's the fucking pickles? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> that was a funny moment. That was funny, dude. So there you go. Stupid McDonald's stories. I, okay, I failed you. I failed you. To, I'm talking about McDonald's. The corporation. But and, but we're not. It's fun. We're, not, it's just talk it we're re it's relevant. You know what? I uh, have this issue now where I, where I think about McDonald's and the fat boy because the little fat child inside me goes get the fucking McDonald's. And then me right now is like punching the fat kid in the fucking head right now in my body like I would kill you. You're gonna eat a piece of kale now for that. You fuck. <laughs> You gotta eat a piece of kale. Now I'm gonna fucking go eat a piece of kale with yogurt smooth on it. Just to teach my little kid a lesson out there. You gonna think about burgers again, bitch? No, you're not. The inner child in me is not gonna think about the fucking burgers. Because now the motherfucker's getting kale with yogurt smeared on it. Okay? 
and if he's lucky, I'm going to wrap a hard-boiled egg in there. Because I'm losing the strength, right? I'm doing it. You can see that, right, David? You can see it. <laughs> was that a white power sign? Was that what, what did I just see a symbol? What was going on there? Was that a symbol? Oh, uh, uh, this? No, this is, is a white that, power. This is okay. Is this is okay. No. He's West. West what, is that how he, West Coast? I don't know what about it. West Coast, isn't it? What? No, here's my symbol. Who's that? This is my nice symbol. There we go. Neener, neener. You're to West Coast. I knew everything will get you killed in Chicago, so I don't even know what to do. Don't put your fingers up in strange shapes. <laughs> yeah, I go like this to one person. I go like this. I go like this. I this. Move around like this. I go like this. Obby to someone I'm like, and I look, oh, oh shit. shit, like it's like a like oh fuck, thing. I'm making a symbol. You gotta look around. And oh shit. god, nice see this thing. It's oh, apparently there's a new type of flipping doll. Oh my god, you can't, like do, that. can't like do that. Can't do that in Chicago. On, on TikTok, you can't do that in Chicago. I don't. I would say don't do that on a bus in Chicago. Don't ever do that shit in Chicago. Yeah. Ever. Love you. Fucking <laughs> <Nope. laughs> ever. <laughs> There's a new fuck off symbol as well. It's no longer this. It's also this, apparently. Wait. Oh, really? I gotta tell you. No According way. to my cousin, who I hate. What is this? Huh? What, what was that? Oh. Fuck you. Apparently, it's a new fuck you symbol. I don't know. Why do like, people like when you do that in photos? They'll be like, mm. it doesn't look like fuck you to me. It looks like they're making fun of someone. You know, a bad thing. Oh, I know. Wait, wait, sorry. It means go to hell. That's what it means. Go to hell. Oh, man. I feel like I'm in hell. What? That's fucked up. I mean, that's fucked up. Nine and a half hours in this. That's fucked up, dude. Oh, come on, we're in it. We're in it. And we're more than halfway through. We are. Oh. We're halfway through, and we've hit some, so, some serious fucking topics, bro. Some serious yeah, topics. Yeah, you know... It wasn't easy to talk about some of that shit, you know? I just want to get a spike in my arm. I'm joking. I don't do anything like that. I don't, I don't do anything like that. I'm totally joking. I just want to go to sleep, is what I'm saying. Oh, I just want to go to sleep. I, I've never done, I, I have done drugs, but I've never done music drugs. So, it's, that, you don't need caffeine with you? The, the tonic, I would say never do a needle drug. That's what I'm trying to tell you youngsters. I've done a lot of drugs going yeah. through the needle. When you, everyone knows. Long when, every every motherfucker it. knows. When you stick the needle in your arm, your life's gone. Oh, it's gone. It's off, when you stick with the needle. We got multiple coffees. He's like, you got coffee in um, the yeah, I'm fine. sorry. That doesn't even. That just like. I, I have a fear of fucking needles, so just doing that already. What? Huh? Yeah, huh? I have a fear of fucking needles, so I I, I can't even do that. If I wanted to. Well, he's going to get my So yeah, any any other questions? Uh, that last one was a good one about the uh, what was the last one was about the globalism? Oh no, the uh, no, I forgot what the last question was. But anybody else got questions? I'm loving them. Those, that was a good one. Oh, All right, cool. guys, questions. Everyone. Uh, I'm looking at the chat. There's multiple typing. Well, wait. Hold up. All right. I, uh, right. I got a question. Have either of you associated with satanic groups outside of the Church of Satan? I associate with all of them. I, uh, that's what I do. I associate with Ojibwe clan up in Minnesota. I associate with the DePaul Jesuit priest. I associate with all the top tier religious figures in the country because that's what I could do. And if I were in fucking near the Pope, I can get into the Vatican saying, hey, I was a friend of Anton LaVey and I want to talk to a priest right now. So that's what I get to do as a representative from Anton LaVey's own guard. And I've been able to hang out with almost every religious figure I've ever asked to hang out with just by saying, it. like, it's le legitimately, if I go on a, even a reservation, I say, hey, I'm, I represent the Satanic Church. Church of Satan or Satan of Anti philosophy. Someone there will bring me to the president. Wait. 
I made it legal. And so, yeah, I'll run with everyone. But most, I won't, uh, if you talk about associate, I'll meet with people. <clears throat> and I don't associate with any of them, but a lot of them make me a member or tell people I'm a member. I'm with them. No. For class. I didn't want to be a member of Joint Church of Satan. Dude. Okay, I'm telling you, like, and how to get now is almost offended. And I'm not saying that for height, it's just that I am. Like, I was like, yeah, I'm not a joiner, dude. I like the Groucho Marx thing. I think one day we sent out or something with it. There was a quote from Groucho Marx. I can look it up. Can someone look at it about uh, joining? What the fuck is my fool? Oh, I can't find my glasses. Maybe left him in your room when you went to get well, the Mark has this great quote about, like, if the club will let me join, I'm not joining. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm going to find this quote for you. Marco, I refuse to jump any club that would have me as a member. I go with that. I refuse to join any club that would have me as a member. That's Groucho Marx. So it has what in it? I didn't hear the quote. I, I would never join any club that would have me in it. Oh. So that's what Groucho Marx says. Basically, like he's like, yeah, no one's going to have me in the club because I, I don't go by rules. You know, I don't know, why would you have me in your club? I'm an awful person. I'm not following your rules. I'm, not, I'm just not a joiner. I don't know what to do with this. I'll be, one second. So as far as... My uh, patience is so gone right now. I apologize. I sound like an asshole. So, uh, I'll answer it's from not mine. Good. Okay, so with sure. my first and um, other satanic organizations, I think you need to define what you mean by associate. If you mean, like, oh, did we join them as members and shit like that, no. Uh, what I've done is I do the satanic thing, the true satanic thing, and I read what they write, and I listen to what they do, and I study them, you know, and I attempt to uh, gather the information yeah, well, right. so that I can uh, make a logical, well, reasonable okay. decision for myself. I'm not jumping in something and say, oh, I want to be in this, just to, like, I said, be a member, be a woman. No. So if that's the question, do I associate them with, like, trying to jump in? Oh, I'm part of this uh, other satanic group. No. Uh, I think that's, that's complete folly, you know. It's not, Satanism is not about making a club for everybody to join. It's like, oh, we're part of the, the Satan club. It's not really about that. Uh, the philosophy, is, and that's what this philosophy is really about. It, it's individual, individualistic and personal. It's really about empowering each person. And you can't really empower each person with a group ideal because not everybody's going to agree. Not everybody's everybody different, you know. And uh, I think you're, you're getting a real taste of that, too, with this live chat. With how me and Shane, we bounce back and forth. He might say something, then I might not agree. Or he might not agree with what I say. Well, with what I say. That's why Satanism is not one big group that everybody joins. Well, John, I don't know. We, we debate. You know, it's a Come on in. It's about the philosophy. Okay. And so, yeah, I don't go around trying to join the next satanic group or anything like that. It's more like, oh, if I see them, I'll look at what they're doing and see what they're about and then make a logical decision for myself. You know, it's not really about joining the club. I represent, I, I, I would hang with Carlo LeBay's first satanic church, okay? <laughs> Carlo oh, said, yeah, I'm really interested in that organization, the first satanic church. I roll with the LeBay's. Nice. I roll, I roll with Carla big time. Look. She's the only, as far as I'm concerned, with Car Carla, I roll with her big time. So if we're talking about organizations, I respect uh, what her father created. Um, I respect and love her tremendously. I think, you know, it's such a weird thing to meet somebody and then you're just like, yeah, I definitely love this person, you know, and uh, it, it was that sort of thing, you know, when I met Carla. I instantly knew it. And uh, it's funny because Shane was trying to explain it. He's like, yeah, man, that's because they like hippies and stuff. And they just radiate love. You know, they're like goth hippies. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, it's funny to think about it like that. But, you know, that's what it felt like. You know, and I, I was like, yeah, she's radiating love. And we're this is it. You know, like, I, I love her. You know, she's just somebody I care for. And um, it's a weird sort of thing, dude, where, you know, you know as a statement, 
I've reached a place, I was kind of telling uh, Shane about this too, I've reached a place where it's like I almost don't have friends. You know, I don't even want friends. You either my family or I ain't fucking with you. Because you can't trust, you know, it's hard to trust people. So I, it's like if you come in, I'm either going to make you family and it's like you don't get inside my trust bubble, or you're not at all. I'm not going to let you in at all. You know, and that's the way it is. So it's not really like a, a cool club to join, you know. Where it's like, like Shane was talking about where with the with the, the bathroom there, it's like, yo, we don't want that to become a, a normality. We want to be able to follow who the fuck our people are. We don't know who the fuck our family is. It's not even a common thing. Everybody was in the fucking bathroom and we can't follow who friend of folk. You know, it's that sort of thing where when it becomes a club, Hello. anybody can just join. How do we know who here for us? The real shit. I'm, I'm trying to find you. Know, we can't. We need to go from the back. So it's really an individual. It's not about an individual problem. It's just a problem. It's not about it. It's not about it. And it's really thought about it in that way often. You know, I just think, oh, it'll be so cool, you know, like, to meet a group of people that take us over. It's not about it. It's really not. Yeah, the only organization I think I ever joined would be an organization that has a focus on people's independent practices of Satanism, and then maybe for them to come out and communicate about that a bit. But I'm uncomfortable with the club that has a very one opinion, one idea, or anything such as that. I join an organization that has a very con a large contrast of different thoughts and opinions and interpretations of Satanism. Hey, Baffy, is there a sound problem? Uh, there's a bit of a sound problem on, on my side, yeah. I don't know no, if it's on yours as well. Let me ask you very specific. Is there a sound problem from us? Can you hear us okay? Um, sometimes I can't, but mostly I can. There's just like slight little lips every two minutes. Can you hear the fan? Yeah, uh, a little bit, but Stop. not much. Okay, great. Then we're yeah. well, I'll, I'll play how you sound on live. Hold up. All right, say something. Hey, how are you hey. doing, man? Can you hear me? I'm just can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. The fans. So... For some reason, I can't hear you on Ecamm too well, but on the stream, I can hear you great. I don't know how to so I'm gonna, Like, does that mean on YouTube and on Discord? Okay, so from where I'm calling you from, I'm on the Ecamm app, right? I can't, I mean, I can hear you, but sometimes it cuts out. I'm asking but on the stream that you're streaming, I can hear you. Is that on the Discord that you're listening to the stream? So the audience can hear you. I can. Okay. Right? And then, is that on both YouTube and Discord? Um, the YouTube stream's a bit um, iffy, too. but So it's mainly the YouTube and Ecamm are not really working too well, but on Discord I can hear you fine. I'm asking, bud. For technical difficulties. Okay, so okay. One YouTube and Ecamm can't hear you. Well, I can hear you, but just not too well. On Discord, you sound perfect. Here. Okay, Bambi, just one second. What's going on, John? What's going on, John? They shut that door. They shut that door. Alright, Bashi, what's going on, dude? Anything else? Um, we have uh, a question from Brock. Wait, let's, um, let's it right. says I got someone here and then we can hmm? take questions later on. Oh, later on. Okay, I'll save it for later on. A question from Brock, what is it? Oh, okay. It's would you be open to getting your story out to TS, the Satanic Temple places and having dialogue with some TST members? And then he also says, I think a lot of TST members have misconceptions of you two. Yeah, and on purpose. That's purposeful, and that stuff was weaponized by your friend. 
So absolutely, I've been here the whole time, and I, I explain, and I, I'm, I'm really appreciative that you do want to hear it. And that's, I explained the story in the introduction videos. A person named Manro came to me eventually, and she's like talking about music, and she's like, wow, you're so easy to approach. And everyone within the Satanic Temple is like, this guy's awful, it's don't, you know, all this stuff. And she's like, so she just started asking me questions, and she's like, she, she was, it was re really simple because she just approached me and talked to me about life, like music and stuff like that. And it wasn't like a harassing question that people start a lot of conversations with me for. So sometimes I'll be like, if someone like, makes a statement that they think is a question, I'm like, yeah, fuck you, and I block them. So that can happen to it. But I mean, yeah, I'm willing to talk to anyone who can approach me in a reasonable, polite way, not, not even submissive way, just be cool. Yeah. I have nothing yeah. to hide. Uh, bro. I'm not a politician. I have nothing to hide. And I, I'm not I didn't I don't take down my websites. I put out my information online. I don't have like old websites that I'm trying to hide my eugenics, love of eugenics. So yeah, I'm not the politician I'm actually like really transparent artist. And I have a whole life that for some reason people miss that stuff. They miss the a year at the wheel project that me and my wife really put together. And, and when I oh at yeah, that, that's something. When I looked at that film, that's something. Night, I'm, all right, I'm gonna hang up this shit. I can't do it. I can't do this conversation. Uh, I'm just saying when I when I watched that show last night, it was real emotional, and I saw I was like, "Holy shit! Are you fucking kidding me? This is great!" Like we talked to some of the greatest minds in America, and this is what I get credit for. How fucking stupid is each person that fucking weaponizes this shit? How fucking stupid is each person that listens to this garbage without research? How fucking stupid can you fucking be to listen to this person's a racist without fucking looking into my whole fucking life? Get the fuck out of here. Y'all yeah, talk to these people, but I want them to ask themselves how they could do that to anyone. If you can indict someone, fucking do it. Do it full. Pull it all out. All of it. And destroy you, but you can't. Because I only got this little stupid moment that you can weaponize against me. And this is a co-intel. I agree. This is a co-intel pro tactic that has been done since the fucking 60s. It was done against the Black Panthers. It was done against the Yippies. It was done against the Bay. It was done against all of us. This is the tactic they use. And it's a tactic just like Bernadine Dorn had to go through. Bernadine Dorn, a really loving woman, peaceful person. Okay, she planted bombs in the Pentagon. She helped with but those explosions will always, like, no people will be around. We're just going to show them what we can do, that we will do if we force them. This person's a beautiful person, okay? Like, and, and she said something about Manson, Charles Manson. was like, you know, fuck the pigs. Or, like, hopefully they stuck a fork in them. So she said something sarcastic about the murders. And that is weaponized against you to this day. That's the only thing they can find in her speech or her rhetoric that is not empowering and fucking great is this moment of silliness. So anywhere she goes now, people see her and go, oh, this is a person who was okay with Manson-style murders and stuff. That's how people see her now. People we used to see Black Panthers, they would see these folks and like, oh my God, because of rumors they would spread around the neighborhood. Part of the reason Huey Newton was murdered was because of rumors that were spread around the Cointel Post Okay. So that's how this stuff happens. They do this stuff, and then you have your revolutionaries murdered in the streets just by psych psych psy warfare. And so it's very, it, when you look into those histories, this isn't me paranoid fucking talking like I get accused of. You, I've, I've done this for 30 years, and this is my life. I can be a professor and teach you about this kind of stuff. And, and, and that's a, there's a long history of that stuff happening. And, and that's exactly what was happening to me. And, and, and that's just one thing that was happening to me. It's almost like a map amongst cults and anyone that practices side warfare. And so um, these are real things, and hopefully they never are used against you. Because they really, you have to have a really strong mind to make it out of there and a lot of friends to help you guys, okay? And part of a cult work, cult work, part of what we do, that most of the people that are wearing back lace, they don't do, okay? You guys get to wear, we do the heavy lifting for you, we do the heavy thinking for you. What we do is we go to the edge of insanity. We go to the abyss. We go over the edge. We go over the edge. That's like the hunter's constant out there. We play with the edge of everything. Okay, we get that thrill. We bring that back to you. And it's usually sold back to the movie. But the thrill is gone. You can only look at it. 
Anyway, John, G, my good friend, artist. Hey, Bappy. I'm going to sign off one. Love you, my brother. Talk to you soon, right? All right. Oh, wait, before I go, just I want to say something I do admire about you is your willingness to accept people's challenging your opinions and then your responses to that. I think that's a very admirable trait. Well, I'm All right, I'll see you later. Ave. Love you, bro. Okay. Show them. Oh my God, John! You look like a fucking rock star with that shit. You, you are, you're, you're really working the art fucking thing, dude. I love the contacts. My goodness, you look good. Look like a rock star. Yeah. John G, what's up, man? Oh, you didn't bring what's the up, sandwiches. Yeah, I'm dying. I'm fucking pissed about that. Not you. Not you. This, I'm, I'm like sandwiches. This all I've been talking about. You know? Oh man, you said over there. You said over there. Yeah, oh my God. I didn't send anyone yeah. anywhere. Oh no. I didn't send anyone anyway. You said that was your favorite. It was. It is. I'm going to make sandwiches, though. In charge. Do you have a water sandwich? Do you eat more sadella? No, I'm not afraid of that. Do you eat ham? Salami? Yeah. You just want that? More sadella is Italian bologna. I'm sorry, yeah. It's good. You just want a sandwich I'm going to make? Don't give a fuck? Okay. You? No cheese. No cheese. No cheese. Okay. I'll be back. All right, cool. Let's talk shit while well, he's go. Let's scoot over. Let's get a better shot. <laughs> hey, no, no. That's my seat. Here, I can get a better shot. This is all you got to do. That's all right, I got There we go. Shut up too far. My God, Jay, chill. That ass crack is fucking been work, baby. <laughs> that, that ass crack, I don't need fucking with the shit. That ass crack. We charge an extra for those shots. That's right. Let's talk about what this art can create. So... I think it's fascinating. First of all, the stuff that you're making is fantastic. Uh, but let's hear the story. Like, 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 let's hear your story of how you got to where where we're at. Because we have, before we pull out the art, right. let's talk about how you got there and then we'll pull. You want to hear the story that I tell at art tell, tell them the story of how you got to make the stuff. All right. Well, it started back in 2014. Me and my father we used to like one ghost town. Go to haunted buildings, cemeteries, you know, anything on the other. We get thousands of pictures, video recording, voice recording. Didn't do nothing of it. Go through thousands of pictures, and within that thousands of pictures, you'll find like maybe like just two or three pictures that actually got something in it, like spaces, two body people, balls of light. So over time, as we were doing this, we're noticing stuff starting to happen at our house, like people walking when no one's home, voices coming out the closet at 3 o'clock in the morning, shadow people. You know, over time it, you know, gradually grew. It grew over a span of two years, and in that two years it got pretty strong, it was like insanity. And within that three, same two years, there was a problem with the local gang in the neighborhood, so I would have the problem where I couldn't go outside because I was afraid of, you know, shooting and getting fucked with. And then when I would be inside the house, it's like I'm losing my mind. Paranormal shit's happening inside my fucking house, so it's like bouncing off of two walls. So I went through that for another two years until the vision started. And when the vision started, I started creating these sculptures out of toilet paper. And the strange thing about this is when I started making these sculptures out of toilet paper, a shadow man appeared. The shadow man used to watch me make my art. And like, um, I thought it was maybe it's my imagination or whatever. Well, it's, it's my imagination how all my family members see the same thing, you know? So, so let's, let's show up a couple of people that are the future guy here. Well, these let's are pull out one. These aren't really complete. Oh, here's one that's complete. Let's pull out one of these guys. So these are, here's a, a piece of art that John made. So, um, with something like this. I would say, oh, you know, it's a doll baby, you know, for conjure. Um, and, you know, I told you about this. I'm like, oh, this looks like something that we would have made in the you know, Black Knight tradition. And um, I, I wrote a thing up to, to go with them, and I'll, I'll tell you all this great history about this thing. And um, how you know, I was trying to explain uh, some of the, the 
the behind the scenes of possession. You know, I was talking with Shane. I'm like uh, about possession, how that uh, in the voodoo tradition, uh, in, in the voodoo tradition, it, it's an important thing. And so uh, it's not always a negative thing. It, it can be for some people. Like for for instance, there's some low out. Uh, we call this the spirits in voodoo, uh, or the demons, whatever you want to call it. We like to call them the low out. Okay, and so some of these loa can be kind of tricksters. Right. So it's not always a positive thing where they possess you. <laughs> Excuse me. So, for instance, you might get possessed, and then all of a sudden you're like, damn, I, I, I want to smoke cigarettes. I, I just, for some reason, I've got to smoke cigarettes. And you get addicted to smoking cigarettes. And then you might figure out that it was something like the loa that was working with you um, in our position might be something like they're coming out and you smoke. Right. Fuck, that's why I started smoking, you know, and um, I think that this is one of those things where you uh, were doing the search for the paranormal, and you got to that space, and then it happened. You got that possession, and it's, you, the imagination can take on anything. The spirit will, will communicate the way that it can, right. and if it has to use spirit, it will. If it has to use love or sadness or whatever it is, the uh, emotion that you need to get as it's true, it will. And that's the subject. When I say spirit, I'm talking about subconscious. Right. So we all have uh, most uh, very varying emotions inside of us. And when the art is being created, it's the subconscious stuff coming out. Okay? And I think this represents the uh, expression of that. When we talk about it, when we talk about it, we talk a lot. You, know, you were saying that some people explain it as, as the doll baby or, or something that uh, absorbs fear. And I think that that's exactly what it is. It's the uh, manifestation of that, uh, the possession of that thing. You, you were feeling uh, with the ghost something and the stuff coming up, you know, the lyrics are going to do it. I'm oh shit, and a fear for the thing looks like this is something that's going to turn it That's where the fear comes in, and that's why this, these, these doll babies are that, that thing that manifests as that thing that is scary. That once was Well, you know, it's pretty interesting. I didn't actually start making these until I, I visited the land of the Gary Dino House. I went on that land, and usually people don't go on their land, but I went on their land with the intention You talking about the Hell House? Yeah. Dirt. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I went on the land with the intention of taking some dirt. The one I had added to my sculptures, because I had already added that to the cemetery dirt to my sculptures. So I figured I'd take the two dirt and mix them. So when I went on that land, it was pretty freaking strange. Because walking on that land, it felt like television had it coming through the ground in your shoes. So after I did that, I started seeing the vision of the devil faces, and that's when I actually started making these dolls. So all these dolls, they contain the dirt from the very green house and the best for some sort of So, for those that don't know, that's what's from the very is a very famous one in the very here. Uh, in Illinois, and then um, Oak Grove is another, uh, it's been there by me, but I got this, that I'm watching to uh, use for these dogs as well. And Oak Grove is where they have, um, it's in Wisconsin, they have the actual flood in there. And if you look at the story, uh, she's basically an ass, the entire family was an ass. And uh, she's buried in the cemetery across the street from my house. And so I brought some of that to her, and she's using the dogs as well. So, one thing you may not be aware of is actually using the graveyard there is a weird tradition. It's weird to, um, for people that don't believe in spirit, you know, because spirit is not like ghosts outside yourself. I, I try to explain this a lot. It's the manifestation in you. It's the experience you experience. So, multiple people can get with us you see, and have uh, a similar sort of experience, sort of thing. And, um, you know, with, with what you're doing and this art that's created, this you know, the art is the magic. This is what happens when you, you go down to those spiritual levels. It's like, you know, the spirit says, you got, I got something you got to say. Uh, I got something you got to make. I, there's something you got to do. Right. You're going to make music. You got to do this. Or whatever. Maybe it's activism. Whatever. It gets you. You know, and it's like, ah, you, you start doing it. And with these and the dog, it, 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 it's incredible because it ties into everything that we've been talking about. I mean, Shane was talking about how the African culture ends up being sacred. He didn't he wasn't even aware of it. And, and so I want you to see that even though we're different people, you know, people talk about race, I don't believe in race. 
uh, spirit. We're all one thing. We're one. And so these old traditions are manifesting through you anyway. And you're making it all in the same way that those old African people in, across the world you never met did. They would get that dirt from the cemetery, mix it up, make a paper mache, and make the fucking baby doll. So it wasn't by accident. I think you got possessed, and the spirit is coming through. You know, and it's telling you this is what you need to do. And through your art, you're going to get your expression. It's the way that your mind is. The art is really freaking interesting because I've noticed when I make this art, it's like a physical form or something that's not physical, something that exists between worlds. You put hair on all of it? Yeah, I'm going to put hair on all of it. They weren't finished, I can speak of it. I'm bald, so you get really bald with me. I love this one. So these are great, great pieces of art. And, um, you know, if you guys uh, want them, we're, uh, you can get them from a few different places. John has a store, oh, you know, yeah, and stuff. Like but uh, yeah. just contact them. Get in touch with me. We'll get you the doll. We're going to teach you the history that goes with these and tell you about the uh, the magic that is connected to them, okay? And, um, it's, I mean, because these are such beautiful pieces of art. They really are. But also, they're concept, uh, connected to such a strong history and, um, the effect that the symbol can have on, on someone's subconscious mind is a, is a really uh, powerful thing. Okay, so if you use the tool correctly, it can be a very powerful thing. Okay. So, yeah, like, I, I think it's great that we have John here to talk about this because it connects us to everything, uh, specifically with all babies, because it connects to everything that we're talking about. It's weird that people can sort of have this random manifestation of something that's ancient, that they have no concept of. Like, I don't know why I'm doing this. You, and then someone else can show up and say, hey, did you know? And then explain it, and then you go, whoa. You know? And it, it, I like to call it a uh, uh, You know? And I think life is, it should be about that. Uh, it's having a uh, problem that you can't. Okay, and then I think we'll get some, some calls trying to come in. I'm going to let Shane uh, come in, but talk to everybody. Tell me a little bit more. Charles and Borger, let me tell you what's up. Well, like I said, all my art pieces were inspired by me. Oh, yeah. Out the way, out the way, out the way, out the way. No, not you, man. Here's your sandwich. Look out, look out, look out. Dr. Light, yeah, baby. There you are. Get over here, Joe. You gotta get over here. Hey! Can you hear me? <laughs> Hello. Fucking camera over here. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, hardly. Oh no. It's it's like really quiet. So let me see what happens if I unplug my headphones. Okay, say something. Shane. Okay, yeah. now I hear you. Can Everybody you hear me? in the world. This is Manorol, one of the witches I was telling you about. They saved my life. Hello. Manorol did the great Hello. podcast with me. It's so wonderful to see you. It's so good to see you, too. I saw, um, I listened back on some of our episodes last night to kind of prepare for today. Um, it was really good to, like, listen back and hear how much we've grown since then. We both have had a lot of time to ourselves to reflect on life, how, you know, how we're doing, we're both going uphill from everything. And I feel like even in those, I feel like we had so much growing to do in them. And like, it's it's such a stepping stone. If anyone is interested, you should definitely check out on um, any of, um, I think on Spotify, I found the archive of them and it's Speak of the Devil. Um, with Shane Bugby, Speak of the Devil Pod. And I would say, I almost suggest starting in the middle of season two and either going forward or backwards. I feel like that's like the best direction you could go right now, just because 
like if we start from number one, there's so much context involved in like what was going on in the news at the time, etc., that it doesn't really hold up as well as like just starting in the middle. I agree. I love that. I love that. I love seeing you. It's so cool. It's, we having you on this is a triggering moment in a good way. I'm just thinking how the recording we did, how serious we took what we were doing. Like we were at, we worked hard at what we did. Vanderbilt is a, a, a firm, strong person to work with. So it was great to have, we had some good creative, I don't want to say conflict, but just moments. Like we had a good moments, it was cool. There's some footage somewhere um, when we were talking about what is art. There's some um, throwaway fo uh, footage in the drive I gave you of us arguing on the phone. And I feel like at some point you should totally release it. I think, okay. I think it's therapeutic. Well, yeah, you would love it too because Nanro's like fighting, like going to kill me. She's like, ah! You know, she's, there's no, there's no just one sided yell. Like, she's like, out if you were in front of me, you know, like, it, like she's fighting back brutal, like, you know, you see you little bitch. I'm fucking talking. Don't interrupt me, bitch. Like she's going. Like she's like throwing throwing hands. <laughs> you know, don't fuck with men. <laughs> so you're you're a good taskmaster. Oh, you're a great teacher. You're a great teacher. Nan is Nan Rose a teacher, much like yourself. So she has this great patience with me. I was telling him the story about um, what's the movie that you like? Which one? The, the child movie. No, you're talking about Problem Child. Problem Child. Yeah. I'll I was like, so now, like, eventually we work into a friendship. He's like, hey, I want to do movie reason. I really want to talk to my problem child. And I tell him how you work in it. I tell my sister, she's like, my little sister's like, is this kid the guy from Problem Child? Or a kid from Problem Child? And we watched that movie together. I'm like, yeah, that's basically how my life is. I, I don't really get it, so what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Like in it when, when as a child, you know, the kid junior, he goes, Stupid humans, and it's just like the most satanic thing ever. Stupid humans, yeah, yeah. that was great. That was great. I, I love that movie. That was a good movie. You know, boy, I think you're talking about a lot of growing, man. When you, I was so wild, I really look at you like, um, mystical. What it was just wild. You came and how you started communicating to me about music and. And, and, and art, and, 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 and I was really, really down in the dumps. You know that. And um, without you, I don't know if I would have had my, my, a little bit of my mind back. So I really appreciate what you did. You know, I, I can't even put words to it. It's just so beautiful to me. You know, it's really cool. I remember you. Can I, can I say the instruments you play? Of course. Man is a classic cello, she played cello. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when I was feeling really low, Nana would play cello for me. I was laying there wanting to die. It was really cool. And now when I hear cello music, I just think like, bliss. I don't want to say bliss or heavenly, but it's just something like I am in love with playing a cello every time I hear it. I'm like, oh, it might be also relatable to know that the process of playing the cello, regardless of your skill level, there's so much development you have. It doesn't matter how long you've played, you get the uglies in the instrument. And sometimes it's beyond your control, just like how life is. And so you can only take matters in your own hands of what you control in the moment. So you might not be able to do that today, but you have to do that tomorrow. And it's it's such a satanic instrument in that way. Actually, violin family just generally is quite satanic in the sense that you have to have full on control over what is happening and that moment. And you have to use that as growth of how you control that instrument next time and etc. You can't let the instrument and everything around it control you, even though classical music, classical musicians and classical music is formed around the idea of doing what appeases, you know, the piggies, the masses. At the same time, it really isn't, when you look at the development of classical music, you wouldn't have, you know, you wouldn't have Kanye West if it wasn't for Mozart pushing limits or Bach pushing limits, but you have all these, in, you know, these musicians in between who did everything against society. You had all these cellists, violinists, etc., who 
did did what what was right for them and i i feel like now i find myself teaching my students to question everything and questioning me even like if they don't understand something they better question me and so i try to take a satanic approach to how i teach um especially as a person of color i find that we are the outliers and we are the adversaries of art and especially art that upholds white supremacy and societal like feelings because classical music also was made in the spread of Christianity. And it's important for that to be unlearned and decolonized because at the same time as it existing for the sake of Jesus, at the same time, it wouldn't survive without Satanists making the music. Yeah. How do you, I love that, I love what you just said, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. Um, it's helpful, it's great. I, I, how do you, how, when you pray, you, you practice Satanism, you are a great Satanist, I think. And dealing with you, I, it's wonderful. And because of that, you know, you're so passionate about everything you believe, everything you do. There's so much passion is behind it. Um, we've shared a lot of moments like that, and just think of everything you're so passionate about. Everything life is passionate about, and uh, well, that's not, that, but, but we, we have that similar thing where we have a, such a joy of life, we have such a pain. How do you interpret Satanism? Is it, for me, I interpret Satanism through artwork. You know me, and I wonder how you would define how, how you would define Satanism for yourself. I think Satanism ultimately is the outlier and the adversary. I think that. While art is Satanism, Satanism exists outside of art also. Satanism exists in the medical community when you have people who go against the grain for the greater good of humans. You have, you know, you now have Satanism within city planning when someone decides, no, I'm not going to pass this bill for this infrastructure because it's going to harm the adversaries, the poor people, the fry cooks, you know, people of color, etc. And like when when someone goes against the grain for the greater build of humans versus the instant appeasement of society, I think that ultimately is Satanism. I think that the you know, and, and especially now, I think that I, I think back on all of our talks about the fry cook and the adversaries and everything that looked taught about you know the others and it's really stood out especially since covid that you know look at look at all these protests look at this is so satanic look at music right now music has come full circle back to the art that kills movement and right now look at look at hip-hop music look at outsider art on instagram like your own art look at there's a there's a younger gentleman who you should totally connect with who seems like a young he he's almost like a like a baby shane in his own way and his followers will probably kill me for saying that but his name is ass pizza and he makes he makes very well ass pizza he's, he's quite wavy and um and look at you know even like younger younger artists like i saw some of the um some of the acts that you follow on instagram who were part of the witches sabbath they are all a product of between art that kills a like columbine right and right. It, it, it's so beautiful that now it's a little bit easier to accept because of people like you who paved the way and i feel like it's that's quite satanic to like to quietly have paved a way as the outsider so these newer outsiders feel like they are the outsiders when in reality they're following a path well i appreciate that so much i appreciate being seen and i remember one time you told me because i'm like you know everything i lost everything all this kind of you know like everything i'm in a flop house you know and I was like, why would you rent that place? Hard landing? You want a hard landing? They said, yeah, that's it. 
And I remember you telling me I was in this, I'm in this apartment. I'm like, you know, top my studio, you know, at this age, build. This is where I was at at 22 years old. So I built up to a different thing. And you were telling me I think Rembrandt or some, or you know, Bach. They lived their whole life in the apartment. Someone like that was like, and it made me feel. I was like, really? And you would tell me about. You would tell me stories of certain classical musicians that paved the way or changed changed things and did something amazing and are still remembered to this day that lived in a box. Yeah, yeah. something like that. So that was pretty that helped me just sort of pick up, you know, and sort of look at things in a realistic state. Like I guess get away from those those ideas of what success or what those things look like. It, people, what people see as success versus, no, it's my heart. And what I, the only thing people see ever of me is that. It's, exactly. And so when I did that, when I, when I, when a young kid did this 20 year, 20th anniversary interview with me, I was like, I've been sick of talking about mine as right years, as you all know, I got the podcast you would me last when I talked about it, but it just sticks and it continues to get weaponized. And I'm like, you know, this is a chance. <clears throat> I could show myself. And if people don't see me at this point, you know, I got I just I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. It's a weird situation. I went through a really big um, stint of feeling very underappreciated and undernoticed at the height of COVID because there, I saw a lot of past rivals suddenly playing their instruments, you know, for the piggies on Instagram and doing things that were quite catering and they were just tap dancing for everybody rather than creating art. And it really spoke to me about while they're getting all that attention, it really wasn't attention to them. It was attention of the appeasement that they were giving for everyone else's voice. And one day, while down in the dumps about this, I looked up my artist name made by Dr. Light on TikTok. And I saw that one song out of nowhere was being used as background music for people's TikTok videos. And it was like, it was something that I just made as a filler track on an album and people were using it to like make these like silent movies of feeling sad or melancholic. And it was just, or like in the background of playing Minecraft video games. And it was such a like tiny moment, but it suddenly made me like realize that it's not me that I should prioritize when, when it comes to, you know, the big picture, it's what I leave behind. Right. Because we can only be here so long, but our art can live forever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, and a lot of times for people, like where I see, I tell people like, a lot of what I see in old artwork is, is a poor person, we tell the history of the people. Rich people write history books, but artists tell the story of people, love, life, what's around. We see it and we tell the truth in the ugliest of ways sometimes. And we tell the truth of what we're seeing. We observe and report. And sometimes it's not always the best thing for people around you when you're reporting of you, as I do. But that's our history. That's the people's history. You can find truth in art. You can't find in history books, as we well know. And I was talking to some younger kids from the Witch of Sabbath show, and they're telling me how NWA is totally inappropriate. That stuff is just, you know, inappropriate. And I said, I, I, can, I can see that, but you understand they're telling, the his, his, they're, they're telling your history, right? Like, what do you mean? I'm like, everything they say in their lyrics happened in their neighborhood. They're watching it. They didn't approve of it. They're not saying, they're not necessarily endorsing it. They're saying, this is what I see. This is how ugly it is. And I'm going to present it in this, you know. And, 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 and so, yeah, the art of our day, the art, like, art that kills, the art of the 90s is really fucking ugly. A lot of it is ugly. When you listen back, like, when I listen back, like NWA, I had it on my shuffle, and sometimes it pops out, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to probably take this off the shuffle. i got to take this off the shuffle, because it just, it pops up, and it's a little triggering. Maybe it's because I'm older or whatever. It just doesn't, it doesn't fit the vibe or whatever the air that's going on in the air. But it's still important work, and they did a lot of important work, and they, those are people, again, NWA, that band, they, they, they uh, sacrificed a lot. 
in the beginning to do that. And they were in everyone's sight. The, the president and people running for the president and feds were putting sights on the pop artists back then. They were legitimately at war with the government, and the government was at war with them. And that that bums me out when I hear that yeah, NWA is not acceptable anymore. All of a sudden, I'm like, yeah, those are part of the revolutionaries that, that like literally had targets on them from the government based on their artwork. Like they really did everything they did is why you're doing what you're doing today. But history's a weird thing. So when I hear that something like that is unacceptable as a form of art, that means that you have to also erase jazz music and like the beat generation. And a lot of art yeah, that was formed as like observers of extreme oppression. And unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, we had to hear it in the eyes of white people who decided to move into the neighborhoods. But at the same time, the neighborhoods, they did see things that were quite shocking to their privilege. And they were a mouthpiece to it. And they did, you know, do some good by, you know, using their privilege to publish it. But for NWA to do so was not only gener generous, but quite brave because they had to do it without thinking about the consequence of doing it. And I think that Gen Z is quite similar in their way of look at all the footage of people dying from the police now. Look at all the footage that we are doing because of social media which is just mirroring everything that was happening, you know, before those kids who were born. It's just a different form of it. The difference between the two is that with TikTok, et cetera, it's not as immortalized per se, unless we archive it. Whereas NWA was recorded and pressed and it's, it is immortalized as a piece of art. And so, it's harder to make it disappear and the language upsets people because of the ch because language always evolves but at the same time you know we we get upset about that but we don't get upset over punk rock having something like that and look at now there's there's another flip side of this now that i'm sure is going to get canceled in 20 years too look how overtly sexual a lot of young rappers are when they talk about not just about fucking someone but about the functions of their genitalia i've never heard such clear language about someone's dick and balls as now it's a male positivity movement right now going on in music that is quite brave as well because they're not thinking about if their kids hear it or not they're expressing themselves yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's great. I mean, I thought a wet ass pussy right away, but that's just uh, yeah. I, I I love all that. I'm like, holy shit! Like the what we call maybe vulgarity or that 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 this over the heavy sexuality is awesome. Like, it's just, like, but it, uh, we also know that it only stands out because the adversary is saying it. Let's be serious about that part of it. Because when we talk about Shakespeare and the vulgarity of that, it's seen as high art. But when and we when we look at you know something made fifty years ago by white people, it's seen as high art. Yet when when young black men are saying this, it's seen as vulgar because the adversary said it before someone else said it. Wow, um, it, it, it's it's like almost like this that, that a tool of the culture vulture. They demonize yep. it before they steal it. They kill it or they, they, they knock it down. They knock it down to size. They, they, they deflate it. They, they hurt it. They hurt that animal, that, that organic thing that's going out of culture. They hurt it until they can sell realty with it. Something like that. Like, until they can take graph graffiti, which was a fearful thing, and they, they, they hurt it, they, they make it safe, and they regurgitate it. There's something to buy. It destroys me with that kind of stuff a lot of times, because I know, you know, of course, they want to defend that kind of culture, that, that original, like you're saying. But, yeah. It's almost like sex magic now, the way that sexuality and music is being used, because it's, a, it's in this weird ritual of making sure the culture vultures don't take it making it so horrible or making it so vulgar that no one would even think of repeating it. 
and like to me it's it's such a form of immortalizing something by doing that or look at outsider art that's very reminiscent of w what you are doing or what you've done where like even female artists now there's there's a lot of that now to protect yourself and make your own watermarks because there's nothing stopping anyone with more money and privilege from copying you and it's like it's like these younger artists have like discovered that and found a way around that and to me well, it's really satanic what a great i have that is a great observation about obscenity in art I'm going to make this my, I'm going to make it so fucking filthy, you're not going to touch this bitch, it's mine for, I'm going to, you're going to fucking hurt. Oh, I love that idea, you know, think about the stuff I made, I wonder if that was like territorial pissings, like, I'm going to spin some vulgarity on this shit so you don't touch it, you're not picking it up, it's not going in the museum, fucker, you know, like, I'm going to, you know, something, that's great, wow, I'm, I'm so out of that way. <laughs> sure. I, I love you, man, this is what you do to me, so you give me, you throw these things at me and I'm like, having to think about it all fucking day, <laughs> you know, but, but I remember our original, I don't know, I, can I talk about some of the stuff like the change and going to meetings? Yeah. Or, okay, cool. Yeah, of course. I, all right. I, Dan wrote, you know, she approached me, he's just friendly, talking about music, nothing about Satan and stuff like that. And the, the conversation slowly evolved. But at some point she was talking about, you know, wanting to be involved. Like, Hey, I, I feel this philosophy. I want to understand more. I want to go hang out with some people and learn. So she was involved in a, a group, I think a satanic temple group locally. And she went there, she went to a group and she had to change that. She, she dressed the hip hop, let's say. She dressed cool. I would just say she had drip. She, she has fucking drip. She, <laughs> Dan, Dan drips. Dan's like, when I, when I was like, I want to do fashion. She'd show me some shit. She, she, you know, she does it. She does it right. She got her shit done. And so she went to the thing and she had some shit on and she felt alienated, like, because she wasn't at all black or something, because she didn't dress in the, the costume. And I think you also felt because of your, your person of color that you were, put up, like, you were not considered. And, and I remember you being upset, like, and it's the same thing you had, Avi. Oh, God, this is great. Avi contacted the Temple of Satan. He's like, why wouldn't they talk to them? The only black guy probably, you know, he's like, I'm here. I'm, hey. You can use some of me on that fucking thing. You're all guys out. Wait, how about me? <laughs> Nothing. No return. Same with Nan. And, and you can hear Nano right now. She's fucking genius. Yeah, it's fucking clever. She's <laughs> like, how do you not fucking go, yeah, come on on my team and just fucking go. Let's go. Like, Nan is ready to fucking fight you intellectually with razors, with her hands. Like, she's going, you know? Yes, I just love it. Anyway... That right, was a beautiful observation, by the way. And I know I'm sitting here quiet and stuff, but I'm just listening. You what know? observation? No, I, I hear you listening. <laughs> the observation she had about making it so vulgar that nobody will touch it. Well, I was like, dude, that was a fucking monster of an observation. Anyway, and I, I was, you, you know, you can all think. I was bringing up, like, the idea that just people of color trying to enter Satanism, and she's in the most liberal... The idea that she came up was like, hey, we're good guys. We're the liberal. And she's like, yeah, I didn't feel that. Like, I didn't feel this. I didn't feel like yeah. the, the hippie hug I was looking for. Yeah. You know, and you've had that same that's experience. Same that's thing. not something I have. So maybe you I, got, you, I, that same thing happened. Like I said, I, I wrote that. And I was like, hey, you know, you know, like, I'm here. You know, I, I know this stuff. I, I, I know about history. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of intelligent. No, yeah. They didn't respond. They didn't write an email back. They didn't send a thumbs up. They did I didn't get nothing, you know. They didn't say, hey, come out to us in the Santa Temple thing and just stand in the crowd, Mr. Black Guy, so we could be another colored person out here. They didn't even say that, you know. We did notice, though, the day after I announced I'm doing this event with Avi, Doug, Doogie reposts something from a, a black person that, you know, like just like out of nowhere, I'm look, and I look over his whole feed. There's no people of color being relisted. Re but two days after we announced this, all of a sudden, it's like a retweet from, I don't you know, it's just a obvious like something's going on like oh well we at least maybe inspired that <laughs> you know he's probably watching it may oh, yeah. not be the number of people watching but we know he's watching hey doug hey doug i hope you're enjoying hearing these truth bombs being said oh and nano wrote, wrote a, a very infamous song based on the 24-hour show which i'm i have to you know, go light. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to upset Nano. You can tell I'm very cautious about what I say because 
when she throws down intellectually, she will like shred you. They'll be like, oh God, yes, okay, I'm that small. I got it, get out of here. So please, please, Andrew, please stop, stop, stop. stop. <laughs> she has no mercy if she's on attack. That's all I'm saying. I said, I had, I, I had to submit. But my point is, she wrote this song called Aryan King. <laughs> Based off of something that Doug said on the 24 hours. He's like, I'm an Aryan king. And she made it boom, boom, boom. <laughs> So this is the thing like that, that that song, I guess, was pretty popular for a moment there. Give me a second. Aryan king. king. She was harassing Doug originally. You know. <laughs> that was great. I think that um, I, I think that what you're doing right now is so great that you are bringing something back and like something that I, I'm sure it, at some point the original 24 hour radio brought like infamy for good and bad for you. And now it's it's so magical of you to twist this around now and make this about you now, not you in the past and like move forward. And so this is, this is really, really important. And I think that it's, it's really, really, really special that you invited others to come on. Thank you so much for having me on this also. And it, that's for me, this is a, I really appreciate what you said. <laughs> I am honored that you would come on. And for me, when you say it's about, like, I, I was like, when I presented this, I was like, it's time I can do exactly, I can, I can, I can probably try to help, I can do something about what Manor was telling me in my ear, what's going on here. Like, I'm observing, I'm paying attention to this. And yeah, you're right, it's wrong. There's something wrong here. Like, I kept saying that a long time as I got to, as I had to leave everything I love. I was struggling for years at that point, going, there's something wrong with what's going on, what we're doing, what, there's something just wrong here. And as I'm trying to slowly methodical think on it, I'm getting hit with all this other garbage from, you know. But my point is, it was an opportunity not just to put myself out there, because I don't really think I'll ever be seen in my life. <clears throat> there was, a, there was a, a chance for me to put a cork on a bottle in it. Mm -hmm. But in I, I, you were... so I, I am lucky that you would come on here or Avi would trust me as as a person that that may, if, if that I, if the person I am is segregated that show. So I had to look back on that show and talk. Three weeks ago is the first time I looked back on that full text and started hearing some of it, and I was like, oh wow, this is fucking ugly shit. Like I I only heard the little weaponized part, so I can defend myself on something you know out of context. But then I listened to it, and the, the, the gravity of it really smashed me in the face three weeks ago. And then, because uh, Avi's like, I'm like, you really got to listen to that podcast, we're going to do this, and Avi's cool, and he listens to it, and he's like, yeah, you know, dude, that's, that's fucked up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, and then I go listen, I'm looking, like, oh, oh, okay, I'm really happy we're doing this, because we started doing this, for, you know, like, and then I was like, okay, this is a really heavy moment. And so after that, I was just like, thankful Avi would join me after hearing that, you know, like, I'm thankful he took it on, I'm thankful you come on, and you, you did what you did in the beginning, like, you just... Tried to understand me as you would do. And I think somewhere in my introduction I talked about this, all of the things I've survived, every fucking moment, it's always been people on the margins that have helped me out, like uh, pulled me out, gay people, something like that. And it was you. You came to me when I was on my back in Chicago. It was like, person of color, what's just going on? Woman. It's always that. It's never been a white woman to tell me. It's never been a white woman to tell me. And I'm not putting them down either. Caucasians, whatever. I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying, like, and then you look at this idea, like, wow, you have hundreds of thousands of culture under your belt. You have, you see what's important. And you watch older cultures, and they care about you and me. For some reason, our young American culture hasn't a clue. If we lost mm -hmm. our heart or something. We don't see the humanity. And I keep asking you, how do we lose the humanity? How do we regain it? How does that happen? I, I would imagine poverty is a good reason, you know, to survive it is a good reason to lose a man. So what a fucked up system we have. But I'm so happy to be here today with you, man, and, and with you, obviously. And I'll also with you, John. But, you know, so, let's show John. So, John, he's over here, too. I, I just wanted to quickly close at a bookend here. Also, Avi, it's a pleasure to meet you. Let's all, let's all talk soon. 
Um, I, I wanted to quickly plug, I have some new music coming out soon. Um, you can follow me at Made by Dr. Light. That's Made by Dr. with a DR, no periods, because I had a hysterectomy and light. And um, I just, I wanted to also just close in here by saying that Shane, your original Might Is Right podcast is in ways a pioneer to the idea of this ugliness to create something so ugly to watermark it. And whether whether you're proud of it or ashamed of it, it's art and it exists. And it is an archived piece of history of satanic history, especially let's call it modern satanic history. And I think that you should you should definitely not erase that whether whether it makes you feel good or bad it's part of the human experience and we wouldn't be here without that and so it's a it's an honor that we're all here thank you so much to both of you and thank you so much hell satan hell hell art be the adversary hell Fox. natural hell the cello hell classical music hell art <laughs> thank and you. Thank you very much. Such a beautiful person. All my heart. Such a beautiful person. Yeah. Love thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Top, on top on of upward. It. Top two. Okay. It. Take it easy. Take it easy. That was great. <laughs> that was great. One of my saviors, bro. You get, I don't know if you have any heroes in your life or people who helped you out, but there's, that's one of them. That's this beautiful human being, I mean, it was a lie, it was mystical, it was weird, it was really weird, because she didn't, everyone else in that world was coming at me, you this motherfucker, and I'm like, no, fuck you, you know, like, if you're going to start the conversation with that, fuck up, she's like, you like, I, I, I post a song maybe Fugazi or something, she goes, oh, you like Fugazi too, I like Fugazi, I go, oh, really, what else you like, we start talking, play some cellos, send some songs, and she knows how to get you, that should get you. And that, I, did I tell you this? Did I tell you earlier? Like, I'd be laying down, I'm dying. And she played it. Did I say this? Yeah, you said it, okay. yeah. I'm, it's, 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 uh, I've been up. You got it, man. I'm old. And so, if I start getting on repeat, you got to say, hey, Shane, three times. Let's say three times. <laughs> I'm the third time stopping. I, I don't want it to be, I don't want to ever have to change my nickname to Shane four times. <laughs> so, you know, you know, but that was great. Man, I love you so much. Thank you so much. That was so fucking cool. Uh, that was that was like uh, I don't want to say the only person I wanted to call, but that was the biggest person to call for me, or to be a part of this next to yourself, like because she was part of that podcast. You know, you know. This is this is amazing, dude. Just so you know, this this is amazing. This thing. And you know, she just got on and threw hands. Satan is this. Satan is this. Who? Who? Right, right. Throwing right. hands. All about. Let me tell you what you do. This is where it's at. This where it's going to be placed in history. Where, where she's placing everything in history. You know, that's it. She just laid down the law. I'm pretty much good. And Man Roll, I, I'll Carly tell you. did that shit, too. <laughs> what? Carla did that. I love the way the women, the women show up. When their feminine energy comes in, they're just like, you know, law, law, law. Yeah. <laughs> Carla, Carla, Carla just laughs at me and, oh, and chuckles. She is so funny. Carla deals with me so fucking. I love, I love, they see the greatest thing about satanic witches, the real ones, they're not afraid of guys oh. at all. So when I'm, like, yelling... Oh, what the fuck do you mean? Like, because I'm in a high-stress thing. Like, it's hours before. Carla starts laughing. <laughs> you sound funny over there yelling. What? Yeah, you yelling. What's that going to get you? I'm just going to laugh. Or whatever. You know, but it's just like, doesn't doesn't affect. doesn't affect. You know, it doesn't affect. Nan was not, has never been a, if I had attitude with Nan, you know, I got it right back. Like, hey, motherfucker, watch that tone. Don't have that talk like right away. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Boss bitch, boss witch. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But then she comes into my life, and you know I'm real skeptical. And then she's like, tells me she's got beef with Satanic Temple, you know, and I'm paying attention. I'm like, this is like one of the smartest people I ever fucking met. No wonder she's got beef with that motherfucker. She's like, I'm totally qualified. I'm like, not here. How am I not on the top tier? Oh, because I'm this woman, person, or whatever it is. She understands it. Both of those things. But, she, you know, she's, tell, she's, she's teaching me this stuff. Oh, there was so many times I would say something. She was, oh, shit. And she wouldn't talk to me for weeks. I'm not here to educate you on that. 
Wham! <laughs> like, I'd say some shit, some stupid shit. She'd beat the shit out of me. Well, she thought that's cool. I, I, I appreciate someone. And she did, too, because I was listening. I was willing to hear her. Like, what did I do wrong? What, how do you see that as wrong? You know, I was willing. So we had this. She's a great teacher. Great person. Great man. Nano. Oh, goodness. What a great artist. I'm so honored to work with her. She'd been through it. And she got to go to L- L- UCLA. She's fucking class the cello. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. That's so, a bad answer. as far as uh, my life goes, I feel pretty lucky to have cool friends like that. You know, first cellist, classical trained, fucking UCLA graduate. Coming from where I'm from, like I said, I'm the first person in that family to willing to read books. Probably willing to read, willing to read. So, that's really some, some super surreal shit for me. I think it's incredible how there's such a vast amount of people. You know, like, if you would, if, if this wouldn't have happened, and I would have came across like Nana Rob in the real world, I would have never thought any of those things about. You know, it's a weird thing where it's like, like you said, the bathroom used to be that thing where you could see it and go, oh, that person's with us. You know what yeah. I mean? And now we can't do that. And you'd never guess with that. And, and right, that's what I'm saying. You would never think that she was a Satanist. That she, I mean, because she's a beautiful person. She's she has never, her own style. You know, and but because she's a real Satanist. Yeah. She's, she's going to dress it all black. black. I'm dressing it all black. Right. Right. She's going to come in how she feels that day. It's going to be drip. You're going to respect how she looks. I guarantee you're going to respect how she looks. I think that it's incredible that there's such a vast, um, a vast amount of different people that are within this, this spherical philosoph- uh, philosophical bubble. Because we're not a group. It's a philosophy, right? But within that philosophy, there are stars that emerge. You oh, know? yeah, and, it's really And cool. when you see when they shine bright, and it's like, whoa, when you get in their presence, it's like, whoa, you know? Oh, that's certainly the truth. You, within Satanism, it is, it is weird that you will have people that work for the FBI, say, hey, you have people that are, you would consider your enemy, maybe he's a per, poor person or something, but they're, they're, they understand the philosophy, they do their deal you know, it is a weird, very diverse group that is involved in Satanism in the top tier sense, not in the consumer sense. But the people are like, yeah, I would like to talk about what I study. And when I say Satanists are nerds, that's what we are. We we, we used to hang out at the library, and we're not really politically active as Satanists. That doesn't mean we're not politically active. And most of the Satanists I know from the back of the day. They were one-person armies. So when we, when I dropped down this show, look what it did. When they dropped down his book, look what it did. I don't like Boyd Rice for shit. Okay, I fucking hate the guy. So look what he did. It's one person. I hate the guy. That respect. Motherfucker has people that listen to him and respect him. One person. An amazing influence. The LeVay fan, Carl LeVay has amazing influence around the globe. And what are all of us doing? Making fucking sandwiches with my dudes. I'm ta- you know, I'm not gonna get ready to listen to some music, smoke some so we're living the best life. We're not out there trying to sell you on abortion rights to suck money from you. Get what I'm saying? LeVay told you it's a racket. And I'd like to start that you know, he had a racket. He says it. I'm I'm just here to fuck around. Tease you as an artist, you know, it, it was up with the wreck. <clears throat> and, you know, I get the idea. I think Satanic Delco comes close to being something cool, but I don't really understand them. But it looks like they're like a, a group that does activism as Satanists, but that's not what they're, you know, that, it's just a, they're like a group, a clubhouse. And that's what, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Satanism is sort of turning into like these clubhouses in the backyard that kids would make. Like, this is boys, uh, boys only club. It's my clubhouse. Uh, Treehouse. Treehouse, yeah. So <laughs> Satanism is becoming like that where every fourth house It's the little rascals. There's another say, infernal temple. The, the little devils. Church. The little devils. But like the little rascals. All the little clubhouses. Right. So, boys, uh, so now there's an infernal church. And, he, and, and David tells me there's a bunch of servers like that on there. And they just all do their own thing. They have their own group of people and all that stuff. And, mm-hmm. and so... It's interesting. I'm sorry, John, if we have a subject, but that's, that's what Nanoel does. She fucking controls the narrative. She's a witch. 
and uh, just what happens. We're on that old fucking. I think at this point, it's safe to say that we're all witches. I think that's why Anton wrote that book, The Satanic Witch. He was like, yeah, you'll end up being a witch if you follow this philosophy because it's going to make your ass safe. Well, it also says the Satanist and stuff is born, not, not made. Exactly. So you can't read the books and uh, create the Satanist. You're sort of born. And I think he has a point there. It's a weird thing. I used to have thought that was weird almost, but you can sort of see it. Like with, within, it doesn't make you an alpha. It doesn't make you the, the top, like a lot of people would trans, translate that. Like you have to be alpha male. To, it just means you're a survivor. Like people have survived hard shit. When you see that movie Precious, it's really Precious. I dare any of you motherfuckers you're so tough and love horror movies. Go watch Precious. That's a movie that's real. That person survived a lot. So what... And that is, that is, that is what... Uh, anyway, that's how I see it. That kind so of overwhelming survival is what you see. When I saw Precious, I was like, that's the satanic character. Yeah. Look at what she survived, and what did she do? I mean, this movie's about, a, and I relate to a severely abused child that grows up and writes a book and writes poetry about it and eventually gets turned into a movie. Well, wow, how satanic the fuck is that? Surviving something, taking that ugly, turning it into a fucking poetry book, and presenting it as a film that I don't know how you could sit through it and not be disturbed. Like, if you sit through that and, like, yeah, if you can sit through Precious and, like, not feel it, I don't know about you. And then turn so your fucking humanity back. Yeah, she, she was able to do this. That's satanic. Like, turn this moment that she destroy it first. That most, when you start, when we're talking about Satan is being born, when people go through that, God's are, you're fucked. You're fucked as a poor person because you don't have the tools to deal with it. Drug addiction is what your path is probably going to be. This is the science of it. So when I was talking about, I had brought up like, oh, we could, it's safe to say that we're all witches. So I was thinking about, you know, the satanic witch. In that book, LeVay, when he, he describes what the satanic witch is, he, he says it in a way where it appears to be very mundane. But I think it was very prophetic. And, um... Uh, it was one of those things where he says, like, oh, the satanic witch, and he describes it, you know, from the female aspect of, of being, like, wearing the lipstick and putting the makeup on and dressing real sexy if you want to appeal to the male, to, to twist them to your, your bidding. And when I think about that and how he describes it in such a mundane way, but when you think back to the witch trials, that's why they, 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 they tried the witch, they put on makeup, and they didn't like them. That was I, the witch trial. Yeah, I, I, and I, so I think that it was prophetic, the way that that, that book was written. I like that. You know? When I see the witch trials, I think, think of those Oscars people, somebody they thought that they were, they didn't have just an aesthetic. They were like, on the spectrum. People on the spectrum can be scary. Mm. People on the spectrum can be scary. People, that's why they have to put masks on, because they don't have that own, they go look at things like this and, those are the people, when you watch Lord of the Flies, the person with the big glasses and all the smarts gets killed. It scares people when you have amazing intelligence and you're like sort of calm and sitting there like talking, you know, it, 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 it freaks people out. The flame of knowledge people run from, we'll save this one to it. We're, you're not, you don't relate, right, because you're, you're, you're running to it. But the see, that, that's because not everyone can be a Satanist. We're running to it. So many people run from it. It's easier for you to give them a religion than for them to think about what life's about. Just tell me what it's about. Yeah? Okay, got the Thanks. That's the, that's the easy way out. We don't take the easy way out. You know? I don't know. I agree with that. Uh, I mean, it's, because you said, I mean, I brought this up because what you said, I'm just showing it, it it's so accurate. And, and the way that the magic works, it, it's raw. It's, it's chaos. It, it's 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 there. It's not, and it's there. And um, you know, I was talking about John's art with his dolls, and he's like, "Dude, I was watching this shit in my life, ghost hunting with my dad." And then all of a sudden, it was like I couldn't go outside because the fucking gangsters was out there, you know, making life hell for everybody like they do. And then fucking also didn't want to be in my house because I had this, you know, the ghost shit going on. So through those two brick walls, and he's like, "I'm, I'm being smushed. I'm being smushed." It puts you in there. It's like the, the subconscious goes, oh, so this is what you need to produce in order to set yourself free. That's when it comes out like, oh, this is what you got to do. That's when spirit comes in like, I got you. Bam, this is what you do. And he gets installed, and you get your peace. 
the lights are about to go off, and you're sitting there, how are going to, and then it happens. Oh! And magic appears, and it goes, I got you. I got you. Don't worry. You know? And that's the thing that, that makes this special. That's where the spirituality, that word, you're like, that's where it comes this in, bro. Word, like, oh, that's the way, that's that. where it comes in. You know, it's like, don't worry. You thought it was chaotic, but it's not. You thought it was chaotic, but look, oh, here's Shane Bugby. And I'm like, wait, Shane Bugby? Like, sitting next to Anton LeVay? That's who I was arguing with on Facebook. Now look at him. <laughs> you know, and that's the weird, sacred, like, I didn't know which direction I was going, and then now it, everything lined up, and the same thing happened for you, and the same thing happened for him, and the same thing happened for Nana. She was telling you, same thing happened for her. It's the weird thing of, like, you don't believe in that. You go, oh, when they did, you get all the might and shit you want to, until the water happens. And every you turn back in the water, and you're like, wait a minute. Now I can see clear. Cause oh, yeah. Water. People say, yeah, everyone, everyone, no one's in it. There's no atheist in the foxhole. <laughs> I can guarantee you I'm going to be an atheist till the end. And if I can guarantee this, if if, uh, if I were to die, the Christ pops up and punches him in the fucking face. <laughs> Got that? Okay. Because you failed me, bitch. A thousand percent. I'm punching you. Because you fucked it. Someone pops up and goes, hey, come on into heaven. I'm like, oh, you motherfucker. Fuck you really it. did us like that? Right. You really did us like that, huh? I'll be like, oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank We're you. Fighting. And then in my head, I'm like, you did us like that, huh, motherfucker? And I'm just waiting for that shot. Okay? Clear shot. Yeah. It's gonna be the oh, right in the fucking throat. It's right in the fucking throat. Burn down school all over again. Christ, you're gonna be like this. Oh, oh, oh. That's a pretty good game. I'm like, oh, motherfucker, not Kurt's not bothered. It's that damn talent show again. I'll, I'll burn it down because I can't win. It's rigged. It's not about not winning. It's how you did rigged. it. No, I, I'm okay with rigged. <laughs> I can walk away and go, okay, you chump me. Okay, fine. Fuck you. But how you did us all that time. Yeah, that's right. Like, I'm, I, you know how, how long I carried that toothache? Because I couldn't get it out? Are you kidding me, dude? Like, you're uh, dead. Wait, bitch, you real? And you watch me stop? You watch me be a bitch? Oh, you what? Bitch, yeah. You are getting so fucked up. <laughs> I'm going to do the best I can to gouge that motherfucking eye out of your head. You're going to be an eyeless Christ. So that's what you're going to Pluck that fucking skull. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, John, I, you know, how are you, man? We're going to talk about your eyeworks now. I, I don't apologize. I want to almost... But how was the sandwich? Oh, it's freaking good. Don't lie about it. You only ate half. <laughs> you were doing a big ass break. Recorded eating on it. I can't argue with that. I, you know, I can't argue with that. I felt a little weird eating my sandwich, but I was hungry, so I ate it. I'm fucking starving, dude. You ever see a fat man starve? Actually, the other half. No, no. Because if I get to one point, it's just I take chunks out of arms. That's it. Well, that's the case. So I'm a good chunk. <laughs> no, I gotta, I gotta eat something. Um, but John, can I? What'd you bring, real quick? I'd like to see some of your artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought some of my dogs that I took care of from an actual on the location. I actually made about 13 of them. I'm just not finished with them. So I was telling them earlier about the history. So John, of the dogs. You, you're gonna need to speak up. All right. So people can hear you. I want to make sure that you're heard. Now, these are all made out of toilet paper. Correct. Tell us about these, buddy. Well, all these dolls I create contain dirt from actual haunted locations such as Bachelor's Grove Cemetery and Gary Demon House. Why? Well, during this, me and my father used to go ghost hunting in 2014. It's time to 2018 when I started to start seeing visions of stuff I couldn't comprehend. So then I started making this stuff out of toilet paper, and when I started putting the cemetery dirt in these things, I wanted them to be more authentic. I needed them to have a soul inside it. Need to give them light. Everything I create, I don't know what I create when I create. I go into a trance and this is what comes out. I've made several of these dolls. I've done this for over seven years and there hasn't been a day I haven't made something. Really? You make one a day? Well, I've been working on them for seven years straight. I haven't stopped at all. Nice. You know, I feel it as an obligation because I feel like if I stop making them, fucking life is stuff. That's the truth, dude. And as I, as I keep making them, I look at them as like an offering to the dead. 
the difference and the dead. My incantation is the difference of the dead is on the Triple Black Phoenix record. Does that head spin normal? Oh, no, I have to put hair on and then I'm going to all Is it allowed to spin? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right now, dude. Okay, because I, I didn't want to break something off like if it was broken. No, I was like, no. my luck, I'll be spinning the head and it'll fall off. And John will be like, dude, that, now you just unleash the beast. That great dirt you didn't want out. Now it's on the floor, it's in the cracks, everyone's dead. I don't need to hear that today. It's a lie. Oh, you'll be all right. Thank you. The graveyard there's still in my car. So, <laughs> oh my God, I just pulled the head off of something. Uh, will I still be all right? Yeah. Okay, good. Don't curse me. I, I love this stuff, dude. It's so fucking wild, your story. You know. So I was telling, uh, we did a little yeah, talk yeah, before. I can. Well, wait, well, look, look. so did you tell us all about these stories, how you see ghosts and visions and stuff? Like, well, I guess. When, when I met you, you were telling me stories like, me and my father, I, and I, I'm tired. So I, I don't have a great, I, I, my re- re- recollection is limited. But I remember you telling me that your father and both had seen ghosts or spirits in your house. Correct. And that somehow informed your artwork. Well, what happened was, over two years, I, we were dealing with a haunting from ghost time, so we had to call it quits for a while, but it didn't go away. It just built up over time, so... Um, it almost got to the point where the whole family felt like we were losing our minds because we were seeing shit every freaking day. And it wasn't just me, it was my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, their voices, the shadow people, balls of light, stuff would be thrown across the room. And company would start coming over and they'd start freaking out about shit. So instead of getting rid of it, I made peace with it. But the reason I made peace with it was because my family was losing our house during the time of foreclosure. And I had a problem with the game bangers outside, so... I had to deal with the, ga- the ghosts inside the house and deal with the game bangers outside rather deal with the ghosts and I made peace with the ghosts and after I made peace with the ghosts I started seeing visions of shit I can only come, I can only describe it as like visions of fucking madness and madness of mankind it was terrible and I didn't know why I was seeing this shit and all of a sudden I'm making this stuff out of toilet paper and I don't know why I'm making this stuff and ever since I started making it I haven't stopped it's been non-stop I do it my art has become like my religion, basically. Art is religion. Mm-hmm. Bro, John, I want to say something. John, John, that is beautiful. So refreshing to hear. It's rare that an artist or someone could come in and be so vulnerable. This is stuff you would say. A lot of people might say you're crazy. Yes. And so I love, I don't think so. I'm an artist myself. I, I, I don't put a lot of names to things, and it's probably because if I were to say, I saw, I feel, that's maybe why I stay with the spirituality. I don't want to be called any more crazy than I have been in life, because right. I'm a poor, ignorant person that can't communicate as well as the educated people, so automatically I'm crazy. Um, but but it's just, uh, it, it, that's such a heavy story, you know, because it's all tied into, like, it's foreclosure, yeah. trauma. And do you think, like, do you think, like, and Avi's really into this shit, but when you started saying that, I'm thinking about going to my counselor and all that and all the traumas I have and making artwork. Do you think, like, trauma or the anxiety is sort of like a portal to... It is. Well, well, let me, I'm asking him, bro. All right. I'm not new to... You're, you, you're right. Everything is tied into energy. This motherfucker's going to... Everything is... He's got it. It is magic and it's art. No, Avi's got... Avi's... Uh, all things coming back to what I'll be saying. That's why I was, I was sort of... What do you think? Well, the build-up to the art was... Yeah, I had the problem with the game bangers, but I had this mentality in my mind where I wake up today, I might have to go outside and hurt someone, or I might get hurt, or, you know... It was like a perpetual state of war. And then when the paranormal shit happened, it was like, holy fuck, like I'm losing my fucking mind. And all of a sudden, I'm making these art figures, and these motherfuckers are moving on their own. People are freaking out to see shit that I can't explain or they can't explain. Other people are seeing Other shit. people, yeah, like friends and family. And, you know, and when it gets to friends and family, you know, you're not the fucking one. Cause now, how the fuck are you seeing it if I'm making this shit up? Yeah. That's how I see it, you know. You ever think to put cameras in the home? Well, we don't live there no more, but yeah, we thought about that. So, so, I, 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 so, I
before it goes too far. So you mentioned how, um, and Shay mentioned the Trump, right. and how that's part of it. And you said that um, how it was like the, the fear existed, you know, and uh, you said it was like you made peace with the ghost. Right. Now, in my book, the one that's on that table over there, uh, the initiation, when I talk about how witches are initiated, the first initiation you, that you usually go through as a witch is, and I call it the meeting with fear. You meet with fear, and then it's like you did. You go through that process where you go, okay, I'm going to join. We're doing this. If you're going to kill me, fuck me, dude. Yeah. Come on, devil. Come on. Come out and fucking get me, boogie man. Yeah. And you join yeah. with the ghost. Okay? And that's when it happens, bro. That's when you get initiated as the witch because fear doesn't rule you. It was more like fear rules the religious, it doesn't rule the spiritual person. I get that. Yeah, it was more like freaking madness and being in a perpetual state of war with the fuck is outside your house and you're dealing with the shit inside your house and you're going out for months and months and months until you get to the point where you start making the art and now you're making the art and now the shit's happening with the art. Now you're doing art shows and people are saying, hey, dude, I think your shit's possessed. It just moves. You know? That type of shit. And then I would just do a whole bunch of shows. I've done occult shows with witches, and the witches, they don't want to even go near my shit. They don't want to touch it. They say that shit comes from the void. Hmm. What's wrong with the void? The meeting with fear is that. Yeah, that, yeah I'm just know, joking. We're all into the void. It's the bank, bro. Did you, now, did you, did you, you gave this to me? Yeah, go ahead and keep it. Did Avi get one? I just want to make sure, if not, I was going to give out of this. That was created back when you visited me back in June. Oh, thank you. Because if you didn't, if, 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 if you don't, on the show? Yeah. if you're only yeah. looking to give one, I can give Avi money. I don't no, want to no, no, deplete no. your stock. I want, I want you to have one. Obviously, well, this stops raining, I'm going to go to my band. I brought more the dirt from uh, Oprah Cemetery. Very Bloody cool. Mary. I got it for you. There you go. Bloody Mary set. There you go. So, Avi, this is your... I, I, okay, what are you going to say? No, no, no. I was going to say, before, way before I started my art, when me and my dad did ghost hunting, we would go to this bachelor's grove and we bumped into a psychic that had a group. He was giving a tour of the cemetery. And he had these thousand rods. And he was making a big deal. I could cross the thousand rods. And my pops was like, I can do that too. I've been doing that since I was a kid. So he fucking crosses the thousand rods of fucking psychic, packs up to get the fuck out, and now his groups are looking at us like we're the psychic. You know, it's funny because people with thousand rods, it's like anybody could have crossed it. You yeah, lean yeah. forward, they fuck, you cross. You know, it's weird with stuff like that, dude. And I've come across a couple of people that were like that. You know, um, where that whole thing was like trying to sell somebody on just a little tool. Yeah, sure. You know, but then when they meet somebody that, you know, the, 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 the juju is really in them. You're like, it's in you. You didn't try to, like, oh, I'm going to make stuff. This was like you were going through some shit in the past. Yeah. And when the juju is in you, you know, people can sense that. I really think that they can sense that shit. And, uh, you know, like you were talking about, the the, the regular witches um, wouldn't come near this. And I know a lot of them that wouldn't either. I used to shop at a store. Um, I think it's out uh, in Lansing, Illinois now, but it's called Witchy Wearables. Mm. And they were all, like, wicked, like, like Magic Wicked. That, that was the first witch store I ever walked into as a teenager. I went to the shop for pentagrams and candles and shit like that. And um, I used to go in there and ask them, like, oh, where's the where's the black magic section? And they all look at me like this. Oh, you know, get you can't practice dark magic. And then I'm like, oh, boo. We're like, all I got is the satanic Bible, and I want more. You know, I'm here looking for the, where's the black magic section? And they were like, oh, no, not in this store. You know, we don't practice black magic here. And um, so it's one of those weird things where it's like, I, I know that, that the witches are scared of this. And when I start to look at those that call themselves witches that are like Wiccans and stuff, I feel like it's sort of that thing that we run into with people wearing the, the bath mat. It's like, oh, oh they, everybody's saying, oh, I'm a Satanist. They got on the bath mat, but they're really not. And it's like the same thing with witches where it's like, oh, if you're a real witch, you would understand the juju that's radiating off of this, you know. And I think that instead, they're still on, they haven't gone through the initiation of the meeting with fear because you would know that you could use this soda. If it's affecting you that strongly where you won't go near it, you should be like, oh, that's the thing. I, it, it's a working on me. You know, it's working for my psyche. I need that. You don't want the things that don't affect you. You don't want every, oh, I got 50 pentagrams, but I don't feel anything from it. You want the one that affects you. Don't you show Real fear, you, know that. you surrender. Exactly. Don't you what? Once you show fear, you surrender. Well, I don't know about that. Some say 
Some say the dog that lays on their back quick and shows that submission of fear gets the bigger bone. It's right. So we at the evening of part of the event because I had dressed in evening attire. <laughs> How are you? Now this is where we do this. This is, this, is this is where people start asking us if we'd like money. This is where you're like, what's the website so we can buy and support you? This is where that happens. Slowly you reach into your pocket. And you send shame, half of the available balance on your credit card. And just do that. And then you send the rest. To the other, yeah, that's right. To the other, to the other. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll look for my cup of coffee. Hey, I just got to say this one thing. I want to point something out here about Manor. Yep, down there. Down there. I got to point this out about Manor. How did you like this part? You must have. This is the part I got to point out in the interview. That is, the, you know, the, the twitty twisted, the nice thing. And then, hey, how you doing, motherfucker? She's mobster. Okay, she she mobster. You know how she does. Hi, Doug. Hi. You no, know, when she did that, it was great. She's like, yeah, you know from Doug. You see me now, bitch? You see me now? You see me now? Maybe you do see me, don't you? And now you're going to hear this. As strong, very intelligent as you've never been, bitch. How about, how'd you like that school? She just taps up. Doug? Hi. That way, right there, I'm like, oh, when she did that, I was like, she's like, hi, Doug. Let me get into this fucking door. <laughs> Well, I'd say, you know, I'll just get so much from you. Let me think back on that. Oh, I'm waking like an old man. Oh, shit. I used to have muscles. It's going to get weird in a minute. Why is it weird? It's not that you're going to get weird. It ain't weird yet. Why is that weird? So I got, is it so weird when the man says, I got muscles? Want to see that? <laughs> Let me tell you. No, I wouldn't say that. You see that? I used to have a really good like, triple size of this. It's his time. You're not smoking in here, right? Oh, no, I'm still home with it. Right, right. That's cool. Oh, Please there. Do. I'm Please do. I did, I'm just like, you know, I, don't, I can't smoke it. I can't smell it. Yeah, I know. But I can. <laughs> I plan on smoking. I want to smoke. I just want to, I, I can, I'm, I'm already, I'm I'm, uh, without the sleep, I'm sort of already on, on, uh, on a break out of line. Nah, I'm good. Yeah. I'll be right back. <laughs> John, I really love that you brought your artwork over, and I wish you would talk, keep, keep talking about ghosts and spirits to, to Avi, because uh, at some point... Uh, it's funny, because you missed the... We I can only listen. I can only listen in, in amazement. It, we know, had a, a little conversation earlier uh, about his dolls, and I was telling him a little bit of the history and stuff. Telling him me? No, I was telling oh. John. You know, you were in the oh, Okay, right, right, right. But, um, I mean, I think that it's incredible how what we're seeing repeated during this show is you're seeing how chaotic it is when magic happens. It's not planned. You know, um, the synchronicity is not always planned. It's like, it's raw. It's organic, and then it happens. And it's, it's sort of this thing where you need to document it because, um, and I teach this in, you know, a lot of, I, I've read books. You know, you make dolls, it comes out in books for you. And um, it, it keeps coming out as this thing where it's like, well, you have to, like, I'm, I'm showing people that even those that think they're atheists, like, no, nah, it's spirit that can happen. Like, if you, if you think you're an atheist, but then, then something unexplainable happens, and then they try to say, oh, it's just one thing that's like, there's no such thing as one thing. So, you know, and when you understand that, I just start to make those minute connections. You know, those little connections to stuff. And with your art, I saw it. The minute I saw you making a doll, I'm like, it's fucking possessed. And I was talking about possession. Did I talk about possession when you were here? Earlier. No, okay. Earlier. So, it's really actually a positive thing. It's not uh, like exorcist, you know, like Hollywood makes it like something negative. Possession is this thing where the spirit manifests and takes you over because... Your, it, it's time for your internal, like this is the best way I can describe it. It's time for your internal compass to 
show you which way to go. It already knows which way to go. You may not be aware of it, but that's when the kid's going to go, this way, dumbass, and then it happens. The, the art happens. You know, and it's like, you don't know, but it, it's there, and it's a beautiful thing, you know. And that's how it happens, dude. Um, with with the, the stuff you experience, with the trauma, that all of it can lead to a spiritual experience. And it's sort of that weird thing, like in my other book over there, I write about BDSM. And we, we were going to talk about it, but, uh, and I was going to talk about it with Shane, but with the BDSM, it's part of that. It's part of that uh, relationship of getting, like, of, of understanding that you can get into a, what, what I call the trans space to communicate with that subconscious kind of mind. Through that relationship, you can enter that trans so, Francis, you like, need bad relationships, you need drugs, you need anything to enter that trans state, you're still in training you. I can enter that trans state without three minutes like that. So, it's not fucking shit. Okay? So, that's so when, you get in a, you, when you get into a master position, you can fucking get into a trans state by just tickling your toe. You don't exactly. need any of this bullshit. shit. But exactly. these are training wheels is what I hear. That's what I hear when I hear. But I agree. I, I'm not saying you don't need training wheels. I'm saying that's what So I don't I don't always use the training wheels and that's that's kind of what I why I wrote the book. Because I talk about that. I'm like, yeah, you can do this with drugs and I talk about it, you can do this with drugs, you can do this with all this other stuff. But also there's another method where you can do this naturally. Don't need the drugs. Don't need to do all that other shit. It's a natural process of the human mind. And that's where it's coming that's what spirit is telling me. Like you need to explain this to people. You know, and because people so like have, don't have the mystical experience, don't have any spiritual experience, you know, like, oh, I'm an atheist. And spirit's like, no, you need to let them know that spirituality is a thing. And so now I'm in this weird situation where every time I see somebody, I instantly understand how spirit is trying to see. It's a weird fucking thing. It's like I can look at Shane's art and I go, yep, spirit was telling you to do this, spirit was telling you to do that, and I can see it all. And he'll go, no, it's not, I'm not. And I deal, that's my life, and everyone's you, telling me no. You know? Can I ask you, did the spirit help with this angle? Look at that shot. That's a, tool. It's a great, Sweet. it's a weird shot. It looks like a good one. <laughs> you don't want to slide or something. I'm going to slide now. I love the power. <laughs> Finally, we just got off really to the side. I was worried about that a little bit earlier. What do you think? Do you think I think I'm, I mean, if you disagree, say so. What do you guys so, think about the stuff I'm saying? Man? I'm talking to me. I felt like the start with the second okay. consciousness. You know, it was always... Excellent. When I dealt with my art in the beginning, it was like a power struggle. Am I going to let the art drive or am I going to drive? And occasionally I would just let the art drive if it's with the outcome. Maybe I would get these fucking art keys with me. I, would, I started noticing when I would let the art drive, I would get places. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like living life but enhanced. Oh, I love that. Living life but enhances my sculptures. Yeah. Bro. Love having you, buddy. You're an artist from for, for life. You never getting out of this fucking cage. And I love this. You're fucked. You're totally fucked, dude. I love you joining me in this whole fuck situation. You're like, yeah. As an artist, you're totally fucked, dude. <laughs> you're here though. <laughs> you know me. <either. laughs> I just love hearing you, man, because you are this guy. I'm with you. I'm that guy. We're fucked. <laughs> but. You're also right, like, we got a great second life for this alternative, this life booster. You know, we've got yeah. something going that no, a lot of other people don't have. There's an element of freedom that comes from this delay, Mark. Jerry Blankenship. Hello to Avi. I'm going to say Avi. Daffy isn't showing up. Oh, my God. Is that Jerry Blankenship? That's one of my That's one of my mentors. So he's, he's an older guy. He lives down south. He hosts this seance. You should bring him on. Let him talk to John. You should let him talk to John. Daffy isn't showing up on the Discord. Is that intentional? I don't understand what that means, though. But I, I'm confused by all of this. Maybe Daffy busy. I don't know what to say about that. Hey, Daffy, can you chime in? Can you tell me what that means? Maybe not. Maybe you're busy. Okay. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah. So Jerry's one of my mentors. He lives down south. Like out in the swamps down south in the spooky land for real, and he hosts seances at his house. People come over, and we host seances and let them talk to the spirits and they leave a donation. Jared, black and shit. Oh, let me tell you, the smart thing is to do when you're in this company of us is to leave a tip. You don't get this though. You know, what if we just decide at the end of this we're like, oh, we tapped into the little Satan's hut here, we've got it all going, the magic's moving. Why don't we just curse the whole fucking lot of them? They didn't send one dollar. That could happen. 
is possible. We haven't had sleep. Compassion and all reason starts to dissipate. I'm just saying, the tip jar is there. Could save the world. So I, I, I mean, Am I wrong, Avi? You're right. You're right. Because you might get upset. You might get mad. When it boils down, if we're talking magic and witchcraft, use it with intent. And that's it. Right. That's you all. might be driving home and going, no motherfucker to me any money. I did this on... And all of a sudden it goes, it's going. And, and next thing you know, you are watching, taking it in, this generosity. And then all of a sudden you're like, what happened to my wallet? Someone hacked into my account. And then you're going to go, fucking God, you got this. You're going to have the answer. I'm telling you. It's just, I'm not, it's not a threat. So, Jerry, and I would love to speak about here and speak a few words. He's a master storyteller. He's one of those master storytellers. And, um, I mean, the way that he is able to sit a group of people down and then have them all have a, a genuine spiritual experience is like nothing I've ever seen. Why don't you do that and I can listen? I, I, I don't know. Jerry, you there? And, uh, I mean, it's just like nothing I've ever seen. He's really, truly an elder, you know. Um, I like to sit down and, and listen to things he talks about and try to learn what I can from him about the stuff because he's been doing it. Like, that's his, his M.O. is, you know, helping people to have these genuine sort of spiritual experiences, you know. All right, so obviously calls in. I've sent a link to this. We'll see if he calls. Okay. I asked Jerry. He may, he's old, so he may or may not. I mean, he's older than uh, he's We don't want old. old fucking people on here. He's so <laughs> <for> young, <laughs> motherfuckers. He's old, but he's, but he's brilliant. I'm for, to have his yeah, well, you got young and brilliant here. We don't need older brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I love Jerry. He's, well, he's, he's family, you know. And uh, I've learned a lot from him uh, in, in regards to helping others to, you know, get towards that experience. The, the mystical experience, right? I think that's why um, we continue to go. It's like this all is a mystical experience, and you get that, you get that, that, that high, right? That buzz, that oh, you get on that wave. Like, oh, oh, it's you know what it now. is. I have an easy. You know? I have an easy. I'm creating that art now. So I'm, out of the I'm on the wave. You know. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I got a really good one. Striking art. Trip. It's like a, um, it's the performance, it's like a performance bus. When you go to that convention and you're there and it, it, you end up on, you feel the energy, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. It's kind of slightly different for me. For me, it's, it's, like, for me it's how, like I could be at a convention, thousands of people walk up to my booth. It's not so much the attention for me, it's the attention that they give the art. When they show the art, attention, fear, or anything, they're giving something that, that normally isn't really seen, you know, that energy. So now you're empowering something that doesn't really exist in this world, but since I gave it a physical form, you're feeding it now. So you're talking about a magical principle that some of, some people may not understand, and that's the creation of the, uh, you know, the dog baby oil. That's the actual thing that we give it life, we give it that energy, you know, uh, feed, feeding the art. So yeah, so, yeah. So when people come up to the art and they're defensive to it, or they, they, they fear it, or they give it that, you know, like when they give it fear, like they're afraid of the toilet paper demons. You know what I'm saying? When you give the toilet paper demon fear, you're giving an inanimate object life. Yeah. You know, you're giving it life, and you're giving it control over you. Because now you want to get all religious because you're afraid of the toilet paper sculpture. Exactly. That's what I was talking about when I was talking about the meeting with fear. You, to, to be truly initiated into the, the path, you have to get past the fear. That's the true initiation for the practice, is the meeting with fear. You know, and when you get past that, then you can get to trying to, to experience the mystery. But if, you, if fear is still in a way, you're not going to even step into the darkness. You can see. A lot of times I go to these horror conventions and they tell me my artwork's too quick and scary for them to even buy because they don't want it in their house. Yeah, I believe it. I've seen, um, because I share this shit all the time, you know, uh, because we're working as a team, 
I share it all the time. And when people see it, like uh, somebody posted, uh, I'm in this group called Strange Wisconsin, and um, somebody posted like a thing, oh, a little dog. And I was like, mine's better. And I posted the picture, and they were like, oh, shit, like, I don't want that thing near me. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one person popped up. was like, I like it. And I was like, here we go. Bing! All of it was worth it for that one person that was like, I like it, you know. Um, it, you have to do it, you know. It's like we have to, um, we have to scare them. You have to have the shock factor in order to reach the people so even that like, need it. That when you're dealing with a honey, when you're dealing with a honey in your house and you show the honey here, it's going to fuck up your life, you know. You can, you should wreak havoc on you, you know. So what I've done is I basically condensed the honey into these sculptures. You know, it's like... Portable now. It's not just in my house no more. It's in the sculptures now. I've given them their physical forms. Brilliant. And it's weird because the way you talk, like I said, uh, like you've given it life, and that's that's part of it. Like um, I'm making these uh, the bear and seventy pigeons of souls. And I'll, I'll pull one out, but I don't think I'm gonna get my bag right now. But I'll pull it out and show it to you. And it's one of those things where everyone, like, there's a lot of people out there that know about pigeons, but, but when you get this one. In your hands, when you see it, you go, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. This is something else. You know, and then when I show you how to work it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you too. When I show you how to work it, and you experience it, you're going to go, oh, yeah, okay. This was not, this is not at all, you know. It's weird. But right. when you start to um, really tap in and get the connection, and it starts answering questions, and you're like, oh, what the fuck, you know. Um, this is something else, dude. Um, the the mystical experience, that that mystery of life, that's where we where we uh, that's what inspires us to keep going. You know, and it's that that's that's what we aspire to. At least me, as an artist, I feel like that's what my job is to keep that mystery in place. You know, and I feel like um, the, atheist, the atheist wants to check. The fucking religious person wants to worship it. Me, I just want to keep the mystery alive. Hey, Jerry's calling. Ursula Le Guin says something very similar where she says that life would be unbearable. Life is only bearable because of the uncertainty. Mm. That's the only thing that makes life bearable. And I was like, holy shit, you're right. Because if I'm depressed, I'm like, I'm going to die. You know, but there's that ins- Maybe things will get better. Maybe it'll show a sign to that uncertainty at the sun will shine. Hey, Jerry. Hey, there's Jerry. Hey, Jerry, one second. Setting up this stuff. Hey, there's Jerry. Hey, Jerry, my name's Shane. Avi's coming right in to talk to you. Hey, Jerry. Hey. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right, sir. How are you doing? Oh, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I was telling, your mentor? Yeah, I was, telling, I was telling these gentlemen about how you live down south, and, and you really do a uh, whole seance of where people come over and you're able to guide them into having the mystical experience, you know. Yeah. And um, I just want I'm really, I'm happy to have you here to be able to talk about it, you know, because um, it's, it's better to hear from you. You're such a master storyteller. So please, if you could just offer a little bit about um, what that's like and tell them what you do down there and where you're from. Well, I'm from the Piney Woods of East Texas. I live in an area called Lake of the Pines. We, we're the gateway to the Louisiana Swamp and Bayou area. And uh, we're very rural. I hold sea oxys at my home. I do not advertise. Uh, it's all underground and spread by word of mouth been doing it for years and I have found that uh, the folks that enjoy seance are so much more open-minded to the world and have very little indifference to other people's opinions. And I have repeat folks that come back over and over again. And 
I do not know why exactly, but they do. So, Jerry, what he does uh, in his seance uh, is, is very traditional in what you would, uh, I guess, see in like a Hollywood movie, where the people get together, there's candles on the table, they sit around, they may or may not join hands, but then he has a crystal ball in the center of the table, okay? And then he, he has this incredible way of having asking the spirits to appear, and they do. And it's not something um, where, uh, I guess, it's the same for everybody, you know. Um, he, I, I spent a lot of time talking with Jerry, and, you know, the way he explains it is, like, some of the people come there, and they, they, they can leave in tears. It's so profound, you know. And can you speak on this a little bit, Jerry? Like, um, some, like... The seance that you host is it, sort of like um, it, it's a round table, and do, you know when people sit down to to, to host the seance, and and the experience that they get, okay, the mystical experience that they get. Um, can you speak on how profound that is for for people? Some some folks it is very profound, and I think to most folks it is profound. Let's face it, when when you see something appear, just appear from nowhere, it's pretty profound. Most people experience that in my seances. Not all, but some. So, would you say that um, that the experience that the person has? It might be relevant to um, maybe their their expectation, like you said, maybe maybe their expectation or open mindedness. The open minded person might be uh, have a stronger experience, perhaps. Yes. Uh, people, that, um, I we have to get this straight because I refuse to try and bring up someone's dead relative or loved one to talk to them. I refuse to do that. Uh, there are people that do and make a lot of money from it. <laughs> and that gives the Seahawks a very bad name. But uh, the experience is so profound to some people, I think it's because they're closed-minded to what we do and they think that this is all just a scam, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so um, with that in mind, you know, with the people that think it's, you know, a scam, I guess that's the atheist, you know, they're, they're in the other extreme where it's like, to them, life is a sham. You know, they can't realize that, that life is magic. You know, being here is a miracle. And um, I think that, you know, when we're talking about stuff like seance, you know, this is this is where it goes into the, the dark rituals. It's like, ooh, the seance, most people think of the Hollywood movie. But it's not really like that, is it? No, it is not like that. Uh, I hold very intimate seance. There are over six people. Now, I have uh, done it for a much larger audience. Like at the summit, you know, uh, I think there was probably 30 or 40 people there. In the, and a very high percentage of them had an experience that they were standing I mean, there were people standing around the walls, not even at the table that perceived it. But I think the key to it is for people to have to leave their subconscious at home, set it aside, and connect with the psyche rather than the subconscious. And because when you let your subconscious get in the way, 
you're going to start experiencing something and the old subconscious is going to come in and say, oh no. It's going to say, no, this, this, this can't happen. This is not happening. And it won't. It'll stop. So we've got to open that channel and put the subconscious to the side and go to the psyche. And we do that by a method called the Roxanne effect. And it has to be done not in totally darkness, but we do what we call a red seance with red candles and the reflection and blinking of the candles will bring on effects. And you have to talk with the folks and show them how to, we call that scrying, and you, you have to teach them how to do it before you do it, if that makes sense. Well, so many people have never even heard of what's called scrying. So scrying is, uh, and I'm going to speak on this a little bit. So scrying, for those that don't know, um, is an ancient practice. I mean, this has been around, we talk in ancient, ancient times before we even had like the wheel. We we're talking, they were scrying. And um, it's something that has been used to have the mystical experience forever that people have seemed to for, forgotten them. Like they've totally forgotten about it. And um, it, it's one of those things that has survived with underground, with the medicine people, with the shaman, you know, with the indigenous people. And Jerry, that's how, I feel like that's how he inherited it. And then died by a random stroke of the, the draw, the draw of the straw, synchronicity happened. And I ended up with, with Jerry as a mentor teaching me about these things, about the real seance, you know. And um, it's so incredible to know that, like, wow, people are actually gathering down south at someone's house and trying to talk to the spirits, you know. And uh, people don't don't even know that people are out there doing that. So when we talk about, like, uh, people wanting to, to consider themselves witches or practitioners, it's like, are we really doing anything besides just, you know, wishing to hope for stuff? And what Jerry is doing is profound. People leave his house in tears, like, oh, my God, there's more to life than I even thought, you know. And I think that's an incredible thing. Well, some, it does something, it opens opens people's minds beyond imagination. I, when I first started practicing this, I, I was amazed. I mean, I would get shook up uh, in amazement, really, uh, at what can take place if you really want it. I, uh, you, uh, there's a background of me talking after I talk. It's kind of <laughs> bothered me for some reason. Oh, is it the speaker? Oh, it is. The no, speaker echoing? Oh. Yeah, there we go. No, it's, I'm, I'm talking over there now. <laughs> is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I could. <laughs> it's, it's still, I, I, I'm still hearing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the speaker, it's the speaker. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I had. Uh, oh, no. That help? Hello? <laughs> See if you can hear yourself now. Yeah, yeah. Now. Can you hear us, Jerry? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you and I hear me too. <laughs> After the fact. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not really sure what's happening. We didn't. I don't know if that was on the same last call or I'm, 
I'm not really sure. I apologize that we can't fix that. I don't know how it started happening out of nowhere. But, uh, I mean, I appreciate you being here, Jerry, and doing this interview. I mean, I'm, we're having, I don't know how to fix the technical stuff, but I really appreciate you for coming on for this. You know, I know that you're having some issues with, with your health. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And, um, well, I, I, go ahead, go ahead. What did you say? Were you going to say something? Some, uh, somebody like somebody's talking to me. I don't know what the hell it is. Oh, can you hear me now? I wonder if you're somehow on Discord or something like that. I don't know. Maybe they're talking through. I don't know what the fuck just happened. Can y'all hear that devil talk in the background? No. We can't. I only hear you. It, it clicked in. I'm not sure what to it's say. Like We'll just it's like another off. Off. Yeah, we might have to cut it off and, and try it again or something. But I mean, I think we pretty much got the best of it. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about this stuff. Um, just to, to bring a, uh, another element of it in just so people can see that there's elders that do this stuff too, you know? Well, I enjoyed it, Hurley. And, uh, uh... Thanks, Jerry. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Hey. Thank you. Let me play some. While I work, I want to take a little show start. Um, hello, we are on the air. <laughs> um, you know, I want to start this. This is heavy, There's a lot there. And I'm going to have to film this intro in little bits while I'm working and walking and thinking about things. Because it's not easy to do off the cuff, as I normally do. You know, I'll start by apologizing for my ignorance. You know, 
I'm, and it's hard to do that right now. It's hard. It's not hard, and it is, because it's like you want to explain the context, the cultural context of 20 years ago. I want to sit there and explain myself. But rather than do that, because, you know, it's just the idea that I, there's, there's lessons to be learned throughout life. One thing I learn, one thing I think about when with this twenty-four hour radio show from twenty years ago, is that within Satanism, it's okay to hurt people, but it's it's, it's meant to hurt people that you don't like, that you know, it's personal. Saying some of the things I said on that show, these general names, these derogatory terms you know it hurts such a large swath of people so it just doesn't make sense as far as a Satanist does it goes it's not doesn't make reasonable sense to do those things you know but you know and I can sit here and explain myself all day long and I will but I just want to make that clear like and I'm glad I'm actually glad everyone that this is this has grown into such a big thing it, you 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 you're calling it out, and and that's important. A lot of people out there are upset by it. I've got a lot to say about this, obviously, and I will go on. I'll talk about more. Like I said, I'm going to put this together as I go walk around and do my thing and like, do my put my grommets on my gear and shit like that. So we've got a lot of time here. We got 24 hours to spend, right? I'm going to hang out. Avi's going to be here with me after this beginning of the show. Avi's here now, actually. You know, as this is pre-recorded and playing, though, we're both here hanging out, waiting for this to get done. But I think uh, it'd be... I should tell you a little bit, like, here, you know, this... The idea that, that that radio show grew into the Satanic Temple is wrong. That radio show grew into a book and movie that my partner, Amy, and I did. It was called uh, Suffering and Celebration of Life in America. That's from where I... You know, the Suffering and Celebration of Life in America and the project A Year at the Wheel that me and my partner went on was the extension of the Might Is Right 24-hour radio show and those Radio Free Satan shows. Those shows, the extension of those shows became that book and movie Suffering and Celebration of Life in America. Now, all that stuff is up on archive.org and you can go find it. But that's where I was like, we're going to go test our philosophy. You know, much like I had the idea for the Might Is Right show. Like, this is the production, I put it together and we do it. And, but... That doesn't mean all three of us didn't do it. It's just I'm saying, I'm just letting you know how it went. It's not even like I'm taking I'm taking my credit because that's how it goes. But I was a publisher producer back then. I still am. And I put the show together. You know, I was like, yeah, let's do this to promote this book I'm putting out. You know, Might Is Right with Anton LaVey. Let's do this. Let's do this 24-hour show. It's 9/11. Let's let's fuck around with controversy, heavy subjects. This was three years after 9/11. The buildings came down 9/11. So this was three years after. So it's or two years after something like that. So it was fresh. It was heavy when we did the show. People were, you know, angry as angry. They were as angry then for that show being on 9/11, without hearing any of the show as they are today for other things. So, but I like doing it on 9/11. I still like doing it on 9/11. What a great holiday. Um, not just I, I don't I. Violent, horrible deaths are not cool. You know, I don't want one. No one wants one. So, as much as, you know, the younger me might laugh at that stuff, you know, I think we do that because we're afraid. You know, anyway, getting back to this radio show that we did 20-some years ago. Um, it's something, ain't it? There's something else. There's something else how that survived. There's something else how that radio show survived. That 
marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what Hello. I suppose I should start this with uh, both an apology and a thank you. You don't apologize for hurting people's feelings that I didn't mean to hurt. I think that's the biggest problem with within Satanism, generalizing any group and, and, and terrorizing them with a word. Because that's what that does. It terrorizes people when you use these words that have terrorized them their whole fucking life. That was 20 years ago, as of today. You learn a lot in 20 years. But you don't always learn enough. So I thank the people that had constantly come at me over the last, let's say, decade, something around that time. We're going to go over all this in detail in the 24-hour show, but enough people came at me where I would just defend this thing, you know, like, I, and, I, and I can, and I, but that's not what this is about, this intro. That's not what this is about. So you come to me and, and challenge me and talk to me about this and harangue me and I thank most of those people I think most of them uh, the, <laughs> it was wild because the ones who helped me the ones I, I mean I, I thank y'all I thank most of you I mean the, there, there's a few few out there that are using what I created with ill intent and, and I'm going to get into that too in the 24 hour show but I want to thank the witches that surrounded me when I started to break away from things. And this started 2015, 2014, 2016. It started after my road trip, a year at the wheel road trip, and when I landed on a beach and I didn't talk for a year. But I'm going to get into all this on the 24 hour show, too. The witches surrounded me. Witches came to me. And they weren't necessarily looking to protect me, they were looking to understand what the fuck was on my mind. And throughout that process, in 2019, I left everything I love, which was one-third of that 24-hour radio show. And when I did that, I was totally out of my fucking... I, I'm not going to say I was totally out of my mind, but I was in a lot of emotional stress, straits, a lot of problems, a lot of, lot of stuff. And I'm going to explain that on this show, too. Best I can. The idea is these witches surrounded me in a time where I was very, I was on my fucking knees, I was broken, and I didn't know what to do. I was lost for the first time in my life, and I hadn't any will, and these witches surrounded me. But they didn't necessarily surround me to help me or to hurt me. They surrounded me because what witches do is they collect the information. And they wanted to know what I knew, why I was doing what I did, and all this stuff. One of the witches that came to me was a witch called Nanaro. And it was interesting when Nanaro, we eventually did a podcast called Speak of the Devil together that she encouraged me to do. But she came to me and started talking to me when I was at my worst, in my worst state of mind. And she came to me and talked to me about music. And as our relationship grew, she thought it was funny that everyone was so afraid of me or would talk about me or have all these things to say about me, but had never approached me. She was asked me, she says, has anyone ever come to you and asked you why you did this? or? What was your motivation behind that or anything? I'm like, no. None of these, none of these say that they, they don't talk. No, no. I, I wonder that myself. These media people go on and on about this stuff and they're not coming to the source. They're going to one of my lackeys or whatever. 
And so she just started, Nana started talking to me about stuff. And then she's like, you know, Shane, I think you should get your side of the story down on this podcast. And so she was instrumental in bringing that out of me and having me talk about this stuff. But during our exchanges, Nanarol helped me understand how this, the, 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 the 20, 20 year old Might Is Right show had survived, how much it has a life. And she explained to me how it was being interpreted by so many people. And again, I'm going to explain to you how I didn't even know this. I, did, I, I didn't know any, I didn't really understand the, how big everything had gotten. There's a lot of reasons for that, but it mainly is like survival. You know, you, you're trying to survive a moment in your family life. And you're just paying attention to love and life. So I didn't really understand how this stuff had been, had gone crazy. And out of control. Out of control. Is totally out of control right now. And that's what this is. The idea here is to bring things back into context. Into my, into context. Like, it, the, the idea of this is not even to bring it into context. What is your context? I don't fucking know. But this is about regaining my narrative. The guy who started the 24-hour show. The guy who was the, the one person who published Might Is Right back then. The person who went to LeVay and said, I want you to fucking write this forward for me. Or I'm going to tell the world that Nazis influenced your book, bro. I'm going to tell them you took all that right. You know, you, you, That's me. So this is my fucking narrative. It's not Doug's or Amy's. They have their own. They were part of this. But this isn't theirs. This is mine. I directed this. And I'm going to direct it now. But I can tell you, there's a lot, a lot to this story. A lot of it I'm going to let go here. But there's some pretty saucy parts that I'm going to let go in a book or later on. Y'all should know out there, though, like, squirrels above me. You know, I did, I do, I do, you know, I'm working with people. I'm working with people help me write a book and stuff like that. So, hopefully that all happens and, and you get this stuff. I made sure all, any evidence I have is in secure hands in case something happens to me. You could only hope that gets out that then, after. So, but until, anyway. My point, like, yeah, I got less fucking hair than I did 20 fucking years ago. You gonna give me grief for that? You wanna make fun of that shit? What the fuck are you gonna say to me? But, I just want to thank the people that came and asked questions. That's what I'm saying here. We're inquisitive and wondered the nuance of a moment, a static moment in my life. That is, my life is not static, but that moment is. And I appreciate the interest, and I appreciate how how things have grown a bit. You know, I, I appreciate as much interest as there is in Satanism, which I consider just philosophy or thought or you know the idea that we're going to think think be reasonable and talk about things and think things through and and those are the people who came to me I believe are the, like the real Satanists the ones I would believe are like like I, what I understand I know what a Satanist is because I I don't know knew Anton LaVey and I knew all the people he was making priests back in the day so it was like this is how it would go we might say something that offended one of us but we'd have a reasonable exchange behind it you know what's going on here try to understand, oh, this guy's drunk, or this guy's got this problem, or this, it, they come from this background, or it's, of course they're going to talk like that, they're ignorant, you know, and, and so, when those, I just thank those people, because they brought me back to a reasonable exchange, or someone trying to understand or hear what I had to say, I do thank Joseph, the gentleman behind Satanic Delco, and the Hell Satan podcast, I think, is the deal with him. Um, he's the first person within that satanic community that was, like, inquisitive and tried to do a journalistic endeavor and talk to me, you know, like, ask me questions. 
And it's a shame he was attacked afterwards because he's gained my trust. I'll talk to him more. He can get more answers for you. And see, as Satanists, we want those answers. We want that information. I don't see. That's where I'm suspecting. We're gonna get. We're gonna go through all of this. All of this. I'll get in detail. But that's where I think. How's my hair? I know it's, it's, it looks better when I got the botin and botin spray. It's fluffy. Anyway. I think that's where you should, you might want to be skeptical is when people are like, don't read that, don't talk to that person, shun that person. Those are, those are Christian things. Anyway, I appreciate Joseph from Satanic Delco. And two people that are really fucking sparks. You want to talk about the prairie fire. These two are two of the sparks that are going to... Claudia and David from the Infernal Church, which is basically a study group on Satanism, at least what they sold me on. And I really appreciate these youngsters. They come to me and they redid a 24-hour radio show like I did. And they, they're, they're like, oh, this, and they have me on at the end to talk to me. And they're really nice and very, co they're very cool, and, but they were smart. They were reasonable. They went for it. They asked those questions. It was a good time. So, so I really appreciate the youngsters from the Infernal Church. And uh, I, yeah, I really appreciate because those two youngsters, Claudia and David, really sparked. Like they're like this 20th, 20th anniversary, and like I didn't know. I'm 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 so busy trying to get my life back together. And I was like 20th anniversary. Hmm. And as they're talking to me about it, I'm like, and I hear what they understand about it, and how this is being interpreted, and how other people are looking at it, and how other people are listening to this. I'm like, this really needs to have this. People are wrong. You're wrong about the evolution of that that. That project, you're wrong about where that project went. What, what my conclusions were to it, are very different than what Doug's conclusions were to it. Like I said, there's someone creeping around. I don't know what the fucking deal is. I'm gonna stop. Okay, I'm back. But I just want, you know, I I thought it was important for me to start this show with this. And it's pre-recorded. There might be some other clips. I'll pre-record this fucking thing five different times probably. You know, so it might be have some edits. But I thought it was important for me to start that. Start this with the idea that I, I do apologize. You know, had I know then, what I know now, you know, it's just one of those things. But the idea is that everyone should try to do what I did. That's the crazy part about what I'm going to say here. I think you should all try to do exactly what I did and make fucking huge mistakes. Try to make something happen. But making mistakes isn't a big deal. It's how you deal with them. That's the big deal. And when you're younger, you shouldn't be afraid of saying something that's going to upset people or saying something that might carry with you 20 fucking years and you're going to have to explain it then that shouldn't stop you express yourself as whole there's a lot to expression and it's it doc basically artists we document what's going on around us so we tell the real history versus the history that's written in by rich men so when you know and i do see what i do as art i if you look at the three of us there's the artist there's the whore and there's the politician. The whore is generous. The artist is an ima it, it, it has an imagination. And the politician is greedy and manipulative, a liar. I am not the politician nor the whore. The whore is generous. The artist is, has an imagination, the heart. You know, 
And uh, the politician's a fucking liar. Okay? You should know that. I want to sign out now. Spend almost 10 minutes. I'm sitting here with you. We got 24 fucking hours to spend, huh? What else should I sit there and go on about with you? I don't know. But I guess we're going to find out. Aren't we? I'm thankful that you're watching this, though. I'm thankful that you paid attention to the first one so much. I am. And I'm thankful you cared enough to communicate about it. That's what art does, too. And I know there's a lot of early work about me, interviews and stuff, where I talk about I wanted to... I wanted to create the worst fucking things. I wanted to create things where people's beer would be taken away from them. Their drugs would be taken away from them. Their TVs would be taken away from them. I wanted every fucking thing to be taken from you motherfuckers until you did something about poor people and how we live. And so back then I did want to cause a lot of hate, pain, anger, all of it. And it's just not hate to one person. Hate, fucking hate of everything. Okay, I wasn't limited. I'm going to talk more about this in the podcast. But all that stuff was purposeful. We were part of the aesthetic terrorism movement. We were looking to terrorize people aesthetically. And I think as a young artist, when you're 20-something, 30-something, you're making artwork... You lie about your intentions, maybe. Or your intentions look different because you're part of this cool group. We're all part of this woke group or whatever you want. I love woke, by the way. That's garbage. You know, a conversation about that is garbage, too. But, you know, whatever you're part of these communities and you all think you're thinking the same or you all like, yeah, we're cool. And then you see as people get older, like, you know, I'm in my 50s now. There's no artists left. They all went on to become dentists or fucking whatever they went on to be. They didn't take the vow of poverty and pain to be an artist and go through life not wondering where you're going to get your fucking mail, you know, uh, that, to make their own way. And so they went somewhere else. But you're there at this age and you're able to see what was your real intent? What was your real intent when you went and did that art project when you were 20 or 30? And you see it here. You see it with anyone, like, you hear like, I don't know, I hear... A basketball player, they make a lot of money. And one of them, I think, I don't know his name, but he started making schools, opening schools and shit. Like, boom, dropping that shit down. Some guy, like, yeah, I'm going to retire. I got all these, I got $100 million from basketball. I'm just going to quit and, and start a farm and start making money, raising food to give it to poor people. I'm like, that's what you fucking do, yo. Like, you, that, or, or, well, that, it shows your intent. You know, when you see the people with all this money and they talk about, like, like Jay-Z, I think he talks about, He's not a capitalist. He's talking all his shit. Look at all the fucking shit that guy has. Okay? He just spends all his money on crazy shit. Like that guy will go out and spend $100,000 in a night. The fuck? How do you do that without feeling bad? Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. And I think... As far as I go, and the person who did all of this shit, if you look at my career, before the mind game started... Before the process church style mind game started, if you look at my career, it doesn't have a lot of hate in it like, like uh, I'm positioned and like most will see me now because of a static moment in my life that has been weaponized. So now when I walk in the room, all people do is hear that word and hear these words and hear that. Who's that hurt? You have to think about that. Whose feelings does that hurt? I mean, and as far as that goes, it also opens up the idea that I'm going to be praised by those people that are haters in that way. You know, so it's like, how does that serve? How does that serve? You know, weaponizing that stuff. Anyway, thank you for joining us, okay? I appreciate you're here. We're going to start streaming live now. And when we do, we may have hiccups. We may go off the air, we may go on the air, we may fly all around the internet. We may be on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We don't know how this is going to go. But when we get going on this, when we start, 
you can keep track of everything and we will record all of this and we will put it up on archive.org okay we'll take care you know we'll make sure that this is archived so you don't have to stay 24 hours but you know it's a lot fun if you stay the whole 24 hours right you know it's a lot more fun right right stick around and um we're gonna do a raffle we're gonna raise you know we're we're we're, we're going to um we're going to uh raffle off thousands of dollars in occult items you know try to pay for Avi's got to come down you know gas money shit like that to do these things isn't cheap and we're artists so you know we're always looking to make some money to pay a light bill or something so just stay tuned we'll have some fun shit happening I suppose not all of it's going to be archived so stay tuned that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... You know... About my... partners on this... the last 20-year-old recording... About my actual partner, you know, it's hard for me to, yeah, she may have sacrificed more than any of us, not that there was an us that sacrificed, well, my partner and I did, but it was willingly, it was joyous, and it was to change the world, or perhaps just take it out on the world the pains of growing up poor and wanting more and 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 can't, and, and that's it you know but i do uh hello i do um have a i love my partner and I'll probably always have a love for her. I'm very angry about a lot of stuff between us personally. But our creative output, individually, as well as together, should talk more about our intent than this one static moment in our life. I know when everything was going down and me and my wife hit the road, she wanted to deal with issues of global catastrophe, global warming, mountaintop removal. She was into the dirt. She was into saving the planet, the environment. Me, I was looking at human rights, my rights, my freedoms, the humanity's freedom. So I was looking into shit like that, you know, and that's that's where the trip went, the road trip that we went on after a year at the wheel. We had some bumps in between there, the 666 Eve, Pleasures of the Flesh Baby, all this good stuff, horns, all that good shit, but make no mistake, me and my ex-partner had a good time in our suffering for a good chunk of that time probably half of our time together but again I don't know if anyone has sacrificed as much I should say I don't know if we suffered but we sacrificed that marries art with fashion but is it really art or is it just another fashion fad and what My other partner on the event, Doug, Doogie, his intent is shown in his world too. I think if people follow his work from that Might Is Right special to his 
to his his today um, as a tourist guide for Salem, Massachusetts. Probably will officially be employed by the Chamber of Commerce of Salem, Massachusetts soon. Running the annual holiday parade. Okay? But I want you to look at his art output versus mine or my or Amy's. You should judge us on our art and our complete catalog. But you'll notice after the 24-hour radio show my partner and I went on to 20 years of making artwork. Doug went on to learn how to be a politician and how to take ideas, culture vulture, how to change ideas so they're palatable to his Ivy League friends. Basically, he's learned how to be a lawyer. And lawyers how to know how to play with words. They, they, they don't lie, but they ain't telling the truth. Doug is also a fan of control, fascism, the Roman Empire, shit like that. We're definitely not the same in our political belief. ...that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... You know, there might be one person that sacrificed, my ex-partner, she may have sacrificed the most out of all of us. I think history will might be saying that, but who knows? I just know that my partner did sacrifice a lot to bring forward ideas that she thought could bring more freedom to humanity. But when we went on our year at the Wheel Road Trip, her interest was mountaintop removal, dirt, environment, and cool shit like that. Mine was on human rights and the freedoms that we have, and the, what, the suffering that cause, is caused by lack of freedom. So mine, my, my goal was more human rights, stuff like that. And that's where the project slanted, because it's my project. But no, our intent in life shows in our work, shows in a lot of our work. And the sacrifices that we both made and endured also show in how we carry ourselves today and any of the mental illnesses we may have picked up along the way. Because those sacrifices were not easy, but they were fun. Don't get me wrong. Me and my, my ex had a lot of good a lot of good times. She's fun. And she's serious about her politics and where she wants to see the world go. And I appreciate that about her. I don't, of course, appreciate the war we have between us. And that's a whole different concept. I'm going to segregate that those attitudes uh, that feeling and go and talk to you about the artist I know, the person I know and the person that I helped fruit into an artist the person I got from my plastic factory and saw potential in and, and nurtured it I don't know where her politics lie today and I don't even think we agree on things politically I just know that our intent back then was environmental and human. It wasn't political. That marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... I know what you want. Oh, sure, they may have tried to separate us, but what we have is too strong, it's too powerful. I mean, after all, we shared everything, you and I. I told you my deepest, darkest secrets. I showed you exactly what people are capable of. 
I shocked you with my honesty, but mostly I challenged you and made you think. And you trusted me, even though you knew you shouldn't. So we're not done, no matter what anyone says. And besides, I know what you want. You want me back. Of course, some believed everything and had just been waiting with bated breath to hear me confess it all. They're just dying to have me declare that everything said is true and that I got what I deserved. Wouldn't that be easy if it was all so simple? Only you and I both know it's never that simple, not in politics and not in life. But you wouldn't believe the worst without evidence, would you? You wouldn't rush to judgments without facts, would you? Did you? No, not you. You're smarter than that. Anyway, all this presumption made for such an unsatisfying ending. And to think it could have been such a memorable send-off. I mean, if you and I have learned nothing else these past years, it's that in life and art, nothing should be off the table. We weren't afraid, not of what we said, and not of what we did, and we're still not afraid. Because I can promise you this. If I didn't pay the price for the things we both know I did do, I'm certainly not going to pay the price for the things I didn't do. Oh, of course, they're going to say I'm being disrespectful, not playing by the rules, like I ever played by anyone's rules before. I never did, and you loved. Anyhow, despite all the poppycock, the animosity, the headlines, the impeachment without a trial, despite everything, despite even my own death, I feel surprisingly good. And my confidence grows each day that soon enough you will know the full truth. Wait a minute. Now that I think of it, you never actually saw me die, did you? Conclusions can be so deceiving. Miss me? Satanism is less than free will. It's a duality to be good or evil. It's an ugly beauty. It's a baphomet. It's duality in its simplest form. It's... It's me. It's time to forget the spirit and embrace the flesh. As we enter the age of undoing, I'm here to undo the idea that Satanism is a religion. It is not. It is a philosophy. Religion is where thought goes to die. Religion and its rules are dead, and Satanism is alive and well. Satanism is a fluid thought that erodes constructs. Satanism, much like the Satanist, cannot be nailed to the wall. It is not a team sport. It is not. And if you join something in the name of Satan, you've been tricked. Undo that shit. You can expect an undoing of years of, of doing of shit that shouldn't have been done. We're gonna curse the fuck out some shit. We're gonna spread some blood across the stage. I'm gonna be performing my fucking soul out. Everybody has a misconception that it's about, oh, this evil 
monotheistic fucking being that's going to harm you and hurt you. It's about evil energy. No, it's about the it's pure self love and being able to love yourself and being okay with yourself and, and being able to persevere through your life without having the restrictions that man is indoctrinated into you in your mind as you've grown up. We've all been indoctrinated from the time we we're born to the time we die. We're indoctrinated. We're taught a certain type of way to think. That is the way to break free of that thought and be the adversary, be the one, you're the opposition at that point because you're going against everything you've been taught to teach yourself something, break free from that. Now, as we enter the age of undoing, what are you going to undo? Think it right now, as we gather on this wall purchase and harvest the energy that we are all sharing. Undo that shit. Whatever it is that you need to undo, undo that shit. Sabbath, an event put on by Shane Bugby. Uh, it's a uh, sa satanic event. There's going to be a black mass. I mean, uh, some of you who don't understand Satanism, maybe it's a Shane Bugby. Uh, it's a uh, sa satanic event. There's going to be a black mass. I mean, uh, some of you who don't. Helicopters surrounded us, man. that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... Hey, look at oh! that. Oh! Let's get it. Round four, fights! Okay, look at that. I love this angle, how it's tilted. <laughs> you know, it's what you you're the tallest it. guy in the room. You can fix it, though. <laughs> I, well, I know, I, I know, I, I, I know that, but sure. no, I feel it, like you're doing the Chuck, that you're doing the uh, Steven Seagal thing, where he makes himself look really tall, but he's like this fucking. No, it's just accent, but I like it. Yeah, but that, that's what I'm saying. It's working out great because the tall guy is the short guy now. I love that. That's right. <laughs> he's doing the Seagal move. Oh, I am always big on screen, <laughs> or pay me more. Yeah. You small motherfucker. <laughs> it's not I easy. I talk too much shit. He's it's a not guy. even he's working with such small motherfuckers. Bar. These oh, guys are Steven very Seagal. small. <laughs> They're very small. These people around me are very small. Give me a pin so I can... Watch it. <laughs> we got nothing to say. Is anyone going to call in or anything? How about how about that? Let's, let's... Nah, they're all dead. Let's see, I, I'm going to put this out there. You know what? I'm going to send this to one of my friends. What do you have to say for yourself, Avi? I think this is turning into something really great, dude. I don't... I think this has really been a this could be the This could be the downhill slide where it all sucks. No. Everyone's like, whoa, well, man, no. they had something, no. and we're waiting for it, and then they just like, that was it. The toilet paper fucking deal. No. He brought demons into the place. No. Nope. They consumed our fucking head. They we came through even, the nostrils. We didn't even get started. We're going to talk about some more conjuring the demons in just they a They came minute. through the nostrils. What am I looking for we're again? make sure that we talk a little bit more about it, yeah. Let's go, my guy. Call in. I'm trying to get some people up in here.
All right. I, I don't know who else I want to ask. I got, a, I got a crow. What time is it? Eight. So it's five p.m. Nine. No, no, it's five p.m. So it's ten, eleven, twelve, one in the morning. See, no, the guy, my guy. Have you heard the new Cripple Black Phoenix? Has anyone heard my introduction on there? It is approximately five thirty. Central American time. How about that? Have you heard the new Cripple Black Phoenix? I am willing to do something very awful right now. I wonder if it'll take down the stream. That would be neat. Uh oh. I'm going to play my introduction. It's very awful that I'm playing it in front of you because it's like. Nice knowing you. I don't really want to play it in front of you, but I'm going to. Yeah, better not. I don't want to look. Can they hear it? I hope they can hear it. If you're going to play it. It's my thing. It's not a He's hearing it for the first time. Good. What do you think of my incantation? The incantation for the different and the dead. Steve Jobs told us to think different. That motherfucker didn't warn us that thinking different, being different, living different, loving different could get us killed. It does get us killed. Think different. If you're rich and born silver spoon up your ass. Lucifer rising, protect the dreamer, the seer, and all the different. Beware the dreamer who dares living the dream, their dream, and because you have taken life on in a beautiful flight of feeling, fellow dreamer, they will read us from afar and hurt us if close. And the Salem witches all had Aspergers, or some yet to be determined difference. So they burned. They will burn the witches. They will burn the different. And the different have powers. Those who hunt us and hurt us will never know. And they fear us, and they should. They, the graceless, survive by our grace. Those who are different carrying those who are not. We pull them to the future again and again. We rise high, only to pluck from the sky. Now tired, watch your world burn. Those who have different have lost their grace. And we make your food too. Poison smile, your judgment, your doom. Satan, show those who are all the same. Shame, a shame so deep it drags a razor across their throat by their hand. Shame on you, says the smile of Elijah McClain. Hey, look at this. I'm going to have both, we have two callers on at once. <laughs> What's whoop, up? Whoop, whoop. T Tamerlane, is that how we say your name? Greetings, Greetings yeah, buddy. buddy. How, how you doing? How you doing? Very good, good. Cameraling, you know, you have to really check out dude's TikTok. That's what I'm going to say right away. But this is a, sat <laughs> a satanic ruler of Florida. He rules, I think, the entire state of Florida. Maybe it's just a peninsula, but he basically is a satanic ruler. Definitely, at least, at least South Florida for sure, my man. Right, you're looking good, man. You're looking good. How are you? I'm all right, man. Thanks for the invite. I appreciate being a part of this. Well, I thank you, and Avi, I'm sure, is appreciative, too, you know. Welcome, dude. Thanks for being on hey, here. Hey, Claudia. Claudia, you're joining in. Claudia's on here. I'm letting her. I'm, Claudia, are you there? Let me get you. Add to the right. Whoa. Get this one done. How do I get this one off? Let's fold those. Wait, I, I'm, I'm figuring this out. Come on, guys. All right. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, what did it one at a time. You know what? Everyone call back. <laughs> Here we 
go. No, no, and that's not what Shade I want. Shade is so raw. He just logs Claudia. Claudia! One at a time. Just answer them one at a time, brother. All right, one at a time. Claudia has muted themselves. You walk in the dub. Uh oh. I think Claudia's sending a curse. We heard that, Claudia. Hey, man. Are you there? Tamerlane, are you there? I don't know. Am I? Oh, here I am. <laughs> I, I am there. How are you? Here. <laughs> Doing evil, my man. Doing evil. Um, very good to see you. Very good to hear you. So yeah, let, yeah. I, I love that we're getting calls now. Joseph Rose from, have you ever listened to the say, Hail Satan podcast? I think I have heard that before, yeah. Yeah, well, he's on there. He's, how do we call in? Wow, 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 wow. That's pretty cool. He's a cool dude, this guy. Um, Tamerlane, like I said, is a ruler of floor. This is Reverend Avi. Nice to meet you. Hello, Reverend. I'm going to go ahead and share this uh, on my page, too, right? This YouTube, uh, YouTube link here. Yeah. This is awesome. Spread so, the word. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So... Let's start. To, we, you know, have you? Are you familiar with the older, po the older show that we're doing the 20th anniversary for? No, it's, it's just all new to me. You sent me. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to talk about that. Sent me a little invite. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about your 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 idea, your your uh, your involvement with Satanism. You're an, you're an actual satanic, what what uh, uh, a public Satanist. You go out there and 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 harass people. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna let Joe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have. We're gonna have another guy on the call. Joseph's calling in. We're just putting him on. Right on. Guest in the green room. There he is. Hey, we have three people here. Whoa, this is wild. I love streaming, bro. <laughs> this is the greatest. Wow, this is so cool. Yeah, this is a, it's a cool venue you got here. With this, whatever this. I'm thing telling is. you. Well, the last the 20 year old one, we're doing audio, and this is this is the the dream. Like I'm looking at Joseph over there. And Tamerlane from Florida, look at the East Coast is representing. This is fucking awesome, dude. That's Joseph from <laughs> Satanic Delco and Hell Satan Podcast. Fucking all rad, right, dude. What's right. up? What's up? It's crazy meeting everybody, dude. This is what this is the power of the of, of where we exist now, the internet shit, you know? It is. For sure. The connection sounds crazy right now, but I'm gonna try and straighten it out if I can. <laughs> oh, it does on yeah, we sound bad? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like super like robot, robot choppy. choppy. Right now. right now. Will you turn off all those fans? Mm. That could be your I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot. It's, it's, a, it's a connection thing. Okay. Yeah, on my end, it sounds all right. Just leave it. It's a connection thing, they say. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, great yeah. to see you. So Tamerlane's not familiar with the, the, the controversial 20-year-old yeah, what, what show. What are we doing here? Yeah. Well, Joseph understands what the show is. I guess it lit fire in the world, and I was unaware <laughs> until recently that uh, yeah. I, I, un I understood that there was something, you know, these certain chunks of it was weaponized or used the, but when I looked over the, I don't know if I told you this, Joe, oh yeah, the last time we spoke, I hadn't really looked over that, the podcast, that, that controversial one from 20 years ago, for 20 years almost, so yeah. when me and Avi started doing it, Avi started to listen to it, and he's like, hey dude, this is really fucked up, and so I looked at the entire, the entire work, and I was like, oh okay, I, I get why people are, won't stop, you know, <laughs> this, this is pretty heavy, heavy shit and so there you go joseph i you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah people uh, uh people love to talk about it that's for sure yeah but they only talk about one part of it it's it's sort of this weird weird uh and this is all due to the tamerlane to bring you up to speed like it's about might is right the book and i'm not sure if you understand levey lifted some I was, chunk I was yeah, I was trying to read between the lines there and of course it uh, attracted the type of people that you didn't want to attract right well, I didn't know. I was more of a, almost like a Joseph thing. thing. It was a journalistic endeavor, a theatrical endeavor. It's not excusable. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But as an artist, I'm not like. A, yeah, we had Nazis on there. I let it. I let it fly, and then I let, you know, some ignorant shit fly out of my mouth. Um, that I'll be right back. I'm going to try to fix the connection. Thanks, Joseph. Tamerlane, that that entertained everyone around me. So it's you know sort of like people. Are, you know, it's a stupid moment in my life. So, but it, it got weaponized to the point 
these moments, these really small moments, these stat, this one day in my life where it's, it's listed, it's, it's lasted till 20 years. And when I look back on it and I saw how, how I could see now, look, I top tier Nazis on there and shit, like people motivated death, yeah. violence. So I'm like, you know, I got to address, I got to put the cap on this bottle, you know. And so that's what this is so, somewhat about, but it's also not about that. It's about the, what Avi, you know, Avi teaches in, in with demonology, demon, say, demonism, 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 yeah. and and so it just became something organic that started moving together after you saw the Stanton thing break loose. When Stanton had been racial, and that's you know, it all broke loose. And things. yeah, that wasn't was that wasn't pretty. No, no. So how do you see Satanism modern Tamerlane? Well, I mean, you know. For myself, at the very least, uh, I have to speak of Anton because without him, I don't think I would be who I am today. Because uh, besides, you know, Anton's uh, involvement with uh, our dear, our dear Lord Satan, uh, he was an entertainer, and uh, and I I, uh, I respect that, and so I find myself also in the realm of entertainment. So. I have to give my hat off to Mr. LeVay for all that. So where does Satanism end up in today's modern day? I mean, it's probably more important than ever because uh, uh, it's important for the individual not to get lost in the crowd and not to get uh, shuffled along with the rest of the sheep. Although I hate using the term sheep because uh, the right also loves to use that as well, right? <laughs> a lot of our, yeah, a lot of the uh, older terms have been co-opted to the point we have to come up with something else. co-opted. Yeah. Right. Sheeple. Stuff. Man, I'm like, when I hear that sheeple shit all the time, I'm like, I used to say that and I used to love it. I used to say, yeah. you sheeple. And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, no. You have to stop yourself, right? And, there is a lot from my true. past that I'm like a little embarrassed about, and a lot of it has to do with modern times. Like, had it not grown into this, it might have been laughable, but it's like right, terror, right, right. terrorism at this point. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, again, for myself, you know, I've, I've, I've been a follower of LeVay since the 80s, um, but for me to come out of my, my villain armoire, if you will, it was, you know, an important time. It was... Uh, 2011, and we had Anonymous, we had uh, the real life superhero movement going on, which encouraged me to identify as a real life super villain. Uh, we also had, of course, uh, the, uh, the Satanic Temple, which I know we have, um, you know, everyone has mixed feelings on them, but I still respect a lot of what they do. Oh, I don't have mixed feelings on them at all. I fucking help start it. I understand it fully, and I fucking have a full-on hate for the bitch. And if I ever see him, you know, the younger me would have smashed his skull until he wouldn't have fucking, you know, I'm just saying that. So there's no mixed feelings here, okay? <laughs> and as far as Satanism goes, there, there shouldn't be mixed feelings when someone's watering it down and making it a Christian fucking deal that serves Christians. That's what the Satanic Temple does. Just because they brought the word Satanism out, out, out from under the ground does not mean it helped us. They're watering it down, and now it's become some Christian zero-one dynamic. We weren't even like that. We had our backs turned to Christianity and everything. We're like, yeah, we don't even acknowledge this garbage. Well, to play devil's advocate, I, I do appreciate some of their uh, political rankerings. Yeah, those tricks are fun, but that's what that it, it, it's not a religion. I get it that those I get yes men tricks and 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 political uh, trick stunts are fun. It's not a religion though. Okay. And so when they started to form into religion because they saw this viral moment that they could collect dollars off of and they continue to use it as a fishing net to collect dollars, I got real issues with that, especially the lunkheads that are attracted to it and represent Satanism now. I don't know if you've been on Twitter and, and, and have to swim in the, sa the Satanic sa Temple uh, cesspool, but it's fucking dirty, bro. It's awful. They're fucking ignorant. And I don't need that. I, like, for me, Satanism, the old day school with, with LaVey, with all those old people, I didn't even have to agree with them, but they were most certainly not fucking ignorant. I mean, even right. like, like I don't like Boyd Rice, period. I fucking hate that guy. We, we, we go to war. But that guy's not stupid. Like, he's really right. smart. Peter Gilmore, I do not agree with, but he is a very smart. Right. And that, that's part of the problem nowadays. It's, uh, uh, with the, you can't, I personally can't really agree with the church. I can't really agree with the temple. So you really have to just, Take Satanism for what it is and go your own way, you know, find your own path as it were.
Right. How is the, I'm sorry, but there's an echo, I guess, happening. Excuse me, so I'm doing, are you able to talk to? I'm, I'm trying to, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. So, I'm, I'm just, well, there's an echo somewhere recording, so I want to make sure that's caught. So, Anton, how did you hook into Satanism? How did you first find she, it? You know, it's kind of funny. That's funny, yes, because a, a friend had the book, and he lived with some fundamentalist Christians, and he had to get the book out of his house. This is back in high school in the 80s. So he gave me the book, and <laughs> that's, that's how it started. But, you know, he knew it was appropriate for me because I always lean to the left, into the dark arts, you know, following, you know, of course, in the, in the 80s, everything was demonized, right? Heavy metal, Dungeons and Dragons, comic books, all of that. And I loved horror movies, and I loved it all. So it was sort of just, uh, it was um, strengthening just those already held beliefs, I would say. Right? What would it say? The, the Satanist is born, you know? <laughs> Not made. Yeah. Only the guest has echo. I have no fucking... I'm oh, I'm it. having echo, so that means uh, I'm getting two, two mics perhaps working then. I've been told the Discord is recording everything great, and we're going to edit that audio in there. <laughs> you know, mm. I hate mistakes like this, I, but it's my first time. Could be me then. I'm now bleeding all over the bed, and I'm sorry. I'll pay for the sheets. So only the guest is echoing. Sorry. Yeah, the guest is echoing. So, Joseph, how are you? Joseph. Good, thanks. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been running around, you know, doing uh, normal life shit and checking in every once in a while. When I get back to the house, I would turn on my YouTube on my TV, and you guys were the first thing up in the feed. I was like, let me see what they're up to over there. Did we do, are we, are we doing okay? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. The weird, random little, you know, glitches and things, but that's to be expected. Well, yeah, that's the cool part of live stream. I like, I like all that weird shit. Like even the pre-recorded stuff, I left a lot of weird shit in there because I'm like, well, it's streaming. It fits. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. When I first heard that you were doing a 20th anniversary stream for this thing. My 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 gut reaction as soon as I heard it, I was like, "Oh no, should he be doing this?" <laughs> but then I was like, "You know what? Yeah, he he definitely probably should be doing this." Well, no, I I understood it. It scared a lot of people that have been helping me out. Uh, yeah. You know, they're like, "Oh, well, did we make a mistake? Is, you know, doing this for a handful of years is Shane gonna freak out and look to burn the world down?" Yeah. And uh, you know, it was a possibility. Right. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm teasing. I think you know. When, when Avi went over things and, and had reservations about doing things and we discussed things, and when he went forward, I felt pretty good about what we were going to do because Avi was working with me and he was pretty set on on, on dealing with, with a lot of that hard issues. And he was able to get through the audio, that painful audio for him, and, you know, come here and, and, and deal with things. So I, I felt like we were probably going to do something cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah, give people something to talk about for the next few years. I hope so, and maybe 20 years from now, then Avi will be doing this, you know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you <laughs> something else controversial to <laughs> piss everybody you know? with. Yeah. So, oh, so it, it's something, you know, that, that old show is something, and it, it's weird to have something live that long, and it's definitely surreal to, like, look back on it, like, for, after so long, you know... It was a good moment, though, for me because it brought humanity back to both my ex-wife and my and Doug. Brought some sort of humanity back to him, where I, I just totally had hate. I couldn't see them anymore as people. So it was weird. It doesn't mean I like them, but I can see how <laughs> how fucking. The aw most awful thing about being a Satanist for me has going, been going to therapy or doctors and being fucking typical. So, mm. yeah, I think a lot of things are informed by trauma responses and typical shit like that when I hear that stuff in our life and how we impulse through life for those 20 years. It's just weird looking back yeah. on that stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, when, you, you know, uh, when, when I talked to you last, maybe, maybe it was on the podcast or, or maybe off of it, 
um, you mentioned that you and Doug had been talking on and off through email, like just sort of sending like aggressive emails to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and but has that stopped? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it has. I wouldn't. I, I oh, okay. yes, it has. Yes, and there was some yeah, yeah. point when I got to town, and I was like, you know, I basically before I'll, I'll tell you a Chicago thing for me. Like Joseph, I had beef with you before I turn it into full fillage stir fry, beef stir fry. <laughs> I'm going to ask you if we have beef, and I'm going to try to resolve things. And I do that as a matter of justice in my, like, vigilance or, or justice in my heart. I know I tried, and now I'm going to fucking destroy you. So yeah. the last couple of times I reached out to Doug, I said, this should be resolved. This problem here, what, what's happening? It's misinterpreted. There's something, and I've been saying this since that fucking beach. Motherfuck, after I got off that road trip, I've been saying this shit. And anyway, I had all these op I had all these obstacles I had to do, but I gave one last chance to these motherfuckers, you know. And um, after that, I had no interest in talking again. You know, it was like same with Stanton Levey. Stanton was racist for no good reason online, and, and to Avi, and he's like, Avi, Avi's like, yeah, bro. Avi, I mean, Stanton's like, that's not racist, and Avi's like, bro, I'm a black guy. You can't tell me that. And, and Stanton's not registering, so I have to get him off the bill and, you know, throw him off. I said, but before that, I'm like, Stanton, you got, like, a couple minutes to try to make this good. Like, I gave him a shot before I had to do that. Like, try to figure this out, you know? And, you know, after that, it's gone. Like, fuck you. And it was the same with Doogie. Like, when I offered that moment and me mailed him, I demanded. I threatened him. And, and that, but that, but that, that doesn't matter. He, he, he ran away like a bitch. I threatened LeVay. And I threatened Carla LeVay. And Carla laughs because she goes, I threatened you back. You know, she threatened me back. I'm like, you got to do this fucking interview. Yeah. It has to happen now. I fucking swear to God, if it doesn't happen, I'm going to go crazy on this shit. And Carla's like, you know, you're threatening me. Now you want me to threaten you? I want the power of LeVay coming down on you? No, I'm joking. But I'm just saying, I, I just gave an ultimatum, I guess. That's not the best thing. And, and Doug did not take it. And that's his tough shit. I, I, fuck that guy. You know? At yeah, I mean, point, I would have been, I would have Joseph, been shocked if he did take it. Yeah, and Joseph, at this point, I have found out so much stuff and so much evidence has been handed to me about what happened in my life after I hit that beach. It's incredible. It is really fucking incredible what this motherfucker did, okay? He literally, for fucking five years, followed me around and made friends with anyone that was a neighbor of mine, anyone that worked with my wife, anyone that worked with me. It was really creepy, but I just thought, well, he... He likes me. <laughs> Incredible how this motherfucker played this game. But it's, I got no time to get into this. It all sounds paranoid. I have to present evidence and facts, and I'm working on that. It's just sure. incredible. Any, anyone who had suspicion about this guy and where he went to school with and what he's doing, keep with that suspicion and keep researching. You got something. There's, it's, he's, that yeah. motherfucker is fucked. I never... I got impeccable imagination. I hang out with criminals. I hang out with m fucking psychotic everything. Never saw this coming. Never saw that kind of shit coming. And I, anyway, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I try. I try my best to keep away from uh, drama in in the satanic community. But goddamn, it's hard to do. Oh, you 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 you're saying that with a straight face, huh? This is the guy who comes well, to me just... and gets me to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always, I don't know how. I mean, I'm, I'm 44 years old right now. And I somehow, I still find myself being naive about things occasionally. I'm like, oh, yeah, this will be good. This will be, people should, you know, have an open mind. Let's talk with Shane. I'm sure he's got stories to tell or a different perspective and, and all of this. And I don't, somehow the reaction catches me off guard. I was like, really, you guys are that fucking sensitive and just w w desperate to be outraged at anything. But it doesn't make sense within the satanic perspective that you wouldn't want information. For, for me, it, it would be like, yeah, information, let that motherfucker incriminate himself. Please, get, have him spill the tea. That's what I'd be saying. Like, get it out of him. Get the fucking inconsistencies out of him. Let's find a lie. That's what I do yeah. when I interview. Like, I'm, I'm interviews for me are like, Come on in and on and basically incriminate yourself. I like to do yeah. interviews because I don't feel I'm doing that. I try to recount things as they are, as they happen, even if they don't work to my favor. Yeah. 
Mm. Well, and and if, they do. if you, not you, but anyone, if a person feels like what they're doing or saying isn't wrong, if someone feels like what they're doing or saying isn't wrong, then um, there should be no hesitation in just talking about it. Oh, right. You know, right. there's no I, reason to hide or anything. Right, exactly. And that's like a lot of times I try to communicate this like, and, 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 and I know obviously like there could be better ways to communicate it, but, but the idea is if I had something to say right now, I'd fucking say it. There's no fear. Oh, Joseph dropped out. Okay. To, re, to respond to that, though, I hope he hears it. Like there was no fear. Like this, me doing what I'm doing and trying to resolve things has happened for a real long time, many years. It wasn't based out of fear. It was based out of my feelings. Like there's something wrong here. I mean, you got to hey, take action at some point. You can't. Well, I, mean, I don't know. I, my, my, you, what you're at, like, I was, Joseph, I was just basically saying, like, I came to a point where it's like I had to, I, you know, I was working towards this, but it wasn't, none of my, what I'm doing is based out of fear or, or looking to fit in. I don't think that'll ever happen. I'm a fucking heretic. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not going to happen. I don't, I'm not looking to rebuild a heretic career. That doesn't work. You don't rebuild this. It just yeah. is. We light shit on fire and say, fuck you. Okay, so if I wanted to do that right now, I'll fucking do it. And this is like what is happening for me is organic. But I could see how other people might see all this kind of doubt. But it's still, why wouldn't you want me to incriminate myself? Why do they ignore me? Why would they ignore a source? Why would anyone trust a fucking place to put out a documentary that lied? Like, why? That documentary that yeah. is a lie. It's a fucking creation myth. It's not the truth. But everyone like is gonna believe, have a belief in a religion, or a person who started religion that is a liar and a politician. Like it's insane to me. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I think I largely. Know. The, the advantage that the Satanic Temple had when they sort of appeared and and over these last years. Um, in a sense, to a lot of people, they didn't have any competition. I mean, not that. I don't really feel that it is a competition, honestly, but, right. you know, the Satanic Temple will say that the Church of Satan is inactive. You know, they're just a, a Twitter account. They don't do anything, all of that kind of thing. That's their, their stance. And I can see how people would see it that way from the outside. If you're just a passive person and you've maybe just been introduced to the idea of Satanism out there, um, you don't, you know, if you look in the news, you're going to see the Satanic Temple. If you look up Satanism in recent times, you're going to run into the Satanic Temple probably first. You know, they're the ones that are in the news and making headlines yeah. and, and doing all that. And so a lot of it is just people don't really know. People don't know, um, especially younger people now. They don't have any real understanding of Louvay. Um, they don't understand And Satanism. not that I'm any expert, but, you know. Well, correct. Yeah. It, it, like, but the Church of Satan is never going to be there for your validation and, and politically. And that's what the Satanic Temple serves as something that validates people. Church of Satan does not. They'll tell right. you, we're not going, you know, you do your, do you do? We're not here to validate yeah. your shit. <laughs> you know, so that's a, that's, that's the, there's a big difference there. You know, and I would say yeah. people want to look at, and look at the Church of Satan. I'm not, I'm not with them. You know, I'm, I'm a friend of Carl, of the LeVays, but it's like, Oh, really? The Church of Satan is that? I remember hearing that, and I was like, if Peter had a fucking clue, but he doesn't, he would stack up what they've done. Like, oh, yeah, Boyd Rice has a bit, and I fucking hate the guy. He has a bigger output than anyone in the Satanic Temple. I have a bigger output than anyone in the Satanic Temple. Like, we have massive piles of fucking work that have been culturally significant, not just a bunch of piece of shit books that you put Satanist on and sell. Like, these are garbage books they're flooding the market with. I mean, I'm looking, I'm like, God, what the fuck is this? It's not even Satanism. They're just like, like I could literally, like I feel like I'm just going to start a business where I bootleg books. I'm going to grab all these books and just replace <laughs> words with Satanism. Like think and grow rich. Satanism, say, put it out. Think and grow Satanist. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't, none of the words make sense work. anymore, man. <laughs> yeah. Think and grow Satanist. Yeah. That's great. What well, doesn't, nothing is made, like Tamerlane, is, I don't know, if, Joseph, if you know Tamerlane, you got to check out his fucking... <laughs> His TikTok dude goes out there and inflames people in, in Comic Cons in, in such a witty way. It's great. But that's the like <laughs> kind of cool satanic shit I like. It's like, dude's just going out there doing it. And he's got a pile of work. He just does it for himself. He's, he's totally 
He, Satanists are like, I think one of the things I want to describe Satan is uh, we're the guy, we're the people who can have fun in a paper bag. Like, we just make fun. We don't, we can be <laughs> yeah. anywhere and we're going to start laughing, you know, at the corner yeah. of the wall. <laughs> you know, yeah, Tam Lane's that guy <laughs> or that, that person. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So when I look at the, and I don't mean to put it, I guess I do mean to put it into it. That satanic temple, put, here, 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 you want to know what the original shit is? Put Satanic Temple's new wall purchase event that they moved because I'm doing a hot, hot wall purchase event. Put their event, their aesthetic next to mine. Put anything of theirs next to mine. Put their music that they book on that. And you know what you're going to find? A suburban soiree. Just quit playing in Boston and go somewhere in the suburbs of Boston and play your games with your suburban repressed idiots because that's what that goddamn group yeah. is now, okay? I mean, I look at my always, event. It's fucking I've hot. always felt that uh, yeah. when you compare the aesthetic of the two groups, like my favorite satanic imagery is when you see all the real old LeVay stuff, the yeah. old pictures of him and the gang and, and wherever the hell they were and those, those cool environments, you know, that... that that just lands in my brain like that's the right image you know that's what it looks like to me and that that means so much from joseph because i'll tell you i, I like to collect envy for like a hobby i got a shelf full of envy and i gotta cut some off for joseph i gotta hand you some envy because joseph's d d design work and all the shit he does with satanic delco even though i think the name is just i don't i don't like it but it doesn't matter all of his design work kills like it's like <laughs> oh man i really want that shit i I think of joining that funky named group based on that artwork. I'm, just, I'm not trying to put you down. I just don't even know Delco. I'm like, Delco? Yeah, well, I mean, Delco is just the place we live. Okay. I live in Delaware County. We call it Delco. Okay, there, there you go. I'm like, when the fuck is Delco? What is going on? You were going to say something. I was going to say, what the fuck is Delco? Like, what the fuck is Delco? That's why I keep going like, yeah. say, like, what the like fuck is Delco? Delco? I'm thinking, is this something from like some sort of Maybe Doctor Who? Or Doctor, you know, because we're all nerds. I'm thinking it's from a Doctor Who flick or something like, like Delco. Is Do Delco the satanic guy in Delco? Doctor Who? No, that's Encore. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah, it was just when I started the, when I started the group, it was, it was really out of complete ignorance. I didn't know you know what i do and i had yes! seen like local groups from the satanic temple and they were just like you know the satanic temple philadelphia the satanic temple new jersey whatever and i was just like i wonder if there's any people down in just my little county you know let me just i thought i was going to put it up get seven nerds in there and delete it by the end of the weekend uh, but that isn't what happened i guess joseph does blood drives and shit like that which it's it's hard to how are you going to argue with that someone's given their flesh you know, blood, a pound yeah. of you know, so it's like they're not like collecting money for abortion, but you know, a bunch of white guys going, yeah, we're going to help. You know, it's, that's a weird one. That's a weird one. You got to. Yeah. It. Yeah. We do. Our group does a lot of little charity things. We usually focus it on our local county. Um, it's not so much political activism rather than just charity. You know, we've oh. done like a homeless drive, a domestic abuse thing. We've done the blood drives. We've done that kind of shit. No, no, no. The scholarship, bro. Oh, and the scholarships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've been doing that a couple years now. Fucking guys planting seeds and kids. That's great. We're giving kids, we're giving kids scholarships, 666 scholarships. <laughs> That's the fucking yeah. pervert. Very That's active. That's awesome. He's, yeah. he's planting seeds with the kids. He's like, <laughs> and we just actually just, uh, this just came in uh, Friday, Thursday. I, I got official word that I just changed uh, a second dress code at a local school district who had... Uh, they wow. had they had explicitly banned Satanism or um, the first one the, the wording they used was uh, any imagery or, or materials that are satanic in nature and we got that one changed last year and this year the other the other school they were they tried to hold out because they didn't want to get bad press because uh, the first school got a bunch of bad press for like bowing down to the Satanists or not having a backbone or anything and so uh, that school just changed theirs as well. That is really, you know, I remember leaving our podcast and looking into your group a little, and I was, like, looking at the stuff, and <clears throat> like I said, the only thing was Delco, I got cringe on. I was like, I don't know what that fucking is, but we know <laughs> Yeah. And so yeah. Um, I, I, I thought if anything good came from, I shouldn't say good, if anything optimistic, there you go. you got to correct yeah. me when I use that fucking word. <laughs> but anything positive or optimistic came from the Satanic Temple stuff, was I was like stuff like this, this this, this satanic Delco stuff is, is uh, I can't 
I want to find something wrong with you, and I will someday, Joseph. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, <laughs> I, I mentioned it to you when we did the podcast, but the Satanic Temple, including Doug, they are no fan of mine. I have been banned from every single Satanic Temple related group. Um, Doug has, you know, he's come at me a little bit on Twitter here and there. They threatened to sue me over the episode I did about the ordination program. Um, I, I've, I, you know, I'm going to have to look into this. I wonder why they won't threaten to sue me. I really would like them to. <laughs> Doug's a yeah. good cocksucker. Doug. So, Joseph, I want you, you to uh, sue me. Doug won't sue me because I need him to sue me in order to go to court. I can right. like, I need him to come at me, and he won't, because he knows I'll fucking destroy him in court. Joseph, his, what were you? Um, yeah, was Joseph? Uh, were, were you um, uh, wooing the Satanic Temple at one point, or what happened between the two of you? Were you were you, were you uh, working together at all at one point? Uh, I've never worked with them. I, I'm I'm a member of the Satanic Temple, which is to say, they have my email address. Um, sure. Right. And right. so that I can, because, you know, I do a satanic podcast, so I want to keep abreast of what's happening uh, related to Satanism. So you I get, get their email for. newsletter. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I've been a member. And when I started, look, I started like so many people. You know, at first I found Satanism as a teenager in the 90s. I found the satanic Bible in a bookstore. And, you know, I was that kid and I was like, fuck yeah, what is this? Pentagrams? Let me get into it. Yeah, right and, uh, you know, I got into it and, it and it matched up with my little, you know, I was an edgy, angry, depressed, dark kind of kid, the outsider kid in my school or whatever. And so it fit. It. Um, yep. And as I got a little older, it, you know, it didn't exactly fit. I poked holes in some of the stuff that I didn't feel like I really was like really jibing with that much. And then so many years later, when TST came along, just like everybody else, I just thought, you know, I didn't know what it was at first. I just thought, oh, the Satanic Temple, that's interesting. That's definitely something I want to follow up on. And I watched the documentary like everybody else. And I thought, okay, there's people doing some shit. That's kind of fun. Let me just see who's around in my area. And so I was on board because I liked the seven tenets. I thought they sounded, you know, they sounded reasonable or nice or reasonable. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, over, over time now, over the last few years... Uh, particularly the last two or three, um, you know, I've found myself more and more disagreeing or not aligning with the Satanic Temple or finding issues with what they do or how they do it. Um, so I always yeah. say, you know, I've been writing a lot. I don't know what it's going to be. Am I writing a book or a zine or I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I've been writing and thinking a lot about my Satanism and how I want to articulate it. And I do find myself landing sort of... Um, Somewhere in the middle, you know, there's a lot of LeVay that I really have held close uh, for my whole life. Um, and right. there are little aspects of the philosophy or the workings of the Satanic Temple in theory that I that I agree with. Um, but, yeah, my personal Satanism is somewhere in the middle. You know, there's things that the Satanic Temple Same. completely ignores Absolutely. and doesn't mention that I feel like are imperative to Satanism. Things like indulgence and individuality and all of that. Right. So here's a here's a, the idea I would like to put out there. Like, the idea is that the Satanic Temple, at its best, was branched off of the Satan the Satanic Bible. It all comes from Levee. Yeah. So there's no joke about that. So the idea is that because it's an organization, I guess it's more powerful than the individual. But individuals created that. And what I'm saying to you is, or to anyone listening is that when you read the Satanic Bible and you're like, you want to start differing from that, you should. And that becomes, that's what Satanism is. It's not this organization. It's you going, well, I want 11 tenants, and this doesn't work. Yeah. But the one thing I found funny is everyone runs towards the word compassion. Please ask Doug what compassion means to him. I can <laughs> right. tell you. Yeah. Compassion to Oh, Doug believe me, I've destroyed found... Destroyed everyone that would be called a retard in the 80s. I worked at Ray Graham's Home for Retarded Adults. I use that word jokingly yeah. because it was an old word, but this is what exactly the word that Doug would use, like uh, putting all of the people that didn't make the eugenics lottery into an oven. Doug would say yeah. that is compassionate towards them and him. So I would like people to yeah. understand that that is sort of what Satanism is, is when someone says, I'm for compassion, a Satanist, a real Satanist would say, what does compassion mean to you? 
that's what we want to know. What does that yeah. word mean to you? Because compassion can yeah. mean yeah, and, very different things to people. In our group in Satanic Delco, um, at least originally, I'm not so sure about now, but originally, almost everybody, I would assume, is a member of the Satanic Temple or aligned with the Satanic Temple, or they got there because of they, their way into Satanism was through the Satanic Temple. Right, but and over sure these last few years, yeah, over these last few years, I've done so much, like, I'm always preaching this idea of acceptance, like acceptance of differences. Like, you feel this way about a thing, I feel a different way. We don't have to, I don't have to say, oh, well, you're a shithead, you're a scumbag, I can't, I can't uh, give you a platform, you know what I mean? I got a bunch of shit for giving Sheen to be a platform, is what everybody else you don't agree with Shane or you don't like Shane, who gives a fuck? Like, there are people out there with different views, and, and it would be a terrible, boring fucking world if that wasn't the case. But it sort of tells their intent to, like, why not me? Why am I not interesting enough for you to talk to me on the air? Because it's like, there's nothing good about an interview. It could be bad. Like I say, and it can incriminate myself. I'm not. It's like, automatically, because you gave me space, there's some sort of redeeming like platforming people and i'm like yeah you probably should platform bad ideas and beat them back with better ideas it's it's not you don't want a groundswell of fascism you don't want people meeting yeah. in basements doing this you really do want them to be out yeah. front about their politics so we can yeah and that, that's a, them otherwise what yeah yeah that was like sort of one of the biggest contradictions i've found amongst the membership of the satanic temple Personally, for me, I am a huge uh, proponent of free speech. You know, I think we need to protect free speech, you know, to the fullest. And the Satanic Temple has their fourth tenet that is all about the First Amendment and free speech. And uh, Doug and Kevin have always talked about they need, you know, we should protect free speech. They seem to support that. But there's a big divide between what they say and what the membership believes. Because I can't tell you how often I've run into people that say they want free, they, they want to get rid of free speech. They want to censor hate speech and all of this. Let's put this into the context. I mean, the, the reality is it's not, there's no, what Kevin and Doug say is what the membership does. That's guaranteed. Doug is saying, do not say that. Stop that. Please do not have them say that. You will <laughs> see people correct. When someone says doogie to him, the new people, they're immediately corrected online. Oh, I mean, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like, don't, just because Doug and Kevin say, well, we're for free speech, I can guarantee you behind the scenes, they're like, yeah, shut that up. Fuck that. Not on my site. Not in my house. If it's in Boston and we can shut it up, shut it up. That's exactly what's going yeah. on. People are like, I don't understand why everyone believes what's being said by politicians. This is not what actually goes on in behind the tur curtain. We lie, cheat, and steal to get you to buy candy bars and soda pop. Are you fucking <laughs> thinking we're telling you the truth to fucking sign up for political death? Get the fuck yeah. out of here. There's a common sense yeah, that I mean, everything you're sold is a lie, mostly. Like, I'm going to sell you soda pop. I sold you the Satanic Temple the same way I sold fucking soda pop, bro. And it was through a logo yeah. and colored water. That's how simple <laughs> it was to sell sugar water, man. I just made it. Yeah, when, when I get the Satanic Temple emails, you know, 90% of the time it is, here are the new hot sauce flavors that we have this month. Here's the, <laughs> new, exactly. here's the new merchandise. Yeah. I'm not I'm not even joking. Literally hot sauce. Yeah, there's like, no, I'm not, not much of substance. Yeah. I believe that see, but, seen it on Facebook. But that's culture vulture shit. And I don't see why people don't get hip to the idea of culture vulturing. Uh like like it is a cultural appropriation. When I look at this, I'm like, yeah, you and Carla would say the same fucking thing. She's like, This isn't Satanism. And she doesn't care what they're doing. She just cares that it's sort of like like cultural appropriation. It's like this isn't what it is, you're wrong. Like like, like she says, and I say, all we do is study. We're like nerds. We study and make shit and, and sort of like... like but if I can play devil's back. advocate again, aren't we bordering on something that the kids might call gatekeeping? Love it. Let's hear it. Oh, am I bordering on gatekeeping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why would... Because I have an opinion? Or Carla. What? Or Carla. When we say things like, this is not something... Okay, let me let me tell you how how would that be gatekeeping with when the, the next concept is read LeVay's work and create your own ideas. There's no gatekeeping in Satanism. The idea is that we oh, don't you know need what, Shane? Or, we don't need organization. Let me, I, I want to ask you. I've had this conversation with a bunch of people 
on uh, like with the Satanism um, subreddit, and that Satanism subreddit is mostly Church of Satan aligned people, and you know they definitely are. Um, you know the I'm, I'm sure you probably agree. Levey defined Satanism, and you know other things that call themselves Satanism. Uh, typically, the Church of Satan stance is well that just isn't Satanism. And the reason for that is that LeVay got there first, he codified Satanism with his book and his organization, and he made it. He said, this is, I'm naming this Satanism, and this is what it is, and he was there. Um, and so the one, the one that I, and, and I don't, like, I don't care, you can have, some people are going to agree with that, some people are going to say, oh, it doesn't matter, you can call it whatever you want, okay. And the one that always stood out to me that, that I've never heard anybody really speak at any length on is, and I'm going to say his name wrong, but he's the, a Polish author that long predates Anton. His name was uh, Stanislaw, uh, like Prezbyzewski or something like that, the, uh, the synagogue of Satan guy. He was a self-identified Satanist that published a book, you know, a long time before LeVay, maybe a hundred years ago, um, or a hundred years before LeVay or so. Um, and he was a self-identified Satanist. And so, and, and in fact, one of the chapters of his book is called um, Forming the Church of Satan or, or okay. something the I, Church I know of Satan. That, certainly. So, so are, you, what are, you, are you asking something? Well, I'm just wondering if you give a shit about that guy or does well, it, should a, it matter it's, it's that like he Darwin. existed and Darwin called himself didn't a come Satanist? Up with his, Darwin didn't come up with his theory either. There was a, a, a person, another person came up with the Darwin theory. Darwin just was able to pull it off and get it presented to a wider group of people. And I right, think right. when you, when you yeah. look at that, yeah, LeVay just had luck. At some point he had luck. He had big dick energy, whatever it is. He, got, he looked at it and went, yeah, I need the shaved heads. I need the goatee. I need this. The girls, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, he, he made he it stick. he was sick. able to take what was done before him and bring it down to, and it takes a genius to bring this huge philosophy down to, a bullet point that anyone can understand. And the brilliance of LeVay yeah. was he was able to bring a philosophy of independence to the working class. Okay, he, he was a yeah. fry cook and he was able to communicate to fly, fry cooks and plumbers. He empowered me, a high school dropout plumber stock. I was like, yay. And he's basically basically saying, going to meet him, he's like, he gave me respect as an artist. He's basically saying, yeah, you could do anything you want, really. This what this, That's what I did. Yeah. I don't know. That's really fucking cool. And so when people yeah. want to keep chipping away at this dude, I think they're a bunch of fucking assholes. They don't. And I wish <laughs> I wish that they could. I wish I had a machine to put them through the pain that trailblazers experience to bring them that bullshit attitude and freedom to talk that smack. OK, yeah. you're talking about people mm -hmm. who have to become shut ins because they can't go out to restaurants. They're, you know, it's, it's like it, the same with any culture, jazz, the gay culture, any of it. There's violence that brings, lays these trails. And the people who can't respect it are the generation, like, the, it skips a generation. Like, I'm part of that old guard. <clears throat> and then, there, you know, I, I believe some people like Gen Z are starting to respect those trails. But like millennials, they're, they're just going to come and shit on it. And what is it? They're just looking to jockey for position, climb on a rock and stand up and say, look at me, don't look at him. It all goes back to LeVay, though, yeah. because of how he did it. We can talk about surreal art and who invented it and who got credit for it. You know, it's like the person who, and that happens often. I, I have it happen often to me as a person, like people s s consistently snag ideas. And what bothers me the most is when someone like Doug, a mediocre person, uh, pu puts them forward. And Doug is a person from a corporate world. In the corporate world, and I don't know if you're from that, but you learn this when I go to Hollywood and pitch movies. Huh, I am stuff, certainly I'm not. Out there, <laughs> I'm brought out there once in a while, and what they tell me is, well, Shane, only the mediocre survive here. You're going to have rough because you're not mediocre. I go, what? And he goes, yeah, the mediocre in corporate world, they rise to the top. No <laughs> one that's great makes it in the corporate world. And that's sort of how Doug and these people play it. They're, they're very safe, vanilla, suburban, mediocre garbage. <clears throat> There's nothing stimulating about that group. Yeah. 
that I can't get from an abortion rights group, that I can't get from a political group. They offer nothing different than that. Bernie Sanders is more exciting and he has the same tenants. Okay, so get the fuck out of here. But <laughs> I'm going to join a Bernie. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to join yeah, well, all of the Bernie uh, and AOC. Hail Bernie. Hell Bernie, hell AOC. <laughs> like, they look good. They got flavor. They're out there like, yeah, we dance, we fuck. We're fucking fighting for revolution. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Oh, we're, we're very we're very staunch uh, supporters of we don't know money. Yeah, we're from Harvard. Fuck anyone from the Ivy yeah. League at this point. There's people starving all <laughs> over the world. I mean, are you kidding me? These people are the people that should be in the guillotines, man. And you motherfuckers, yeah. and I'm not saying you, I'm saying in general, you motherfuckers are going to follow the illusion of power. Harvard. <laughs> it's like a fucking joke. Fucking be, yeah. be Goliath. Yeah, I mean, be, be if, David. if it gives you any throw indication. Throw the fucking stone and kill Goliath. Throw the fucking stone. All you got to do is throw the stone. <laughs> David, Goliath doesn't matter. It just matters that you throw the fucking stone. No one will throw the stone. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not from that world. I, I think I feel what you're saying. I, if it matters any, I have a... a a bachelor's degree from the Art Institute of Philadelphia, which doesn't even exist anymore. They went out of oh, business. Oh, really? <laughs> did you, you, I think all the, art in, all the art institutes did. Isn't that fun when you go to school and then the school disappears? It's like, oh, great. It's like, what, yeah. what school did you go yeah. to? You know, this one that shut down, you know? Yeah. 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 I, haven't, I haven't had any anything that resembles a normal job in at least 20 years. I love you for that, Joseph. That's good. Well, I can, I can tell by your art hustle. We got to get in there, bro. I'm trying to get in this phone. I'm leaning over. You, you look at this money. I'm trying. I'm trying. To, okay. I love your. I, yeah, Satanic Dunkle's got a great art hustle. That's for sure. I have envy for it. I can't top it. I'm like, God, oh, these killing Thank it you. With yeah. the ideas. Thank you. You know, so. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I mean, Are it's basically just, for the last couple of years, it's been my full time job. Yeah. Well, I can see wow. you're doing quite the hustle. That's awesome. Yeah, he's got a Patreon going. That's awesome. Motherfucker. Yo, I motherfucker got, collects. I was just going to say, I got the, we got to link up. I got to see what this yeah. guy's doing. No, man. this motherfucker collects envy too. Bitch fucking post photos. Here's uh, my patrons done for the night. It's fucking like a thousand envelopes or some shit. I'm <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're good. You're yeah, we it. send, I send out, we have a, we have a, a, a postcard of the month club that I send out to everybody. <laughs> Greetings from hell. Yeah, it's cool. I, I saw something. Oh, you got, this is where you got my envy. I hate this. I hate admitting this. I saw something pass through. I'm like, I want that. You know, like, I'm going to click. I'm like, uh, say Tana Dunkle. I'm not doing that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, it's just got any organizations. I have to be leery about doing stuff. I, anything, so I'm like, eh. But it, it was, it's good art. You know, I, I'm I, yeah. you know, that's it. Send, send me a message with your address or something. I'll, I'll send you some shit. Okay, I'll trade you some stuff too. I would love that, Joseph. I would love to trade artwork with you and trinkets. Hell yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Tamra Lane, please be the devil advocate all day long. Harass us. Give us some hard work. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, okay, fine. So, Joseph, um, it, I mean, it seems like uh, the, the Satanic Temple definitely influenced you in some way. Would you agree? Disagree? For sure. Agree, definitely. I was when I found the Satanic Temple when they were a little newer. Whenever it was, when I found them, I was casually on board. I was interested, but I didn't really follow up or pay too much attention until the documentary came out. I saw the documentary, and like so many people, I thought, I thought, let me, uh, shit, the people act. And there was a group. Um, See who was around where I live because I, the feds. I live in a suburb just the south, feds. and I Joseph, know a lot of people where Joseph, I live. Everything is breaking, breaking, gonna... breaking up. <laughs> Yo, the feds are breaking into the. Oh the shit! Feds really? Broke in. Once you started, they were like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the connect. The connection's unreliable. The ops got us. <laughs> so is, is it working so is the right federal now? government. <laughs> we're hearing you now, Joseph. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I, I was I was I was down with the Satanic Temple, um, and oh, like I said, over time, one thing after another made me you know pushed me farther and farther away from the Satanic Temple, uh, and in fact, yeah. quite the, in, at the same time, sort of Levey, you know, if you would have talked to me four or five years ago about Levey, I wouldn't have had much to say. I would have said, yeah, it was cool when I was a kid, but I kind of grew out of it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But now in recent years, you know, I've re I went back and reread the Satanic Bible a little more thoroughly and gave it more thought. And I'm still giving it a lot of thought all the time. I've been reading and writing a lot about it lately. And I like LaVey much better now than I would have even two years ago, you know? Huh. 
That's hey, interesting. Tamer, Tamerlane, when you were talking about gatekeeping, yeah. and I, got, I, got to, I got to let you know. Uh, when you're talking about Carla LeVay, um, her, her idea is just like, it's not Satanism because it doesn't offer you an individual freedom. It's not really gatekeeping when, you know, like, she's trying to explain her father's philosophy as sure. something that is uh, about freedom. It has nothing to do with fascism, all this other stuff that's been attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. she's just trying to bring it back to its roots. And I really enjoy, Carla was the other night saying, and I don't know if it came across on the interview, but she was like, I don't think there's too many Satanists out there anymore. He's just, no, I didn't see the interview, anymore. actually. Yeah, she's ba she doesn't, and I, I, can, I feel her. Because back in the day when you uh, identified as a Satanist, that was one thing. But the, the Levee had a, heart, a reason for applications and, and paying money to be a member. Because that took some courage to I, to to do that and to sign up and you know and be investigated by them, because they have had they, he understood the psychology of people that would be attracted to Satanism, and it, it and in those years you would have murderers and rapists and really harsh people that were attracted to what we did, and so right. when we went out as representatives licensed, and I think that should be respected. I know people because they Agreed. see Satanism as a Hollywood idea within the Satanic Temple group, that it's all a joke and all entertainment. But I'm a licensed person that can talk about Satanism, and I was licensed by the guy who created Satanism and the right. Satanic Bible. How in the world that is not taken with any weight from the Satanic Temple people is amazing to me. But yeah. the idea is there's very few people alive that can talk about LeVay's philosophy that LeVay gave permission and said, not only permission, we didn't buy it. He's like, you understand what I'm talking about. You live the life. You're part of that life. You are a Satanist. I want you to represent me, please. And that's how he would be. He was a very polite man. He was a gentleman, please. And he said thank you multiple times hanging out with him. This is a man who didn't have to say thank you. He could ask you to kiss his ring. He yeah. never liked that. All of this other pomp and circumstance that you guys are experiencing is bullshit. LeVay wasn't like that. He was a hippie. He's a total goth hippie. Yeah. Real cool dude. And so I do wish Anton were still around and out there talking about stuff. Oh, I do too, because he would be telling you, like, it's, this is, you're wrong. I'm alive. He's, and, and I just, that's why it took me, you know, it took me a lot. I've been going through a lot of personal problems to come back and, but this has troubled me for over a decade with this situation. It, it because I have a love for Anton LaVey and a lot of my mentors, Heart Warrior Chosa. I have been very low. Isaac Bonowitz, the guy who created <laughs> Bay and the deal. I, I, he was one of the people who studied. I, so I've studied under some of the greatest occult minds in America. How people will not take my information and don't want my information and my education is amazing. And Carlo's like, yeah, it's so fucking hilarious. Like, we're sitting there talking about this like we've had... She calls it identity vampires. And she's like, ha imagine this, Joseph and Cameron. Daddy's little girl, Anton LaVey's little baby girl, he, she watched everything he fucking ever did, okay? She was born when he was 21, watched everything that guy did, went to bookstores with him, observed him. She is the one who can answer your questions about Satanism and him, but no one's asking her. And the blaspheme mm. of it is the Church of Satan doesn't ask her. It's like, oh, yeah. how the fuck? That's where the Church yeah. of Satan, Peter, fails at fuck face. Yeah, You're supposed to be a resource center. So for is she, Levee, does basically. she not really have any, does she not really have any interaction with the Church of Satan? Is she not really involved? No, legally, when, when Anton died, you have to split things up amongst children. <clears throat> you know, and, and Blanche has a, one of his children. Right. So that, you know, when that all happened. Right. They had to haggle things out, and the Levays needed to. They decided they wanted to control the Satanic Bible and the most important things. A brand. They, they were like, "What's a brand? Take the brand, take the logo. Fuck you." Like Carla's like, "I'll just go back to the uh, the first Satanic Church, like what Levay, the original name that yeah. he had." And so, she felt. I think when that happened, it was a power move, and she felt I had the Levay last name. Everyone's gonna follow me. Lo and behold, the logo and brand mean so fucking much. Mm. And, and that's what I brought forward. He who controls the symbol has the power. That's yeah. a lot of what I brought forward and would talk to the Satanic Temple about when we were forming this stuff. And Kevin would bring these, 
like literally the most awful logos, demeaning to Satan. It's really <laughs> just awful. And they look like something like someone would make for like a TGIF Fridays logos. It was really awful. And so that's the idea. Yeah. When we watched that, it was like, oh, wow, people all jumped through the hoop for the logo and the name. But there wasn't much there. There was no old school there. And most of the old school left with Carla. I was the last person of the old school. And I stayed, I, I hung out with Blanche because she asked for help. The mother of, you know, father, you know, so it just made sense to me to hang out with that, that moment. But I eventually, you know, I don't get along with Peter. And Peter brought the Church of Satan to a different, he, he decided he wanted to make it. I, I guess that's sort of going back to my point about gatekeeping. That's what we have to be wary about, who or what organization is saying they have the keys, you know? Well, I, I don't think we do. I think what we need to do is just go to the library and grab the Satanic Bible and read that and then decide how we want to define Satanism in our life. We don't need organizations. When Anton LaVey died, that was it. This, the, the Church of Satan is a gatekeeper for his philosophy and his name and stuff like that. And that where they do an injustice yeah. to it is not grabbing all of Carla's information and putting it in there. Just like the Ayn Rand Institute is a valid project. Ayn Rand's not around. But they just say, no, these are her quotes. This is what she actually said. Here's her books. Here's the information when people misunderstand it or misquote it. <clears throat> and so that's what the Church of Satan should be doing. Uh, you know, Peter, Peter's got all his ego, you know, whatever. He's got a lot of issues, like we all do. But he <laughs> fails a lot in, in, in all, these, all these weird marketing aspects. I mean, whatever. Do you think Carla will try to get out there a little bit more through social media or whatever? Well, she is. She just was on this show. I did a six-hour interview with her. She absolutely, She's doing stuff with. I'm. I'm. I begged her to. It's, yeah. it, and she's I doing, saw. I saw a little bit of it earlier. Yeah. Yeah, and she's do, she's doing the. She did the Witch's Sabbath with me. She's doing another Witch's Sabbath this year. We're doing the Witch's Sabbath this year, 2023. Uh, we'll do the. We're doing a Black Christmas in in San Francisco. So we're work, I'm working together, I'm working to help her, much as I did with so many, a uh, handful of groups, and I'm working to help her with the satanic, like I did with the satanic temple, but, but I'm working to help her put her information out there for you, Joseph, to study, for us to study, and, and yeah. before she passes, because she's the only one alive that saw the birth of Satanism. And she's the only one, like when I talk to her, she was like, it was great because she's like, it's the same, almost the same story as mine. Because she's like, these people came in and they took this thing and made it, their, they took it in their direction. But it has nothing to do with the ideas. And I was like, that's the same thing that happened with me with the Satanic Temple. They took it and politicized it. And she's like, it was the counterculture, the Boyd Rice's, Adam Parfrey, they came in with agendas. And when yeah. uh, LaVey entertained them, they applied their agendas to his philosophy at that time, he's older and dealing with a lot more things in life than just him that work, you know. So they took advantage of that moment. And she's like, that's where fascism came into in that interview. Uh, that's where that whole reputation came to my father. My father absolutely hated it. And, and it was surprising to hear that he wasn't any kind of conservative. Because my whole time in the Church of Satan, it, it, you know, I, Blanche, is a con Blanche is a Republican. Blanche is a Trump supporter. Mm. Uh, so would Peter Gilmore. They are conservatives. And neither, you know, doesn't, but, but uh, they slant that way. They didn't. And so it makes, it makes a lot of sense. They took, their, they took this and went to, wet, to use it to, you know, uh, interpret it towards a right-leaning interpretation. And for yeah. me, I think it's real obvious when I am licensed and have studied it for three decades, it's real obvious that LeVay was an artist. He dealt in abstracts. He dealt in tricks. He dealt in lies. He presented things to make you think that he didn't necessarily, he was just bringing you along. But he was like, a, like I continue to tell people, he was a fry cook. He observed the people. He didn't observe the institutions. He didn't rip off institutions. He sat there and watched plumbers talk to him. He was like, oh, okay. And he's doing, synthesizing this thing in that in that moment like that's a really cool observation all those cool things like so you talk about that gentleman prior to LeVay you know LeVay did something really cool and added to it in a special way that attracted a lot of people so you were talking yeah. about that Joseph uh, can you can you speak about that what, what was the name of that guy that you said published the book like a hundred years before 
Um, give me one sec. I'll make, his name is Stanislaw Przybyszewski or something. Let me try and find his. Uh, it's some crazy old Polish I last name. I was curious because, um, you know, I always say like Levey is, you know, the Chris modern Buzuski. Satanist, but he mentioned one that was before. You know, people say, oh, well, he wasn't. Levey wasn't the one that, you know, created Satanism. I say, yeah, in the modern sense, he was. There was really no Satanism before. But yeah, this, well, it, I mean, again, relevant. like part of Satanism, you know, we, we, we're supposed to be skeptical, right? Like you, you want to ask questions. Everybody wants to know. Right. And, you know, I'm really, I love that. I, I got to know. I want to ask why. What happened? Right. What was the truth? I want to always know. Yeah. And so when people are so quick to say, oh, well, this is what happened, I just, I just kind of want to be sure. You know, because everybody has their biases, you know? Yeah. And I wouldn't, I don't think, I, I don't think LeVay was above, uh, Rip, yeah, he's obviously not, uh, we're, we're artists, we're not above taking shit and making it our own. Get the fuck out of yeah. here, that's what yeah. we do. If you think I did something original. Yeah, I'm looking out of here. So in uh, 1897, uh, he published Sin of State, name is Slaw Przybyszewski, I think is how you might say it. And, um, and, you know, people will argue. Some people say he, it, it was a religion. Um, uh, the, the Church of Satan folks typically will say, well, he didn't codify it as a religion. It wasn't a system, the way LeVay pieced together more of a complete system uh, or philosophy. And Stanislaw didn't. The, the, main, the only thing that, that that guy had, Stanislaw, was he was a self-identifying Satanist. Whereas before that, Satanism was used as an insult. You know, Christian groups would say it to other Christian groups. Like oh, the Catholics would say saying. it to... Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The, 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 in, that, in that era uh, and, and, and forward, there were plenty of self-identifying Satanists. Uh, that, that would, yeah. they would, you know, uh, you would have every, everyone from the blues artists calling them, you know, there's a whole tradition of, yeah, I'm the devil, I'm Satan. So yeah. I get that, and I, but I'm not. I'm not even saying I'm not putting the guy down. Uh, I'm just saying there's a lot of people, and Levey obviously took a lot of shit and put it into a one one text that grabbed people better than that guy. He so codified just, it. Yeah. Yeah, just sort of he did. Do oh yeah, no matter what, I will. I would. I would always say that Levey is. I don't know if we like the term modern Satanism, but I would always say Levey is the father of modern Satanism. Well, Anything you know before Levey was just you know this is Satanism, but you, what is that really? I, I'll let you know about modern Satanism since y'all don't know what the fuck's going on here. But the modern Satanism thing, when I when I talk to Doug, when we're doing this stuff, I said, well, just grab onto the modern Satanist shit. Satanist, the Church of Satan hates that. When, whenever someone yeah. says modern Satanist, the Church of Satan fucking goes haywire. Yeah. And, and so that's the idea. That's why you understand. That's why it's like, we're modern Satanism. It was to irritate Peter. Okay? But, yeah. Okay, that's the deal. That's that's exactly what, because when pe whenever you say, well, I... If I did early dad do an interview for Satanism, I'd say, what's modern Satanism? Peter would be like, no, there's only one Satanism. It's not modern. It, it is just Satanism. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, when, so, I, when I say modern Satanism, to me, that begins with LaVey. Yeah, I agree. I, I totally, I'm with you on that. Yeah. But I know when, I, when we formed yeah. the Satanic Temple, when we were doing that stuff, that the modern Satanism thing was definitely something I brought to the table and told him, you know, I'm yeah. the person, the revealer of all the things that are going to bother Peter. Doug doesn't <laughs> right. have access to Peter. Doug doesn't yeah. understand those things. <laughs> where, where, do, where do people think where his lineage is in Satanism? It comes from my ball sack. Like, that's where it is. He's my child. Okay, my spermatozoa made him. Okay, so it's like, that's the deal. But, but anyone just takes his word, like, it's sort of funny. Hey, I'm waving a flag. I'm a Satanist, and I just I'm, I'm official. I'm official. I'm a say I'm, I'm the guy. I cred. It's like, oh my god, and it, uh, it's unfortunate that. <laughs> well, it, what? What? Nothing. I'm it's just unfortunate, like all the things I would say, like yeah, just offer the membership up for free. Everyone will fucking run at that thing because no one can do that. Search of Satan is, it's a hundred dollars or three hundred dollars or a lot of money to get in. Yeah, that's up for them. So anyone, everyone just has their. Nose against the window, looking in at Satanism, <laughs> which is great, which is probably how it should have been. Just go to the fucking library. You can't afford to identify. Just go, go, go to the library and get that book. It's probably part of the art of it. Like, go to the library and leave us the fuck alone. You want to hang out? You got to pay. You got gave us three hundred. It's another four hundred to get in the door because we. It's harsh. I'm just saying, 
<laughs> it's sort of like one of those things that deter people from joining, actually. That's what it was. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I'll tell you get what. It? Even, get the even joke in my, like, even... religion's a racket. You're a sucker if you join. I'm selling memberships for $100, and people would come up and buy memberships. When I sold soda, it was the same way. I'd go out and sell soda pop, and I'd be like, I'd do the same fucking thing. I'd be like, people are like, so... So is this, I go, oh, you don't want to buy that. It has red number four. You give your kid a migraine. But you have diet, you pour half out and walk. <laughs> oh, is it, it, oh, it's awful. It's really bad for you, this soda. We want more. They, they'd come to get two sodas. They'd leave with two cases of sodas. The worse I said it was. And the more damaging <laughs> to the children it was. And I'm like, yeah. wow. And they're like, man, you are just such an honest dude. <laughs> and it was like, that's what LeVay said. It's like, yeah, you're a sucker if you want to join. I got a card here. I'll join. <laughs> yeah, right, right on the Church of Satan on the Church of Satan website, they talk about, and, and you'll hear people say it all the time that it's an organization for non-joiners. Right. And then on the website, it says, "Join the Church of Satan here." That, but, but this is an artistic joke. When people come in and look at it from the Harvard level, analytically, it's like this is a hypocritical. This is no. Well, they was an artist. Think about the Black Panthers. Think about the White Panthers. Think about the Yippies. That's where this comes from. And it was all about being on the understanding the world is a stage. And if you're going to be on this fucking stage, let's do it, baby. So if you're going to be on the stage, let's grab some shotguns out there and play with their laws. It's legal for us to walk down the block, but I bet you it's not legal if we're black. Let's go test it out. Black Panthers did that. And it turned into yeah. something incredible. This art moment from a bunch of college dudes that were just like fucking off. And it was like, holy shit, what we are testing is really true. And we almost died. They had guns out on us. We had guns on them. We almost killed people. Wow, what we have just done has incited something beyond this. We want to get on the new thing called TV and they're suckers and they'll take any of our theatrics which was the same thing we did on that 20-year-old show. <laughs> it was that moment where it's like, there's no middlemen. There's no yeah. gatekeepers. We have the internet. We can say anything we want right now. Holy fuck. No one's going to stop us. And we, you know. And now there's all these gatekeepers yeah. online. You're yeah, not going to get away it's... with too much. As, as new people discover uh, the Satanic Temple in particular, as new people find it and discover it, they get online and they start digging around. Maybe they find Reddit or they find, you know, a podcast or this or that. And inevitably, at some point, that old um, broadcast comes up, particularly the section that, you know, Doug is talking about the stupid fucking Frisbee on their head. That's the part that everybody harps on. And, you know, there's two camps. You know, there are the people that say he's a fucking anti-Semite. Uh, this is like hateful, you know, fuck that dude, fuck this whole thing. And then there are the people who will um, senselessly defend Doug or TST no matter what they do. And, and I kind of think both of those groups are wrong, honestly. Yeah, you know, I, I, get it, I get the debate. Like free speech hasn't really even been realized in this country. It's still an idea. But I remember defending comedy clubs doing and saying whatever they want in the comedy clubs because something happened with a Seinfeld guy and all this stuff broke loose. And I remember defending yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I'll do, I'll say whatever I want. But as the internet opened up and people were saying that, you know, it's so, it's, it's killing us. We're dying from this. You know, it's like, I don't know how that fits in a comedy club anymore. Right. And you understand that word? Yeah, it's tricky. Terrible. You know, like Chappelle is the one now. Well, that's what I'm saying. He understands, like as a professional, he's a sadist. He understands as a professional, as I do as I grew up into a professional, that wow. And, and, and then as a human being, seeing, holy fuck, that is, that is, that's beyond, that word is beyond words now. It becomes something yeah. that's like a terrorism thing. And um, I suppose if you mean to do that, great, good for you, except what comes after. But, but I yeah. wasn't looking to terrorize people like that. And, uh, oh, for you know, sure. Yeah, it's, uh, if I were, yeah, I, 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 I'm a supporter of free speech generally, just because I know that, you know, I don't support everyone's speech. You know, I don't support the use of certain speech. I, I wouldn't want to use it myself. I think some things you can say are terrible, um, and they're better left unsaid. But I just, I just feel the need to protect 
the right to say it because the the alternative to that is then we have to appoint people. Who is it? A person or a group or the Supreme Court? I don't know. We have to appoint them in charge of deciding who's allowed to say what. And I don't trust those fucking people to make those decisions for me. I don't I can't. So it's it's either we have free speech or we got to trust people to to decide who can say what. And I don't fucking trust it. I think we can't have the concept of free speech until we have an educated society. I learned something like I've been doing this forever. Yeah. And so I one of the first things I got involved with was uh, and I've Tamerlan, you may know of this case, Mike Diana, obscenity of comic books. So when Mike yeah. Diana was another yeah. another prick who fucked me over. Total yeah. ingrate, fucking hate ingrates, I hate them. But I helped this guy out. Anyway, go down to his trial. He's being busted for obscenity, being put in jail for comic books. And I'm his guy. Like, give me all your artwork. Really? I'll publish your work. They're never going to stop this. Censorship is a lie. They'll come and arrest me. Someone else will publish it. We'll keep this fucking work published until they regret it. Oh, thinking about this is awful. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've always just been upset by, like, censorship type shit. Most, some of my earliest memories as a kid is the uh, the PMRC. Yeah, that's where I started. I started. What are you feeling was, right now, Shane? How am I feeling? What are you feeling? Oh, just like a, 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 a rush of uh, thoughts. And as I'm tired, it's hard to get them all into uh, a reasonable sentence because there's so much emotions with, like, Mike Diana. How long have you been up? 24 hours or something like that. You know, I, I, I slept two hours today. I'm, old, I'm older, so, you know, it's the way it goes. <laughs> but Mike Diana was a great friend of mine. We had all this, you know, that betrayal fuck you over. So feeling is just like um, yeah. sad. And I, free, I, I, and I start to forget what I'm saying. What, what, what the hell were we even talking about? I don't know. Well, you were telling us about free speech and your oh. work with Mr. Diana. Thank you. Here's that, that here, thank you for bringing back this. So the lesson is this. I'm at the court case. And they're taking Mike Diana to jail. And, and I sneak out the back door and get on a plane with all the artwork and get out of there. It's real scary. But the next day, the judge, or the next, when, he, when he sentenced him, he says, I'm sentencing you to school. <laughs> what you did was you didn't understand journalistic integrity. What you published oh. was irresponsible. But I'm, I understand no. you're ignorant. And I think you need to go to journalism school. Because when you publish, you have to be a responsible person and understand the power of publishing. And as a publisher at that time, I, I was like, you know, I was publishing on my own and really weaponizing whatever I could, like anti-censorship stuff, you know, to make the pendulum swing my way. And when he said that, I was like, yeah, I always knew there was a power in publishing. Like, yeah, dude. Exactly. <laughs> so I did, I did not go that re responsible route, and I was irresponsible on this first 24-hour radio show, let's say. And so I think there's some, in my 30 years of understanding that, I think... We have to have the education of what, what that, what, what, I don't even want to say responsible, but, you know, broadcasting is a different thing than communicating in the bar or in your house or at the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And so when people talk free speech online, free speech has to be redefined at this point to come up with modern standards. So if someone has a platform of 100,000 people, it's a real different conversation when they say something of violence than me, I've, I've had right. 10 followers. It's just different. For right. when, when, so, when social media first came out, I thought of how you could use it to say, hey, meet me at the shopping mall, which is a benign message. But then you could say, hey, meet me at the shopping mall and bring your gun. That's a whole different message. Yeah. And that's the power of social media. Right, right. Yeah. But, but, and then when a guy with 100,000 followers says that, it's really something different. Like, it's exactly. So, so the, the, we're at this moment where we have to look at things reasonably and start imagining a different way or a way to redefine things or a way to, that makes things reasonable because these are just facts. I'm not looking to take away someone that has 100,000 people's platform, but I'm all, most certainly not looking for someone to, with a popular hate message to victimize me because they can on Twitter. I mean, Trump, I'm glad they took Trump off Twitter. I mean, that guy was a total asshole. And I saw people terrorized just for donations, like, of margins. They were terrorized constantly by that guy, me included. Yeah. And it was like, oh, man, fuck this. This is terrorism. You know, totally. There's no reason. You know, I, I've lived quite a bit of my life in terror. You know, surviving on the streets, all this kind of shit. It was terrorizing. So 
yeah, I don't really appreciate when people do that to anyone. You know, it's not a good feeling. Sure. And I get terrorized for being myself, being an artist, you know, whatever. I, you know, I don't really get it myself, but oof. But it's fun too. I better than I'd, I'd be more terrorized if I was working as a plumber. So. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> right. Art's a good thing. I, 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 you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I understand what terror feels like. You know. Yeah. So, Joseph, where do you see the future of Satanism going? Tell me a story for when I'm dead. Uh, uh, well, if I live long enough to finish a book, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll manage to upset a bunch of people from both sides with it. Um, all of the uh, the Church of Satan people will be pissed at me immediately because I'll be calling something Satanism, and all of the exactly. Satanic Temple people are going to hate my guts because yeah. I'm going to rail against the Satanic Temple's uh, flaws, and that's which, of which where, there are many. No, that's no, kind of no. where I found myself as well. I don't think so. Uh, the only the lap dogs at the Church of Satan bark. Okay, no yeah. one that's a Church of Satan member old school barks unless they're mm. the lap dogs, and none of us old guards are everyone's listening present the book and they're going to read it they're going to look at it and consider yeah. it and right now you guys ain't got shit until one of us old guards brings it into the future so until yeah boyd rice blesses your book or i do or someone else it doesn't mean shit and that's coming from the theosophy society that's coming from the people who record <laughs> records of religions for thousands and ten thousands of years okay so i think a true. very we are very important very special by the people the theologians of the world and, and, and that goes from, like I say, the Jesuit priest at DePaul University, top Jesuit priest in America. I sat down with lunch with him. And he will say the same thing. When I speak of Satanism, it's serious. When the old guard of Lay speaks of it, it's written in their books. And so that's how that goes. So, Joseph, good book. Write a good hmm. book. Everyone's listening and wants one. Thanks. If you can add to it, yeah, please thank do. You. But I don't see that with the Satanic Temple, and it's not because the guy's my enemy. It's because a lot of this co shit comes out of some romance novel really fucking quick to dupe you. I get it. I was there. That's how we did it. We're like, yeah, just yeah. open up a well, romance thing, novel. Open up that comic book. One thing that... Them. The one thing that's sort of... Uh, I, I've, I guess I've paid more attention to it recently that, that bothers me about the Satanic Temple is, like, for the, for the Church of Satan, for example, when I want to know... Uh, something or remind myself of, of something that the satanic temple has uh, has feelings about or has a stance about or whatever you can go on their website you know obviously I, I search through the satanic Bible and but this the Church of Satan has a whole you know a, a vast archive of essays and things that not only Gilmore but LaVey and other people have written that they have archived in the website that you can search and with the satanic temple you've got the seven tenets and that's it. There is Wait. really no canon. Wait, you've got a documentary without the actual story in it. <laughs> well, yeah, there that is that. Maybe there's a tip right there. There's a clue. There's a clue that this is propaganda from politicians, just as the Ivy League would get Obama voted into office or anyone else. And I'm not yeah. against Obama. You know, I'm just saying, like, I thought his marketing campaign was brilliant, using street art, hope. But it was that simple marketing that... He's a great orator, probably one of the best or orators, too. I'm not going to take that away from him. Great. Great speeches, very smart man. But that marketing helped him out a lot with young people. And you can't you know, I think the most ones. important satanic tome of the last 25 years is Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power. Yeah, but, it's, but, but all that is is a, a rehashing of Might is Right, basically, in a different way. Or a rehashing of all those Might is Right kind of books. I love Robert Greene, though. I get it. He simplified. He's like LeVay of that kind of stuff, really. He was able yeah. to bring it down to Fry Cooks could read it. And I, I, I do. I appreciate him. I'm just, I don't. I, yeah, you're right. How, how dare me? He's basically just did the same fucking thing as LeVay. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. One for the advocate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, That's he's great. I, I don't know. I, I think his modern satanic books, though, for me, Boy, what would you think of, dude? Outside of your own shit. <laughs> <laughs> Modern satanic books? Like, fuck, dude. Um, that's a hard one for me. I would say for me, it's uh, any, any, uh, the, 
Patty, anything Patty Smith releases? <laughs> That's a hard one. That's a hard question. Patty Smith is uh, her her poetry, and she goes after. She's like a cat Roman Catholic. She's out in this shit. You read her work, and that is she is on the pulse of life. Like she's riding a wave that's just going. I mean, she's just in it, and and her, her words flow, and they flow in an original way. It's not written like every book. It's it's a different language, and it's full of life and poetry and art and observation, and feeling. That's what I'm looking at. I don't need a fucking person to tell me what Satanism is. I got it. <laughs> You know, and I'm not saying that you do or don't. I'm just like, I don't, for me, I, I want to feel Satanism. And that's where I feel like Satanism is like almost a feeling or water. It's something that is different than everyone's trying to define now. You know, I, I don't, I think it's, it's, you don't need all this stuff. It's really sort of all become marketing. Maybe Joseph, you're, and I think we should all try to add to things or try to talk. I think those books are cool. A lot of, I think your book would probably be cool. I think a lot of it's being watered down. I picked up all these satanic books and just had a laugh. Oh, satanic feminism. You read through it, and it's not anything about Satan. Oh. They're just, you know, the yeah. words just become something yeah. to market. Yeah, and I'm trying to, one thing I'm trying to do is when I come up with an idea, when I have an idea or a value or a principle or something that I feel strongly about, I try not to just say, oh, well, this is satanic. Why is it satanic? What's its connection to Satan or Satanism or the lore of Satan throughout time? Uh, because any any of us can pick out anything and say, I, I like, uh, you know, I like Soundgarden. So, you know, Satanists have to like Soundgarden. Um, that's bullshit, obviously. So I need to find a reason why, like, where's the connection? Did LeVay talk about this principle? Did, um, was, was it was it a part of Paradise Lost? Was it Was it anywhere in the lore of Satan throughout time, you know? Um, and that's part of my life. Like, yeah, I'm going to write a book. I have a lot of ideas. And then I we sat down real fucking hard. Um, so hey, Joseph, we'll see if I live long enough to finish it. You're breaking up. You started breaking up there a little bit. The ops oh, shit. Can you hear me? Bro. The ops are after you. We hear everything else. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Here comes the gold. <laughs> the ops are going after you. Oh, no. Joseph. Hey Shane, you saw that post where I um I had to like uh, do become part of a court action suit against uh, Facebook, right? For sharing sharing information with the feds. I don't. I didn't see that. What happened? It, oh, you didn't see that. Well, I well I got this email. It turns out to be a legit case. They're class action. That's the term. They have a class action suit against Facebook because uh, I guess the feds asked for. Um, some information and they gave the information on, on a bunch of people and apparently i was one well at least they're telling you uh, well yeah right <laughs> right you know um makes sense that you're one <laughs> I makes sense of, I would, I would, well yeah i would imagine a lot of satanists are on the radar right now satanism is not defined right now i had two helicopters fly over our event in Chicago, we did a witch's Sabbath. And I've had that happen in Chicago over 20 years. This time was really great, it was the best. You wanna know why? Well, two helicopters, a bunch of patrol cars, cops there, and you wanna know something that was great? Let me get in that camera. They were afraid of me. <laughs> and it was wonderful because when I said, take your fucking hand off me or I'll make sure to talk to these people and we'll have problems, the police removed their hand from me and said, let this man move this stuff. And they were nice. silent when I walked in the room. And there was a terrorism task force there with their sticks on looking at us like, holy shit, what the fuck's gonna go on here? And I was like, oh, this is great. And people are like, why do you think it's happening? And I'm like, cause this is a dangerous moment. Why, cause it's Satanism? It's Satanism with all colors of the rainbow here mm -hmm. it's satanism with all classes of people here mm -hmm. and do you want to know something when i was jumped into the counterculture it was from revolutionaries like john sinclair sh shit like that people who were out in riots 68 riots look them up and they would continually tell me the only way to win is with class unity it's almost impossible 
with all of the things they have us fighting over. And when I saw that thing, I was like, oh my God, no one here, everyone here is like, they're not afraid of Satan, so of course they're not afraid of each other. And they're all sniffing each other out. And every motherfucker there was dangerous. And there's no doubt there was a, how many guns you think were in that fucking place? Uh, I had mentioned that. I was like, I know. yo, somebody got a fucking. How many? Because it's lot. Chicago, but I'm guessing there must have been at least 20 years. 20 guns. There's a couple that. dozen guns in that sh- that room. At least 20 guns in there. There was a couple dozen guns in that room. People were, you know, I'm, I'm just telling you, it was wild, wild west there. And everyone was there checking each other out. And it was just such an amazing scene. I, how did you feel? Uh, I mean, personally, I didn't give a fuck. You know, I was totally, <laughs> I mean, that was all right. But no, your so observation. We but I'm talking about, after, like, when the shit, when the shit went down, you know, and the police came and all that shit. That's when I was like, oh. And I saw how they interacted with y'all. I was like, wait a minute, are they fucking scared? You know? And it they happened. I saw that situation where they where they were like, Oh man, you know, we don't we're we're in danger. Yeah. I think they might have had that sense. And then well, they started taking pictures and shit. Oh, they did and, that. and calm, they didn't come in like, stop this right now. They came in, put a hand on Shane, went like this, and then started taking pictures. I and looked shit. like this, I said, You get your hand off me right fucking right. now. I remember and that I know shit. when you say that to a Chicago cop, you get the smackdown usually. But I would tell I was so furious, and I was furious, and I knew I had to be calm because there were people of color in that, in, in this situation. And when that happens, people get shot. It's just the deal. So I have to not be outrageous and start yelling because I have to be concerned about what could happen here. It's it a was a very tense situation. We, but I went outside. They wouldn't leave. No one would leave. They, the cops had them go outside, and they're like, we're not leaving until Shane says so. You know, it was so And tense. they're like, could you go out there and remove them? And I'm like, I look at the cops, and I'm like, oh... And I look at the situation, and here's the situation, you fucking pigs. You were in a fucking room with no doors to get out. And I seriously thought, boy, we have you. What well, was Avi saying? could you be saying to that? Was- They had no way out. They had no back doors. There was a room, and they entered it. And I was like, oh, you guys are so fucked right now. Uh, Avi says it was, was like, tense. No, I'm talking about people that are shooters. They're right there. They're like, what do we do? What do we do? And I'm like, we leave. This is not the place. But I don't, I'm not for that. What I'm saying is those cops understood that could have been a bad night for them. And they're in Chicago. So it was intense. And Chicago cops it, are not a fair like it, it just is never, I've never seen that. I've never experienced that in my life in Chicago. And I've been harassed by these cops. They were, and, and some of the guy cops started to, like I was bold where, like I said, some shit and these, you know, it tested them. They come out and the women cops would get right in front of them and say, go back, go back, stop. And it was like outrageous because, you know, I was like, oh, I was so close, dude. Like, like I, when that guy cop grabbed my shoulder, he grabbed my shirt like this. It's like, I was like, uh, like, oh, dude, I'm going to fucking just dang. Oh, so God. like I, in my <laughs> mind, when when the shit hit the fan that night of the Witches Sabbath and I saw it was like you could you could cut the tension in that room with a knife, you know, Everybody was like, ooh, the cops are like, oh, what's going to happen? Is it going to be a fucking riot? <laughs> you know, is it going to do? They were like, is it going to be a fucking riot? And then you saw six cars outside. Then you heard the chopper. Then you heard the second chopper. And then you're in people inside. Were, Avi's group, Avi guys like, yeah, again, we're not moving until shit. You know, like we're staying. We're not moving. And they're looking at cops like, let's go. They got, they're starting to put their hands up. And, and they're like, yeah, we're not leaving. And the cops like, oh, and, and these motherfuckers all had a look in their eye like, we're going to die, and we don't care. We're going to fuck you up for fucking up our good. It was, it was intense. It was Everyone really there intense. had determination. Like, if it went down, oh, man. I think, in my mind, I was thinking we, hadn't, we weren't doing anything wrong. We Why were. the fuck are you here? We had a great time. Why the great... fuck are what, you here? You what was their issue? issue. <laughs> uh, it was just the fact that it was a Satan party. Yeah, it was, it's, it's uh, what I, I've done this for 30 years. It's the satanic stuff in the Midwest. Yeah. The Catholic Church has a lot of power here, and they just do that to toy around. They're, 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 but they're surely that's around. not what they were saying, though. They must have cited oh, yeah. some sort of oh, permit oh, yeah. or, it, it or was, crowd. It was, it was they, they say they put a citation on the building, and said it wasn't a legal building, and shut the whole fucking Here's what it is down. it's always a licensing yeah. thing in Chicago, and then you go to court, and then you sue them, and then you find out that it wasn't a licensing issue at all. It was a mistake. Right. Legally made. <clears throat> so that's how it's gone for my whole life. But in this situation, I had some of my friends that were security, and some of those people don't look like me. They don't look like anyone like us. They look like CIA or some shit. They look like cops. 
they're they're hardcore military fucking jujitsu, kill people with their hands shit. So they're there guarding Carla and me. And the cops think that they're cops, so they start coming up and talking because they ain't got handcuffs on them, and they start talking to them. And, and Chris, dude's like, "What's going on?" And he looks at the page. He's like, "Oh, they told us this is our first. We had to come here with all of it. This is the first thing of the night. We had to make sure this shut down." It's a licensing thing. He's like, what is it licensing for, though? There's all these venues around here. It's a legitimate. I checked it out as a security person. They have licensing. He goes, oh, we got to run around and look around for the licensing problem. But it has, this, has, this ain't going to, it has to be shut. Uh-huh. It's going to be shut down tonight. And that's how Chicago works. And, you know, that's what you, what you get to say is you better make sure to dot all your I's and cross all your T's because I'm going to sue the mm-hmm. fucking shit out of you. And when I sue you, I'm going to look for them to take your job. And so you just, that's what I had to explain to the cops when I was there. You know, and if anyone here gets hurt, I'm totally, I got power and lawyers and all of that shit, and I'm going to use all of it on you. So make sure yeah. it's peace. You know, like, that's what you, that's the only compromise I can do is, like, everyone has to leave in one piece, you know, and I got to be able to get my shit out of the venue, my merch, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and so that's, I haggled that deal, and they stayed there for an additional hour waiting for me to go get a van to get my shit out of there. Yeah. So it was great. Actually, it was great. And my point, the reason it was great is nothing to do with me. It's that everyone there saw that fear and felt that power. And it was a working class crowd and a majority of marginalized people. Yeah. And they were like, holy shit, we have power. Yep. That's what it was. Holy shit. And they were like, they, when they, they saw, go outside and they're like, exactly. When those, like when the kids, like there, there are younger people out there. And when they saw the power they had, they were like, wait a minute. They don't run us. You can see the, the change. Like, we have we have a fucking say-so. It's like, yes, you do. That's exactly why we're here. You have to realize that you have some fucking power. You can see the change in their demeanor. They went from, oh, no, the police are here to... To collectively... Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the police hurt me. To, to collectively, with courage, we have coin. We have coinage. It's time to bargain, bitch. And just that seed, watching that seed hit, to me was... That's all I need. That's all anyone needs to understand that. In a, in a, in a, there's no unity for a long time, but in those moments of unity, you got coinage. Make them pay. Ask the yeah. Teamsters of the old days that would surround supermarkets and no one would get to grocery shop until they got the raise. There you and go. There's that moment of unity. You're going to get your coin. And I just I try to encourage, and I, I would maybe Satanic Delco or other people would try to encourage. Uh, an education on what a general strike is. Yeah. To try to trickle that education down to people who wash dishes and other things. Because when I'm able to explain to them what it is and how it works and how it could work, they're for it. But they need to understand. Very important. So if someone could do a comic book, a jack chick. General strike's all we have prior to total violence. So I hope you all think about general strike because I'm not really for the total violence that could be breaking loose soon. Yeah, no one wins yeah, it's way. totally it's totally not not the same exactly, but a, a similar feeling is when we've done those uh, the dre- like the dress code shit, for example, or even the scholarship a little bit. But the dress code is a good one because like everybody hates us. Right. Like I contact them and they want to be like, fuck you. Like with Satan, we're not dealing with Satan. Like, what are you talking about? Um, but pretty, pretty soon they realize, like, I'm not going to stop. And we're gonna win, and you're gonna change that fucking dress code, and everybody's gonna be mad at you when you do it. But you're gonna do it, and they do it, and and that is the best feeling. Oh, I love that shit. I love that shit, especially like, I love that kind of shit. Like when they ask for receipts, like you, you, in, in California or whatever, when you leave a store, they they just ask people that might look like me, "Can I see your receipt?" And you can legitimately. Oh yeah, say, they do it here no. too. No, and I walk right out, and they can't do anything. Yep. So just to know yep. that and empower other people, I, I, I tell poor people, hey, you could just say no, and they're like, really? I go, watch this shit, yo. Anytime I leave, <laughs> I'm like, anytime I, leave I don't know. I, I drop this. I wait by the exit just to drop this information, just to irritate them. I'm like, watch. <laughs> can I see your receipt? Nope. nope. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> and everyone looks behind me like, <laughs> all these people are looking behind me like, he said no. He's walking. No claps. Yeah. And I look yeah. behind my back, and the next thing, like, no. <laughs> Oh, I gotta put the. Um, yeah, I gotta get. I gotta get out of here, Shane. I gotta go hang out with the kid a little bit before bedtime. But, 
you would if you've never seen them, you would probably love this. I've fallen down the YouTube rabbit hole of dudes that do a First Amendment audit. I don't know if you've ever seen oh, these yeah. guys, but you'll probably get a kick out I've of it. I've seen them. Mm -hmm. I would. I would. Oh, I, dude, it's I, the greatest. I'm gonna have to look at Already it. getting yeah, a definitely. kick out of it, Joseph. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joseph, Shane. Good to chat us. with you. I'll hit you up and we'll uh, we'll exchange some artwork or something. Great. And remember, Avi's going to be emailing you. You got you. you should... I'll reach out on some social media platform. Avi's I'm a... going to link up with. Yeah, you. I hope you. I hope you look into okay. Avi's stuff. He's got a lot of good stuff. A lot of stuff that I've never heard within Satanism about it leading to Africa. So. You might be interested. Cool. Fuck yeah. Have a good night, Peace. guys. Have fun. Take it Later, easy. Buddy. Take care. Tamerlane. And then there was three. Right. Plus Tamerlane. five viewers. First, have you met John? Let's you... talk about his rock star look with the red glasses and the Wait, mustache. Have I've been holding it in the whole time. Let's there. introduce John. That's, let's introduce John. So drippy. Go ahead. John G. <laughs> Say hi to Tamerlane. Hey, how you doing, Tamerlane? I'm John. Holy have crap. You, you got a John's third person there? Yeah, I saw him on the YouTube. I saw him on the YouTube. No, no. Show him some of your artwork, bro. You guys should introduce real quick. Here, check it out. Oh, wait, lower, lower it a little bit. Bring it down. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's like a creepy voodoo doll. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah, all of my artwork I create was inspired by me living in an actual haunted house. Nice. And all these dolls, I put actual dirt from haunted locations. Like this got dirt from Bachelors Grove Cemetery and the Gary Demon House. Very cool. Now, mm -hmm. what were you going to say about no, his rock star about, look? I was talking about his rock star look with the red fucking mustache and the, and the glasses. I was like, God, dude, this fucking looks cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I noticed the people who wear the aviators are usually douchebags. So I really wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to capture that look. <laughs> okay. o Officer Satan. And then, you know, the red, I could have went a couple different colors. I could have went green, I could have went purple, but I thought the red went well, well with the grill, you know? So. Yeah, I was checking that out, too. I see every once in a while, like, showing the grill. I'm like, oh, check this dude out, man. So you got a YouTube or something you were talking about? Yeah, I got a YouTube, TikTok, Facebook. I make, uh, I make short films, too. I'm usually, the, I'm usually the antagonist, go figure. I'm the bad guy. For this, uh, we did a we did a steampunk film, and I I made sure I put in a, a satanic calling for calling. We named the characters Behemoth and Leviathan. But the third demon, a lot of people don't know, is a, a Persian flying demon called Ziz. Ziz, okay. Yeah, Ziz. So everyone knows Leviathan, Behemoth, right? But nobody knows Ziz. Yeah. So we we put these three demons into this short uh, film called Adam Steam like Adam Punk and Steampunk together. Okay. And so I, I summon the demons in the film. So very, a very uh, LeVay inspired it's like prayer. A, it's not a horror film, man. It's like uh Nah, it's more like an action adventure type thing. Fantasy kind of. Okay, cool. That's yeah. awesome, dude. I'm, awesome. A, I'm also the bad guy in another film called Heroes of Sixth Street. And uh, Sixth Street, also known as Sistrunk here in Fort Lauderdale, is a, a historic black neighborhood. And so the heroes of Sixth Street are a family of African-American superheroes. Nice. Hmm. Nice. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the bad guy. I play like a land developer wanting to take away their gardens, which is, of course, you know, it's, I'm actually totally for, for the gardens, but I get, to, I get to ham it up, you know. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. looking at like because these fucking teeth. I'm like, <laughs> it's funny because there's two cameras, so I don't know if like the one that's showing the split is the camera up here. This is what Tamerlane can there. see. Okay, that's I see the two of you. Yeah. yeah, and that's okay. what. That, so John, and if you got any questions, chime in. That's what the world sees. And if you go to YouTube, you can see. Yeah, you can what? see the rest of us, right? right no, it's all right. I just, you, I just YouTube is what YouTube is what everyone else sees, right? So what else? Yeah, and then the gold grill was inspired. You know, you're talking about security. I used to run security at Fort Lauderdale's biggest nightclub. It was 60,000 square feet, two stories high, uh, uh, indoor pool in the backyard, and tiki like, bar in the back. You're like 6'5", 300 pounds? <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm under six feet tall, but uh, I'm over 200, though. <laughs> at least I was. 
back then in that, those days. Now we we were a big team, so I didn't have to be I, I didn't have to be a giant man. I just I just had to tell the other guys to do the dirty work. <laughs> just like pick up the radio so, and there's five other guys, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the gold grill was inspired by all the people I threw out back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, dude. That's a great fucking story. Yeah. So like, uh, so how did you end up in Satanism, dude? Can you tell me something about how did you end up here? You know, we all got our own story, and I love to hear how everyone begins. You well, know? you know, it's. I just realized that, um, you know, I realized that I was against the grain. When you start, when you start to see that that you know the same people that were against uh, like legalization of marijuana were the same people against heavy metal were the same people that were bigots, and, and you just it, it, it was the same thing, you know. And so. I think with with with, with the, the Satanism, it's just you want to be against. I want to be against the the popular culture that's wrong, right? You know the the Christian American way. The Christian American way is you know it's it's bullshit. Yeah. And so, you know, like the Satanism is it's a it's symbolism the against all of that. Land, right? <laughs> What's that? What was that? It's the United States of Jesus Land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. And I just, you know, I think it's wrong to have, to indoctrinate children into this. Uh, you know, I, I call it, I call it fascism is what it is because they're using religion and nationalism mixed up with some racial superiority and, and, uh, and militantism and it's, and it's a mess. And that's, that's, that's one of the things we're facing nowadays. So, Dude, yeah, I mean, you just you I you know that's just I don't think I could have said it better myself. That's it. That's hitting the the nail with the hammer. You know, mm -hmm. that's it right there, man. And it's really fucked up. You know, it's. I think this is the only way that uh, or the main route to to sort of having it and that to destroying the madness. You know. Uh, so yeah. Time. Well, you know, I'm, I'm hanging with Tamerlane. Tamerlane's inspired me. I got to get some bling up, baby. <laughs> jewels. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I got to step it up. He's got his grill and shit. <laughs> hey, man. It's about the showmanship, right? It is. LeVay, LeVay was a carny, and uh, it is. I respect that. <laughs> Absolutely is. And, and, you know, I, I think that's a real important part of, uh, of, of, of being an artist. A public artist. That's right, because uh, I, you know I'm I'm a I'm a performance artist, and uh, I, do, I, I think so. and, and I realize that you know some of the things I say could be uncomfortable. So you know I'm I'm the sugar for the medicine at times. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, so you know I I, I you know that's it. Uh, John's got his John over. Here, you don't can't see him. But he's got his look too. He comes. In I like, see him on the on the YouTube though. Yeah. John's got this great look. I just love it. Like. Yeah, he's looking like uh, Charles Manson's long lost son or something. <laughs> or Marilyn Man. You're right. He's got like the Marilyn Man, but he's t he's got the tall. He got he's got something going on. But he's got this artist. Avi, we all have this style. Like Avi comes, he got his vest on. You know, I just love that. That's that's to me is another sign of a Satanist. Like you know, nerds. I think Stanton said some shit. I was talking about nerds. He's like, you know, I'm like, we're basically nerds, book nerds. And he goes, yeah, but but we look good, fashionable. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, it's like we're fashionable nerds. We're not the nerds that you know. You, you brought up you brought up Manson. I don't know if you caught. Uh, I don't know if I sent it to you or not. I ended up making friends with uh, Daisy Berkowitz. Daisy Berkowitz is the true creative impetus behind Marilyn Manson. He was, yeah. Well, he's he's no longer with us, but um, yeah. So new Daisy, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that was just an interesting little tidbit of a of a story. So I did a great interview with him. Luckily, of course, before he passed. But uh, yeah, he would kick around Fort Lauderdale here. You know, that's where Brian Warner is from, South Florida. Was Daisy Scott? Scott Potesky, yes. Yeah, Scott. Okay, I was right. I, yeah, I, I knew Daisy real well. He's got some um, stuff on his Instagram. I I met them, geez, their first record when it was first released. They came into Chicago and came to my store. We became, we became good friends then. Yeah. Cancer got him, unfortunately. Yeah, and it was a shame. You know what? What I really, really just hated about that is, is like Manson didn't 
you know, like never. You did him wrong. wrong. What? You did him wrong. Talk about betrayal and friendship. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That story right there is exactly did him wrong, and then the guy has cancer and still won't throw a bone, won't won't do something the right thing to make yeah do the right thing. And I know Brian too, and and it definitely lost a lot of respect. Because yeah, Scotty would tell crazy stories about Trent Reznor being a complete douchebag and throwing equipment out windows and destroying personal property and vehicles and all sorts of messed up, maniacal shit. Yeah. It was hard for me to look back on this 20-year anniversary of because the two people I did it with, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty much enemies with them. I fucking could say I hate them. But looking back on it as a creative force, what was happening there... This is where I would think about Marilyn Manson. I can't understand looking back on that those moments of creation and, and still holding these same hate. I still hate these people, but there's something that in that moment where I respect, where I look back on it, and I, I can't. That's have, probably the healthier way to go, anyway. Well, we did something. We made something together. It's like if you make a child together, you sort of have to sort of look at that moment. It's like so, who was it with you 20 years ago? What? Who was it with you 20 years Doug ago? Doug Mesner, uh, you would know him probably as Lucy and Greaves. Yeah, of course, Doug, yeah. And, and my wife, Amy. Ah. And Amy, I shouldn't we're say... Justice, so we can see, so what, they can see you, Doug. There, we're like, there, oh, okay, there, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, I got Yeah, let's get... Okay, I'm, I, I was trying to be off the camera. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Um, and I, I don't want to say my wife, because uh, in that situation, uh, she was a creative partner in, in certain things. In that project, she was certainly a creative... We were creative partners on uh, a lot, a lot. I, I, somewhat, somewhat. No, I don't know how to explain that fucking shit. Yeah. You know, it's a, a marriage is not the easiest to explain in simple terms. But we did <laughs> a partnership with her, then with Doug, and it wasn't just. She wasn't just a wife. That's all I'm saying. Understood. So. We, we did something there, and as much as I hate them, and I, I, I want revenge, or I just, I'm just so angry at how, how our, our recent lives played out while we're at war, but in that moment, I have to think of them in that moment. And I know we had a friend, I feel like we had something, we, we had fun, we had joy, or we had friendship, or we were passionate, something was going on there. And I just thought, my point isn't about me, it's about how can Marilyn Manson not look back on those things when you create such an impressive body of work with a person and not go and just think back on that moment. Right. As an artist, I don't get it. And he's an artist. That's why I don't get it. I know how normal people can be. But artists aren't normal people. Right. That's why I think I'm like at odds with this. Because I'm like, how dare you act like a normal person? <laughs> That's what bothers me about it. Yeah. We, we, as artists, we're supposed to think a little deeper. And and, 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 and and struggle with it, not just like that. I don't know. I like Scott is what I'm saying, and I feel you. You know, yeah. it was a yeah. sad thing. He was a good guy. Yeah, I got, I'm glad I got that interview before he left. I would see him at a downtown bar called The Poor House, which still kind of kicks around. It was a blues bar, but they would do like, you know, the rockabilly, hellabilly, kind of got the Billy music too, so... It was a great place for just a great eclectic crowd. Have good conversations with people like Potesky, Florida, a.k.a. Florida, Daisy Berkowitz. Yeah, Florida definitely had a lot of great music come out of it. Death, Deicide, Marilyn Manson. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how like the, those bands came out of like the, the Sunshine State. <laughs> it makes sense, though, really, because that's where everyone goes to retire and die. Yeah, yeah, okay, there you go. So was it, which, what, what, no, no, there was the other heroin addict in Marilyn Manson, not Daisy, but the other guy. Yeah. And, and he died, Gidget. Gidget, yeah, he's gone Gidget, too. He, yeah, and he would talk about that environment, to me, he would talk about that environment, the death environment drove him into picking up dead bodies. He had a job, job picking up dead bodies for a long time, and that caused him to have his addiction went full-fledged after that. And, uh, I would yeah, I'm going to go off camera here for a second, but I'm still here, all right? Yeah, whatever. I'm going to go offline. <laughs> you took, don't look at me. <laughs> don't look but at I'm still, But I'm still here in spirit. <laughs> I'm just like the guy from Blue Velvet. 
sexually. Don't so you uh, fucking look at me. Yeah, Dennis Hopper. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Yeah, that's a nice disturbing scene there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how many hours you at it now? Oh, 17, fuck. 17, I don't know. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5. Oh, God. This is the worst part of it. We're in the final stretch. This is the absolute worst part of it. <laughs> so you got how many hours to go? Oh, you know what? Fuck you. Okay, you're in fucking Florida. You got all this cocaine around you, and we're sitting there smoking. <laughs> we can walk out of the uh, door and just goddamn... Look like wipe dust off the mailbox. He's gonna get high. Yeah, Fuck that would, high. That would keep you going. Let me FedEx some to you right away. Oh, <laughs> you gotta send it Amazon. I t- you know what's, <laughs> what's funny it's though? It's like only Amazon delivers those. Yeah, they're the they're, exactly. <laughs> but it's funny you see these comedians and they're able to just riff on the, on the coke, man. Not me. I I shut up. <laughs> Next, you know, I'm grinding my teeth and. Rubbing my tongue against the back of my TV, you know, trying to trying to form words. I'm better riffing without it. Give me a give me a stiff espresso and some Cuban coffee, and then I then I'm good. I'm I'm reckless with drugs, so. Yeah. It's weird. Buddy. It's weird. You know. So you what else you been? About, what have you been doing? Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, Shane, you were talking about that earlier, like uh, addiction, like the part of it being part of it. You know, people having their di- different addictions. You know, um, I think I kind of think that's a weird space to to think about something. You know, in a in a philosophical sort of context, it's like you always have a fucking addiction. It's gonna be, it could be working out, which you go, like, oh, I'm, I'm super healthy, but then you could work out till you fucking work yourself to death. You know, we were talking about that with, with Bruce Lee. You know, oh, true and, obsessions um, and stuff, right? Yeah, so it's like it's weird to go um, to to have people, you know, that judge other people. Like we we're talking about Satanism. It's like the reason people like Satanism is Satan doesn't judge. Well, you know? I but, think certain addiction, like you're saying, is cool, but certain addictions become dangerous and deadly. Yeah, that's what I was so. You definitely say. have to judge when you're around an addict because they kill you for a dime bag or something. So mm-hmm. it becomes the judgment becomes almost preservation. Yeah, and so I, I brought that up to say this. It's like with addiction, I think that if you want to um, sort of judge your your journey, you know, as your growth journey, you can judge by how many of your addictions you start to conquer. You know, you start oh. with the little fucking ones, and you're like, okay, I beat that. I'm doing okay? really good. And like with me, I was a fucking smoking cigarette, so I'm talking pack more pack and a half a day. I'm smoking the shit out of these fucking things. And to beat that was like, oh, free, I can breathe. You know, and it was a weird fucking thing. So you start to chip at the little things to try to improve yourself. You I'm know? like the typical addict, though. I, I guess I, I just, my, my thing is now coffee. My thing is now coffee. Yeah. Hey, John, let me ask you something. Hey, yeah, what's up, Shane? What, do you, what, what is art to you? Art, art's complicated to me because I didn't choose art. Art came to me. I had no plans of being an artist or making any art at all. I had no idea I'd be here now at 25 years old making these freaking sculptures that are paranormal, you know? It's like, art to me, it's a freaking curse. That's what it is, it's a freaking curse. You're freaking cursed to make these things and now you can't stop making them because now you got your, you get, you're running on that hamster wheel, you stop running on that hamster wheel, you're gonna freaking fly off it. Well, agreed. Get it. I love what you just said, dude. Yeah. Like that's fucking great. It's a curse. <laughs> you that's pretty much the same shit you were saying earlier. Where you was like, well, people it's, kept calling me an artist. I didn't call myself an artist. Yeah, you people know kept calling me an artist. That was the curse. They cursed you with it. Like, oh, I you're think, an artist. Did you I, say like, did I say that? Yeah, you were like, yeah, fuck, I'm like, an artist. I, I don't think. I think when people <laughs> call themselves artists, I'm like leery of thinking of them as because I think that has to be stowed upon you. So right. I think about. Pretty I'm good. listening. I'm listening, but I, I'm skeptical because. But that doesn't mean someone didn't bestow it on the person when they say they're an artist. I, I just, I'm, I'm skeptical because that word's overused, and it's for identity purposes. But when you're saying it like that, like it's a curse. Uh, that's true. That's a truth uh, about art. Let me, s- listen. Could be you're looking at bad angles. I don't listen. This is like camera angles. I've lost plenty of weight. 
I'm going to sit right there. I'm sitting straight up. It doesn't look well. You look slovenly. I'm laying down like that. You know, come on. I'm sorry, John, but I got to think of myself once in a while. You got the contacts in. You got advantages. Well, actually, I started wearing these contacts because I was getting ready for the witches. Sam, you said you were going to have a fashion suit, but I had to go all out for that shit, and it just stuck. So after the freaking witches stab, I just started wearing contacts. You got that? Another, another. <laughs> love that. I love that. But it works. It, it's a fucking freak show. It works. In a good way. I mean, that's good. Well. I have to give you envy because whatever's going on in your look is just like, yeah. You know what? Like you're talking about having problems with people outside your house, gangbangers and stuff. <laughs> Anymore. Like, you just put the con- <laughs> do you just put the contacts in go outside? <laughs> They're like armor. Like this, yeah, just like. You just set them up real pre- hard. Like a, <laughs> scan them over, and everyone's like, yeah, dude, get the fuck away. You're like, oh, <laughs> is that what happens? Oh, yeah, sometimes it fucking shows. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you got to have one pocket doll. That you, just, you just keep it in your pocket and you walk outside. And just... You know what? <laughs> oh, that's real. me with my fucking cane. <laughs> right, he's a fucking... Scared of each other, like don't, love don't fuck with them. I just absolutely love that you said. What is our work? Our work is it's a curse. Yeah, because yeah, you could be a regular fucking person, live a regular fucking life, live, do what, being a fucking artist. It's not promised you're gonna be successful. It's not promised that you're gonna. It's almost guaranteed you won't. People be. are gonna like <laughs> your art or whatever. Yeah. You know, so it's like. It's almost guaranteed they especially won't. Especially with my stuff, that stuff. It's a really uphill battle. Scares the shit out of people. Absolutely. But I've given demonstrations. I mean, I've displayed my art in like Catholic churches and talked to rooms full of professors about my art, and all they could tell me is how professional my fucking display is. And to me, I don't really look at it that way because it's just something I do. It's fucking natural. No one taught me how to do this shit. No one taught me how to set up my stuff. Yeah. It's just fucking automatic. Just like how the art is. It's like going into a trance. You're making something. You don't know what the fuck you're making. And before you know it, it's done. You got a fucking demon doll before you fuck. <laughs> Dude. Got a demon doll made out of toilet paper. You know, the whole fucking sentence, all of the words you use, for me, when I listen to you, I'm just like, keep going. <laughs> keep going. I got the grave dirt. I wrapped the toilet paper. The demons are visiting every word. Like, and then there's a toilet paper. As a plumber, stock, I, I enjoy to hear the toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, man. I make it out of toilet paper. It's just like, oh, this is beautiful. Something so simple became something so complex. Why toilet paper? I never use clay. I never. I can't draw. For but what? Shit. But did you ever? What, you just uh, out of nowhere? Yeah, like, out of nowhere, dude. I you just were like, toilet paper. You know, I just wet some fucking toilet paper, and all of a sudden, I'm making this shit. So, I want to comment. All right, I'm jumping. I didn't Please. Wanna, I didn't want to interrupt, but I want to jump in on this, because we were talking about it earlier, and you were in the kitchen. So, that's actually the ancient tradition. And, and voodoo with the doll babies, and the voodoo doll, the old, the way that those old Africans did it, they would go out and dip their hands in that fucking wet mud, and then make the paper mache. They would get there and make a paper mache and mold the dolls the same way he Really? Does it. And so, I sat him, and I was like, bro, I got to tell you about this. And they make it out of the graveyard dirt the same way you're doing. I'm like, bro, I gotta tell you about this. It that's that's conjure. I'm like, this is happening because you tapped into it, you know. And I'm like, it's coming through. You don't understand why you're doing this thing, but I'm like, you're literally doing it the same way. And it's that thing I was talking about. Like, you don't even know why you're just doing it. That's the possession part. It's like you don't know why you're doing this. It's just happening. And here he is making it the same way. Everything you know? I've ever done's been fucking accidental. Every, that's weird. From dude. meeting you. To doing all these events and shit, it's all accidental. It just happens. John, I understand. This is something I understand. I feel weird myself because it's like I, I just was there. Like, it, like with the, like it was an accident. I met Levey. Like, I, but it wasn't. I did something. I sent them something. There was a, there's a, there's a breadcrumb trail, but at the same time, I'm like, where the fuck am I sitting here? Right. That's what I'm, <laughs> That's how I am. Like, today. how about this? I didn't realize it's special when I did Levey. Like, I'm like, oh, whatever. Big, I met a lot of fans. I do a zine. I'm the king of Chicago. I'm a big fucking deal, 20, whatever. I'm the god. You know, I do a zine, so I can get an interview with anyone. I get tickets. Shitty zine. I, I was like, a, big in my mind. Big in my head. And so, yeah, I'm just going to impress this girl, meet LeVay. Get to San Francisco. I'm staying with a friend. And then they're like, so you, you, you meet LeVay, huh? Oh, yeah, big deal. That, you know, four days out. Three years out. You really gonna meet Levay? Huh? No. Just friends. Just meet Levay. Two days out. 
Call the house when it's ready for me to come over. You're going to call him? Blanche calls. Everyone's like this. I'm not kidding, dude. I'm not kidding. I'm watching adult people like my peer, like like I'm your age. Like imagine your friends like yeah. starting to shake. They're like, Blanche's on the phone. It's really, hello? What? Hey. So, you think, think you can bring me? You know. <laughs> the fuck away. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. Satanic temple stuff. So I go to meet, uh, P, you know, I do, this is, when I'm, I'm meeting Peter, it's just part of business when you're in the Satan, with Church of Satan. You know, you're like, you meet, you meet, you meet, you meet with the, the group. If you're in town, you meet with the group. Or you meet with one of the people in the group. So I'm in New York, I'm going to meet with Peter on this tour. And Doogie's with me. <laughs> And yeah, you know, like a fan, he, like he's my date. And I'm not putting him down like that, but you, I, you know, you go to the thing, you get to bring one person. Pretty, you know, you don't bring a crowd of people. You bring, I could bring, I could do whatever I want, but you're not going to get another invite. So uh, Doug's Doug comes with me, and I didn't think nothing of him. Yeah, we're just doing business. It's not a big deal to me, but he's like those people in San Francisco, almost like. Well, and then Peter hands me these gifts, you know, like for, one for me, one for, for whoever I want to give it to. But of course, it's going home to my partner. The trinkets, some button or whatever, and Doug's like, like he really wanted one. It was funny to watch how he acted around Peter. He acted like a, a fan, a big fan. And he was. And those are things I should have taken notes note from early on, like Peter and anyone in the hierarchy of the Church of Satan, you know, people would talk about you gotta watch out for people around you now that you're priest or you know because they you know that you'll see that these are these are things you'll see and you be like yeah you want to get you want to move from those people yeah. when they're so impressed by that that you know like it's a it could be a scary situation and it is it can be uh, for whatever reason people get weird and um, there you go that's all I can say and we ha we ate at a diner I forget what we ate it was forgettable, Peter. <laughs> it was, it forgettable. was forgettable, Peter. <laughs> that's where you brought me to a fucking diner that's forgettable. How satanic is that, you little... You know what's funny, though? Is, is the coffee and cookies survived. <laughs> you, you were like, oh, yeah, man, then we had coffee and Yeah, cookies. but it was instant coffee and double stuffed cookies. It made perfect satanic sense. <laughs> right. And the meeting's like, yeah, let's mix this instant coffee up, double stuffs, boom. Dropped it down. Like, that made so much satan. I'm like, instant coffee and double sauce. This is the greatest, dude. Like, you know, that first place, Tater, when we went in to eat, Tater, our first moment was the Thai restaurant in Hell's Kitchen. It was, okay, Ace. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, uh, yeah, well, that that's pretty, don't you think? Yeah. Like, you're going, you're, you just don't, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I mean, the guy, you know, it's like novelty. I'm like an goofball coming out of your vet home with you, like, metalhead, total, you know, <laughs> locking, getting locked in a car with me and my friends and smoking a bag of weed till the whole car fills with smoke. I mean, we're total burners. Mm -hmm. Let's right, smoke yeah. a bomb before the vase. Right, yeah. You know, <laughs> we're getting lit. <laughs> and there, I'm in the house. Holy fuck, he's playing the piano. <laughs> it got surreal real quick. It's like, I am so glad I wasn't on mushrooms, you know, because like, it was like a fucking trip. That's and then, you know, the, 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 the double stuffed cookies, the instant coffee, I couldn't help but laugh. I'm just like, this is the worst. Instant coffee is the worst, but how can you, how is instant coffee palatable? Double stuffed cookies. I feel like we're halfway there. This damn shit we've been drinking here, I feel like it's pretty much dead. It's cold brew, whatever. Oh. We're doing the satanic thing right now. Hey, well, I David left, I think. Fucking, we've been sucking on fucking iced coffee this whole time. Cold brew. Yeah, I think David left. I don't I don't see him anymore. But yeah, no. There's the caffeine what? No, we was talking about just the house. That's pretty much the same thing. Shane's like, you ain't going to eat the cookies? He was just doing this to us. He's like, you guys ain't going to eat the cookies? I'm like, what kind of cookies are there? You know, but it's the same fucking thing. It's like, it doesn't make sense, but I guess it makes perfect satanic sense. <laughs> it does, right? It's funny, yeah. It makes a weird satanic sense, yeah. I think. 
It's like we're reliving, we're reliving that thing too with the coffee and the cookies. <laughs> Did you have any cookies yet? No, but I'm going to because we have to. We have to do it together though. It's got to be a ritual thing. We'll do it right here. But yeah, is there something to play real quick that we can play that we like? Uh, we got to do the, the satanic uh, coffee and, and cookies blessing. <laughs> yeah, I'm with that. Let's see if there's something we can play real quick. Maybe. Oh, you know what we can play? I got something for y'all. That looks perfect. You look really great there. Showing necklace. Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I can't see what you're seeing. Right, I'm, I'm letting you know. You, right now you can see the Baphomet. Perfect. Right okay. there is perfect. So. Okay. That was a last minute decision. I wore this when I was with you. I in remember. Chicago. How could I forget? Okay. Well, you could, but no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right. You I know, did have a coat on. How could I forget? A million ways. Slip, fall, you know, <laughs> disease, bug, earworm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you want to talk about Might is Right, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at you. Let's get on with the show. I've got stuff to do. I've got to get a on with the show. Get yes. on with the show. Let's go, baby. That's okay, what right. we're here for, the show. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Might is Right. Yeah. I, I want to talk to you about your your perspective. On, you, you, you read your father's introduction that he did for me. And uh, we've talked a lot about some of the issues of um, like white supremacy and stuff like that being associated with your father, his, him personally and his philosophy and the church of Satan. And, and so at this point in my life, I'm always like, I don't even understand how that happened. Cause I, I uh, interpret the philosophy a, little, a lot different, you know? So Do you? are you going to ask, do I have a specific question? Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Well, I want to know. Okay, like sock it to me, Shane. Like, yeah, where's well, the question? I want to know. I want you to. Hmm, how can I form a question about that? It's just like, well, you were okay when you were around when it started. Tell us the story about that. Tell you know what did you see? Was you grew up? You're, you're, you know, father. first of all, this is about people calling my father a fascist for one thing. Right, and that's what I was gonna say. You're your father. History and. I would say there's no way in reality that he'd be a fascist. First of all, fascist dictators are politicians. My father isn't a politician at all. Artist, right. But to be a fascist, you're taking away people's rights. To be a Satanist, when we've started this, the magic circle and the beginnings of the church of satan and i'm not a part of the church of satan now i'm not a part of the new church of satan so anything that i say is totally i'm speaking for my father and my past and my knowledge of my father from the time that i knew him my father was 21 when i was born and i was with him the last year of his life I was with him throughout his life, and he always had a way of reaching me. I always had a way of reaching him. I could always go into our family home, and he could always come to mine. So we were never out of touch unless I was in Europe or something. So I pretty much, I think that I can speak with authority on his values because he instilled them in me. And my father was not a white supremacist. My father was not a neo-Nazi. My father was not in alignment with any of those views. So I can say that emphatically. So, and that's very important that that be known. He did have, you know, people ask a lot about his associations with people like a Boyd Rice or People that do seem to be, yeah, no doubt, no, absolutely right wing into the fascistic part of that political ideal. So why would your father associate with people like that? Or people like me? Because people, people, people look at me like that. Often. Because they were the people... Some of the names that you have mentioned 
he didn't have anything to do with them in that aspect. He simply knew them as people who came around that were a part of the scene in San Francisco. So I don't think that he thought of them as being Nazis. I don't think that uh, it's actually been proven anything that they that they are. They say that they are not. Well, I remember as far as right, being right wing, my father was never a right wing person. He was a fry cook. That's one of my favorite stories, him being a fry cook, because that's where I relate to him, you know, as a very much a very working class artist. That's how I that's how I see it. People have uh, so many views of that. Yeah. Uh, when my father met those guys like Boyd Rice, first off, Adam Parfrey was his publisher and they did a lot of things for sensationalism. I mean, they did, those other guys. My father didn't need to. The church had already been started in 1969. So these guys were sort of latecomers coming in the 80s and 90s. So it really wasn't a part of the original church. When I spoke to your father after I delivered, hand-delivered Midas right to him, he would talk about, well, that's their, they're predisposed to have those opinions because of their politics. I don't agree with, you know, he, but he, he entertained all kinds of political or philosophical thought. That's how I saw it. And that's how I like to take in earlier in Satanism was like, I would, I would, I would study everything, serial killers. The, but that doesn't mean I want to be a serial killer, you know? So, uh, yeah, my father was not a fan of serial killers at all. As a matter of fact, this show that they put on the 8888 show, my father was not there, contrary to what has been said in a lot of media. He wasn't there. He didn't have anything to do with it. I am uh, i did not know that, but Zoom has me asking, they're asking me for money, Carla. So that's what just happened. There we are. I did not know that about anything. I don't even know about that 888 thing. And I don't really, for me, present day, I know there's a lot of people sculpting Satanism as uh, Nazi stuff. And I feel like they're the far left. They're very far left. And they, for some reason, they, they're, they're invested in this without like this uh, um, looking into the entirety of it. They just look into these little micro moments of a uh, who I don't know who 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 they might tie into your father. They tie me in, okay, because I did not, might is right, and I I platformed some Nazis in there. But for me, it was just you know I was juxtaposing things, and I mean you you yourself asked me questions about some of my past, and, and you know it's it's hard that kind of stuff to you know like going. Through, I think kids should should do the exactly what I did and do things and make mistakes. But but I grew to understand when I was educated enough, I understood those were ignorant things to say, you know, who knows, stuff like that. But how do you feel about that as far as Church of Satan? Or I mean, Sat Satanism or your father, just he was looking into different philosophies. He was, he would just entertain all thought. And isn't that sort of something, something to, to do with Satanism? Yeah, but there was never discrimination. It had to do with, Right. People being freedoms. It had to do with sexual freedoms as far as people being able to have a place to go if they were gay. They could come to our parties. If people wanted to do things, if they wanted to have uh, do things to their bodies, if they wanted to have things that are now quite stylish, but they were not in the 60s and 70s, they had a place where they could come and do them. There was a man named Raleigh Loomis, and he came and he hung himself on meat hooks on our kitchen door. And he went by another name, actually. Uh, I can't think of it offhand. Uh, but anyway, he, he had a place where he could come. He had to dress business-like to go to his work. He couldn't tell anyone about what he did. But later when the counterculture thing happened, he was quite a hero to so many of these people. But at the time, he could not show this to people. 
So he came to our house and this is where he could feel accepted. So we were a place where people in San Francisco and people came from all over the world who were not accepted, who were hiding. And the, the world was very puritanical in those days. So he had a lot to do with changing society as far as pe opening people's minds and giving people a place where they could go and feel accepted. So it was the opposite of fascism. It was giving people rights, not taking them away. Right. He, he was able to state these great things so simply. And the, the, the thing that bothers me or gets me confused about is it's really clear in, in some of his command, you know, not commandments, but the, the his, you know, this, ah, whatever the fuck they're called, sacrament, whatever. Yeah. We, oh, his name, oh, he, was the Musafar. he was known as the Musafar. We only hate stupid people. So when I saw that, I was like, yeah, exactly. Like, that's good. Like, you know, there was a hate of stupid people. It was a good artistic way to use, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. I liked it. But that, that, that was, it, it made it real clear. Like there wasn't a racial or prejudiced issue there. You no, know. there never was. I grew up in San Francisco. And I think most of the people that I grew, grew up with, all of my old friends, they're, they are not racists at all. So I think a lot of that has to do with what part of the country people grew up in, too. Yeah, right, right, exactly. That's funny you say that. I was talking to someone out in the West Coast a while ago, and I told him I had a friend that had joined the Ku Klux Klan. And people at this coffee bar rent, like moved away from me. And I'm like, I didn't fucking join. What the hell? And the guy laughed. He goes, it makes perfect sense. He's from the Midwest. <laughs> but where, wasn't the Ku Klux Klan also a Christian organization? Right, right. Right. But be, I've no. looked, I've had, you know, I've had, I've, I've had I've, what people say today, platform folks like that, but I'm looking to study them or understand that stuff. You know, it's, it's not, it's not about acceptance. And as an artist, that's sort of a job for me, you know, is to, that's what I, that's what I look into. Cause that's part of a culture I grew up around, you know, yeah. ignorant white trash, lo low end culture. So that's what my family is, a lot of that, you know, so that's, of course, what's going to come out in my artwork, you know, <laughs> or studies, you know. Yeah, you know. my father's family were basically free thinkers. His parents didn't indoctrinate him with any kind of religious upbringing. And when I would stay with them, they said, oh, it's fine. You can celebrate Christmas. You can celebrate Hanukkah. You can open your presents any day you want because kids of other religions can, but I didn't have any actual religious training except for going to Sunday school with my friends. If I happened to spend the night and they were going, I didn't have anything against it. I was open to it. And my father didn't have any problem with that. My parents didn't. So it was no big deal, but I went and on my own, I questioned it and and that didn't go over real well uh, with the Sunday school teachers. So I just wasn't very excited about that particular religion. And I tried a few of them. I, I found I, I liked the Methodist best, actually. Uh, my best friend went to Baptist Sunday school and, and uh, they had some pretty uh, outrageous views about things. And but I did go to their their school play and everything, and just because my friend went, but but I wasn't into the religious aspect of it. I just went because my friend went. Yeah, well, I was. I have given talks at, at lots of different universities, but I found I have found the Methodists were the most open minded. Really? Yeah. Why? Why do you think that is? Well, I gave a, a, a talk at a, an all men's school when I was around 21 years old in South Carolina. And they were super, super nice. You know, wherever I've gone to give a talk, at least when, uh, when I was younger uh, in the 70s, 80s, they would have a, the football team come out to make a wall to protect me. And they would make, they would get me to the hotel as soon as it was over, as fast as possible. Get me out of town. That's incredible. That's great. But, but the Methodists were really nice. They were they, as I said, they were the most open-minded. 
Then I got my father's record played on a Jesuit radio station. A good friend of mine, a good friend of mine his name is Ron Quintana, and he had a radio show. It's still going on, I suppose, at KUSF. It's not KUSF now. It's another station. And uh, I gave him a copy of my father's recording on, and had him play it on Christmas Eve. And he uh, was not met by a lot of approval by the people from the uh, college, the Jesuit University, and they gave him a warning on that. But that was the first time that these counterculture people heard my father play music. They didn't know that he did that. So that kind of started the ball rolling on my father's musical career as we know it. He did play all around town and various venues when I was growing up, but, but as far as the recordings, that started right after my friend played them on his radio show because all these people found out about it. He said, oh, we didn't know that Anton LaVey played music. Uh, we didn't know we had a recording. <laughs> so then they all wanted to make a recording. But I was already in the midst of making a recording. I had him making recordings. I had my little Sony recorder and we would sit there every night and we would sing and we would play songs. <laughs> but then somebody came along after this was played on KUSF and I guess they had a better deal, at least he thought at the time. So he went with them and did a recording for them. That marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fan? And what I'm like this with all recordings, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm just such a freak about capturing this when I document. That's you got enough of Carla. Look at this angle. I like this. <laughs> We're falling. Oh! <laughs> oh, man, man, it's been a long one, dude. This is so insane. Yeah, it's insane. Twenty four hours streaming. What are you saying? It's insane. not done yet. We're eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're, we're right, almost eight. there, though. This is the stretch, bro. This is four insane. hours. What do you think? I know you said that up front. You were like, "This is crazy." Why twenty? What do you think so far? You think we did something? Yeah, I think we accomplished a lot, dude. Really? It's, it, yeah, because you you need time to tell the story, you know. And even if we do like, I, I do a, a hour live chat almost every Friday, you know, unless I gotta take a, the day off. And it's one of those things where you can't, there's, you, there's not so much you can't say it all in an hour. You couldn't say it all in a two hour movie. You need to spend the time to do it. And as much as I was rebuttaling you, like, it's insane. Do we really need to go live in 24 hours? You, you know? were saying that. I, was, I know I was rebuttaling you, like, dude, do we really need to do that? And you were like, yes, we, we're going live for 24. And I see that now. Like, this needed to be, it needed to be this thing where we had the time to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is something like that. It is, it, it, you're able to create this cool, chill conversation where there's, flaws there's great you know there's all this weird weirdness that makes it real you know mm -hmm. well, the emotions of it and so yeah it's not i like that that's what i like but it's also hype by the way cheers me before i finish my coffee the satanic blessing the, yeah. the black coffee and cookies give me that motherfucking cookie <laughs> the, the Whoa, black coffee and look cookies look at that the camera's gone now it's really the, ah! the, the true levian the true levian blessing right yeah. just like you did with anton yeah exactly black coffee and cookies sit down for that. I don't <laughs> need laying back like that and look bad in the camera. You know, there might be someone out there that think, thought, I thought that like I looked good, but he's laying down. There, I look better like that. No, oh, right there. Oh, I was, oh, you almost looked. No, I want you to look at my hand. <laughs> look at my hand. You see what's going like this? <laughs> <laughs> I would try. I had to try it again because you challenged me earlier. No, 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 no. <laughs> try to do that joke where you're like, air something down there and going, Shh. Right. <laughs> well, let me tell you, that happened to me as a young man by every fucking uncle I had for mercilessly all the time until I'm trained. And I'll tell you in public, if you ever do that to me, I'm going to probably squirt mustard on my shirt right there in front of you and then I'm going to hug you. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. And then I'm going to go, and then, yeah, when I hug you with the mustard on my shirt, you're going to go, what the fuck, dude? And I'm going to go, that's what's gonna happen. 
<laughs> Have a bite. <laughs> and we're empty. Have a drink. Mmm. <laughs> and these are, I forget the name of the cookie, but Tim's or something like that. Tom's or the green bag. They're really good cookies. It's strange how black coffee slowly burns away your taste buds until you, you just don't even taste it. <laughs> Yeah, black coffee to me is basically like, I don't know. It's a. Uh, it tastes like shit, and then slowly you don't taste like anything at all. <laughs> it's the one thing I can't quit. Like, you know, like, I'm just like, just give me more blood pressure medicine, Doc. I don't give a fuck. I want the coffee. The coffee increases your blood pressure, but if you give me more pills, it won't. <laughs> Thank you. So I enjoy coffee. Like, it's like a, it's like this romantic. I hated it when I was younger. But then you hang out with all these poets and pirates and, and authors and artists, and they're like all guzzling coffee down. And I remember as a kid, I'm like trying to do these 24 hour things. I'm like, okay, I'll drink some coffee. And now it's like, life's blood. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. I don't, like now, and now I don't, I, this is a nice snack, but I don't, I don't do food anymore like that. I'm losing weight and I'm, I'm happy with that. But not coffee, I fucking, I, I'm like, in the day, I'm like, oh, do I eat at lunch? I'm gonna make another pot of coffee. I'm gonna make another pot of coffee. But I got anxiety pills too. So with all the medication I'm taking, this coffee's just like, I'm like, I don't really have this anxiety. I'm not my blood pressure not pumping. I'm like, yeah. I'm ready to race this fucking rocket. <laughs> <laughs> coffee. Scream for the cream. I'm out of coffee, otherwise I'd have cheers you too. No, you ain't. Get oh, the fuck. Damn it, he gonna double Catch that bitch. Damn it, damn it. I can't we got another. <laughs> the fucking coffee monsters. It's been nice knowing you. Where's <laughs> your coffee? Love you, man. That's great. Oh, um, man. Another one. Another Sorry, one. Sorry, to throw that in How camera. dare you drink me with the coffee can? I meant to drop it up in front of the camera. But you but you draped me with it. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. What's a drake? What's a drake? That's, yeah, another one. Drake me? What does that mean? You know, Drake says that. Another one. No, wait. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. DJ Khaled. Another one. I, look, I don't even know. I don't that's know. Terrible. I'm like, I got it. That's why I got it. That's the fuck it. I come to Chicago and turn on the radio. That's the first thing you hear. Another one. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh. I can't believe you don't know that and you live here. I was so glad when I moved out of West uh, to Wisconsin because I didn't have to hear Chicago radio. They actually have rock radio stations up there. I went up I there and I was radio. like... Dude, yeah. but it was amazing. I was like going out of Chicago, and then the fuzz happened, and then Slayer comes on, Rain and Blood. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. then I see the Wisconsin sign, Welcome to Wisconsin. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm free. You, you know? fucking millennials, you motherfuckers think you know Slayer is so funny. Let me tell you, old Slayer shows were so dangerous that you would never have gone. And I remember, okay, one, we just watched Beverly. <laughs> I got a brand new car. I saved up all this money. This Trans Am. Okay. Now, took a lot. Boss car, fucking fast. Old school, rusted up and hot, heavy. Park in the alley by the Aragon Ballroom. It's chaos. There's Everyone's fucking. You're right in the middle of the place. You're just fucking, fighting. Then there's like a pit's going. And some guy stay, takes lighter fluid out. <sighs> we're in the middle of a building Crazy ass. and they're taking chairs and throwing them in this fire and I'm like this is the fire department's coming like this, this isn't an underground show this Aragon ballroom and people are tearing it up and the and the security guards have to retreat okay so I go up and we're, me and my buddy Mike rest in peace brother we're like looking for our other friend and we're like where the fuck is he and he comes out of the bathroom he's got blood all over him all over him his face we're like what the fuck happened he's like Oh, this fucking girl had the period, and I was just fucking loving it. I was sucking that blood. You know, he's just got he's smearing that period blood all over him. And he's like, then he's like, you know what? Next time this blood's got me crazy. He's like, next time, I'm coming to this fucking show with knives, and I'm gonna just fucking start stabbing motherfuckers. And this is Slayer now. This is how it grows. And so I'm just gonna start stabbing motherfuckers. I need more blood. And we're like, well, dude, it's okay. Like, let's get in the car. It's a good, you know, he's, he's you know. Period blood's got him going. He's fucking bloodlust. No joke. We go outside. There's a riot in the alley. And there's my cool new car. It's not new, though. And they're on top of my car fighting. Like a mob of people. 
throwing people on the car. I'm like, ah, my car. We go. <laughs> so me and my friends were going over there, beating, beating the shit out of people. Fuck the car. Fuck off the car. <laughs> and the one guy goes like this that wants to stab you. He breaks a bottle. He's like, yeah, I'm fucking stabbing people. And we, me and Mike have to go jump on him. No, <laughs> no, don't stab anyone, man. <laughs> We're holding down to the ground. And he's like, got the bottle, wanting to kill people. Like, literally, was going, he was absolutely going to stab people if we didn't hold him down. Fucking crazy, dude. That was a Slayer concert. That was like a good time. Like, and I don't, I mean, you know, that was like everyone there had, everyone there. Had a good time. Everyone that was fist fighting, <laughs> every fucking person had a good time. Yeah, you it's know? fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, old Slayer shows were brutal. It was crazy, vile, and violent. They yeah, were scary. I like how it's not as violent. You know, I love metal shows for being not as violent, but it's still kind of aggressive, you know? It's like, I don't want to get my teeth knocked out. I want to have fun and then go home. You know what I'm saying? Well, Slayer was more than art. It was like a movement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slayer, I remember Rick Rubin. A story from Rick Rubin. He's like, we're thinking about signing Slayer. And they're like, we call it the What we do with record companies, they call it the venues. How many tickets they sell for tonight? Oh, 20 tickets. The venues holds, you know, 500 people. But, but he sells 20 tickets. And they're like, well, why would we want to sign this band? The day of the show, the show sells out. 500 people are outside of the show, and Rick Rubin's, like, trying to figure out what's going on here. And Slayer's like, oh, our fans? They had to rob their teacher something the day before. Our fans are broke. So what happened the night before is, like, their girlfriend's purses got sacked. Their mom's purses got robbed. Someone got raped or robbed. You know, they just they stole that money, and they, they got here. That's why it's last minute. They don't have the money. But they find the money. And we sell our shows out. And Rick Rubin's like, this is a movement. This is something different than anything that's happening. Because that's really what was happening for Slayer. Bro. They were so angry. And the only people that were coming to those shows were myself, told, a total white trash. Like, total white trash. Total fucking angry motherfuckers that were about to go to prison or war. No shit. Everyone there was like... This is this is life. I'm going to, you know, my life. I'm dead. Like they're walking, you know, suicidal. Everyone there's, you know, the deal. I, 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 I mean, John, I imagine you know the deal. We live in Chicago. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that's how it was. It was intense. It was intense. But then they grew it like to see them as a phenomenon in major venues and go, wow, that was a movement that scared people. And so when you walked around in that moment with the Slayer shirt, people feared you. It was like a gang. It was gang gang. It was like, oh, that guy's a Slayer fan. Don't fucking even get near them. They'll start stabbing you or something. Like, they're like, we were like juggalos or whatever. Like, juggalos originally were, everyone was like, yeah, stay away from the juggalos. There's something. Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah, how's it going? What's your name again? I forgot. Steve. Steve. Steve, Steve good to meet you. You going to sit down with us? Uh, it's okay if you don't feel comfortable, but if you do, I want you to. Oh, uh, I feel, uh, I'm not used to it. John, make yourself, a, uh, Steve, I'm sorry. Make yourself at home, have something to eat. John, please feed him. Please take care of him, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything you want, though, dude. We got weed, too. You know, no. coffee. You need a little some hair. Cookie. <laughs> hey, I got no hair. I got no hair. Steve has more hair than me. I think that one's mocking me. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I'm no, going, but you look. I'm you look good. The over here. You, you, but you true, true but, to the core. But it looks, it's carry. It's like I don't even see you as bald. It's just you. You know, my wife says that too. She's like, just oh, man, you look, you look good, so good with the bald hair. It, I just hate it. I'm like, but I used to have hair. I used to have dreads. It's just, so you know, if you nice were the head bang, right, yeah. if you were able to grow hair and you just had bald hair and you grew there, I'd be like, hey, dude, that looks weird. Because <laughs> I miss being able to head bang. No, <laughs> nothing. You know, I get jealous. Cause you know I love black metal, and that's just the thing. And I had dreads, and I was able to headbang, and I was in a band, and then my hair started going, and I was like, "Oh, this is over. I can't that's headbang really cool, anymore. Man. I can't fucking headbang anymore." And then I just did it anyway. I'm trying to get in this. <coughs> these are fucking angles. That's how cameras work. You must know this. So these are bad angles. Trust me, I don't look. So I have good. no bad angles. <laughs> Cause he got the right seat. That seat's all cramped and crooked and all this. I should be looking direct in the camera. You can't complain because I tried to switch seats with you and you were like, that's my seat. Four hours. That was my seat. This is the last four hours. This is the rough time. It's not rough. I think we're doing a great job. Oh, man, I want to show John some stuff. I'll you know, you, you right there, if you were here, I could make it four hours. 
and I, I'd be wide awake afterwards. I barely make it four hours now. Just saying. You should visit. Who are you talking to? Everyone? Everyone? No, right. <laughs> Everyone? Listen, no, no, no. We got, bro. Quit acting like we can't see in their rooms. We got your shit hacked. This one. This one. That one. The cute one. <laughs> you got it? See? Oh. Okay. How'd you do that? That was a cool one. I don't even know. <laughs> we can't see you. Let's see what's going on here. I like this so, live stream on, stuff. It's fun. I brought some shit. No, I'm going to wait for John to get back. I'm going to show it. He may never come back. Uh-oh. Did we lose him forever? No, we got his box. He ain't gone. <laughs> So man, we're we're rolling down. This is where we we suspected that people would be calling in to uh, ask questions and whatnot, right? Oh hey, Baffy, I gotta check Baffy. So let's let's uh, get let's... that going. And then also, uh, you know, wait, no, you got it. There also, is no what? also, also there's no also. You got it. I saw the message. So yeah, let's get it. We're gonna do some Q and A. For these last You'll get DMs video. from the internal bot that detail people's request to speak and who sent it. How will they speak, bro? Do they have the interview link? The ecam link? Hello, world. Would you like Locking me to send you the e cam link, Baffy? I see. Will the bot just or I could just post it in events. I just wonder if the bot will pop up in Ecamm. Do I have to look? You know, I'm new here. I'm looking. Baffy, however this works for you, brother. I don't know how to do this, so, you know, I, I apologize. The bot will direct message you on Discord. But I'm on Ecamm. How do I do this? I guess just watch Discord. Okay. Okay. There was one gentleman I was going to have, I, I, I talked about message, uh, having call in, but this guy, I don't know where the fuck he stands in the world. He seems like a conservative sometimes. He seems like he's not. That's why I want him on. He's so confusing. But the problem with Pill Eater, yeah, probably you're listening. I think he's insecure, but uber smart. Like, just fucking really genius level shit. So, it's a combination of war almost. Insecure geniuses might come on here and talk a lot of shit, and I don't know how to defend it. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you even talking about, bro? <laughs> Dude, I feel like we've talked about so much and gone over so like we've laid a foundational history for Satanism here. People can go, oh, Anton, then his daughter, and then you know it's it's a straight line. You know, this provides a straight line. Um, I think it's more powerful than a book. Now it's a, it's a video documentary. Remember that's what I was saying when, when, when you were, uh, I was talking about TikToks could be the new book, this could be, yeah. right. It, it, and people write books thinking this is, like Joseph, I'm going to write a book because that's what we're told is, is, <coughs> is, a, is makes it official. You're now officially the author of this. But I think we have more influence with podcasts. TikToks are the new book, maybe, you yeah. know, where you're, or this oh, sure. click the new mentions is that oh it? new mentions okay new mentions i don't know no general nah, wait. it's supposed to be a direct, yeah, message. direct message i don't know where the direct message yeah, okay it. sounds good i'll get to that notification Up there maybe no that's the oh you know the later it gets the more irritated i become with everything in the world so <laughs> especially technology i'm not yeah yeah I, i'm not sure i feel like old shade would have smashed this computer <laughs> oh you're right You'd have been like, <clears throat> I got to go well, get a new computer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that would, I would, I, I'm pretty economical with that kind of shit. You're right, I would have smashed something. But, it pro it, that, you know, like, I, I don't can't afford that. Oh, what is getting broken? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, it's a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be reasonable about that. Kind of, yeah, I would have definitely had a, well, I, w I don't know. Do not disturb. Is that the bot? The expo? I don't know, really. <laughs> I don't know. What to do here? Technical uh, difficulties. Please tune back in after this commercial. 
Okay, go. No, why? Why me? Why me? Why me? Why me? <laughs> because I'm looking for slugs. It's funny the younger the younger kids don't understand that. <laughs> I don't see any direct messages, Baffy, but I'm, sh I'm sure you're going to figure this out, and, and we're going to figure it out. But just come on and say what they got. Say the messages. You're officially designated. Oh, perfecto. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I got someone. Let me copy that link. I could post it in my group and people would start calling, but I didn't want it to get out of control. Well, we don't have, we just hang up. We don't, we don't uh, have to call, you know, like. Yeah, I didn't want it to get out of control. We just don't have to answer. That is what. The fuck is this? I'm trying to figure this out. fuck is this oh my god okay I'm, I'm sorry i'm trying to figure things out excuse what, what content are we doing do we have i'm a content creator right it's a joke <laughs> the and, uh, and anton levey bot as satanists outspoken and decidedly you deserve a tribute never have satanists been needed as they are now in a world turned rancid with its false goodness and excess of piety yeah i'll take one thanks man yeah, dude. Awesome. Thank you. Are you sitting down or are you leaving? Okay. Let me see if someone, is anyone, I don't. Thank you, sir. I guess no one's interested in talking. It's fine with me. All right, let's get back to business. All right. Uh, Tamerlane's there. Officially been powered up again. Yay for coffee. I, hey, hey, your camera's not on. Okay. Whoa. There you are. Hey, hey, I want to come back. I didn't feel like I had a proper goodbye. Oh, no, I hung up on you on purpose. No, I know. <laughs> you know, I was joking. I'm joking there, but, you know. <laughs> no, that was I was proper. eating dinner. Here, let me do it again. Let me show you proper right now. Boom. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> My last word. <laughs> well, what kind of goodbye would you like? We have cookies and coffee right now. I don't know. I'm just checking in on you, too. Make sure you're doing all right. No, I'm not. I got four Why not? hours. Well, I got four hours, and I'm a 50-fucking-something-year-old man. It's enough. I'm fucking irritated, and I just want to fucking be like this. Like, what the fuck kind of question is that? I'm fucking dying! Oops, there's what's going on inside my head, but I'm trying to be... Yeah, yeah. I don't want to... A, I, Who's Brock? I think, you're a, I think you're a year older than me. Who the fuck is Brock? Let's find out. Brock Lesnar. What's up? Wait. What the hell's a Brock? <laughs> hey, oh. I can see... Hey, Brock, what's going on, dude? What's... Uh, not much. I'm just in my dorm, kind of hungry. Dorm? Yeah. I love it. What are you studying? Uh, music composition. Same as are you, Gilmore. <laughs> are you the first person in your family with college? Um, for bachelors, yeah. My parents have uh, associates to do. Oh, that's nice. I just I, you sometimes hear that story. The first person. Yeah, and then when I, I, yeah, when I graduate, I'll go back to washing dishes then. Right. Exactly. I see. Well, it's good you're seeking knowledge like that. That's pretty cool. What are you what are you gonna compose with music? Um the thing I'm working on now is for like gamelan, like Balinese gamelan instruments. So there's a lot of like um kind of xylophone type instruments. What about Xanadu? And Xanadu? Like yeah, the Xanadu. Rush song? <laughs> no, like the Livia Newton John movie. I don't know Xanadu. the movie. It's a magic place. Xanadu. Yeah. Xanadu. Xanadu. <laughs> it was a very big orchestra. I'm just saying. Is it, it, was, 
My idea is, is it, what I'm trying to plan your head is. I do. I no. do recommend no. the movie. It's, I do. Don't no. talk shit. This is my show. It's a very good movie. <laughs> it's a magical movie. There's occult workings in that movie. And let me tell you, that movie was a big influence in me, on me. When I saw that movie, I was like, I want to dance with women that are dancing like that. They dance, and it reminded me of the witches dancing. It's it's something. They're all this, the muses are there. Yes, you should see it. It's a very good movie, young man. And I think at some point in your life, you should try to reintroduce the idea of Xanadu. Spoiler yeah, I'll add it to my letterbox to watch list. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I loved it. I went to the theater and watched it the other day. It's from it's it's corny from the '80s or some shit, but it's still cool. I, I don't know. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, could you tell me about some of the art you do? Because I, like I, I'm an artist too with sound, and I I don't really know what you do. I've kind of seen some of it. I do everything. You could talk about it and like how Satanism interacts with that. Oh, for sure. I, okay, so for art, I do everything. I've never, um, I've done. Uh, soundscapes, let's say, no, like you could say, noise nice. soundscapes. Uh, I've edited video. I've edited like, uh, you know, I've done old, old, old podcasts, so it'd be like editing. I love editing audio clips, you know, like samples and shit like that. Um, I've made short films, films, newspapers, published books. I've done every single fucking thing. And so for me, it's just about wonder. Satanism is about wonder, and and if you're doing it really great, you have it. You, you're able to reach this. You're communicating with your subconscious or your inner child. You're you have a childish wonder, and you're that's the best way to educate. Your mind's wide open, like you open up. And you're so I like to look for new mediums because it stimulates me. And even if I fail at them, like try wood burning, carpet making, anything new tools to keep the mind. You know, I, the the rote once it becomes rote activity, like I'm able to sculpt with this stuff, and I get decent with it. And then someone's like, "Yeah, I want to buy these sculptures." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm sick of it." Because I know how to do it, I've mastered it, and so that I don't know. That's that's Satanism for me in, in art. I, it's the, the wonder, the research, the um, unknown, and to, to create something that's never been created is magic, man. I mean, that's pretty cool stuff. I'll show you some how weird my art is. Let me show you something real quick. Art diversity. Uh, what I think is incredible is that, you know, I, I think that being in a Satanist, it makes you an artist, you know, well, because it's, it, it's almost like it, it, it makes you, it puts you in that category because magic is the art. I don't think so. Puts you there. I would say Doug Mesner's not that, you know, people like that, there's not, there's plenty of but people that are, consider him a true Satanist. yeah, but there's plenty of people that aren't, they're political, all this kind of stuff. I'm, not, I'm talking about the real So Satanist. I don't, I don't, I don't think Satanists are artists, but I think most Satanists I've met have definitely a passion of creation. They might not be artists, but they're really great chefs. It takes the kind of same sexual passion to make great art as it does great chili. So this is something I made. Just do it, and it's a Nike knife. I think that says just undo it. You know what I'm saying? Just undo it. Swoosh. So that's something that would it'd be a pop culture kind of thing. I have a thing for artists, uh, Nike. I have an issue with Nike. So here's a Nike's Hero Series. It's a bank bag that says, just do it. And I put all famous um, bank robbers that got away with it, lived, and robbed money for revolution. Patty Hearst there? That's her. I, I liked the weird-ass flower thing you did earlier. Right, I'm pulling showed. that up. And so here's a sculpture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on, right on. Oh, you like that? Yeah, so I love it. You love this. So yeah, that's a, the kind of shit I would want to make. <laughs> yeah, so, so there's a picture of me as a child. <clears throat> and inside there, there's hair. There's my hair. You know, and nice. it just... It, yeah, this just came with me drooling on myself, like, uh, looking at this jar. <laughs> Let me get in there. Uh, and just starting to put things on there and go, yeah, I think that looks like a mouth. Okay. You know, and it just went like that. That's how it happens, yeah. Yeah, there was no idea. Sometimes I'll sketch something. You know, I'll have an idea, and I want to get it down real quick. But those are more, um, they become contrived or stuff I'm selling almost. Like, it becomes something that tells a story rather than something that informs me. This right. informs me. You think me. it's harder to, you think it's harder to be motivated to do it when you have to plan it like that? I don't plan um, it. If I, oh, you mean when I plan it? No, I, I don't know what's hard. Like when I don't you know, sketch it out. I don't know how to explain that. Here's something. 
I did a book cover. I wish I had it, and the thing's wrapped up there. But it's half. It's a half bear and half devil head with a big horn, and it was for this uh, bears, something revisited, some story, and and I did the cover art, and the artist asked me to do it. She told me about the story, and I gathered all these things to do it, and I sketched it out, and I'm like, oh, I have a really good idea for this cover. Like I'm really excited about doing it, so she gives me the audio recording of it, and I put it on. And then I hear the passion in the story. I read it, and I was like, okay. But when I heard her do the reading, because it was a book that came with a CD, I started weeping. It was so heavy of this story. And it reminded me of my cell. It had this heavy subject. And so I was like, oh, it's a bear. It's, it's like basically about a person and a bear and a person having PT, you know, trauma issues, addiction issues, abuse type stuff. So anyway, I ran... I don't even know how it happened, actually. Like, I ran upstairs, grabbed this bearskin rug I had. It, that was called bearskin, bearskin rug, or bearskin revisited, something like that. It was about a bearskin. And I had this chewed up bearskin I got from a, a VFW for like 50 bucks, cut the head off it. And, and I kept listening to that audio for like 30 hours, and I just kept sculpting. And like in the morning, I woke up, and I'm like, holy fuck, the thing's done. Grab that, would you? Grab that. I'm gonna so where did your I'm gonna show where you where did your motivation come from? Uh, I listened to the audio and cried for about 12 hours, and I couldn't mm. stop, like, had being emotional, and I kept couldn't stop listening to it. So you could say <clears throat> masochism almost, or something like it was just like cathartic, or it was something I was I was uh, I was I, to, to, add, to I didn't know then, but it was all these I was relating to all these traumas this person was dying, you know, like I was having yeah. the same kind of thing, and it was right before I started to go to therapy. So I was like, I've got, this is eating me up. Yeah, you know? it sounds like you're getting shit out. Yeah, and it was I, something, I I like, it was like me communicating with my subconscious and my subconscious communicating back with me. Or it becomes like yeah. I learned from like Heart Warrior Chose or the crow in the road. When you see the crow in the road, what does that mean? And, and a lot of idiots will say, the crow in the words of, road's a curse. And Heart Warrior would be like, yeah, the crow in the road's like something to trigger you out to remind you to, go to the doctor Thursday because you forgot. Or the crow on the road can be danger. It's just how you feel when you see it. Like, if you see the crow on the road, you're like, I'm going to have a good fucking day. That's what the crow on the road means. You see the crow on the road, you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm calling into work today. I don't know why, but I'm the crow said to call into work. That's what the crow means. Anyway. <laughs> this is a great piece. I don't way. know if I make any sense there, but that's what you get at the end of a 24-hour show. And I don't see anything uh, in the tip jar, so don't be demanding anything. I first saw <laughs> this piece at, is this the one from the Witch's Sabbath? One second, please. Yep, that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's the one I first saw at the Witch's Sabbath. Oh. That's great. Wait, my but best parts of my pieces are underneath. So, the, so that's you getting shit out of yourself? Well, you, I'm not done showing this to you. You have to get it off. Broken heart. Yeah. Broken heart underneath the head. There's the front. There's the back. So it's a two-headed thing. Two-faced. Two-headed. Two so down. it all means something. And he had an earring hanging here. There's an earring. So it's like... And I remember putting that earring on there. And my wife says... Is, I shouldn't bring her. Someone says, is that, does that mean it's gay? And I was like, no, it just has urine in it. And then my gay friend comes over, and then my gay friend comes over and goes, I love the earring. And she goes, it means it's gay. And I go, no, it's just a fucking earring that looked wild. Like, but everyone's telling me what the thing means. I'm like, I don't know why it has to be gay. It has a pearl earring and it just looked cool. Like it was, but that's what happened. The, the that's what you know, I'm gay me. myself, and I don't. I don't know which ear is the gay ear, and I think it's switched over time. Well, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, it's like, why was that question? It, so anytime I see this piece with the ear, and I have to think, why? Why that question? So there's what artwork like, happens to me. I like the guys with an earring, and I'm like, is right. he gay or right? <laughs> what side is the gay side again? <laughs> it, I, I get harassed. That's all I'm saying. As artists, I have to hear that, and it torments me to this day. So you're talking about artwork, it's like, so I'd rather give it to someone and walk away and never hear anything. Like, cause it's pure then. Go ahead and interpret it the way you want. I know what it is. But then when I hear something like that, I'm like, oh God, you awful person. You just told me something I don't want to hear and it's gonna stick and it ruins this piece. So I'm happy it's wrapped up because I sold it to someone. 
and it's that's the reason I, he got a good deal. I'm like, yeah, I can't even look at the fucking thing anymore. So, <laughs> so some of the pieces I make now that I want to keep, I keep in my bedroom, and I don't want to share them with people because I don't want to hear that. I know it's weird, but that's this, the way it goes. For that's me. really interesting, actually. So, and there's artwork up there. There's a painting I did. Yeah. And, and your motivation, it just, it just flows. It's just getting shit out. Cause well, I'm asking cause my problem is, is motivation. I'm a composer who has a hard time composing and I don't yeah. know if it's burnout or my process or the fact that I'm studying it and it feels like a chore. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. You got, you got some issues, man. You know what? Quit fucking looking for motivation and just do the fucking work. This is what you do. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That that's jive talk. Okay, most professional artists will say, get your ass in the studio and sit in a fucking chair and look at the wall for eight hours and do your yeah. fucking work. If you don't have motivation that day and the next day, keep sitting in the chair and show up for work. You can quit using so it's okay your, for it to feel quit, like work. Yeah, well, quit using your, I don't have motivation to cop blowjobs or whatever it is you're doing. Like, you know, I'm getting sex, I'm having oral sex, I'm, everyone's sucking. You know, that's what happens for me. I don't have motivation. Could I get some fucking right now? Could I get some food? Like, it's like a weird thing to get things or obtain things from people, at least for me. You're composing music, right? Yeah. yeah. So check this out. The funny thing about music is all music is actually noise. John. And what makes the music, what makes the music is figuring out the space between the noise. So... The next time you think you're stuck and you can't make music, just start making all the fucking noise you can and then start turning shit off. Try that. And start turning off elements until it starts to sound like something and then try to build with that. Yeah, but okay. just don't don't but look I, don't look for motivation. Take it as a job or, or quit and use it as a hobby. You just got you got that, those are the decisions with art. You're either gonna take it on and, and go for it or you're not. And it's just a hobby. And when you go for it, yeah. you sit there. Jack London. Jack London, the guy suspected of, Anton suspected of writing Might Is Right, great author, did a lot of work before he was 40. That motherfucker was prolific. And you know, I went to go see, when we put out Might Is Right and suspected it was Jack London, we go to his, his wolf house. And it's great because his story is this. He would go into his office every fucking day and he'd set a clock outside and say, do not knock on this door before this time. And he would, his, his story was he would just put his pencil down on the paper and look at the paper and pencil. Because he was a dock worker, so he was used to lifting boxes off the dock for eight hours. So he's like, well, my job now is I just put a piece of pa pencil to paper and wait until my mind kicks in and I start writing. Some days it doesn't happen, and I just hold my pencil on the paper. But it's a hell of a lot better than unloading the docks. So that's what I do. And he just sat there and looked at his paper, would doze off, fall asleep, but never wanted the door knocked on because he needed to just sit there and hold his pencil and look at the paper until words came. And I thought that was really cool. And I've done that a lot in my studio, just sit there when I'm depressed. I just go, I make sure I go sit in the chair in the studio. And then stuff starts kicking in. Even it's like, like depression will be like, I gotta clean this floor or something. And you start picking things up and all of a sudden you're like, oh, look at this, look at this fucking sculpture happening. So I would say find an art place that you can go and, you know, like a ritual chamber almost, like an art chamber, you know, go to yeah. a place that's, not your bedroom, a special place that you sit in the best you can or, you know, turn on lights in your bedroom, do some ambient to go, I'm at work now. I'm here to compose even though I don't feel like it. I have to sit there and try to figure this out. It's magic. Art is magic. Yeah. So you just have to create that's, the that's space. That's good advice. You have to create the space for it to manifest. That's what the yeah. ritual chamber is for. And, and you have to take it as work or hobby. But art, did you hear John G over here what he said about art? Art is a curse. Wait, wait, no, let, let him say it. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Like, what, what is art? Motherfucker's going, he's like... He said art is a curse for him. For him. I yeah, don't he looks remember up, he's like, his explanation as to why. But. Yeah, he's going and he just looks up and he's like, art is a fucking curse. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. You're a real artist because that's the deal. You work at it. It's, it's something you don't choose. Yeah, if it's easy for you, if you're composing, then you're probably not doing art. You're making commercials for uh, uh, mouthwash. Yeah. And that's cool, too. Go get your dough. You know how to do that. But there's that's a dip. Those people, and, and I, I have plenty of friends like that. They just walk in and, oh, yeah, I'm writing a jam for this commercial. And they drop. They know how to make, how to create sound, how to drum, how to do these things. But they're not artists. They're performers. Or musicians. But it's different than being an artist. 
Yeah, it's a lot of fucking work, and especially just the way we learn here. We have to plan everything out and draft it, make a map, map it out, and then put it all into notation software. It takes a uh, one piece per semester, and it's it's a lot of fucking dedication and, and time. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's why like songwriting and improvisation appeals to me too, because it's got more of this immediate feedback, um, and it's just, it's better for my tiny attention span. But uh, we got all three of us in that fucking little tiny box. I'm listening yeah. to you, Brock. I'm just saying, John, go on, come on, just get in here. Let's get in. We're in this little Hi. Here. We're like the Star Wars. Uh, what, or the what's Super his name, by the way? I didn't catch his name. John G. John. John G. John G. There's an old there's an old Superman movie where they're all like in this box. <laughs> Does John G have any uh, like an Instagram? Yes, art by John G. Art by John G. Let's get, get on that, y'all. This is the future. John G. Listen, to this. This is the big news. John G. One of the collections he is in is Phil and Samuel from Pantera. <laughs> nice. Ah. Phil and Samuel from Pantera bought a piece from him right away, and I thought. I'm like, oh, that's great because that's Phil, cool. I sort of joke because it's Pantera, but, but Phil's an artist, I know Phil, and he's like from Voodoo Central. So he's like, oh, he, he bought that shit because he was, because it, yeah, he bought a couple uh, and you were talking about being Voodoo. Mm -hmm. So it rings, it rang to him as a Voodoo person. Man, this is a motherfucking this shot. And this bitch has got the fucking main shot. <laughs> he keeps trying to get in front of me. So let me just get in front of Avi. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, now I got that shot. <laughs> Well, I got it. Look, I got to lean there. There, was, there. There's a shot. There you in there. Now that's Everybody just go get on my lap. <laughs> uh, who keeps who was that? Who keeps doing that? And, and you guys, you guys are based in Chicago. Yes. We're based. based. Period. <laughs> Ooh. This is Ground Zero, baby. Everything. Levesque, I'm a, I'm a few Chicago. hours away. Maybe this I can drive down someday. <laughs> this is Ground where, Zero. Where baby. are you at? Um, I'm in like the Fox Cities area in Wisconsin. Oh, I'm so sorry. My aunt yeah. is from up there. Listen, <laughs> Have, you Bunch water skiing, freaks. water skiing, water skiing, everybody, something like that. Don't they do a lot of water uh, skiing I've, up in Fox Lake? I have no idea. <laughs> oh shit, Bap is on the fucking. How do we do four? I just know the area for the Packers. Oh, yeah, oh, you want someone else on, Baffy? Oh, this is, this is my time. Oh, wow. Now we got our camera back. So, for... hey, Yo. there's Baffy. What's Yo. happening, dude? Ah, I saw that you have a walk on, so I decided to join. Ooh. What was that? I noticed you're having a little party here. I decided to join. No. You see, bro. <laughs> Just did some cocaine, eh? What? Oh, wait, my quality is yeah. here. We have life. <laughs> we have, we have I just life. did that as a tribute to Tamerlane. He's from Florida, so you got to do that one. Yeah. Time. So you heard him chuckle like, ah, ha, ha. The neighbors are visiting. I don't like visiting. cocaine. I just like the way it smells. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I visit, I visit Florida, and anytime I, 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 when I, you visit Florida, if you're not getting the pink cocaine, you're getting robbed. That's oh, yeah, that's some, that's some Ecuadorian shit right there. <laughs> that's right. you got to wait to hold out for the pink cocaine. you got to ask that, and you get respect. Listen, this isn't the what? This isn't the one. This isn't the one. I got to get the, the pink cocaine. <laughs> it's just the way it is. What happened to dude? Did he leave? I'm not, not sure. sure. I think it might have. Brock left the moment drug use came into. He's like, I'm a composer. <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, I know Brock, so that's a bit weird, but I'm just saying. Brock is chiming in again. If I have to have 17 screens, oh, there he is. Hey, Brock. Oh, yeah, Brock. actually, I was I was gonna connect to, to smoke a joint, but. <laughs> you gotta get, gotta get his weed. In an hour and a, disconnect the smoke a joint. <laughs> yeah, in an hour and a half, I'm gonna smoke a joint with John G. But I'm not nice. smoking right now because I gotta be ready for you motherfuckers coming at me. I'm a, I'm a weed uh, witch. That's, that's where my magic begins. I mean, <laughs> if if we both smoke at the same time, then then maybe I don't know. It'll no, be I'm not okay. My juju with you, we just met. <laughs> I got my own. I got my you own got, shit. You gotta earn my juju. This motherfucker holds his juju. He don't fuck around. Like he's not not even kidding. 
Who's going to be in the room when I'm there? Because I'm not sharing it. I told you. I don't I, know what's going like on. I got my family bubble, and then it's shield. I got to. That's my trauma. So here's the deal. with If I smoke weed right now, <laughs> then I lay down, I start putting nacho cheese in my mouth, and I play with my nipples. It's not going to be the best. So... I think we're going to hold off for the last two hours of the show, and that's going yeah, to be exciting. Please, please. And I've only got sativa, so I would be opposite. No, sativa's great, dude. That's all I smoke. Like, I love a sativa strain. Yeah, it, it doesn't make me lay on the couch, though. It makes me hyperactive. And well, who's saying I'm playing with my nipples slow? That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> this, is, this is serious work. <laughs> What's he say on Little Nicky? Tithead, go with my father. Fucking great stuff, dude. So, Baffy, you you mentioned something about there being questions or something like that. You you got some for us or what? I'll check. I'll check. Oh, now I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah. Super jelly. Uh, people are just talking about PJs right now. There's no questions at the moment. All right, cool, cool, cool. So my question is, so when we, I feel like we did a lot of great talks on how art ties into Satanism, you know, which is something that is not seen, you know, really from the outside when you first look at it. You know, I think that's kind of an important thing. That's good. We don't want it seen. That's the problem with all but, this but, bullshit. We're underground. Listen, you bring this shit above ground, and the witches burn. There's a there's an idea here. When you hear the first twenty hour, the twenty four hour radio show, amongst Satanists, of all colors and walks of life and stuff, they dealt with that differently. When it was released to the public, it's been weaponized to a point that people don't. Fu- it's not the same. When you're underground as artists, we do artists do things underground that just doesn't make it above ground often. And when it does, you have you have artists being arrested. You have Robert Maplethorpe. You have really hard actions towards artists for these expressions that are so hard to explain outside of art circles. So within Satanism, the only reason <laughs> Avi was able to hear me is because he's an artist. So he was able to hear and listen to it and decipher it in a different way. But when it goes outside of that circle, it's not the same. So we don't want you here, motherfuckers. Like, we don't want regulars here. Satanism isn't for regulars, and it's not being gatekeeping. It's the, it's part of the culture. So respect that culture. We just, because if we are above ground, we get hurt. Because we are, like, we're the canaries in the coal mine. We present the future, and it scares people. When you show them the wheel or fire, they hurt you, okay? That's what we do, though. I, I guarantee it was a Satanist that brought fire first, brought fire to the, <laughs> to the can. It was a Satanist who rolled down the first wheel. It was a Satanist that presented the box. And those Satanists probably all got beaten the shit out of them, okay? That's, the, that's what we've learned. So that's why we're like, yeah, we, we good. That's why weaponizing a culture or using it for political donations hurts people that are trying to hide and use those things as a defensive measure. It's not entertainment for underground people who are trying to survive and use scary things to survive, or artists who are like, yeah, we deal with taboo shit, we make the future, and we talk about controversial shit, but most people can't handle these conversations. And you may not understand that yet. You may understand it, but when you test it in the field, I should say, you understand the words. When you test this in the field, you're going to find out just how dangerous an intellectual conversation is in public, uh, almost by any conversation. When you are a smart... Oh, hand shaking yes at yeah, the same time. Yeah. When you are a smart young man like you, two, you, you and Baffy, oh, bro, go outside your intellectual circles. Go outside your college scape. Go to the local coffee house and sound smart and see what happens. Or... Just go right to the original movie called Lord of the Flies, the black and white version, and you got the just of society. So basically, you know the guy with the glasses, Piggy? Satanist. And he liked to keep it that way. Like, yeah, don't, I'm a Satanist. Get the fuck away from me. There's this quote you just reminded me of. It's by Isaac Asimov. It's, 
When stupidity is considered patriotism, it is unsafe to be in, uh, intelligent. Yeah, and you know, how did LeVay define stupidity? Okay, he gave a dispensation for ignorance because you could fix it. Stupidity is like this willful ignorance. Like, you know better, but you still do it anyway. And I think that's right, what Isaac said. Based on that kind of, it's willful ignorance. And, and a lot of people in Satanism apply stupidity to ignorant people, like a poor person who hasn't... That's different. Yeah, ha hasn't had the information yet, so they don't have the knowledge to make a decent decision. So, you, you know, it's hard to be upset about that. If they shun the knowledge or they take the knowledge and ignore it, it's easy to say, we hate you, in the Satanist kind of perspective. But you also have to, you know, there, LeVay do, does have dispensation in it. plenty of his work where he talks about we don't hate ignorant people, we hate stupid people. And so, you know, I think that's what we have to remember when we say, when we say that quote. I see too many Satanists apply it to every single thing that they think is stupid. Yeah. Which is, is well, what I hate is when people have the power of knowledge, but they still choose to be ignorant, even though they have the knowledge. That's what I'm saying. It's willful ignorance. Yeah. That's stupidity, right? Yeah. Willful ignorance. Yeah. I, we agree, right? Was I arguing with you? Yeah. yeah. No. No. We agree. Yeah. I'm tired. Shane, so if I'm it was... with you, you know, this is what goes on. I'm, I'm confused. I'm old and confused. If you're taking advantage of me right now, I don't appreciate this. <laughs> you know, if, if, for anybody that don't understand willful ignorance, just try to explain to a religious person that their religious uh, religion might not actually be real. Just sit down and try to say, look, this is a fiction book, and you're going to experience it first. Oh, hand. goodness. They're going to they gonna keep saying, but the Bible say. But the Bible says, and you're like, now yeah, right, you're referring right. to the fiction book, sir. The fiction book is not history. And they go, but it says, the, but the Bible says that. Wow. That is really great analogy because it ties into the whole LeVay concept of hating you hey, stupid people. Like the willful ignorance it's of, like of if a I, religious person. If I person, teach you that the book is based on genocide and controlling people, and I can show you the facts, and you still go, oh, but, but Jesus is going to save me, that's willful fucking ignorance. That's when I go, now you're just stupid. If I sit down and take the time to teach you, and you still grasp on to that, like, oh, but I still think Jesus is going to save me any fuck way. That's when you become a willful fucking idiot. And I'm just like, I'm done with you. I am not. I don't respect you anymore because you don't respect me. You, we've lost, you, we, and, you took, you wasted my fucking time. And that's the problem with a lot of the satanic talk I see on Twitter. It's a lot of willful ignorance. There's a lot of satanic temple people, a lap dogs, you know, doing whatever they're told or whatever's written down and not having any kind of thought willful ignorance and then you see right now i do this like hey would you be willing to talk to some tst people well you said you would be but uh, I am, I mean, is I, it I, I'm, I'm if, willing to talk, if they I'm, are yeah i'm willing to talk to anyone who has a question i'm very approachable but the problem that, that that just the concept of asking me that question is like where did it come in that i wasn't where where does yeah it, like, where does it come in that you have to even, like, I don't even understand. Well, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of um, bad experiences. Like with TST folks condemning you and that sort of thing. Well, just uh, and having satanic talk. So many, yeah. Well, the condemning I don't pay attention to, but I, I, I have a problem with the willful ignorance online. When people will be like, yeah, you didn't do anything. Or they'll say, they'll try to rewrite my history, which is totally offensive to me. I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah. And so that's that's a problem with me that well willful ignorance is being weaponized now, um, you know, yeah I have bad experiences with them but it's almost like a slanderous kind of libelous type of experiences. Yeah. It's not it's not even uh, my feelings about it. It's like yeah that's just a lie and it's wrong and what the fuck is going on here? And and but, but when I see the, uh, the these folks online I try to have this is where it bothers me I try to have conversations with them like what does that mean to you? And, and, it's like there's no just asking the question they're put on defensive it's like oh my goodness I don't even know it just looks like a bad cult scene that's all I'm saying it's a lot of really dopey people and, and Joseph Rose it gives me a fucking he hasn't it gives me a fucking headache looking online because I remember the world of Satanism was like Man, any motherfucker you talked to that was down was so smart, and they thought differently. They weren't just smart like what they read. They were like, you, you, you ask them something, you're like, where did you hear that? I was just thinking it. 
where'd you read it? I don't know. And it was just like that. It was mind altering, philosophical conversations, man. It was exciting. Well, why do you think that's lost now? Is it because it's maybe more mainstream? Why? Because it's like, it's not mainstream, it's dumb. You can't make Satanism mainstream. You can't make being a heretic mainstream. It's totally anti-establishment. So we're anti-mainstream. That's what I'm saying. It's just become this Christian, it's just become a bunch of Christians in Satan, Satanic cloth talking, and they sound just like dude was talking about, willfully ignorant. It's like, oh, wow, this has become a zero-one dimension. Satanism before, like like how we used to roll, it's like, yeah, we don't even pay attention. Like Peter, like Peter Gilmore, if you were a Satanist back in the day and you put up an upside down cross, you're getting flagged, jokingly. But Peter Gilmore's like, yeah, you know, we don't, we don't care about the cross. We don't even. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like using that symbol either. What but as a de- as a devil's as a devil's symbol, it's a Christian symbol. It's a Christian symbol. The cross is Saint Peter. The upside down cross is the cross of Saint Peter. Right. He's like, we don't acknowledge cross. We don't. We don't play with Christians. We don't. We don't. We don't harass them. We don't burn Bibles. As a devil's advocate, once again, isn't really Satanism an Abrahamic cult? Not, not LeVay's. How can you Fair enough, the yes. Bible Absolutely. You're, I, I you're would say correct. yes, during the Satanic Temple, yes. It's, yes, we are talking about an Abrahamic cult when you look at the Satanic Temple. That's what they're riffing off of. And, and, and so, yeah, Excellent. in that perspective, not LeVay. That's what the problem right. is. LeVay's like, oh, you're going to call me a piece of shit sinner? Then, okay, I'm going to let you know what that is. We eat ass. You know, you know, <laughs> I, I, I want to comment on this too because that's yeah. right in line with the Setians go, and the Satan and the Setan from African tradition, like we were talking about. They were the ones they worshipped. Set was a destructive force, and that's where the word Satan comes from. Right. So that concept of we're anti culture is ancient. Right. You know? so right. And, and right. Levay lines up there you, with that verbatim. There you go. Whereas the TST is it's political. Political. It's just. It's just like like what the TST is is essentially like I was hearing with the streaming platform here that I have. They're all the same. It's just a skin. Like you hear about so many programs online. So that's basically it. He, it's all the same. There's just a different skin on it. So it's all the same. Believe us. Give us money. These are we're good guys. We are doing the good good work. We're contributing to society. We're doing the work. It's garbage. You know, it's garbage. That's what it is. Hey, how is this platform treating you? You recommend it? I love it. I think I think it's hilarious because I know what happened and how much we laughed at everyone that would join the Satanic Temple. I mean, like that's not the joke. I'm not even the one only laughing. Like all of us are laughing at you before you were ever members. Totally laughing at you. And to see how this has grown, I want to let you know we think you're fucking clowns. And it's not just me. It's Doug and Kevin and everyone at Harvard. They laugh they're they fucking the laughing, dude. And, and I've books. watched them. And you think I give a fuck about you motherfuckers. No, I don't. I think you're clowns, most of you. Not you two kids. Not you two guys. The Satanic Temple people are fucking clowns. And you just won't hear it from the person who helped create it. Like, we laughed at you. We knew you'd give us money. <laughs> yeah, it's- and we knew it was just like heavy metal shit. It's the same fucking thing. Here's a logo and a brand. Oh, you yeah. It's the appearance of where is your people. skepticism? It's Satanic temple, people. Mm. Where is it? Where is your research on Doug? All the evidence about that bitch is right there in fucking plain view. Go to Portland and ask about the non-consensual gangbangs. Go there, ask. But you won't, cause it destroys your identity that you've gotten real quick by getting someone to send an email. <laughs> you get coupons that way too. <laughs> a couple bucks off, you know. <laughs> what do you think about the queer satanic uh, evidence? I signed on the satanist. I sent my email in. <laughs> God, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm tired. <laughs> you were out to ask a question. I heard you. You were trying to say a question. What were you saying? Who was that? Yeah, the, the queer satanic has a bunch of evidence on Doug and that kind of thing. Not what enough. do you think about that? I, I think they're evidence. Well, I would think, well, yeah, it's not really. And all their evidence does is is, is recruit people. Uh, racism isn't a big deal in Satanism, actually. It's no one in Satanism that's going to attract people to Doug. And it's going to attract the a million people, people that are be like, yeah. So what? What you say? That's what what's going to happen. You're going to see 
you're, you're seeing an, a groundswell of white supremacist people ditching the Nazi garb and grabbing satanic garb because of this. So that's, I, I mean, that's just coming from someone who's observed this for 30 years. I, I probably don't know anything. But that's exactly what's happening. So the joke has turned into something that is really fucking dangerous and growing. And it's going to be awful to think about Satanism as the SS troops of America soon. But I know it's paranoid, there's things, blah, 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 blah. You hear what you say. 30 years of study doesn't count. It's weird to think that you're shy, we we're kind of shining the light on something that would be invisible if this didn't happen. It's still invisible because anything I say is just like, it's just like, this couldn't be true. It's like, <laughs> the sky, whatever, something's going to happen. The meter's coming. No, the meter's not coming. And it smashes down on people and they're watching it drop on them and they just don't fucking move. I mean, you have you have, well, fascism, really you have a fascism taking over in America, and no one's doing a fucking thing but continuing to grind. We have people being thrown out of apartments and addicted right now by, by massive quantities, and everyone just keeps up with the grind. If you, there's no one listening, so the maddening part about what I'm saying is, this is for the future. This is for someone that's not even born. <laughs> that's what this is for. Okay, I, and I get that. This, this is just part of the historic deal that you have to do with this Church of Satan shit and Levay shit. You have to add to the historic record. It's a shame that it won't do a fucking thing, and you'll probably see a wave of fascism in, on the, in the world stage in the next five years that will be unprecedented and will probably be impossible to get out of. I agree. With our minds, with our minds. With the, with, with you the, you mentioned um, Jack London. Are you familiar with um, his book, The Iron Heel? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's where um, you know, uh, Orwell got his idea of uh, 1984. He was inspired by Jack London and another working class a, hero. Very interesting. Jack London, working class hero, total scumbag, dropout, and 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 did it, and then died at what 45. Yeah. Put out all those books and had all that influence in 45 years. Incredible artist, incredible person, and a, so, a socialist. Yes, I was going to say it was on the tip of my tongue, but yeah. Hardcore socialist that was eventually uh, the, the political establishment skewed him as some sort of racist because of his political ideals about feeding people. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never seen anything in Jack London's work to say he's racist. No racist. No, no. not that I'm aware of. Racists love him because he did a story about a wolf, which I always think funny. Like, yeah, you guys act like dogs, all right? You know? <laughs> I don't know if I want to be a wolf. I'd rather be a swallow. Something I think there was a point where social Darwinism was certainly very advanced from for its time. I mean, <clears throat> take the Enlightenment era, right, of like the 1600s and 1700s. People were just coming out of like a feudalist society where king controlled everything. They controlled the fucking crops. They controlled the people. So social Darwinism was sort of like, hey, if you can work, you deserve to have more than just being controlled by a king. So what I think a lot of people miss is those ideologies that seem old and conservative to us now were very advanced back in that time. Well, that's, that's right. And when things are taken out of cultural context, they always are missing that kind of stuff, right? You know, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's how a lot, like, I, like with this 20 year old show, I have to explain it today. I'm like, well, there's a cultural context back then that is hard to explain. And, and I don't know if people are listening today, but I think history books will see that art movement, understand what was happening. Much like Nanero came on and explained how artists throughout history have presented ugly art and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's a lot of times not appreciated in their lifetime. <clears throat> But, um, I think it matters if it's like an individual level too, because I like um, I remember reading The Happy Satanist by Lilith Starr, and she describes um, how the Satanic Bible and the social Darwinist idea kind of helped empower her and, and kind of uh, help her in her poverty. So I think applied on an individual level it can be really useful. Social Darwinism. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, just to just empower, empower yourself, yourself in times of uh, times of need. Or yeah, it probably tells a lot about your character and what you're going to grow into. Um, yeah, so my libertarian buddies, I think it helps him kind of have hope and right. 
um, work hard and cling to that American dream or whatever. Right, it confirms their is imagining. It confirms their philosophical beliefs, right? And powers. Yeah. Right. It's but not it's useful for me as an individual. It doesn't. If it doesn't apply to, yeah. So if it doesn't apply to today's science. And someone's going to tell yeah, me about too. social Darwinism and how it empowers them. I pretty much know what their future holds and what kind of asshole they are. Because, I mean, modern science should be empowering you. <laughs> and there's a lot of modern science that would, would be able to argue social Darwinism yeah. into the ground. So, I don't know. I mean, I like old movies, too, and all that kind of stuff. But I just don't, I don't, I, I think it shows you care, philosophically, when people choose to make decisions philosophically like that early on or even older, it just shows philosophy is where we have war, right? Philosophy is where you can't have a roommate anymore. Philosophy is where we part ways, always. Hmm. You know? <laughs> There's a gay flag that uh, resides for a reason. It was, that, that we're going to show our philosophy, we support, and all that, you know? We do segregate by philosophy more than anything. I have to agree there. I think that, well, not so much philosophy, but religion is. Well, it's a philosophy. Separated. Religion is a philosophy. Religious philosophy, political philosophies. When people have these these school of thoughts, people gravitate towards them and they stay there, and they make their decisions based on that. I'm a libertarian, therefore I'm going to hire libertarians. Therefore I'm going to live in this. It's just the way it is, and I I don't want to hang out with libertarians too much. Especially today, because yeah. I'm polar opposite politically. It's weird. That's becoming the norm. Most libertarians are like, "Oh, I'm a libertarian that hates other libertarians." That's becoming the thing. Well, I, I think their idea that's like an interesting concept, but it could never play out right now. You have to have an even play. You'd have to have ten generations of socialism to play with liberty, liber, 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 libertarian ideals. You have to have an even playing field to let people let let so, let social stratification truly take its course and not have. The, the the game tilted where we can't have a stratification. You know. I agree. If we had a true I game, think we, go ahead, Danny. Go ahead. I, I think we need to um, slowly adapt socialist um, ideas within our society, and eventually we'll just walk right into it. You mean like the fire department, the library, the cops? Public the roads. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've been slowly adapting it, and the only thing standing in our way is a couple of billionaires that, that have a lot of money in marketing yeah. and, and to idiots. Okay? So we all want it. Everyone's like, it's like a big, Bernie was a big deal. Okay? <laughs> and a bunch of psychotic people got in his way. So it's like, we're ready to burn the place down. That's why it's probably time to start talking about general strikes. Or yes. watch your world burn. I'm okay with either, okay, at this point. I'm old enough to watch no. it burn. I don't get, get, you know, it's your world, dude. You're going to watch it burn. I would start talking to General Strait. <laughs> A good blueprint for this would be Gene Sharp's book from, democ from Dictatorship to Democracy. Nice. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. And it's a, he, he purposely makes sure the book is offered free to all people. For just, What's the name of that yeah. Name? That's called From Dictatorship to Democracy by Gene Sharp. Thank you. There's, that, that's a, there's, a, there's a good clue that we might be dealing with the Satanists. They just referred a book to us <laughs> to educate ourselves. That's yeah, it's exactly. a good blueprint for organizing. It's, uh, you know, he's a, a believer in Gandhi's peaceful approach to things because you know, we're dealing with people who have monopoly on violence so it's hard to initiate in violence when they're so organized and skilled with it it's their game they have all the tools to, and they want you to play it they want you in there they, they want you to play it it becomes profitable for them john lennon say it. you know everyone says that any any road sage will tell you, you don't want to become the politics you're fighting and you do you eventually become a fascist asshole to stop fascists or something you become a Very Nietzschean. Nietzschean. Yeah. 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 It's sad, but you know, I, I have I, I I am optimistic about the future because of the young people like yourselves. You guys are really great and really super smart. Like, I don't know why people are down on young people. I, I don't get it. I've I wish I wish too. a lot of twenty year old twenty somethings were president running the fucking show. 
I hear that a lot too. They're like, oh, these kids with their internet and it's like making them dumber. I'm like, wait a minute. It's not because we used to have to go and go yeah. to the library. They got one of their fucking hands all the time. It's like, oh, what do I do? My one buddy comes over here. He's like, he's like, what do I do about my kids? He's like, they just sit to play games. They don't want to get jobs. And I'm like, you just told me the world's on fire. We can't keep making jobs. He's like, yeah, but they got to, I go, you're rich, dude. Like, they don't have to have a job. Why? And he's like, well, that's the way. I go, no, the fu- maybe they know the future. They're young. They're looking at it going, yeah, jobs are out. Of, what you got? They have a whole other idea. Let them do it, dude. You can support your kids. They're, he's a rich guy. <laughs> they don't have to work. So why make them participate in a system even you hate? You hate the system. They hate the system. Why wouldn't you send them... Why wouldn't you encourage them to figure out how to create a new system in the basement while they're playing games? And finally walked out. He's like, you know, you, you got a good idea. You maybe got the right idea. He's like, well, they don't work. I'm like, well, I agree with them. Yeah. Well, there's like other ways to teach hard work or whatever they want to teach with Study. participating. Yeah, find out what yeah. they like, right? Find out what they like and, and figure that out. But yeah, exactly. Work hard doing your own thing. <laughs> Boy, I feel like you don't even have to try to try to teach hard work. It's just like find something that someone's passionate about and they're right. dead. They're gone. They're in it. Right? Yeah. And and you have the pri- if you're, you're rich, you have the privilege to do that in the first right. place. You, your child, you're like, oh look at look at Junior's taking off with the drums. Mm-hmm. Now he's got a drum set, got the garage, it's all padded. Go plan the kids a fucking yeah. pro drummer. Exactly. I, I wouldn't be here if my, my parents didn't shovel a bunch of fucking money into music lessons. It's right, that's a right. huge privilege. Right, right, right. And it's cool you're taking advantage of it and taking it seriously. Like that's the social stratification a, a bit. You know, you're you're taking advantage of it and going to where you want to go. And that's cool. That's but it, so it's fortunate. uncool that other people don't have it's uncool because you don't really know if you're you're, you're reaching any kind of level of of truth because of the privilege. So how do how do how do we know that we actually earn this <coughs> level until it's a fair playing field? And then it's like, off man, if we had that, I feel like it would be so great. Well, this has been a super interesting conversation, and I want to thank you again, Shane, for inviting me to this. And I hope we can do it again. Well, don't put a prayer on it. <laughs> Stay evil, gentlemen. Thank you, Tamerlane. Massive love to you, brother. I will see you around for sure. I'm going to follow some of your stuff, too, dude. Thanks, Avi. Good advice to the young men. Keep it up. Peace. Uh, Thank you. Avi. What's up? He says Avi. Oh, Avi. No, no, Avi. Yeah, I no, all of you guys like in the greeting yeah. goodbye. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what is yeah. Hmm? Hmm? Go ahead, David. Um, so, so oh, from what we were talking about earlier, um, about slowly adopting into like a socialist type system, I think that would work because I think people have two different instincts. First, we have the instincts we're born with, the default instincts of um, human culture, the instincts of survival of the fittest, to fight to survive. But then, we also have instincts grown from whatever social environment we were raised in. Like, what well, was were we raised in the streets? We will know a lot of, we will we'll be street smart. Um, or were we raised in a very rich and prestigious neighborhood? We'd be used to getting things. So I think we have these two different types of instincts and these two different instincts dictate our actions. So I think if we slowly add more socialist ideas into our society, the next generation will be a bit more open to socialism than us. Slowly, slowly, slowly to eventually people would just see socialism as life. So they would just work with other people and it'll, we'll walk right into it. I like it. I'd like to live to see it. I hope you do. You know, it's a. I'm glad we can all agree that we don't need to it, stop here. It's we weird. We want more, and we want to change the world, and we want more, and we see a better, better time, and that's a good way to always look at the future and and what's going on around us. It's probably Ooh. a bad idea to think, yeah, everything's great. <laughs> Everything, you know, it's always good to look and see, not not necessarily what how can improve, but. How you can have more, maybe, and not just mean feelings of joy or happiness or, or fulfillment. 
this just made me think about um, the shaman from down south that uh, that taught me, you know, he told me about the world before money existed. He was like, did you know that there was a time before money existed? And I had to say no. And he told me about this. He said, yeah, money wasn't always around. You know, we used to have to trade with people. And right. he, the traveler, he, he called it like uh, called it being a traveler. He said, usually when you would travel, if you would walk past and someone saw you and, and they saw you were traveling, you could knock on anybody's door. They would take you in, right. you know, Burgers. feed you because it was barter and trade. And you would do something to pay back for them feeding you or taking you in for that night. And he talked about the world before money was here. And I was like, I can't even imagine a world like that. It sounded so much like something out of a movie. I was like, wow. And he was like, yeah, this is what it was like, you know, before capitalism came. You know what I heard the other day? A uh, uh, person was talking about maybe the future. And he's like, you know, I'm like, man, it's impossible to go grocery shopping. It's so fucking expensive now. person's like, did you know in the, in the past, poor people only ate out? That eating out was for poor people. Poor people didn't have the privilege of go grocery shop and make make healthy food. They had, went and got a burger and something at the diner, ate out, and that was how they, ate. or you know, bought food at, on the road, taco trucks, whatever it was. That street street street, street food. food. And so that's how poor people ate, and and, and they suspect that's what we're going back to. You see this? If you and I was it. like, I was like, right, no, I was like, you, that makes perfect sense because at this point, if I ate fast food. It would be cheaper for me to survive if I ate McDonald's every day or Taco Bell than it is going grocery shopping right now. You see that, the truth about that eating out uh, fact that you say, if you look at like um, the Indian culture, where they have a lot of street vendors cooking food and stuff like that, that's where that comes from because poor people had to eat out. Yes. So yeah. they were cooking food on the street. The Africans do that too. They cook okay. food on the street. Well, that's all the, like, yeah, so that sounds. I, I, that's the poor, that's how poor people ate. The whole village ate and they come out and they cook all the food. Who cares? Sounds you like. You know, food grows from the earth before capitalism. Oh, I don't you know? care. I love going out to eat, but I just thought it was so weird. And, and just to hear that, I was like, wow, you know, it is a privilege to go get what I want and cook what I want. And I don't know. I guess it is wild. But I basically kale with yogurt smeared on it, so it's like, you know, it's 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 basically food. We're back to the kale with yogurt. Do you really fucking eat that? I, I don't. Eat, that's I, like yeah, the third I, time you said kale with smeared on it. Bro, that's what I eat. I eat awful fucking. That sounds awful. I eat gruel all fucking day and night now. It's all just healthy food, and I'm trying to get my weight going. You know, so. It, it, he said gruel. Sarah's so more gruel. Oh, it's just like oh ground turkey. <laughs> All just protein stuff, ground turkey, chickpeas, whatever the fuck is in there. It's like, What's your favorite, favorite food? food? Kind of food? Well, I used to enjoy food. I don't really enjoy food anymore because of all the shit I went through leaving. So gruel. But yeah, I hate food. But if I'm with someone, you know, I, I don't know. I like the company, man. I like being around someone. I like what you're eating. So if I was hanging out with you, I'd be like, and you're like, this is my favorite restaurant. I'm like, I'm having whatever he's having. I have to admit, you've been doing that since I met you. I've had first having? night in a fucking Chinese restaurant. He's like, what do you eat? I'm like, uh, you know, I was going to say whatever you eat, but you had beat me to it. I'm like, yeah. son of a bitch. You know, yeah, I, can't, so I, like I can't use my shield. I like enjoying what people around me are enjoying, getting to know them through what they're like, like they order or something like that. It's just a new dish. So I like, I knew, I like new, I like new food and experiences and conversation. You know, at home. <laughs> Except for that octopus we ate that long. I did not care for that. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't eat to like food here. I, don't eat I mean, like we food. did it as a, it was a super witchy thing. Oh, let's all eat an octopus together. Remember that shit? I was like, okay. Oh, what is this? It was so fucking gross, dude. That was. But it was super cool to do that ritual oh, together. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's yeah that was great. I love that. I like, uh, yeah, I, 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 I like fruit, berries. That's where I find joy in my day. And, yeah, that's like, the stuff that's the best on acid. Yeah, and, oh, God, I love that shit. So uh, in Chicago, we have this place down the block. And it's a place where, where, where the groceries, it's like two days before they're going to be rotten, okay? The groceries in the grocery store must have started to rot. So they load them out of there, and they bring them to the store. So I'll go down there, and some days it'll be like four pints of blueberries for a dollar. And they'll usually like four bucks a piece. So, you know, you look through them, and you're like, yeah, you basically got to eat them on the way home. When you get home, you got to freeze them. But I go down there and get, every day I walk down, I go a mile, walk down, get these all these berries, and I just, some days I'll just eat a couple pints of berries in a day. It's good. There you go. <laughs> berries on acid, huh? 
<laughs> well, we were having tomatoes, yeah. and uh, and they, they feel alive. And um, they just feel so cool in your hands. Yeah, why not? Um, like, you can feel <laughs> them kind of it's pulsing gross. or They're something. Alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's saying, but, but feeling him, he's on acid. He's he's, he's having an experience. Yeah, what yeah. My, my friend this is, this is took a, really a tomato in his hand. He's alive. like, bro, feel this. It's shaking my hand. It's weird because people like to say that, like, like, oh, I'm just, I'm LSD. I'm just high. But the, to the shaman, they say, yeah, you're awake now. You can see that it's alive. You can feel it. So you know, it's a weird thing. I did that book. Uh, did that year at the wheel book that shopping in celebration of life in America, and we end up on this beach in an RV. And I'm under this 300-year-old tree with my dog as the partner is starting to have a real job, I guess. And um, working on this book and movie. And it was wild. I felt the tree drink me. I mean, it's weird, but I'm sitting there drinking. I was, wow, I'm always thirsty. I'm like, what in the fuck? And I'm like, it, it's got to be this tree just sucking in all of the water. Because it's a huge 300-year-old tree, so of course it's the... And I'm like, this is the apex predator right here, the sea and this tree. They're eating me, and while I'm alive, you just feel like, maybe it's because I'm on a beach. I'm, I'm 100 feet from this ocean. But there's something going on with the water in your body. Like it, it feels like it's leaving faster than normal. Whatever it was, maybe it's acid, maybe I'm not eating right, maybe a mold got into my nose from the beach. But I really did feel like the tree was drinking. The me. funny thing about trees, and I'm gonna talk about the shaman again. The funny thing about trees is they're the oldest living things on the planet that we have. And so, if you want to learn about this, if you want to learn about the shamans, about what the indigenous people practice, you can find the shamans at the oldest trees. Like if you go down south, there's a tree in Louisiana that's been alive since the fucking Crusades came here to America. Mm. And they, they go and they pray, they meditate. At these yeah. trees. And, like and I was in... talking about it. He said the tree drinks him and he communicates mm -hmm. with the tree and it knows the stories because it was there. Well, I, mine was a real weird moment because the dog told me about this and the owl told the dog and I wasn't high. This is what's going on. <laughs> you know, I'm staring at, I'm not, listen, I didn't talk for a year. I barely, I said like, you know, a couple words each month. So I'm really like just looking at the sea. You know, my mind is in a whole different place, just focused on waves and life like that, the pulse of the earth. And I remember going outside once with a dog and there's an owl and it's fucking huge. Because I'm living in the rainforest, so the animals out there, birds out there are big. The fucking owl's huge. And it's, it's like a child standing there and just looking at us. Like, what the fuck? And the dog runs around the owl and the owl stands there for the dog running around it and then the owl takes off. <laughs> the dog comes back to me and we're hanging out in the thing and she's like licking the water and doing something weird. So I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And then she goes up and starts licking a tree. And I'm like, yeah, for whatever reason, this is the crow on the road for me. I'm reading it like, is that why I'm so thirsty? The tree's drinking me? <laughs> whatever. I was real close to my dog at that point. We just hung out 24-7. Yeah. No other, no one else to talk to. And so I felt he like the says, dog whatever. was telling I'm going to say, yeah, the dog was trying to tell you something. Animals try to communicate shit. You know, so did that experience uh, change how you feel about trees and nature, like your relationship? Oh, yeah. Coming from the city, when I started to get around trees, I was like, oh, this is the boss bitch. And then out there, you understand that trees are actually what we eat, like that the ground eats us. And the sea, we are part of the sea. So that those are the apex predators that we can't understand are predators for some reason because we can chop them down. But they're so mighty that if we chop enough of them down, we die. <laughs> so yeah. They're pretty fucking big deal. They eat us, and if we kill them, we die. So it's, it's like a symbiotic re relationship. It's that symbiotic relationship. We breathe, that, and the trees breathe us. Yeah, there's that we're fucked up by. Yeah. We don't have a symbiotic relationship with anything. And how that happened, I don't get it. And I guess part of it is we don't have an idea. To, I was privileged to sit there and look at nature for a year and just watch and go, yeah, we are out way outside of this. And yet we go, these are the natural laws. Mm -hmm. No, we don't fucking get it. Yep. We're wrong. And that's where the might is right garbage started to devolve for me when I was watching strong animals play or huge American bald fucking eagles fly by me, look me in the eye, look at them, and understand that that bald eagle could kill me right mm -hmm. there. All it has to do is 
put its claw into my neck. And it's just looking at me. Oh, I was weird when I left the area. All these people freaked out. Check this out. You want mystical shit? All these neighbors freaked out because I'm leaving it. We're leaving it. It's another time, I'm, you know, being run out or whatever. Pack up the shit. And I used to go outside of my house. I lived in a longest and I would yell at the eagles. And they'd be above the trees and sometimes they'd drop salmon out of the air. And it would land on the street. It's weird. But they'd fly around. I'm like, hey, eagles, what's going on? You know, I always yell at them when they're flying around. I just loved it. And it looked like they were paying attention. They'd fly around. And sometimes I'd leave rotten chicken out in the yard trying to get them to come down. And then when I left, and I was weird, these four eagles flew right down in between. They don't go that low. They don't go low unless they're eating. Like, they, they fly fucking high. They come down by the houses. And I look over, and I, I see the eagle in its eye. Like, it's, I'm like... Oh my God, I caught an eagle look in the eye. It wasn't on TV. Like, I'm used to, it's real deal. And then another one, another one. And my name was, that's so fucking weird. That never happens. I lived there my whole life. And this lady comes out and they're going, they're saying goodbye to Shane because he's always yelling at him. Hey, he's always saying hello to him. And I'm like, how the fuck would they know I'm leaving? And she goes, they talk to the crows and the crows know everything. The crows speak for, English. She goes, she goes, the crows know everything for 15 years. They know they have a 15 year history of the. She says crows hold a 15-year history and hand it down to their... Oh, is this what you were saying before when you are talking about art? Well, you mentioned crows. crows. No, no, the crow on the road is just some stupid thing you see in your life. Oh, okay. What, okay. What, what thought does it trigger? So it could happen to anything. Like you wake up, no. you know, it's, almost, you know, tea leaves. It's, it's, it's not the tea leaves. You're not reading a palm. You're not reading the clouds. You're not reading the crow on the road. It's whatever those, whatever that triggers, triggers that thought. That's, you know, it's, it's just a, what do you use for a trigger to trigger your subconscious? Get what I'm saying? And so the crow on the road becomes that trigger of your subconscious. When you see it, which is rare, you rarely see the crow on the road. So when you see it, it triggers out something. You're like, oh God, I really got to call that guy. He's going to fucking die soon. I really got to call them. But with the crow that he was talking about before, that's a literal thing. The crow memory thing is a literal thing. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's what the lady said. The crows told him. And I'm like, what in the fuck? And she goes, and she said that, so she's talking. Right, I believe it. It's a fact. And you don't need to believe because it's a scientific fact. Crows can speak. They actually can speak and understand language. They're birds that can actually talk if they want to. They just don't. (laughs) They just don't. So they can actually, crows are literally listening to people and understanding what's going on. Their memory is 15 years, and they just don't speak. So uh, Edgar Allan Poe, with the with the story of the crow, it literally oh, I could have that. happened because I, I the believe crow that. could have I, spoken to No, I believe to that. Them. I'm just like, you know, like when I when the story was told to me, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So this lady's saying that, and she's like, she paid attention, and I don't, it was cool. The experience it's, was cool. I don't know, I'm not saying that any of that was true but it was a cool experience to be able to look an eagle in the eye and live there from like i said growing up a piece of white trash and that's crazy i think it's beautiful it's it's so poetic what the the way you talk about those eagles and speaking to the animals because there's a lot of uh stories about that type of stuff it seems like tall tales like the crows talk to me i'd go out and see the sea lions and i'd go out and hang out with the sea lions and i'd lay next to them even and lay on my back and they're right next to me i looking at them and they're looking at me and sort of moving and all that sea lion has to do is go like this and roll on to me and kill me like the little fucking they're, they're mighty these sea lions are mighty and i'd be hanging out with them and my dogs running and i remember one time this this lady got to, you know they're dangerous she starts yelling and i'm like, <laughs> I'm like if you think they're like, dangerous <laughs> they will be right that's when the sea lion was like oh, what? the time and i was right? like yeah it wasn't dangerous until you brought that attitude over here like, I get the danger, so am I, lady. I can hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, anyway, I was watching, I really a, a, yeah, a kick I was watching a kick without the wilderness like that. It was really a kick. Uh, and you guys read Braiding Sweetgrass, because it, it, it was remind, reminding me of Braiding Sweetgrass um, when we were talking about, like, environmentalism and the relationship with trees. And, well, Braiding Sweetgrass is a phenomenal book written by Robin Wall Kimmerer. And uh, she's uh, an indigenous or something, and a scientist, and she kind of reconciles so both the, the her braiding, braiding the science and indigenous thing. Yeah, 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 and that's one core kind of theme um, in the book, I suppose. So I actually have, it's, it's funny because I actually have a braid of sweetgrass, and I always keep oh. it around for smudging. 
So when you said uh, braid the braid the sweet grass, I'm like, I do that. I have braids of yeah. sweet grass and I have sage sticks and I combine them for smudging, which is an indigenous tradition. So um, yeah. it's about it's really about that, you know, it's weird because I know that book is about nature. I already know what it's about, you know. It was really great, I recommend it, yeah. Hey, I guess, hey, um, I'm looking. I'm sorry to interrupt, but my friend Zolf has requested to speak. I just saw his request in the request logs. He said he wants to talk about Satanism and, um, wait, let me check his exact log. The current landscape of Satanism and the influence the internet and online uh, blogs have on it. Can you repeat that? Should you write him up? Repeat that. Hmm? All right, so Zolf is requesting to speak. It's about Satanism, the current landscape of Satanism, and the effect the internet and online blogs have on Satanism. Well, uh, he's requesting to um, come on to Ecam. Should I give him the link? What? He wants to come on. He's requesting to join. Everything's irritating me at this point. Excuse me. It's not you. I can tell you. Listen, I'm, I'm just tired. I'm irritated. I'm dying. I'm on fire. That's all I'm saying. I love you all. It's just going to sound like I'm a dick. And I, feel I like think I'm you should smoke. I want to start punching something. I'm fucking tired. I want to punch sleep, okay? I got to get out of here. I'm dying. Okay. There, I'm done with that. I don't see the person. Just ask the question. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, it's the way it is, kids. I'm young, young adults, I'm apologizing up front. I'll DM him. I'm getting important messages from Carla LeVay. If anyone can help me find her channel on YouTube called Satanic Church, I need to get the I need to get I need to get the video that says O nine A order of nine angles because she wants that played on the show. It's very you know, about Carla LeVay, and I'm about to tweet this is on the Church of Satan fact, they have this thing about how Carla Levine never debunks the rumors about her father being a domestic abuser. She just debunked them on the interview fucking earlier, and I think she's debunked those rumors in the past. So, I mean, that Church of Satan fact is straight out one. Well, that's the thing that we're, that's, I, I, you know, here's the thing. Um, you know, it took, it took, the Leves don't move quick. They move precise. They look for moments. It's it's definitely a it's definitely a a, a a vibe. And Carla has waited and been encouraged to come out and say something. And then when I came I came in and I, I, I I'm 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 real pushy about it and I told her why it's so important and I expelled it out and showed her. Like, this is what's happening. This is what's going. And she can see a lot of it. And then she saw it and she's like, you're right. It's important. She comes out and so, so she's coming out now. And the idea now is to Sorry, I'm help, help her get the satanic church moving. And the satanic church is just, it's not, it's, it's basically something to support her to talk, tell you about stories or to present the, the ideas that were formed when she helped create Satanism with her father. I mean, it's a really important source that we should be supporting right now because we're about education. And she has so many, comp when I talk to her, I'm like, man, this is incredible. No one knows this. This is incredible. And, this, and what she talks about in those interviews is just like certain people came along at the right moment and sort of guided this stuff into a right-wing thing. But that was never her father's deal, and he wasn't happy about a lot of that. And it was done at the end of his life when, you know, he's busy trying to live. And so I think it's important just to set the, 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 the story right, especially because it's, again, a working class person that created this. And it's being culture vulture by rich people. So that means it's going to be turned into something different. And, and why? It's just about freedom. It's just about more rights. It's just about more life. Who would want to pervert that but an asshole? Do you know what I'm saying? Why would you want to take something that is, the attempt is to create thought and freedom and, in, and, and encapsulate that in something that's going to move your will this way? I can't, for myself, I don't, 
I get it, but why not just make a soda pop? That's what I did. You know what I'm saying? Like, just go do that with some something that's not so important. Which episode was it that she said? She didn't say which episode. I just told you. She said it's the channel isn't that. The channel is Satanic Church. It's her channel. And she's looking for the O-N-A video that she did on, and I'll read it to you, Geraldo. Okay, let me read you the thing. Blank, 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 just got out of the hospital. I asked him to put up my O'Reilly factor on YouTube, never before seen online. I talk about O-9-A. Perhaps you can be the first to view it live. It's in YouTube titled Carla LeVay in the O'Reilly Factor. I thought it. I thought it. Okay, let me it. finish reading this. Thank you. The channel is mine, oh, Satanic no. Church. I believe, I love that. Thank you for saying that. Beautiful. And, okay, so if you've got it, how do we play it here? Um, I just sent you the link on Instagram. So, so I can I'm just not play too it on here and share the screen, right? Oh, yeah, I see it. I think. I'm going to, I'm gonna, well, we're going to try this live. It's fun. I get to play with this. Okay. I want. I, I want. Call the name of the O'Reilly Factor. She just uploaded it. Yeah, right. That's. What, I know. She she uploaded it for this stream. Mm-hmm. Stop now, Carla. Stop. Enough. Enough. I'm gonna get 17 fucking questions now. I love her. I don't don't take that as disrespect. But but. It, but yeah, she's she, she she drives tired, a hard man. I'm tired, but she drives a hard fucking deal. She's like she pushes. That whip. She pushes, she fucking pushes me. You know, my roommate's the same way. I love her. I don't go don't, don't get me wrong. It's a good it, it's a relationship I love. I don't mind it. So I'm gonna try so someone sent me the link. Is that you, David? Yeah, I sent you it on Instagram and Discord. Great Instagram. If we can stream it, that'll be great. Staying with us, I'm Bill O'Reilly, and in the unresolved problem shh, segment tonight, it is Halloween everyone. Eve, and Halloween is supposed to be a fun day. I'm doing magic right here, motherfuckers. I'm sharing my screen. Oh, I don't know how to do but there's this. a serious side to the occult in the USA, Satanists. Some researchers estimate there are more than a hundred satanic cults. <laughs> Now I don't know how to do this. I got the... Now what? Yeah, I think they're seeing your screen right there. Yeah, I no, I, I could see it fine. Shane, the stream could see it fine. Just keep doing what you were just doing. Stop and let me talk. Everyone is telling me things. Let me say something. How do I make the browser big? Or do we just play it like this? Same way you normally um, do. Pre no? Press the Because when screen. I do that, I can't get back to my ecam. Oh. So... Oh. Is the, I'm, and I'm tired, so should I just play it this small real quick or download it? No, nah, fuck, I'm, I'm downloading this motherfucking plane. Yeah, just, just play it. And I think people can see it. No. No? I'm a stubborn bitch. This is what's going to have to happen. <laughs> I got to download it and do it this way. If I, I, I just want to see it in full screen. I want to do it right. You know what? Guess what? Can you see me? This is the fear of Carla LeVay telling me I did it wrong. What is this website? So I'm gonna do it exactly the best I can, so I can say, "Listen, I did it the best I can." Or if don't I don't want to mess with someone, because that's what's gonna be the question: Did you try your hardest? Did you do your best? Ooh, Carla, don't ask me that. Yeah, that's the life. That's what's going on here. All right, click here and say, "Booyah, booyah, boom, boom, boom." All right. Hey, Carla might call in live. Who knows? All right. Great. Oh, I jumped through the hoops for this woman. I'm fucking jumping through the fucking hoops, huh? It's one second. The countdown is happening. I'm going to talk until I lose my voice. Downloads. There it is, oh baby. Y'all ready? So that means ready. yes. You're watching the number one program on cable news. Enter the no spin zone on the O'Reilly Factor. 
the most powerful name in news, Fox News Channel. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly. And in the Unresolved Problem segment tonight, it is Halloween Eve. And Halloween is supposed to be a fun day in America as millions of children go trick-or-treating and enjoy various festivities. But there's a serious side to the occult in the USA, Satanists. Some researchers estimate there are more than 100 Satanic cults currently operating in America. The question, are they dangerous? Joining us now from San Francisco is Carla LeVay, the founder of the First Satanic Church. And here in the studio, Dr. Don Perlmutter author of the upcoming book, Investigating Religious Terrorism and Ritualistic Crimes. It'll be out in two weeks. All right, Dr. Perlmutter, we're going to begin with you. Why don't you define the situation for us? There's a lot of controversy surrounding ritualistic crimes. People do not understand um, what Satanism is. There's not just one Satanic church, just as there isn't one Christian church. There's several different types of, of theologies, some are nonviolent, some are violent. Now, uh, we want to lock in on the, uh, on the uh, violent ones because Ms. LeVay, who we're going to go out to San Francisco in a minute, she has a nonviolent church, mm -hmm. all right? Now, the violent ones, are, what kind of a problem are they, or are they just isolated? Well, they're a significant problem are they? because there's crimes ranging from vandalism to homicide with um, the, the types of things that are on the internet with uh, the, you go into any kind of bookstore and you can buy the satanic bible and but does the satanic bible say kill people and hurt people it doesn't say that but it says do whatever you want as long as you gratify yourself which is not a great message for teenagers to to have i mean it can be interpreted a lot of different sure. ways and so if it feels good to you even though it might be sadistic or destructive to somebody else it's okay Exactly. Ms. LeVay, is that, is that what the satanic uh, philosophy is? Not exactly. That's sort of taking it out of context. What we say is life is a great indulgence, death is an abstinence, and to live life to the fullest while you're still around because we don't believe in an afterlife. It's not that one doesn't exist, but we don't know, so we don't live for that. So we feel that people should be responsible for their actions and they should stay above the law and uh, don't do any criminal acts and don't harm any animals, don't harm children, don't harm any people. We don't have any rituals where anyone is harmed in them. And uh, we do believe in doing whatever you want and having a good time as long as you're not hurting anyone else. All right, well, so you're the nice satanic church. But what about well, the mean satanic church? I mean, there, well, there are some people, and I, I did a story over in Italy of a vicious satanic cult who uh, was practicing, practicing ritualistic sacrifice and all these other things, and it was the scariest story I think I've ever done. It was in the bottom of a uh, deconsecrated church in a basement, and they were murdering people that they kidnapped, homeless people. It was awful. And so what do you say when uh, Dr. Perlmutter and others discover that kind of stuff? Well, this isn't Satanism as how it's written in the Satanic Bible or in the Satanic Rituals, which are two books that my father wrote. The Satanic Bible was written in 1969, and it sold over a million copies. The Satanic Rituals has also sold over a million copies. And in it, we do not have any kind of... No, all right, but I, I, I understand that. But what do you say when other satanic cults do these terrible things? Well, what I would say is, are they really satanic? There are a lot of people going under the guise, calling themselves Satanists, and what they're doing really has nothing to do with actual Satanism at all. All right. Now, is it fair then, Doctor, to, to demonize uh, Satanists, as Ms. LeVay is the nice Satan person? I, I, no, is it fair to say, you know, they're all a bunch of... Uh, if you can't demonize Satanists, who can you Well, I know. I mean, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here. I mean, um, I don't have any sympathy for the devil, unlike Mick Jagger. But, um, you know, this is America. Well, if you want to read the Satan Bible and, and run around saying, you know, I like Lucifer, you can do that. And I understand. We don't well, worship wait, wait, the devil. Let, let, let Dr. Perlmutter respond. I mean, the problem is, although the Satanic Bible doesn't advocate violence, I find it's found at crime scenes, so it's being interpreted in a way that's being misinterpreted. Okay, but what you might say to that is, look at the Catholic Church. It's founded on good, 
Mm -hmm. All right, the whole theology is good, help everybody, love your neighbor, yet there have been some terrible acts committed, mm -hmm. all right, within the Catholic Church by their clergy. So is it a perversion of what Ms. LeVay uh, says is a benign movement that these people, you know, stab people and what I described? Is that a perversion of the satanic stuff? Well, it's a perversion of that particular group, but that is not the only theology. You have the Order of the Nine Angles, which is a group that advocates um, violence. They have a guide to human sacrifice on the internet. The Order of the Nine Angles. Angles. Is that a satanic group? It's a satanic group. They say that they're a traditional satanic group, and the traditional groups are the ones that commit the most heinous crimes. All right. Now, what about this Order of the Nine Angles, Miss LeVay? I mean, and do you know anything about them? And <laughs> I'm not familiar with them in particular. All right, but no way. But I mean, it's, not, it's not a laughing matter, though. If they're doing pernicious stuff on the Internet or anywhere else under the name of Satan, and you're the good Satan people, um, you, shouldn't you be speaking out against the bad Satan people and, you know, and all of that? I wouldn't consider them Satanists. Why? What if they say, look, um, I take my definition of Satan from the Bible, all right? And Satan is the angel of darkness, the angel that... Uh, fell and then wants everybody else to commit immoral acts and join him in Hades. That's the Bible interpretation. Okay, now, you may, not, you may not agree with that, but certainly that through the ages has been the way Satan has been defined. We do not believe in a devil. We are not devil worshippers. Well, who's Satan? We simply, who, we simply who use it? it as a symbol. Satan is a symbol. All right, so Satan you don't believe that Satan exists or and there's no... There's no uh, force of evil in America that, that clashes against the force of good. Satan to us simply means adversary or opposition and we basically play devil's advocate. Pardon and we pun. oppose yeah, we oppose any religion that frustrates or condemns man for his natural instincts. Okay, I got it. You're hedonist. You just want to have a good time. Um, last word, uh, Doctor. Um, the Internet has really driven this satanic stuff like crazy, correct? Absolutely. If, if the general public knew what was on the Internet yeah. in terms of, of Satanism and a lot of other um, occult groups, they would be watching what their children um, are viewing much more carefully. Yeah. All right. Satanism. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. You can decide. And Thanks a lot, Mr. Vay. We appreciate it. Doctor? Up next, Princess Diana. Mary's art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... That was good. And we're back. <laughs> Let's see if Carla's yelling at me. No. Dude. Let me I hate that guy. The interview? How fucking rude was you never that? heard of O'Reilly? I don't know this other... Who, who's oh. this? Who's... What the? Who is X U L F? Oh, that's Zolf. Wait, can you hear me? What? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, Zolf. Okay, so the person, um, that's Zolf. He's an X O nine A, so he could probably add on to this. Yeah, I don't want to put him on there with the swastika on there. Hmm? Isn't that a. No, that's the OBS symbol. No, that's an OBS oh, no. program symbol. Wait, is that me? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a stylized swastika. No, that's three. No, that's the OBS. Some, that might be me. OBS right. it kind of looks like it. I know what the fuck props, I'm saying. Props for standing up for your beliefs. It's like, it's like, <laughs> well, no, they're friends. I mean, if you guys are all friends, he's part of this. I, I'll hang up. I don't know. I'm just like, I don't necessarily, I'm not looking to be associated with that shit. Oh, no, he's not a Nazi. Wait, wait, by the way. I don't think my camera's working. I'm going to hang up and rejoin, okay? Okay, so uh, I don't know how to say your name, Fluff, X Fluff. I don't know how to say this. So can you pronounce your name? Uh, first and foremost, is my microphone actually working right now? Yeah, it is. sounds good. Okay, sweet. That's first things done. Uh, my name is Zolf. I am the pipe-smoking satanic raccoon. And I can confirm that OBS is indeed not a secret SS division in the modern age. That is just something my computer defaults to, so all set and clear. And yeah. Why not your face? 
I don't I don't have a webcam and the camera on my phone just does not want to co uh, cooperate with this program so fucking I don't know what to do. Sounds just good. just imagine just imagine the raccoon right here. That's all you need to know. How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. I just got a cup of coffee. Um, it's fucking 8 p.m. here. All's well and dandy. I've actually been uh, watching the show for as much as I can today. Uh, this Sunday hasn't been quite as busy, so I've been fortunate enough to catch some quick uh, glimpses of the live stream whenever I can. Uh, it's been very nice hearing from you, actually, Shane. And uh, I don't mean to sound rude. I just am not the best with names, uh, but uh, your friend as well. Reverend Avi. Avi, thank you. Reverend Avi. It's all good. Reverend Avi. All right. Good. Good to meet you. I'm. 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 I guess. You know. So did you have? I wish I saw your face. I wish I could see your face, but but it's it's cool. I'm looking right in the camera now because it's like an eye. <laughs> you got any questions, dude? Please shoot your questions if you got them, man. Yeah. Um. Well, just imagine me looking like David, but straight from suburbia. That's basically the best way I can describe myself. Yeah, I've seen this face um, before. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, uh, I did hear the topic somewhat be uh, discussed uh, earlier in the live stream, but I, I largely just want to bring up the, sort of the topic of um, Satanism and how specifically uh, the internet, even through its like more earlier stages in the early 2000s, late 90s, and how that, like online blogs, the sorts has sort of shaped Satanism into what it has become, the different sort of beast it has become today. Well, here's something, Avi probably has, a, I, I don't know what, I, I know, here's one thing I would say about this. For, for any radical ideas, there's these moments in time where some new technology comes along and no one knows what's going on. And that's when you can sneak great messages through that are not, that are about destroying the system or changing things. And so that's what the hippies did that I watched. The Black Panthers, all that was about the theater of the absurd and it was a new TV thing. And TV didn't mind filming these wacky people until it became a movement. And they're like, oh, us filming the Black Panthers created a black movement. So they looked at them as a bunch of clowns that had shotguns that were about, about to be murdered in the streets. So they were like, if it bleeds, it leads. Let's film these goofballs. And they filmed them, and they fucked up because it became a movement. And then they went to Anton LaVey's house from Oakland, you know, down the block, and they're like, let's film this clown. And it became a movement, you know. So that's, and that's, what, that's what happened with the Internet as well, you know. That's why the Satanic Temple popped. It was just this moment. And you can see the viral stuff starting to go, and we go. We know we, we, we need to strike viral gold. We need to strike that. We need to spin it around. And once that happens, we've sort of got it. Once we because because the COS isn't interested in that. It's not that they're non-active. They're just they're, they're not looking to recruit. They're not looking for attention because they're like, yeah, we're Satanists. The last thing we need is attention because that when we get attention, they sort of burn us out of towns. Duh. But Doug doesn't care about throwing a bunch of, uh, you know, young people under the bus. And that's what the violence against Satanists has grown since the Satanic Temple. But the Satanic Temple doesn't have anything to help those people that have issues. So it's just sort of a funny situation. But anyway, I hope that answered your question about, I like this, we're falling, ah! I don't, I, so I just see that like that. I mean, yeah, the internet's been a freeing thing for so many, uh, everything. It's changed every fucking thing, dude. I mean, we don't have middle people. Any, well, we're starting to have those, right? The tech companies are cr cracking down now. And, and so yeah. that, that moment you're talking about was in the past. It's no longer. We don't have it anymore. You, I would imagine Order in Nine Angles tries to put up a YouTube. They're going to be pulled down. Um, I've noticed archive, the, a disturbing thing to me almost is a few archive things that they've archived have been pulled off of their server now. But they're mainly groups like 4chan or 5chan, some of these groups that are weaponizing personal information. So it makes sense. But, but it became a scary moment where I'm like, 
oh wow, all my shit's on archive.org. And if one day I all of a sudden this becomes politically hot, it's gone. So I, I don't I think that's there there's there's what I see. I don't know how that applies to your question or not. But so um I would like to comment. Please. They, I think the question was, um, how do I feel like the, or how do we feel like the internet has affected Satanism, or do we feel like it aided it or not? I think it's a love-hate relationship. I think that it, it's this thing where you would have had to search out the Satanic Bible like a like a library, but now you can just order it. You don't have to search. You, you can easily get access to the information. But then again, we got it's like the little rascals clubhouse we were talking about. Now we've got all these fucking clubs popping up, and everybody can say, "Oh, this is the Satan Club." And now you don't know who's friend and who's foe. So you know that's it's like that's part of the reason why we why this had to happen. That's what I told Carla. She's saying that she, she, was, she was like, "Oh my god!" And I'm like, "But that just serves you know the Satanic Bible." She's like, "Oh, I'm like." When there's so much of it, they have to come back to the source. Like, right, they've got to go back to the source. They've got to, you're like, you've just assured sales for another 20 years on that book. Yep. Because everyone's got to go back to that source. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's the nucleus. No matter what happens to this, you know, how this grows. Right. You know, Everybody you know, that uses that word, Satanism, has to go back to the source. Yeah, and, and then Avi has, now, now Avi's creating this other problem. There's another source. <laughs> so it's like, welcome to root work. We're going to the source. Synagogue of Satan. Now I got to look into this fucking shit that Avi's giving me. I'm getting a headache enough. <laughs> well, I'm glad that the Satanic Bible always remains as the main original source of Satanism, the center of it all. I'm very glad about that because, I mean, Anton LaVey is the founder of it. He needs to be stated and recognized. Yeah, that's. It's weird how history works. Like, did you know Darwin didn't? Darwin ripped off his theory. Oh, Darwin, Darwin was a culture vulture. Big yeah, that would generation. sound about right. Yeah, he was a rich kid who was able to take a theory from someone who wasn't rich and run with it. That's what happened. I've what I've seen the exhibits. <laughs> that and one thing that we can't forget. It was blow, blows me away. I'm like, Darwin's a culture vulture. Every motherfucker we read is a culture vulture because they got you know they got the money. And that's like, how that's ideas how form, form, man. It's it's, it's a, a really interesting. Did you say that's cycle, how ideas man. form? Did you say that's how ideas form? Basically, yeah. It's yeah, an interesting, interesting cycle, cycle that you can sort of apply to various um, different philosophies or at I least swear ideas. The, I could swear the idea formed way before the culture vulture came in. Like the idea was formed, birthed, and was breathing, walking around, making graffiti, and it was beautiful. And then the, another one was birthed, and they were making tattoos, and it was beautiful. And then this idea that was birthed and embraced by culture, a culture, became culture vulture. So I don't know where the culture vulture has any kind of idea. It only has a, it only has a, I'm stealing an idea because I can and because you can't stop me, because you can't afford a lawyer. Great <laughs> artists <can't>, steal. <laughs> yeah, well, you could say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but they don't steal. They steal to make artwork, not money. Yeah. yeah. That's a big difference. Because, so I let's, mean, so let's, sort of, let's, let's try to yeah. apply the nuances of life when we state, state bumper sticker statements. Like the new nuances of life. Our great artists do steal. Whereas a culture vulture is not an artist. They're usually mm -hmm. a politician or some fucking guy who works at a, a mediocre asshole that works at a corporation that takes great artwork that stole like takes something like LaVey a guy who was a great artist and stole shit put it all together and was like yeah this is me great there, there's your example right and then some guy who's like well I got a degree to sell things hey that's a good idea I'm gonna sell it he has no fucking talent he's probably a landlord too get the fuck out of here man get the fuck out of here <laughs> it's like you think these great ideas like LaVey are, 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 are farmed, like there's a big tree of fruit that happens. Those happen once in a, a while, once in a generation. They don't happen all the fucking time. Where is yours? Where is your great work of your generation? Where is it? Where is the one of the millennials? Where is it? I, I'd love to read it. I'll get on it, Shane. I'll start I, I working you, on that. I believe you will do that. I hope to see it before I die. I really do. I, I think... What you have going on here, your, your crew is cool. That's why, that's why we're here. I, I'm, I think it's great. The debate you guys have, what I'm reading over, I think it's awesome. It, it actually does not make me depressed like a, most of the Satanic Temple stuff and what I see going on. And so I think you will, David. 
I think I think I think Claudia will. I think you all are gonna really you're really listening and you're taking it in and then you're gonna decide what to do with it. That's cool. I love that. That's why I'm sitting here giving you stuff to you know, mm -hmm. like please I, I, I think I really appreciate that. that. I think you're gonna do something cool with this. I hope that's what you sell me on. Next thing I know I'm I'm fucking in the stockyards, chained to a wall getting killed because I got a bunch of Nazi troops on my ass. You know, I'm joking, my paranoid joke. Here, I got something for you. Order of the nine angles, guy. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's funny that it, we came back to that, the, the, the order of the nine angles. Because, X, uh, hey, let, me, X. let me show my gift just to get this guy excited. Or, I don't mean guy, this, 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 this person. This, you. So I call <laughs> this. <laughs> this is, this is with a slight turn. With a slight turn to the right, we're all fucked. So you go, but you know, like this, it's not. And then they got the American there. Mm. So, damn, I lost my train of thought. I forgot what the fuck I was gonna say. I feel like, just, um, I feel like I should reiterate again, just for the audience that didn't hear before. Yes. X. X oh nine eight member. Yeah, that just, is the key part. I, I right on, and you know I'm I know you're yanking my train, but yeah, yeah. okay. I'm, I'm wanna, glad you know that. Thank you. I'm, I'm playing. I want to. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm, exci I'm sorry. I'm excited and exaggerated for this broadcast. Just, just in case Chris and Tom gets a little pissed or something. Well, whatever. I just, uh, this is how I am. I, I'm excited. I can't sleep. This is going on. So that's interesting Fucking because I tried to have mm -hmm. another. And he, another, and he, I wouldn't say he's a real Satanist to the, to the LeBay name, you know, like to the, to the real core, but this dude's a left-hand path. He's got following, you know what I'm saying? And, um, he was associated with them, the 098. And I put his name on the list of people I tried to have come on the show. And that's Michael Ford. Now he used to be associated with them. And I was like, oh yeah. So you want to come on and try to say something about Fuck this? That name and sounds familiar. He dodged it. You know, he dodged. And well, so, ask this gentleman. This, this, and so, uh, but you know about Michael Ford. You don't. You know about Michael Ford? That's some Luciferian. Uh, the yeah, there you go. He's calling himself the Luciferian now. He's got the Luciferian yeah. yoga. I was telling you about. It. He's doing a demon yoga. Fuck, shit. that's where I know I'm from. Sorry, 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 sorry for my language. Uh, Fucking hell. They seem no, kind of I new age. Just yeah. Told you, he's got a following. Yeah. Listen, you motherfuckers stick with the yeah, study yeah. groups. You're gonna. That's where the prophet is in Satanism. I'm not. You, you actually, the fucking, actually, what? Tell me. Tell me actually. Actually, uh, oh no, not to that. Um, it was actually why I was mentioning shit like the, uh, what do you think about Satanism and how sort of like online blogs and the more access to the internet has sort of formed it nowadays. It's because, um, well, it was more sub uh, like uh, subconscious, but yeah, it has been because of, um, like me personally, just whenever I try to look for more resources or more readings from uh, varying different points of view on how to quote unquote interpret Satanism, that I stumbled across uh, a lot of Michael Ford's materials and a lot of his more, I guess, recent stuff regarding uh, like his own take on Luciferianism and related ideas, even though that name was very common to see with a more uh, within a lot of the uh, Nine Angles work back then. Not uh, directly, but you did hear the name referenced once or twice. Um, I, I, I just don't, I don't think it's, a, um, it's just a, it's just a new news. I don't know how to explain that, but it, I don't think the internet has, I mean, we're, we're 20 years in, we're talking about a 20 year old podcast that aired on the original, like uh, internet 1.0 or something like that. You know, yeah. well, that's what it was. It was like net, net one point. I don't know what it was, but it was right. We, you know, it was bare. We didn't have blog. We did a podcast. We had streaming and whatever the play the players were. The win amps. Win amp. Oh my god. Yeah. But anyway, so I mean, it's changed. The internet's changed everything. You know, it's changed every fucking thing. And from my generation, I mean, we had to, like, when I first published Obscene Books, literally to get them to someone's hands, I had to drive to Iowa to sell a couple hundred books, if I could, and it usually 20 books. So we had to drive around the country to sell shit. And then the internet popped. And I remember putting some of that shit that I'm like, no one even knows what Mike Diana is. Let me see if I can put this on eBay. 
And I'm like, holy shit, I'm selling fucking, I'm selling shit on eBay to everyone in the world now. They all want this shit. So everyone wanted all this obscene underground shit. And we would have never known without the internet because it felt like very lonely. You'd go to Iowa and like, like, yeah, we'll buy two. You know, it was, so internet opened it up for art and everything. I mean, it's almost like a renaissance or we're about to enter renaissance. Mm. You know, I see like, there was a, there's a phrase that I used to love and I still love when I was younger. It's like filmmaking will not become an art until it's as cheap as a piece of paper and a pencil to produce. And I was like, that is the fucking greatest. And now you see art with filmmaking because motherfuckers are filming shit, editing it on a bus on the way to work in 15 minutes and producing a two minute clip that's like, wow, that's really heavy or great stuff. So it's like filmmaking is actually be in the hands of the people and it can be an expression of like artwork. It's not so elitist, you know. Filmmaking is my favorite art. I love that. Um, I take some film classes actually. Oh my God, this love is great. This is a great news, Baffy. I love I like it. To just watch weird art house films. What? I just like watching weird art house films. Do you like Jodowski? I don't know. I like and, David Lynch and Simon oh, Lang's. Brother, go see. Uh, what, what are Jodowski's movies? Uh, Holy Mountain. Oh, Santa that's on my watch list. Yeah. Santa Sangre, bro. Santa Sangre. At least, like again, I'm talking about 20 years ago. We would borrow, if we borrowed that videotape out to anyone, we knew how to lose friends. If we, if someone came over and hung out with us, we're like, we'd look at each other and go, hey, you want to borrow Santa Sangre from us? I'm like, yeah, okay. They'd never come back. <laughs> <laughs> or they'd leave it on the porch, they'd slip it through the mailbox, we'd never talk to them again. So we're like, yeah, this person's a dead weight. You want to borrow Santa Sangre? And I tell you, like 10 out of 10, they would never come back. <laughs> that sounds right up my alley. Pink right, flamingos, <laughs> Stalo. Yeah, yeah, Salo, yeah, right. So oh, I, I love, don't. I, what? Mm. Uh, don't remind Not me. Not a of Salo fan. Lars von Trier. That was an, in, that was an interesting uh, watch. Do you like Lars von Trier? I don't know. Uh, oh, my God. Oh. No. no. You like film? I haven't looked into it. Woo. Yes. yes. Lars von Trier makes <laughs> moving paintings. Like, you're going to go, you're going to weep. You're going to fucking weep, dude. <laughs> Like some of these scenes, you're gonna go, "Holy fuck, that's oh my god, that guy's insane to shoot that." Oh, I've that's seen, insane. I've seen Antichrist. Okay, the, the shot, it's beautiful. Some of his shots are just amazing. Like that. Lars von Trier is like my favorite filmmaker. Yeah, sometimes I know films, but I don't know the directors. Got it. Oh, I like Melancholia. I like all of it. The the sex one. God, he's fucking great. Oh, fuck, he's great. Wait, did he do Antichrist? Yeah. Oh yes. yeah, okay. Yes. He did. He did a real heavy one, and it was basically like it was like we. I remember watching. We're being shunned in Ely, Minnesota, and it's this movie. It's a black. It's a black box, and it's about a lady getting stranded in a small town, and then, like everyone in he town. Said, uh, he said that's melancholia. No, I forget no? the name of it. It's early movie. It's a black box film. Okay. Um, it's like small town or whatever. I forget what it is. Do you want me to rattle off names or it doesn't matter? Go ahead, yeah, early. I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at all the films. Dogville, Dogville, Dimension, Dogville, Flower. Dogville, Dogville. Dogville, Black Box. Beautiful movie, and it's a black box. Like, what I'm saying is there's just chalk on the floor. So it's just acting. Uh, but it's acting about a woman yeah, getting stuck in a small town, and literally, like, everyone's there. We'll help you. We'll feed you. And everyone rapes her. Everyone fucking, just, you know, it's just brutal. But it's how people, like, Lars is just presented, like, this is how people are. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> Jimmy from the Bates store that helped. There's like, I'm here for that, sticking my finger in, whatever. It's just awful. And then the town burns because her father's a gangster and he comes to find her and burns the town down. It's a great film. Really great film. Uh, and great I added film to my watch list. Yeah. He, he's a satanic filmmaker. Like, I know Lars was involved with Satanism early on in his life. Yeah, that. And, yeah, he's a satanic filmmaker. Jordanowski, Andrew, Andrew. I can't pronounce his name. The gentleman who did Santa Sangre. Okay, you guys are into this. How do you not know Jodorowsky? He is a top occultist living in the world. That's Crowley, that's LeVay, that's every fucking occultist that you read about is living right now in France. His name is Jodorowsky. He is the master. I, you have to read Psycho Magic and go study him if that's what you, you're into this stuff. I trust that. Trust that. He's the greatest living artist. 
and he is an occult master. My favorite three um, directors would probably be Alfred Hitchcock, Francis Ford Coppola, and uh, I think Stephen Kubrick it is. Yeah, those would be my top three. Stanley Kubrick, okay. They're good. They're good. They're, they're good. Yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I, I'm a pretty art snob. I, I, I'm a real film snob, so I really only go to art house films and... Mm. Have you seen House of Jack Bill? That one's on my watch list. I have not. I that's, heard about it. The serial killer shit bores me so much. Uh, yeah, I that's fair. Ten, a decade of study on that stuff, so yeah, it, it doesn't. It, it just doesn't turn. You know, like it's like yeah, 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 yeah. I can see that. I mean, I, if you're gonna say it's visually stimulating shot, like it's a moving painting or something, I'm going for that it. That one was it's on. Fun. Did you see like the horror movie Iceberg? And it, like each tear gets more disturbing. And oh, yeah. only the third tier is where um, Pink Flamingos and Salo and everything below that is like illegal shit. That's just garbage. But um, <laughs> half, half of that iceberg, if I'm remembering correctly, was largely just stuff you could find either off of uh, like Live League or the equivalent website or just fucking like just yeah, like underground B films. Everything below, like the third tier, was just kind of looked like garbage to me. It's just for shock, uh, kind yeah. of uh, like a endurance test. So, can I ask you about the order of nine angles um, a bit? Did why did you leave? Why did you join? What's going on? Like, why did you join, or what? What, what interested you? Why did you leave? Why are you X? Are you X because you're afraid of of associating with them now? Uh, there's a fair bit to it, however, the, um, I'd say probably the best way to sort of describe how I got into it was, ironically enough, uh, word of mouth. Um, this was at the time in my life where, uh, it, it sort of, it was sort of me, uh, perceiving sort of what my eventual Satanist views would become, and just sort of led them in the wrong way, sort of more towards the kind of routes that would sort of uh, get me into ideas like neo-Nazism and the sorts, N not the sort of average stuff uh, people would think about, but still there. Sorry about the dogs in the background, by the way. But yeah, no, generally what got me into it was word of mouth and what my friend groups were back then, bringing it up and me just sort of asking around, hey, what's this? Where can I learn more about this? And just sort of going down that rabbit hole until I got to a point where I couldn't really climb out. And that's how that sort of came to be, me being in a hole so deep that I dug for myself that I couldn't get out until, um, actually, funny enough, it was when a group that was looked into the group I was associated with then, which was a uh, online neo-Nazi group that had ties with the Order of Nine Angles, um, actually began a mass uh, doxing campaign, which you know involved my name on it. And at the time, since I was young, that really you know shook me to my core. And so it became this really frantic game of me trying to get out of this as much as I can, and sort of that whole facade of this being like the right way, sort of just dropping in an instant when I realized, oh shit, my whole family can be infect affected by this. And so the moment then that the same group that was um, offered, that was uh, doxing everyone, also reached out to me and said, hey, we can help you, just, you know, don't associate with this shit, you know? And that was sort of my way into getting out of the group eventually over time, enough to the point where I could be comfortable enough about speaking about my past experiences. When was that? Because I met you about two years ago, I think. Uh, I would say all of this happened around three years ago, actually. Um, so, so what was your? Are you still involved in neo-Nazi stuff? Is that is that what you're about? No, no, no. Actually, I'm. Uh, it's quite the polar opposite now. And, and so, um, I'm actually a staunch activist against a lot of that uh, stuff nowadays. 
so what 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 happened there? You, you know, they, everyone has these uh, moments of revelation or something. A lot of people. Do. So what happened there for you? It's on purpose, right? This is sadistic. You're trying to drive me fucking nuts. What, you're touching the mic. Stop touching that mic. Who is that? Stop touching that mic. I'm about to punch uh, a hole in Sorry, just give me a uh, quick second here. Apologies. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. He's doing the mic stuff. Right. He's like, what'd you say? That was purpose. <laughs> right. That's Cy Warfare from the neo Nazi side of him. He's like, let me fucking die, kill them. Cy Warfare. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. It's, no, I'm joking. Okay. Fucking Cy Warfare. Shit, it's bro. funny that we. I'm glad we're, we're hitting all these organizations. The O9A, yeah. those motherfuckers, the joy, the joy of Satan, which I mean, I don't know why they keep popping that fucking stupid. Oh my back. god! Like just like there's a shit ton of people that had that to that take guy. it down. Let it fucking die. They were a Nazi organization. People keep trying to pop no. it back up. Oh, but they had they had meditations on. Yeah, there. like we keep seeing kids in the server who are finding that site, and, and we're like, yeah, no, and we're like, go. <laughs> right. We shouldn't have to keep telling people not to fucking go there. <laughs> Let this be the end of it. So, know? brother with the microphone there, what happened? Why? What was your revelation? Why did you switch? You can't run that. Well, again, it was what sort of... Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, again, it was sort of because of that whole um, situation with that group that specifically came in and sort of just dismantled that group, uh, the group that I was a part of back then. And uh, it was really through them that I sort of got more access to, um, uh, le like, LeVay's information, for example. Like, it was that sort of stuff that um, they gave me access to. And um, really, it was just a period of various sources, like, various people I talked to over time that sort of helped, um, what you call it, I guess, de-radicalize me over time from that uh, association. Yeah, it's rough. I, I hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've known a handful of, of Nazis or people that have joined the Ku Klux Klan or all that stuff. It's a uh, weird. I'll tell you one thing. It was weird. I remember this one guy. I'd see him at metal shows all the time. He had the biggest heart. Andy was a real cool guy. I love her. And this ties into... The might is right stuff almost it started this you know like putting out this thing and these this uh white supremacist wanted to spend money at the milwaukee metal fest so they bought all this advertising i you know and i was like i don't know what to do here do i take the money and the right people said i should and and so we do that and they they were able to give away one of their resistance magazines in the giveaway bag and I didn't. I just think it is information, and I didn't care free speech, all this stuff. And then a year later, I see Andy. He's like, "Hey," and he's like, "I joined the KKK because this magazine you put in that bag." And I was like, "Oh my God, I'm heartbroken, Andy." And you know, it was a weird moment in my life because, like I said, it, it tore, tore, I, I, I don't. I know how ignorant Andy is. And he had a big heart. It was just, I could just see him like, you don't believe me. You're not a hater. Like, this guy's not a hater. He wouldn't ball up his fist right away. He'd be like, try to help. He would help. He helps people all the time. So when he was doing this, I was just like, it was just, it sucked. It sucked to see that. And so, you know. It's not the best. How do you feel about all that, my guy? Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, no, yeah, again, yeah, I'm, I'm very, uh, very, very well, well now, now, as I currently stand, I'm very uh, opposed to a lot of all that. Um, I, I don't really have any much more to say on the topic. It's not even one of those things where it's like, eh, yeah, I can see where they're coming from. It's just something that I've grown to really be staunchly against and to sort of speak out of from personal experience. People can grow. People can Though, change, you know. 
Yeah. yeah. Though yeah, I will yeah. say that um, a lot of these ideas do fester and develop out of a sense of belonging. And that's where you'll find a lot of these people, especially associated with the Order of Nine Angles. The reason why they joined is because they want a sense of belonging in, and that's in the how first it was place. For Andy. It was just like this lonely... Bandwagon him. Yeah, it was this lonely guy that... Like I'm telling yeah. you, like, he, I don't fucking know that guy. I've known him for so long. And it, when that happened, it was like, no, nah, this is... I know you, dude. You you know, and it was like that. Like, he just had friends. He Now he had a group of friends that were friendly to him finally. You know, and were like him, that looked like him and had the same impoverished life or whatever, like, the, you know, the low end life. So it's like, yeah, that was weird. That's really the worst feeling. And I have a, a buddy who sort of came close to that. And I was, I was just so um, attached to this guy. And I was kind of looking at, um, on his Facebook lights and, I, and we're, we're good friends. And I just see him kind of going down this libertarian rabbit hole and it, not at all as severe as this, but just the anxiety that it causes is, is, is very real. And I, I think I know what that's like a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just sad. This is like still, I yeah. think about, I think about, I remember one, I came back to Chicago once, maybe 10 years ago, something like this, before I moved back here 15 years ago. And I got on the train and it, that's like the one of the last times I saw my family, you know, and I was like, and I was thinking about him and I just cried the whole train ride back to Chicago from the suburbs and just kept thinking, what have we become? Because I saw these people when they were children or decent or, you know, loving, loving of everything around them, loving of everything around them. No, no, like, look at this person. I hate them. And, and, it just, and then you just see this, you see all this potential as a human being. And then you see like poverty and ignorance eat things up where it's like, what the fuck did we become? You know, and, and that, I know there was potential there. You, you know, there's all this potential wasted. In, 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 in poverty and it's devastating to me because the world needs that potential or we need that potential we need, you know, I think I want to see things better or whatever that means to you better but you know what I'm saying grow you got something to say? yeah I, mean, I just think in this world let's get I think the world's too fucked to fix anything I think it's all going to go to shit I think the madness of mankind is going to be what takes the world over that's what I honestly believe do you think there's, when that happens, that chaos happens, do you think there's, uh, let's say, light at the end of that tunnel? For the few that survive, because everybody's going to huh. be eating each other like animals. That's funny. What I, I don't know if you heard earlier, when I talked about, like, all this kind of might is right stuff, I was talking to you about it. And I said, I went to, when Trump was, right around that time, all this stuff was happening, and I talked to every heart warrior, called all these old mystics let's say all these seers or people that just sit in a fucking chair and watch the world and observe and think i went to all these elders and kept asking them, what's you know the times and all of them agreed like it's got to be something that we can't imagine something devastating that we cannot imagine and we've never seen before to smack to snap people out of this anger or this moment that's exactly what you're saying you're you're like <laughs> I'm seeing ghosts fly around me. Spirits are directing the toilet paper to be made into these fucking dolls. Like something's going on with you. <laughs> so you're, you know, it's a similar, similar statement from motherfuckers that are hard to put put a thumb down. You know, put their, put put them. You know, John's a hard one to explain. Everybody's everybody's turned against each other. Everybody's turned into tribes. Everybody's at war with one another. There is no peace in this world. Everything's going to go to shit before it gets better. Mm. That's the way I see it. Mm. There's no peace in this world. There's so, even fighting amongst your Satanists. Why isn't everybody united? Why is everybody going oh, to fight? Well, why is, why but, is there brother, to be counterfeits? But, 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 well, I'll tell you, Satanism doesn't have any unity. That's going to always be the case. Yeah, We're I like, know, like, I know, but like, just the drama between the groups is just... Everybody's being turned against one another, and there's not going to be no peace in this world. But that conflict sort of grows things sometimes. I, I mean, within Satanism, I'm, with philosophies and, and uh, those kind of arguments, I think there's only lessons in them, you know? 
like these young people are arguing about, they're going to start arguing about what Satanism is. They're taking in the data and they're going to start arguing about it. And out of that's going to come some answers and some different directions probably. And it's going to more for do something because of that. You know, so it's, it's a conflict. It's an argument. They're, they're, they're going to fight with their, inf they're going to use this information like swords. Well, it's all going to come down to the extre extreme destruction before we get creation. Everything's got to get rebooted. There's not going to be no peace in this world. You can't fix the world as it is now. Everything has to become rebooted. And there's no hope for this shit. That's all I got to say. I just hope it's not with the damn AI dogs. I hope we're not sitting around. It's like, oh, the robots are loose. And it's just like the Matrix. Like, I've been fighting fucking robots. You know, why'd you do that? You know? <laughs> Thanks, Elon Musk. What the fuck, dude? It's when all the factors. And then they're human robots. Get mixed together and make this unstable melting pot that causes society to implode on itself. You know? too many chemicals, now this shit's gonna blow up. That's how I look at it. Mm. Mm. Well, no matter which way you slice it, it's gonna be poor people that take the beating. Yeah. That's the, the truth. It's always that way. Shit. That's right. It's always that way. When there's war, it's the poor people that take the beating. Always. Yeah, and so, you know, part of my desperate nature of trying to do some of this diffusing is that I don't want to see Satanists used as military fodder, which will happen soon. Well, you think it's going to be like the Satanist military? Military one. Yeah, if you're going to try to... If you, okay, okay, let's let's put this in a perspective with the Satanic Temple. Let's start a lobbyist group. What does a lobbyist group turn into if there's violence? Militia. Okay, thank you. So most of the idiots that are following... Eh, it's politics. You're fucking idiots. You're nah, fucking tools. Gonna like, it's going to be like the Nazi regime. Hell, Satan. I made that joke. <laughs> as a, it was a joke yeah, like a Trump yeah. joke, okay? Ooh, joke, it was a Trump yeah. joke. Like, like that's what's going on. It's fucking Jesus Always Christ. What? Always the best type of jokes. Uh, Trump jokes? Yeah. Well, oh, up there. there. They're always better than the rest. Are oh, you all... Oh, oh, sorry. It's like... <laughs> It's like, I don't even have to ask people, are you a member of the Satanic Temple? Yeah, of course I am. I sent in an email. I, sent I was going to ask them, are you guys? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I, of course I sent my email in. I'm a member, bro. I got 10 members. I'm going to set up 10. I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to get 10 memberships and 10 different emails. I'm a member times 10, motherfucker. What's your, <laughs> what's your email? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a level 100 member. <laughs> Letter from Shame, Carl. I'll sign you up. Eh, no thanks. Okay, please, you go ahead. <laughs> you know, do you have no my email? It's my name at Google, Gmail. Yeah, anything you could do. I'm just joking, man. Anytime that my name floats in there, it's like an irritant. It's like, <laughs> like they're going to start itching. They're going to get a rash. No, plain, no you could really plain, sign plain, anyone up. What? You could really sign anyone up. You just have to take their email and then put it into there. Oh, I, I know the scam. I sort of put it in mm. place. My friends signed those, up. Those are all um, my silly ideas that were just basically mocking the Church of Satan stuff. So there, I understood what was going on at the Church of Satan, and I understand how to mirror that in a fun way. Like, yeah, make it free. Do the, make, you know, those are, those are weird little things that I put it. You know, the rest of, those tricks are what I did. The rest of whatever mumbo-jumbo you're reading, like I said, came out of a tourist guide in a slash romance novel that they just replaced words with Satan. That's that group. But my friend signed up his neighbor just as a, as a prank. <laughs> right. The brain has spoken. We want to see what Carlos says. It's, gr it's great that people are using <laughs> Satanism as a harassment of people. That's not what it's <laughs> doing. Oh. Should we discuss the, um, the, the video? Letter, letter from Carla. I told her, hey, it's playing out good. Then we got it in time. I think that's a fitting ending. Show lost. It was a lost video shown first time tonight since its original airing on Fox News by you. Wow. Ta uh, talking about this very topic of your, talking about the very topic of your 24-hour show. There you go. I, 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 Carla, if you're watching, you, you want me to ask her to tune in, call in? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we have an extra spot.
right? No? Pretty soon. Yeah, she's not going to. I guarantee that. She's already. She's gonna, no, it, takes, no. it takes four days for her to get ready. <laughs> and I'm not even putting her down. It's just like she's. Like I said, they, they move in precision. So it's like, yeah, the light wasn't. You can't rush greatness. This isn't set right. I got to get this out. You know, it's. It's like you be. keep playing with your hair. She's got to do that too. Oh shit! No, yeah, but no, we no. But three days, she talked to me about the subject and asked a million questions. Whose server? Where would it be? Let me see. You know, she asked about all you people, all these people. Everyone's going on. Every fucking detail she needs to know. It's smart. smart. I think it's cool. What did you say? Love smart. How precise she is, dude. Yeah, smart. Smart. Right. Right. Absolutely. She's, She's precise. precise. They're, they're pre precision motherfuckers. And so, yeah, it is cool. Like a yeah. Like the serpent, right? Yeah, I thought we would have some cl fun climax at midnight. It doesn't look like that's the case. Um, I don't know what to do here. What do we do? What, for a climax? A climax. Yeah. Well, on here. Of course. Yeah, what do we do? I mean, we talk about stuff that uh, we, we could uh, We could light up. That's what I'm thinking. Let's do that all together. <laughs> we could light up. Dude's got, and a then, big, um... dude, dude's got a big blunt rolled. Let's do that, uh, and the next thing will be stuff in our face with popcorn or something. Probably would be great. I, I got popcorn. I, I gotta like plug guy? my door and shit because I'm. Like, I gotta, I gotta, you guys ready to smoke? You guys all ready? Give me a sec. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Oh yeah, you can't, right? Yeah. You know. David, so thank you very much, my man. Got it. I said thank you, David. Who's this? Where are you taking us? You got that joint? Oh, we got to wait for these. These, uh, these, these guys are leading the way. <laughs> hey, uh, Shane, before we do this, I think you should know that I'm like, I, I have, I have and do sort of associate with the satanic temple, but kind of on an individual level, like I don't really care about whatever political shit they do. It's just kind of a denomination for me, like romantic Satanism and this compassionate kind of shit based on like Paradise Lost. I appreciate you saying, you know, you know, I don't hold that again. I hope people know I don't hold any of that stuff against them. I understand. That's good because it's made me nervous. Just no, no, in group, no, out group, discomfort. You know, speaking in general terms like you're all idiots. You all suck. It's not the it's not the best, but this is the way it has yeah. to go with this. I but also within this group, I don't mind it because it's like it is from a satanic perspective. So if you can't handle like going yeah, that's not me. He's not obviously talking to me because that's not how I roll. I don't know what yeah. to say about that. You know, that's you. That's on you. But I truly, I don't mind people studying, getting involved, all that stuff. I, but I, like I, my problems are with people that are, are, like I said, willfully ignorant, stupid. You know? Yeah, that's fair. You guys are hanging out talking about the subjects. It's not the same as these these people. Yeah, I, I like the, I like the, um, I don't like staying in my bubble, you know. Yeah, so I appreciate that. Just like Joseph from Satanic Delco. I got now. I know what Delco means. It's oh yeah, yeah. I wanted it to Delaware. Be something. Delaware. No, I wanted it to mean something from like Doctor Who or some weird reference. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a dog from Doctor Who. No, it's got to be an abbreviation of a fucking town. And now I know this. I had a better time with it going. It's got to be something from Doctor Who or some weird sci-fi thing, right? He's Delco. What the fuck? So my imagination's going as what is a Delco? And I don't, I don't. To me, it sounded like a car brand. brand. A what? It sounded like a car brand to me. Right. Like some like <laughs> Toyota, Honda, like satanic Delco. Oh, are you talking right. cars? Oh, <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. So I didn't search it for a reason. I'm like, I'm, I'm fine just not knowing. It's sort of irritating, and I sort of like that. It's so. Anyway, now, but I, I think he's another guy. He, he just wants answers. <laughs> and he's like, how people can't see there's a problem in Satanism with this. It's the wait, door wait, company. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Gentleman wants answers. Gentleman goes for answers. Seeks knowledge. Is yelled at for doing this. It's like, yeah. Uh, it Joseph is a little me. farther along in that sense than I am. But <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe what? I'll get there. What? You, you would be, you were upset if he interviewed, he seeks knowledge? 
Well, no, but I think he does it in a just a different way. Like he's more, I think, um, assertive in how he challenges oh, ideas, I, and I think it rubs some people, especially TST spaces, the wrong way. But it's but this is what I'm saying. They're, yeah. They don't have a clue then, because why are they concerned about someone seeking knowledge and not their own business? Why are they in everyone's fucking business? It doesn't work mm -hmm. in the kind of the philosophy. It just, uh, there's no herd mentality here. So how is it I'm hearing they are this? They think this. It doesn't, none of this makes sense. I understand it makes sense because that's what you're operating under. But it doesn't make sense within the philosophy. Oh, that's right. I just, I just said that. You're right. Like, <laughs> like with, with Church of Satan stuff, it didn't make sense. When I was involved with Peter at that time, I was like, I remember when, it, this is when things started breaking up with that 666 Eve event. That's when the Church of Satan, all the old people left after that event I did. Because it was like, Peter wanted us to jump through hoops all of a sudden. He's like, he would tell us what to do. He told us what, what to do. And all of us, me, all, Stephen Cash, were like, what the fuck was that? Dude, you don't tell, you don't tell us not to do something. That was like a, like, you just broke the oath, bitch. And, and he told us not to attend Stanton LeVay's wedding and to shun him. And so when I asked questions, I was like, but it doesn't make any sense. He's a levee. Well, he's a he's an addict. He's got all these issues. I say, yeah, but I don't see why we couldn't figure out a way to try to at least help him. Well, he won't be can't be helped. I say, yeah, but at least as an organization, if we you reach the hand out, you and we try. If he fails, he fails. We try. Yeah. But that's how we should approach this with Like try try to help this person first before we go to war with him. Let him dig his own ditch or give him. All the rope he needs to hang himself with, but yeah. that's what we should talk about. Do. Dialogue, I'm all about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Right. So did this like conversation happen on six six Eve? What? Did this conversation happen on six oh six Eve? No, this conversation happened leading up to it. As as we understood, yeah. June sixth, two thousand six was the only time in the calendar it was going to be six six oh six. We rashed, we ran to take advantage of it. So they did six 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 that day. I did. June 5th at midnight doing New Satan's New Year's Eve or whatever. And the, the Omen movie paid to be a part of my event. And my event was the better event in L.A. versus Stanton's and, and the Church of Satan's. And, and I'm not saying that for any reason other than that's the truth. I had one of these events like the Witch's Sabbath where it was like hookers blowing people in the bathroom, licking toilets. Like it was off the hook, off the fucking hook. But Peter said this about a month or before beforehand. Or, or, or a month and a half before, and I'm like, I don't understand. This makes no sense. So then I call Stanton, and I'm like, What's going on here? And he's like, You know, going to war with Church of Satan. And I'm like, Do you have a book or anything out that you're selling? He's like, No. I'm like, Why would you go to war with people if you don't have like something to sell? Like, use this to your advantage. Why start kicking up dust if you there's nothing that there's no reason that, that you're there's not there's no way for you to benefit. And then Peter was like, I was like, I told Stanton, I said, if you want to come to my event, you're welcome. He's like, oh, what is Peter going to say? I go, I don't give a fuck. You're welcome. I need security. I go, well, you're, you're going to be safe at my event. And we weren't friendly. You know, I just invited him there as a, so I'm not going to sit there and shun people because someone tells me to. And Stanton at that point wasn't, he was just being a dickhead. And, you know, he's, he's aggressive. I liked what he was saying. He was like, he hated veterans. <laughs> Military veterans on the attack. <laughs> So I like that's all that. That's a bold statement. What? That's a bold statement. Right, right, right. So I was like, <laughs> I like artists that are making bold statements or people. So I was entertained by, you know, it's like he's digging his own ditch. You let him go. But but Peter had to ask or, at, excite the situation. And all of us were like, yeah, fuck that. And, 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 and Staten can come to my event. And we're going to go to his wedding. And we're just not going to do that. And I know one of us protested out in front of the Church of Satan thing, made fools of them. And on the stage at 666 Eve, we do this thing. We come up with this thing at that moment. Stephen Kasner, myself, and this other idiot. And, and we're like, uh, follow your satanic leader. Follow your satanic leader. So all the Church of Satan people are in there. And, I'm, and we're basically doing the same thing I'm doing with the satanic temple people. You're idiots. You're followers. You, you know, we're going... Follow your satanic leader. Follow your satanic leader. Come on, follow. You got a boss. Go do what they say, Satanist. You know, so we're just mocking. The, and they're all like these Church of Satan people. Like, they're so upset. We're like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. We, we're, we're not going to associate with you. 
We're the ones that knew Anton LaVey. Go hang out with Peter and get the fuck out of here because we're the cool ones. Peter's not that cool, okay? <laughs> Peter's smart, but he's not, like, cool. He's not a cool artist. Is he a music composition degree? That's yeah, him, he right? Made, he made one fucking record or whatever <laughs> that I know of. And everyone, you know, whatever. I'm not going to put the guy, but he's just not cool, okay? There's a cool element in the art world that, that drives, that influences culture. And there's people who are different than that. And he's one of them. He's smart. He's, he, I'm not, put, I, you know, I'm just saying he wasn't one of us. So all the cool people were like, yeah, fuck you, dude, we're out. And we didn't care. And, and, and we're trying to get him to kick us out at that point. Like, he's just writing these things in real weird ways. Like, they're kicked out, but they're not, we're not, we're like, we want paperwork that says we're kicked out. If we're going to be kicked out and you're going to say that, then you got to give us paperwork because that's an award. I was kicked out of the Church of Satan is like the, the fucking king king award for a satanist i want that give me that fucking award but peter won't because he knows he can't kick us out because well they we're all levey's children yeah. yeah you can't do shit levey gave us a license peter peter bought the church yeah he did, he did. right it belongs to carla when boyd rice talked his shit He's just trying to scoop something from Carla, and Carla's a, a, a really cool person. So, and she's like I said, precise. So, it takes she it took a lot of thought on how to deal with her situation. And she, Carla's the queen, man. She's doing respect the fucking queen. Yeah, she's doing it now. She looks yeah, like a queen too. She really. Oh, oh yeah, brother. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. She looks amazing. And she's a hippie. She's like totally cool. Yeah. Like you meet her, she's like yeah, cool dude. She, next thing you know, you'd be like, she's like, yeah, you want to go get pizza? I was really surprised when she was uh, saying Darwinism is is out is outdated, because uh, scientific. Yeah, I, but I mean, I just have that that uh, thought that like Levan Satanism is based on social Darwinism. No, it's so not. to hear her say that. But but when people say that, I'm always like, we're not static ever. We we talk about we can't mm. be nailed to the wall. When I say we're a fluid religion. In the right satanic now. almanac, I mean that. That's I understand what I'm saying. We are so, meant to be a fluid uh, conversation. Yeah. We're not meant to so, re-up the rules and go, now we're going to add a form of compassion. <laughs> no, we just... We're, this is the base, and we have these... This is it. We're having a conversation about what we think is fair in society. And, we're, you know, we're, this, is, this is Satanism. Yeah. Do you, do you think I'm like, um, what? So, sorry, it's like Joseph Rose's outsider Satanism, right? He's making that new theme. Yeah, have you heard of it? Outsider Satanism by Joseph Rose. Yeah. I think Everyone's it's a cool trying. idea. Yeah. 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 I, I don't. I don't. I'm not. Joseph Rose seems like a. You know, so far he he's just surprises me. Like I said, I'm like, I get irritated because I'm like, ah, Dalco, what a weird name. And I see the artwork and I'm like, oh, that's good artwork. This motherfucker can do it. <laughs> You know, so he's doing it. He's doing it. I can't. I can't deny the the action and the results. You know. And again, like I felt bad for him because he was picked on for being a journalist. And how that happens in the world of Satanism, I have no fucking clue. So John's gonna have to roll. It's so ridiculous. Let's smoke some weed. You guys ready? I'm ready. I don't think Daily uh, does that kind of thing. No. That's totally. Fine. I'll just watch you. No, 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 yeah, brother. Just... While we do that, I'll, 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 I'll I'm not going to smoke with a 16-year-old on the fucking thing either. It's yeah. like this is get this, it, get this, this is already <laughs> this is already bad, bad enough. Bad enough, right? It's well, already bad enough. No, it's done. Let, 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 let this. Yeah. Okay. How do we? I wish we could expand this camera, get a better view for our room, because it's like, how do I get a better view on this fucking thing? I don't want to see. You, your, I want to see your face um, small. Go sideways. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, you just hoping for all three. What? No, for all three to make it like a better picture. I just want us. Oh, I want yeah, this. But then these, I wish they could just pop on when they talk, like boom, like this. I'm sure there's a setting for this. Oh well, yeah. Oh, I know. So whoever's talking is popping up. What? You you just change the setting on the stream. Whoever talks is on the screen, and whoever doesn't is not. Where do I change it? I'm talking. I'm on the screen. When are you gonna talk? Talk. Yo, 
Uh, so if I'm talking now, it should make me no, no, no. Just now, it just shows you. Huh. Oh man. Oh, I see. Assign, assign guest one block, guest two block. Return to green room. That's where I really basically want you. I'm joking. I made that happen. Oops. Oh, this is great. If you're on a time level, you got to just work with it, bro. <laughs> you know? Hey, how are you? Good. I'm doing good. Oh, yeah? Yes, I'm really good. This is great. Really? Why'd you join the show today? I don't really know. I'm going on the left. <laughs> Why is that an option? <laughs> Please get this camera off me. It's the worst camera. I'd like the nice one. Oh, God, I'm in a living hell. I'm not even smoking yet. Camera, select all cameras, include switcher. Include switcher, what's the My switcher? room is my altar, actually. I think that's how Shane operates too, your your art studio is your altar? Pretty much, well no, my, my, my altar's my bed. Yeah, that's mine. Okay, and there's an altar, bedroom. there's an, Fuck yeah, room. my bed in my bedroom is, is where the, I wish I could get you guys on here somehow, I don't know how to do this. Can we just leave it like this so Avi can show you some stuff on a nice full screen and we can smoke weed and then you can watch and we'll do the, do the thing again? Is that good? Yeah, you guys don't sure. know. We're not, we're not advocating it, of course. Yeah, well, but what? I want to show you this. So Whoa. This is, um, this is one of the items I am making. Um, very special to me, but we talked a lot during this show about uh, you know, like the subconscious and, and trying to connect with what, what people might perceive as spirit, that thing inside. It manifests from inside. <laughs> And this is a tool that I used to do that with. Um, it's from, of course, the black magic voodoo tradition. But uh, this is the, and I mentioned it earlier, the Baron Samdi P Pendulum of Souls. Let me show this, try to get a good picture of this. So it's, show you how long it is, then I'll bring it up close to the camera. So here is the, the dowsing end, or one of the dowsing ends. And then this is the other end. Now some people say, oh, I don't like it because it's a cross or whatever. But that is actually uh, Baron Semdi's uh, Veve. So if you look in the Vudan tradition, the Veve is a cross with the skull on it and actually represents him being the Lord of the dead, controlling the souls of the dead. So this pendulum, and when you use it, is actually meant to try to help you speak with that inner spirit, the spirit of whatever may manifest through you. So it's one of those things we use to, to try to get spirit to come through. You know, That's beautiful. When you try to hold it still, when you try to hold it still, the spirit has a space to take over and make it move and give you a sign of presence. So use the board. It has um, letters. And I'll try to get it in front of the camera. It had letters, the days of the week, uh, numbers and stuff on there. You ask questions and then it will, the pendulum will start to swing to answer those questions. So this is a tool we use to, to fuck around with this. You know, I just gifted one of these guys to John, and if anybody else is interested, just let me know if you want to grab one. I think Baffy left. <coughs> for, for the serious seekers only. Baffy left the building. I think so. Good. Very good. I'm glad, probably because we're smoking. Good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Baffy, for being responsible. Thank you. No endorsement. What? Above the, Above, the Above the influence, are you? That is a Satanist. Above the influence, I love that. No, it's not. I'm influenced. Shit, me too. <laughs> Fucking cheers. <laughs> so yeah. it's it, this is one of those cool things where it's like, oh, we're, when we're I, trading joints. Yeah, when yeah, I yeah. when I sit down and I go, oh, y'all skipping me? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, when I sit down and I'm going, oh, I'm gonna create art. And I want to get in a trance. I use tools like that. The pendulum gives me something to focus on. The, the scrying mirror or music, dance. I use dance. I do, I do traditional like turn on the music and go in circles. And however I feel like moving, that's how I move until it comes out. And I'm like, oh, I got to create something. And there it is. And I know. And then I go, you know, and that's how it works for me. Everybody has a different process. Like you said, um, it's a different process to where you don't need a medium. You don't need. I don't. The, the LSD or the whatever to have the mystical experience. You could do it naturally. You could fucking squeeze your big toe and it's well, like, oh, it's almost like when you're talking about the studio, the art studio. 
I'm moving now, so it's a bummer because it took me like a year to get an art studio that I could, ma- like, go deep, trans, like feel like, oh, I feel good in here, oh, yeah, I can get into it. But it took such a long time to build a safe space or a place I felt comfortable in. And, and when, once I walk into it, it's like, triggers, you know, like, oh, yeah, okay. <coughs> and I just start working. Um, I hope when I move I could recreate a, a studio of some sort quickly. Cause so we've used the word a lot during this chat. You know, 24 hours, we've, we've met, used words <laughs> like triggers. We've talked about things like trance and stuff like that. Where's that but people, for people that don't understand this stuff, if you want to start to try to get into it a little bit, I mean, I studied this stuff for more than 20 years, and I wrote a book about it. And I and it's not a bunch of mumbo jumbo in here. This is psychology stuff I, I learned when I studied psychology in college. So it's going to teach you about the different aspects of your brain, the conscious, the subconscious, the superconscious, the ego, the id. And it's going to teach you how to do some unique things that a lot of people don't know they can do, which is tap into your own fucking subconscious mind to create art. To get to that space where you feel like, holy shit, now the creative can come out. And that's really what that book is about, is teaching you about that, how to get into that space. Or you could just go you to a roll. shitload of haunted locations and fucking get possessed by some shit. <laughs> how can we find how, you hear how, that? how can we find that book? Yeah? Yeah. So you can either contact me, you can grab it, um, grab a copy, uh, contact me on my website, demonism.org. Look up the Sanctorium on uh, Facebook. I'm the Sanctorium of Demonism. So I named it demonism because that's what they did with the ancient traditions. They demonized every fucking thing. That's what the church did. So I became, I chose to do exactly what LeVay did, where I took that demonism and we became the demonists. Love like it. if you want to call us the devil and demons, we'll become that. I did exactly what LeVay did. So I named it the Sanctorium of Demonism. And we teach that demonism of those that sacred shit. The dolls in the trance, talking to the spirits. Everyone says that's the devil's shit. But it never was supposed to be evil mm. in the first place. When you go into a trance, what do you see? Me? Depends. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, what, what about what do, you, what do you see? Well, it's never the same. It's just, uh, I don't know. I can't answer that. There's no there's no answer to it. It's no words. When I first started my art, the first thing I would see was a fucking crowded-ass place with a bunch of fucking people screaming. And that's what I would say. I see these horrific faces, and I would go deep into that trance where the art becomes automatic, and I start making what I'm seeing. That's cool. For me, it's It's cool that you take that and make artwork with it. You know, the alternatives is not best. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. It's so, okay. I would encourage you to never stop doing art. It's a roller coaster. Are you hearing me, John? Yes, I hear you. Yeah. I'm not going to stop. I haven't stopped. You can't. It's a torture. Everybody's torture like, device. why don't you it. make something brighter? Why can't I can't. This is the only thing I can make. I that's didn't that's brighter. It's beautiful. I love that. That fits my aesthetic. I think it's great. It makes me feel comfortable. Art is know. magic, and magic can heal. Hold that up to the camera, bro. It Get it up heal. there close. Let people see. Yeah, I love that. I think your stuff's cool. It can heal. The, it, it can heal through a lot of different it ways. It can kill. Catharsis. It you know, kill. It can heal. It can kill. Oh, that's too. It can kill, too. What uh, was that? So you said I've done some when shit. I was, when I was younger, uh, I'm talking like maybe seven or eight years old was when I first started having trance experiences. And you said, what do you see when you go into trance? I'll tell you about what it was like for me because uh, it's so strong in me, like magic is just ingrained, you know, it manifests through me. And one thing I experienced when I was just a little kid was this. First it started out with me staring because I would go to school and you know, uh, I'm from Chicago, here in Chicago, and they would make us line up along the side of school, and it was like them, them long ass gates. Yeah. You know, you so you basically you standing there staring at a fucking gate. And what happened with me was, is when it, when my mom would drop me off early in the morning, I'd be standing there. I got one in my hand. When she would drop me off, I would be standing there staring at this gate, and then the gate would be far away from me. But it was like all of a sudden, I'd be staring. I would go into the trance. I would feel myself going to the trance, and then the gate would be like right here right here Whoop. and I'm like what the fuck it was like I moved through space and the gate was over there and then it was right here yeah. and then it was back over there that was the first thing I experienced so I was like wait a minute you mean I can control my depth you. vision that happened to me as a little kid you know and that was the first weird thing I experienced with trance it wasn't some weird vision of spirits or anything it was just like oh watch watch reality warp and do something it's not yeah, supposed to fucking shit, do right? when I first started smoking weed I was able to watch myself from third person from the top of the Speak tree up a little looking bit. down. 
Speak up a little bit so I can hear you. So when I first started smoking, I was able to watch myself in third person looking down from the tree. Holy mm. shit. So you had an out-of-body experience. Yeah, That's crazy. Awesome. I've only had that smoking salvia. Oh, well, that was just fun. <laughs> so with me, that was the first thing I experienced as a kid, was that, that sort of the reality warping where it was like, damn, the, the gate was right in front of my face, and then it wasn't. The next thing I experienced, I was a little bit older, just a couple years older. We had moved into this apartment building, um, and we were on the second floor. Now, my room was like in the, towards the front of the apartment. And what used to happen was, is when I was, um, like, because technically it wasn't a room, it was the dining room, because it was a one bedroom. room. We, we were poor, you know? And, uh, but we got that one bedroom apart. My mama got that one, one bedroom. My room was in the living room in the front. Yeah. And I, it was all these fucking windows, because it was a dining room. It wasn't a bedroom. Oh, so there was yeah, all these yeah, fucking yeah. windows. And this is, this is how it went down for me. One night I was there, it was a, a, a thunderstorm, and I had just saw Nightmare on Elm Street for the first time. So I was terrified. I'm like, oh my God, Freddy Krueger's gonna get me, right? Yeah. So I'm a little kid. My mom's like, okay, go to bed. You know, I'll let you watch this scary movie. I'm like, oh shit, you know, I gotta go to sleep. So I'm sitting out there and it's a thunderstorm, dude. And but and I wasn't asleep. I was too scared to sleep. But it flashes, it flashes, and I can see the trees, the shadow of the trees on the wall. Yeah. And the lightning flashes, I see the tree. It flashes, I see the tree. And then it flashes, and I, I shit you not when I say I saw the shadow of a horned demon on my wall. Oh, Straight up like as if it was drawn by an artist. It was like, I'm the perfect shape of a demon. Rawr, you know, and that's when the covers went over my head and I must have laid there all fucking night with the covers over my head. Like, nope, I've seen the devil. I, I'm done, you know, and I'm just a little kid. You know, my yeah. family was Christian, so I was like terrified, like the devil's out there. You know, that was the second time I had an experience where the trance had kicked in so strong. It was like, you're gonna see something that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> First, it was that gate popping in front of my face like this and popping back over. And I was like, what the fuck? And you then ever, it was that weird shit appearing in reality. And I was like, this don't belong here. You know. You ever do automatic drawing? Oh, yeah. I haven't drawn my automatic drawing is my sculptures. Uh, well, right on. Cool. But, 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 so you, so you, so you understand. You, but automatic, you're different, just a different medium. But yeah, I get what you're saying. What is that clicking? Why'd you bring up the automatic drawing? Or you, did you have a thought that you were going to? Well, no, he's an artist. I mean, he's basically, we're talking about you're I just talking to about. See if there was more to it, you know. That's all. I just wonder if you were going towards the thought. No, I'm. I'm not going. There is always more to it. I'm not going anywhere with it. You were talking about trans states, mm -hmm. so that trigger that was like, hey, you ever do automatic writing? That's basically a trans state, like mm -hmm. it, as far as I know. When I do it, so I, that's that was there. That's it. I just was asking out of because that's how I. I can uh, relate or understand trances is like through auto, art, when an artist does automatic drawing you're talking about trance and I don't know how you relate to that that's absolutely so right. I can only say hey you know automatic drawing and you're like yeah and I'm like okay I can understand that part of and then you know so that's how I'm relating to you so here's a funny thing with the automatic drawing since you brought that up I'm going to read I, this message okay go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead no no, no no you first oh, I, I, okay. I thought so you were done talking with the pendulum I showed that's actually an ancient met uh, method of automatic drawing. They would hang a, a heavy stick or rock and then hold it over the sand and see if a message would get drawn from, from the spirits. You know, that was one way that, that the automatic drawing started, uh, automatic writing started. Before it got to the point where you were doing it with your hand, it was the pendulum swing in the sand. And they would see if the spirits would write a message there. Yeah, just wet some toilet paper, go into your trance, and all of a sudden you got this. Nobody talking to this. It's all freaking toilet paper. It's wild. So you want to read that message? All right, look, uh, Carla, uh, you want to call us? Can't. Uh, you're doing fine. Everyone is doing fine. I sp and that's a very high compliment. Fine. I sp <laughs> I'm just explaining this. I spent my afternoon getting my, pe my shit straightened out uh, for YouTube. Uh, not dr uh, it was important to get that video up. If you comment, those groups are Christian offshoots, basically devil worshippers, and they are not Satanists. They are lunatics. Got that? So. That's from, from the queen to your fucking ears. Yeah. Lunacy. And she asked me to, to say hello and to say that. Say hello to everyone. I told her I said hi. Yeah, so, I mean, and, and to, I'm gonna to do go that. with what she it's said, just, it's, to it's, go it's, with exactly what she said, that's why I started my group. People were turning it into devil wars. Like, oh, yeah, the demons are real. And, and we're arguing with me. And I'm like, it's not any of that. 
You know, like this is not, you're taking it literally and doing the same thing Christians are doing, and it's not supposed to be that. Well, my thing you is know? this, like, what they think are demons, I don't look at it as like demons. I look at it as shit that exists between worlds. Like, you have animals on this fucking plane, you got animals on the next plane that you can't see beyond our comprehension. That's the way I look at that shit. So, I, I want to go back to what Carla said when she said, we don't believe in an afterlife. We don't know. That's the ancient teaching, is that as above, so below, it's mystery. Well, so don't pretend to understand the, the other side. The, the you know? wonderful thing about that that I loved is, like, when you talk about she's the queen, she's the... The idea is, like, she is... Like, when do you hear anyone say, I don't know, in Satanism? That comes out of professors' mouths. That exactly. comes out of high-end scientists' mouths. That comes out of Noam Chomsky's mouth. So when, when I hear I don't know, I mean, it's it really, the, the problem here is like, for me, when all this stuff started swimming around and I'm looking for justice, I'm talking to Carl, I go, what the fuck are you not telling the story for? Why, you know, she's telling me all these, this, this stuff. And I'm like, finally, I, I was like, this does no justice to what you believe in. This does no justice. You're letting people walk, say this shit about you. You know, you're a strong a brilliant woman and, and you're talking about women's rights and you're not you're not asserting yourself in this stuff but she has reasons you know she has all the reasons but the deal is like there's a lot of people who have, have done done her harm or done her wrong and that's what the hesitation is for your education uh for for people wanting to share information with you generously their time and what they know and so People stand in the front of that and, and give grief to Carla, where she's slow, like, it, you know, it bothers, she has to have a, a lot of variables to think about before things happen. And the same with myself, with a lot of this. Send them all my love. They are very cool. Everyone is very cool. Avi, very cool guy. Glad I had the chance to meet him. Tell John I love him also. There you go. Boom, boom. loves all you guys you hear that and I, I want to tell you I think you know Carla's Carla's just a really cool cool person and I think you're gonna see in the next five years <laughs> as little does everyone here know they think they're taking Satanism in all these directions <laughs> <coughs> well, <laughs> you're gonna be surprised next five years you're gonna see Carla LeVay running the shit like with the firm with the with the firm hands and uh and it's, it's going to be going in the direction that it originally was going. And that's how this is going to go. And you're all going to weep. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not me. I think you it's know great, what I'm saying. The, the, the people it. that are looking, have vested interest in pulling Satanism to a political right. group yeah. or something like that. I don't think people realize, like, the connections <laughs> that, like, Anton LaVey set forward. And, and the people in Hollywood or all of these businesses that really respect the LeVay name and all of that. Now the, these hippies are like, yeah, you know, this is too much. And their friends like, we agree. So the ducks that I see being lined up, well, I feel sorry for anyone who's got some s skeletons in their closet that's an enemy. Because everything's going to get pulled out, whether you like it or not. Count my words. We, we refuse to be like them, right? That's pretty much it. We're just, it's like you can't. We. Well, I'm just saying. I know the know, facts. Yeah. I know. I'm not. I, I see behind the curtain. I probably. I. You know. I'm, you know. It's just the way it is. And and it doesn't matter if you know or don't. It doesn't matter if an enemy knows. That's how. That's how cool everyone's been. And when they assert themselves now. It's gonna be. A, that's gonna be a spectacle of, unprecedented proportions. Because it's truly like this, a woman who started Satanism. She, I, I, I'm only doing her bidding. But Carla, you'll, you, and that people find it out. You know this. You know, you know the boss is. You know, you, we had Chinese dinner with her. Man. Everyone a, sat silent and did exactly what she night said. That was. Yeah, it was great. You know, I was telling, I, I always say this like, I was like instantly in love with her. I was like, and, yep, love her. She's fucking classy. She's got that, that, it's something about that, like that, that, that tug like she was whipping you she was like oh man watch this and she was like whoosh, with the questions uh, she knows that but she knows <laughs> she knows that she but this is what she's done for fucking 
what, 50 fucking years? As old as I am. Dude, I like, as old as I am, that. all she's done is study how, how people work. So she's like, when we first met, she's like, let me guess, Shane. This is what you do in this situation. I'm going on. She's like, tell me, you know I'm not going to tell you. So she keeps going, and she's guessing all these situations for me and how I'll react. And I'm like, she's like, am I right? I'm like, why would I tell you that? You know? But she goes, well, I know you're right. And she, and she I did tell her she was right. She was right. And she was able to guess, she's able to guess, oh, motherfucker, don't get in the poker game with her. She can guess your economic status. She knows if you're... I don't she, think she's guessing. The first thing I asked her, I was like... Oh, no, she, you, I just said she knows. Yeah, I was like, knows. Do, do you believe in magic? I was like a little kid. I was like, Carla, do you believe in magic? And she was like, of course I believe in magic. And then it was like, uh, all my dreams are fulfilled. Like, I knew it. I knew it. I, I knew it. You know? I, I was like, <laughs> was was like great, a little bro. kid, dude. I was in love all over again. I was like, I knew it. I just needed her to confirm for me. You know, like, it's that weird fucking thing, you know? Yeah. It's that weird thing. So. And beyond all this competition or preferences or logos and brand names, when y'all really get to hang out and meet Carla, you're gonna you you you're just gonna like her as a person. And it doesn't matter if you think that what she's saying is smart or not. You, you're just gonna go. And I think when you when you when you when you, when you see that moment, you're gonna see this this is unjust. This person's a really cool person. They're a really smart person, and that's where within Satanism there's an idea that we like justice too there's there's stuff that's just and that is unjust and especially if you're going to talk shit you know you, all these people make fun of Anton LaVey they're not going to get this but people who are into Anton LaVey like he's a god that's his little girl <laughs> how could you do this to her how could Peter Gilmore talk all that smack and do that to his daughter I don't get that as a working class person because in, in my world, no matter what you think of this person, you it's his wife and daughter. You could want to want to fuck that motherfucker over. You have to fucking shine it on for the wife and daughter. Always. Anyone who doesn't shine it on for the wife and daughter is... Trash. Just, just yeah, fucking... You are garbage. Like, stay the fuck away from that. That's just like the deal. You want to talk about the study of humanity or might is right or all this kind of watching people. Who the fuck disrespects the fucking the mother and the daughter unless they did something heinous. Like I get I get that the wife, you know, his ex didn't treat her right and I get there's some conflict there. But this little girl? Come on. That's deep. I think so. That's super deep, man. You know, but then, I mean, and we already said this a bunch of times, but for those people that's out there talking so much about the the satanic temple, it's like they keep talking all this feminist shit. But there's Carla, and then you you using that whole satanic shit, and you don't even have the fucking gall to just say hi to send a message to fucking get her say so anything. You don't respect her at all. That's just trash. That's yeah, trash. Yeah, yeah, and and it's you garbage. know, I, and then for for my own self, why am I doing all the fucking work here? Okay, I'm the one reaching out. I'm the one doing all this shit. Like. Just people pick up the crumbs afterwards. We're going to write a yoga book called Satanic Yoga. <laughs> we back our head like air. <laughs> well, what the fuck? You know, like, why aren't people, like, investigating this stuff on their own? Like, that's all I'm saying. Like, do, uh, He read books. And I, I mean, on quit, that. Quit everyone. Quit looking to leverage the name Satanism to write something or do something. Like, I mean, you know, I mean that. Like, it's like, just, like, read more about it and then be able to offer something. Everyone just wants to see... Like, uh, not everyone, but, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's this whole, fa whatever it is, phase. It's just, I don't know. They turn it into fanaticism, oh. and it shouldn't be that. You know, uh, if, any, if you're going to be obsessed with anything, be obsessed with of yourself, with it, becoming a better you. Well, be they, better than you were yesterday. Yeah, well, they was into pop culture would define Satanists as people that weren't in the popular, popular crowd. They, they, if it were popular, we're gone. We may have liked it when it was cool, and when it's popular, we're gone. So basically, you know, <laughs> it's almost like they fall in love with the image of it, but they really don't know what it's really about. Well, yeah, it's like I said on 666 Keep. All these old, we were all like, yeah, that, that Satanism and Church of Satan, we're gone. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. It was that quick. It was no doubt and pulse of one minute that Peter said, do this. And we were like, yeah, we don't feel like, oh, well, I don't know if I have an invite to this thing. Oh, you don't have an invite for us? That's part of ours. If you're, you know, like, oh, really? 
if we don't do this, you don't do that? Oh, okay. Goodbye. You know, it was pretty, pretty fucking quick. And so I, I think that's a, you know, we're not going to care about it if it goes away. And the only people that are going to suffer are the seekers or the people who are born into a situation where they're a Satanist, where life is a different kind of navigation than a lot of people around them. Mm-hmm. And so they're not going to have a road map necessarily if it all gets to be, you know, too much noise. And that that is... Uh, for me, sad because I keep re- I see all this stuff. I don't see anything that's great or good or nothing. It's just words. They just replace self-help book words with Satanism. Ooh, that's deep. That's all. They, that's all it is. I it, mean, there's they, nothing original. There's nothing great. It's more, and like, I, it's more like branding. They well, that's take, it. Branding and logos. They and, take and, a self-help and, books and rebranding it. Safe. So it's like a corporate cult. It works. It, it, it works. And what what's wrong with us that that works? Especially about something so serious as something you want to define your life with in philosophy. I think like I that's where it's really more. that you should take a hit on your ego, right I now. Like all oh, the logo more. and the brand no. worked. <laughs> that, that's me. I fall for it too. That's what you though. said I earlier too. when you said it, it's it's basically Christianity. I understand it more now with the last thing you just said. Which one? When he was like, "Oh, they're just taking you know and, and rebranding the self help books." What time is it? It's about to be the last hour. I was going to tell you that. You in know a what? Too. I haven't shown you any of my fashion statements. Like, it's the last. It's the last. Is hour there anyone so. even here? Are we going to do? Uh, well, you going to show off some shit? Yeah, I'd like to figure out how I can do anything in the world. For, <laughs> okay. I want to show you some stuff. I want to do some show and tell. I think. Let's go. Let's do so it. So this is. I'm, I, it's. It's. Uh, I'm. I want to share. I want to share. And you're going to share too, Avi, right? Yeah, yeah, I already started sharing. The box? <laughs> yeah, box. You're going to unpack the box in a second. I just did. I showed the pendulum yeah. and stuff. That's oh, what right, we did. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Well, I don't know if you can see this shit, so I'm going to turn it around. I'm turning around? Can you tell me if they can see anything just... Have you seen this, John? No, it looks cool as hell, though. I like the psychedelicness of it. Okay, and that's it. Yeah, that's a good shot. It's the back. It's a hood. I just made this baby. Moving a little too fast. There we go. Slow it down yeah, a bit. Fucking right. I'm moving real fast. <laughs> Damn, that's cool. There it is. Make some fucking cool shit, dude. There, there it is. Hey, do it again. <laughs> Watch it with that fucking. Do it. Now do it again. Look Sorry. at this. Look at now, John. You're a natural director. <laughs> I am proud of you. But when when I uh, usually when I hear, I'm like, hey, watch that motherfucker. Do that again. The tone. Uh oh. What happened? What I do? Do it again. Do it. What did I do? John. Did I fuck something. I hit a button or something. Well, obviously, if everyone. I don't know what the fuck I did. Turned around. I see the front cam here. I don't know what happened. There we go. I see something now. Do you? Yeah. All right. You good? I mean, I'm not gonna touch it this time. <laughs> Leave that motherfucker alone. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Good shot. Perfect. Great robe. Yep. Poncho basically when I put snaps in. Alright, I fly away. <laughs> Wait one second. Now, if you have some money, if you got like six grand, I got something for you. In your size, I only printed one of each of these in each size. Damn. The fringe I will do for you. This is my special jacket. Let me make sure that, is the back set, John? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Wait, it's crooked. It's crooked. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, now you're all right. Are you good? Thank you, John. Besides. Oh, wait one second, kid. 
It's the inverted Gu Gucci crosses for me. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I said it's the inverted Gucci crosses for me. It's a flex. <laughs> it's a flex. Six grand, six thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars. But for people on the infernal church server, <laughs> three thousand bucks. It's weird because I'm like, man, are they even here? I see him. Yeah, we still got some people in here. I know we got the camera turned around, but we still here, y'all. Man, that's it. Well, I'm going to show some bags. I make these bags, too. They're very cool. Yeah, yeah those are, the bags are badass. All these pins I make. I don't know if you see my shit. Go I got one of those. Freezing moon can obsess you. Let me show you some shit. So this is a bunch of my rack. It's my rack. Yeah, make sure you don't get it unplugged. Under, under, unplugged. Yeah, watch Bingo. it. Okay, we go. So this is my rack. This is a t-shirt. Whoa. Okay. Let me see that shirt. Yes. Turn the light around. It's a little well, dark. I'm, yeah, yeah you, saw dark. The, you saw the idea. I'm, I'm done, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. But I don't want to keep... It, everything's about to fall over. It's like domino fucking thing here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking about the, uh, the inverted cross thing, though. I definitely have one of each of those. Could be yours. That stuff's pretty popular. New audio device detected. What is that? It's a mic. Uh, the camera, I mean, when you plugged it in. Okay, got you, right. got you, got you. Okay. Yeah, but that shit goes for a lot of money, like ten grand a piece or some shit. So I think three grand is a very good deal. Yeah, dude. And nobody else gonna be wearing it. That's what damn. Oh sure. no! When I was at the, st I wore that. I, I don't know if you, anyone knows who Steve Aoki is. Yeah, I don't that's know. What who high end fashion is right. I don't know who he is, but I was in L.A. and I was invited there, and I got to meet him and hanging out. And I, that's what I had on. And some guy's like, yeah, I want to get one of those, you know, like six grand. He's like, no, because people out there spend that kind of money on that stuff. Anyway, I like working with fabric. It's very cool. And once I move into my new place, I'm going to make some really cool stuff with fabric. You say you saw a shadow person? Yeah. Uh-oh. Here we go. Has begun. What? What's going on? What you got? What's begun? What's begun? What's begun? Uh, he said he's seeing shadow people. Yeah, the, shadow the fuck? We seen? We got shadow people here. How'd you? Miss oh, the, we dropped. Oh. How'd you miss the bag jumping off the fucking stool? The shadow people are killing us. I'm joking, John. <laughs> John. Let's hear about the shadow people. What about them? You, I don't know. You tell me. You're oh, the one telling yeah, me you're yeah. seeing them. No, no, no. I saw something peeking around the corner over there. By his bedroom over there. That's great. He's just a little quick peeker. You should be a filmmaker, guy. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, should think about right. films. You like you're like horror. You you got all the. You should think well, about film. Film your dolls. Talk. You know, doing something. You know, start yeah. channeling that. I'm saying. That would be fucking cool. I say that based only on your. Whatever the command was over there, like like. Move to the right. That's like what a... Do it again. Do it again. That's what directors... I, I do. I've done some directors. That's how you got to talk. Again. Not I that like, loud. That. He's again. He's totally quiet, yeah. and then he's like, do it again. Right. Yeah. Just That's go into filmmaking, motherfucker. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, you'll be like, hey, you know, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, learn more. Do it again. I love it. Yeah. We're stoned, I guess. Where's Brock. Rock left. He's in the chat room somewhere. Swing. Uh, I don't know. He said tune this in. The, this the last hour. We just gonna hang out, have fun. Man, I want to have it. Gonna close it with with some good, some good, solid fun, right? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I was thinking of having some weed or more weed. Oh, you know what? We gotta take a pic. 
Well, we had screen grabs. We don't need pictures. You know, no, we should take a picture. We should take a picture? Yeah, hell yeah. Anything else going on? Nothing? 11 o'clock, we got another hour? No, that shit was weird, because you see right there? Like, um, yeah, Look, tell me. No, no, no. Yeah, sure. All right, let me see. Hold on, John. used to watch me and my pop seen him once through the reflection of his phone. Really? Yeah, so I was thinking recently that since I just found out about black mirrors, maybe the fucking phone was like those scrying mirrors where you could see shit. Oh, you can make your own black mirror. Yeah, no, I want to get okay. I want to make one. I was telling that shit earlier. <laughs> I think I'm going to, I wish we had something new to play. Maybe, maybe, well, you know, I'm going to play something here. I, I think it's, 666 Eva, oh, that's a long one. Let's see. Play something? Well, I'm gonna have to cut out pretty soon. I feel like. Sabbath, an event put on by Shane Bugby. Uh, it's a uh, sa satanic event. There's going to be a black mass. I mean, uh, some of you who don't understand Satanism, maybe it's a Shane Bugby. Uh, it's a uh, sa satanic event. There's going to be a black mass. I mean, uh, some of you who don't. Helicopters surrounded us, man. that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just another fashion fad? And what... Satanism is less than free will. It's a duality to be good or evil. It's an ugly beauty. It's a baphomet. It's duality in its simplest form. It's it's me. It's time to forget the spirit and embrace the flesh. As we enter the age of undoing, I'm here to undo the idea that Satanism is a religion. It is not. It is a philosophy. Religion is where thought goes to die. Religion and its rules are dead, and Satanism is alive and well. Satanism is a fluid thought that erodes constructs. Satanism, much like the Satanist, 
cannot be nailed to the wall. It is not a team sport. It is not. And if you join something in the name of Satan, you've been tricked. Undo that shit. You can expect an undoing of years of, of doing of shit that should have been done. We're gonna curse the fuck out some shit. We're gonna spread some blood across the stage. I'm gonna be performing my fucking soul out. Everybody has a misconception that it's about, oh, this evil, theistic fucking being that's going to harm you and hurt you, and it's about evil energy. No, it's about the it's pure self-love and being able to love yourself and being okay with yourself and, and being able to persevere through your life without having the restrictions that man is indoctrinated into you in your mind as you've grown up. We've all been indoctrinated from the time we're born to the time we die. We're indoctrinated. We're taught a certain type of way to think. That is the way to break free of that thought and be the adversary, be the one, you're the opposition at that point because you're going against everything you've been taught to teach yourself something, break free from that. Now, as we enter the age of undoing, what are you going to undo? Think it right now, as we gather on this wall purchase and harvest the energy that we are all sharing. Undo that shit. Whatever it is that you need to undo, undo that shit. You're watching the number one program on cable news. Enter the no-spin zone on the O'Reilly Factor, the most powerful name in news, Fox News Channel. It is I, Black Jesus. I have returned, just like you said. I am here to answer your questions. Oh, wait, never mind. Why don't you go get your ass on in that guillotine? Since you don't want to fucking be educated any goddamn way. Just do what the fuck I tell you to do. You stupid motherfuckers, I have returned. Oh, I, I understand now. Is my hair okay? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come over here so I can redeem you. <laughs> John's the guy to redeem. Uh, What's going on? This is a spectacle I'm watching. This right is now. a spectacle. I had to do it one time. Everybody wanted him, so here he is. Your for your entertainment purposes. I'm watching. We got your black Jesus, and for for the United States of this here Jesus land, just like you want me to look, with my straight with my straight hair. And my country accent. Especially for you. This here United States of Jesus land. You come straight from hell with this. You know, you put yourself I brought my guillotine. Let's do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in it. Let me go get it. Let's put it let's put Jesus in the guillotine. John. Uh, or you're gonna be oh. Shit. Does that mean I gotta get up? <laughs> no. Just I'm I'm gonna wait and see what's going on here. I don't know what the fuck is happening. Like a man. All right, you're right, man. And this one's for you. 
one good time for all them good old boys. Jesus and the good saints. Go ahead and pull that there, Ben. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I ain't no excuse for this I am restored. You can't kill me. Just like, just like the books say. Just like the books say. Just come on over here and I can redeem your dumb ass too. That's my, that's, that's my tribute to your American Jesus land. I have no idea what just happened. I have no uh, idea. It's like a fucking fever dream, right? Right. <laughs> What'd you say, John? It's like a fucking fever dream. What the fuck just happened, right? <laughs> are we making art? Are we are we fucking shaking the foundations or what? What's up? John, you are an entertaining motherfucker. It was like a fever dream. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with that. I can't remember the last fever dream I had, but I'm going to think that must have been like a fever dream if John says it's like a I don't know. I had to get that off my chest. So, um, what are we talking about now, gentlemen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even understand what just happened. I don't know. I went into a space. Someone's uh, going to get it, not me. <laughs> I love it. I'll get you. I'll now. take it. I'll, I'll take blown it. Away. I'll take it. Well, I'm really stoned now. I smoked a lot of weed. so yeah, I, 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 I wanted to wait till you were good to stole before I started doing that weird shit. I told you. I might do something weird, Shane. <laughs> I'm definitely getting stoned. It's <coughs> eleven eighteen. <coughs> Forty more minutes. What do you say? You give the people what they're asking for. That's what they want. What? They want the return. Everybody keeps saying it's the end of the world. Jesus coming back. Oh, this is the revelation time because we got. I don't COVID. know what the fuck you're talking. You, got, you, you are I stoned. Mean, like, yeah, that weed is really good. Bro, you are going. I'm like, this is. I don't stuff, know what the fuck you're this talking is stuff about. That what the fuck is COVID? Are, are regurgitating, people want COVID. Keep me. regurgitating on Facebook. Like it's out oh. of control. Every time something happens, it's because of the damn Bible. And it's, it's just I enough of that shit, dude. dude. The only thing I don't understand, yeah, you could be religious and everything, but how the fuck are you going to be religious and do some fucking stupid shit? Like, there's motherfuckers out there that will preach the Bible, but that will live the life of a Jerry Springer show. You know what I'm fucking saying? It's like, you can't preach and do fucking hedonistic shit. How about this, that you're going to do hedonistic st shit, so preaching is probably a lie. Yeah. Or just that's how I look at it. Like, the when they're I doing it, like, they're like, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm doing all this shit. That's why I like to say in this, because you fucking say it how it is. Those fuckers, they got something to hide. Yeah, they, oh, they act like an, an, like the, uh, and heed, whatever you want to say it. They'll preach to you, yeah. but they'll do something worse than what you've done. I knows it. Yeah. I fucking knows it. Let me read these messages real quick. What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, was a, he has a message. He wants me to deliver. Oh, my God. What's going on here? Everyone's... It, it's retrograde. I, I, you know, I don't know. It's retrograde. Something's going on here. Something is off. The, everything's gone. Like, I'm like, what in the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Ah, you gotta shake the pillars of heaven, you know. No horseshit, Wayne. What the fuck is this? What is going on? Every no one's making sense. Let's do it. This last hour, you're doing it. You're making no sense. Last, you're already doing it. Don't do any more. Because I'm like, what? Is, oh, you do it as much as you want, but I'm like. Told you it's a fever dream. Yeah, I'm having a fever dream. All right, it's, I gotta get some sleep. Like <laughs> he didn't. He didn't <laughs> expect me. He didn't expect me to go off like that. Well, just <laughs> he's like, if this this guy was an intellectual the whole time until that weird shit happened. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, artistic expression is that. It's that thing of well, how do we, how do we impact them? How do we make them pay attention? I mean, paranormal shit. How do how do we get their fucking attention? You know. And uh, I think that's it. We talk about being performing performance artists. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. You know, we got to get people's attention. Well. I don't know about Gadas, but I will say I agree I mean with... I the performance artist. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what anyone has to do. I just know it's a lot more fun than, you know, ha having a straight life. You know, making your life something sort of exciting in arts or whatever it is. That are, you know, I can't, it's, it's just fun. 
and you know it, that's why you know you try you, it's fun you know so people should not not necessarily saying take it on his career but people should try to do that stuff more often yeah. you know reach out make mistakes or you know do something make something cool but, you know, have some form of self expression have a, have courage well, just make something cool Maybe yeah, well, make sure your art's what you actually Maybe it's not expression, because, you know, I don't know, I don't believe art is just expression. I think that is such a limited way to look at it, because if that were the case, then school shooting is art. Mm, so, no. yeah, they're expressing themselves. And I mean, so you got to, yeah. artwork has, has a, a complexity beyond that. Yeah. It's not just expression. It's not just feeling. Artwork is creating an inanimate object or thing to fucking draw emotion out of a person that you don't even fucking know. That's what art is. Huh. In a way, huh? What you think? I don't even know if I need to make something to have art. I, I think I could think something that I want to make. And oh. that's where be, be, you're, so you're like making an inanimate object. I don't even know if I have to go that far. Inanimate yeah, object, music, drawing, whatever, you know, it's that object that you create with your energy. Well, the imagination, once that takes over, for me, it's like, oh, I have a lot of ideas there and that's where like I can see my ideas it's, but it's when you show the other person your ideas that you see that they see what you see well it becomes hard to manifest those so sometimes it becomes frustrating or like oh you're not going to be able to um, I don't know what the fuck's going on around well, me it's hard, to get, it's hard to get it down the way you see it or is what what was that like when you when you talk about your art, is it hard to get the way you see it? Or when you get it the way you see it, do you get the reaction that you see? Well, is it harder not to make that happen? No, it's not hard because I don't compromise. It might take a long time and it might stay unfinished but it's not hard for me. So I'm not just gonna put it out if it's like that, something like that. I'm not just gonna go, oh, it's done. Right. So I don't have anything hard about it. It's what, the imagination of it is, is um, where the work and satisfaction is. That's where the dream is. It's like, <laughs> you know, dream produ production or something like imagination, you know? And, and so that's, that's where it's great, just work in the mind. You know, making it's cool too, like making it, physically making it, but then it becomes work. Because then I got to dress it, which yeah. means I got to get it ready for product, for feel. Clean it up, maybe put something, you know, then you have to get it ready so it looks professional when it's presented. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, that's uh, probably the most obscene of some of the stuff. I don't want to do, you know, because then it just like enters into the, kills the magic because um, it's now a product or something like that it's 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 a uh, making is the, the beautiful part displaying it it doesn't matter and it, it sometimes kills the magic I should say sometimes it adds to it I feel the opposite I feel like when you display the art and you pull that reaction out of people their reaction is the life that gets breathed into your art I don't, from, not from, I give, I do not give a rat's ass about you, you, them, or what anyone thinks of what I make. Right. I don't give a fucking shit. Like, I literally almost hate the consumer. <coughs> like, like when we did our event, when we did our event, the venue, I'm like, I care about all the performers, how they feel. I care about the venue and how they feel. But I can, you know, when we're trying to make a deal, they're like, are you, you know, thoughtful. I'm, I go, I'm thoughtful of all of those components. I have not a thought about the consumer. Right. I don't care if they're satisfied. I don't give a fuck if they cry. Right. So that's how I feel about when I present it. I don't even oh, pay. Okay. I'm never going to pay attention to you. Yeah. As a matter of fact, like I said earlier, someone interpreted that piece for me. And now I don't want to see it because of fucking some earring comment. Because they irritated me. Yeah. So presenting it killed that. The, I, I, I love it, but it's like, yeah, get the, I, I have to think about this irritating asshole that right. said something stupid. And so it's like, I don't even want, it, it took the joy out of it for me, okay? I can relate so actually, it's, it's like, fuck you. I don't want to hear what you think. And I don't want to tell you what I think about it. 
Just enjoy what you see and what you think. Like, that's it. Right. That's how I fucking feel about it, okay? If you ever see the art I'm doing, don't tell me what you think. I don't care. I just care that you enjoy it or you hate it. Like, just feel it and go away. If right. you just spend time with it, I'm happy. If you spend time with my shit, like you're looking at it, I'm like, same with that 20, this 20 year old show. As, 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 as uh, fucked up as it is and as grief I get and all this shit, I'm happy for it. I don't know. I'm from poor people in trailers who lived in a car. I'm happy people paid attention to some shit I did. And I'm happy people like LeVay saw something I was doing and said it was cool and I didn't give a fuck when he did that. I didn't do it for him. But it turns out it's cool. Like, you know, I didn't care. I did care. You know, I was, I, I'm respectful of that. But it didn't matter to me. It was just like, oh, I didn't know what it was. It was like the same ignorance. I could say it's almost the same youthful ignorance. I'm like, I don't even know what this is. I don't care. All these elders that jumped me in, I made harass them. I, I was just like, yeah, like the kids do to me. They just, like, do not care. Right. And that's that's the proper state of mind. <laughs> you know, you're looking at this guy like, I don't, yeah, go ahead and tell me. Oh. You know, it just didn't, his validation didn't matter to me. My actions validated myself. It's like, well, I did funny. it. There, I, you know, I'm, I, there, I made it, therefore I am, right? I, don't, Bro, I, guess I just did so that much. live. Yeah, that's, that's the same thing. Like, people going to say whatever they want to say. Wait till people see that. You know, you're like, they, they might get the back. I don't give a fuck. I did what I did. Right, you know? that's why I, I enjoyed performing that's it. That's why yeah. I just watched it and took it in. I, I, don't have, I don't know what to say about it at the moment. Right. What were you going to say, John? No, I was going to say, well, even though you don't care, even though that you create the pieces, the pieces still defines you and you still put what you put out into the world. Yeah, it defines a moment in my thought. I, I don't think... Um, does not define you, but like, yeah. It does not idea. define me. I am, I am such a complex being that in, in 1976, I rode a bicycle up to a bank to pick up free coins they had in the lobby. Did you ever know that about me when you look at my art? No, that piece of fucking thing defines me, though. But no one sees that human being ever when they look at my art. Right. They only see that's one it's grain of sand. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm starting to hate people over it. I'm like, I just want to look at a plant or a kitty cat. They see me. They fucking see me. You're seeing yourself in this artwork, and then I have to, talk, you know, it's like, eh, it chokes it out. You know? If I'm making something to give to you, I'm like, hey, <laughs> I care what you have to say about it. Right. Ah, uh, yeah, I get what you mean. Like, something you make specifically for Yeah, I'm like, hey, I made this for, and I don't even care, you know, like, yeah, it's not, I've, I've given things to people, I made it for and I'm like, you know, it's not for me, I, I sort of freaking me out or something. You know, I'm like, that's cool. It never never bothered me. I'm happy they were honest and didn't throw it away or something. But giving it to them and all of that was important. I did listen. I'm like, I did, oh, you don't want it? Yeah, I'll take it back. Right. If someone were to buy it or say, I don't like this and they're viewing it, I'm like, yeah, I don't care. You know, I bought it and it's creeped out, creeping out my house and I'm like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I have to, and I want, you know, I, I do, I probably would care. I have to protect myself. It's like a boundary. Like, I can't, I'll care too much. Like, about the earring. Yeah. <laughs> like, I care too much about that stupid earring. The fucking thing's going. And for a very good price. Yeah. So it's like. That, that, to me, was always a masterpiece from when he first showed it to me. Fucking right. The fuck it was a masterpiece. How much do you think that's worth? Fucking about six grand. Like, you I appreciate that. That's up there, dude. That's yeah. a fucking museum piece. That's it is a museum piece. piece. That's correct. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and that'll fetch a pretty penny. You know how you get your artwork in museums, John? Oh. You get it to rich people. Rich people. Yeah, giving it to me won't do it. You hand it to someone who's got so much filthy fucking money <laughs> that they can store things, they never lose things, they can fill storage areas full of this fucking shit and it never goes anywhere because they got money. It's all of it. Everything's protected for them, controlled. Fireproof. That's what happens. That's how the Ming vase is still around. Right. You know, right? So, one of the biggest goals for me when I was a young artist is making sure rich people got my shit, and I did that yeah. a couple of times. I would. It felt like, it felt like, I I ran across to hand this to you just because you're wealthy and I know you'll care for it. Right. It's like that silly, but it, it was that important. I guess I could kind of relate. I kind of do that at some of these conventions where I give it. Well, Phil Ensemble, when, and as an artist, you get to say, well, my piece is now in this guy from Pantera's collection. And he, yeah. you know, he bought. And so I, I've got people like that, too. Like, oh, this person, I can say, collected my artwork. And then other rich people see that, or, you know, people of note or something, they'll be like, 
Now, every person's of note, okay? Give me a fucking break, but this sales. Right. It's the way it goes. Um, you know, someone's like, oh, Phil's got one, I want one. But it, that's, how the, that's how that shit starts moving. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to do a lot more of these fucking commercials. Well, that's a tactic. I shouldn't say it's how it is a, a, a tactic of success, but, but that's what a lot of artists do. Mine's in this collection. Yeah, I gotta do that shit again. I mean, yeah, I got another convention in November. Days of the Dead. That one's gonna be pretty interesting. Well, that sounds awesome. Days of the Dead. That's awesome. I don't. I can't do conventions. Why not? I fucking hate hearing people's opinions about shit. About mm. my shit. Like, okay, I'd rather sell you soda pop. Well, you know, I'd I, rather sell you disease and, 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 and sugar. I don't want to hear about what you think about my artwork. It's debilitating. I think I find it really is like smoking cigarettes. I think I it find takes my life. Enjoyment out of terror, uh, traumatizing people with fucking toilet paper being awesome. Right, right, right. That's cool. That's right. That's a good way to get out of it. That's what, you know, oh man, when I used to do those fucking Comic Cons, we're talking, whatever, when they started putting them in the football stadiums, yeah. like Comic Cons used to be like a basement somewhere, right? I would bring buckets of Twizzlers, these big buckets of Twizzlers, like the industrial size ones, because you can get away with this. You know, it's like, we throw them in the air and, and it fly for a million miles. That never stops flying. These Twizzlers are like some boomerang or some shit, but not. <laughs> They're like a Chinese fucking straw, whatever, like star, like, it's, gonna, it's flying, you know, and you, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm almost sorry. Motherfucking thing. <laughs> and you can see it. You're like, watch it. Uh, <laughs> and we got hundreds of them. So you're just sort of doing that for a good part of three days. Because <laughs> no one sees it. No one around you is going to say anything. Well, not for us. Because we're all like this. We were always like these loud mouths drunks. So <laughs> no one's going to say shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I deserve all these problems. I really do. <laughs> I guess problem child. This fits. Okay, Dan and Rolly, it's apt. <laughs> it's apt. Oh, fuck. I should have never admitted that. Everyone's going to be like. <laughs> this, uh, this all started great. Now look at what these fucking idiots are doing. <laughs> what happened? Uh oh. Talking about great, throwing dude. Twizzlers across the comic cons. <laughs> yeah, I love fucking Twizzlers while you're playing, dude. I would be eating them all fucking throwing half Twizzlers. <laughs> oh, that's where they were good. They it's were whips. Wet. They were whips. You're like, <laughs> they were all these things. All these in the conventions, you have to have these things that you know, multiple. You know, it's good. Those were fun, but but in general, I can't do that stuff. I haven't done the convention yet. There was one. I, I do plan to go to one next year, but oh, yeah, you I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be a good thing for me. Because I might be like Shane, where it's like when I get around people, I change it to a different person. It's like, I don't know, people, you know? I, got, I might get turned into a different person, so I don't know. I Conventions are a weird space, dude. It's so many fucking people. Run, just fucking try it out. Yeah, you know. I, I, like, I can do bigger events, but not when it's like a bunch of vendors and people are like, when they're in that uh, I'll herd. Tell you, I'll tell you. It's the herding. You know what I love? I love selling soda pop at the Ely Blueberry Festival, you motherfuckers. They run me out of town, okay? They run me out of town, but let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. These motherfuckers, I, I know I'm going to catch grief at some point. When I'm doing this, stuff, I'm like, oh, okay. At some point, because this is the consistent thing, someone finds out, dun-dun, something about my activities of some sort, and, and shit breaks loose. So in Ely, I'm doing the soda pop. <laughs> oh, God. This guy said, anyway, I'm selling it at the Blueberry Festival, and I get these 40-ounce bottles made, and I put a label on it, and I sign them all. <laughs> you know, because I knew there'd be, you know, problems. But it, it just creates this, this uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> it was the funnest to sell that shit, because I'm just saying, like, I know, here, I know there's, <laughs> I have the <this> satanic, <laughs> Satanist doing these satanic radio shows, doing all this shit, pornography, and I'm selling soda pop to people and taking pictures of families. And I loved it because it was, it felt, it felt, uh, I don't want to say perverse, it was just fun. It's like little, did, you know, it was just great. Yeah, so, so, soda pop was great because I would tell people it's going to kill them and they buy more, you know, and um, it was just the ultimate. 
huckster. huckster. I'm, what I'm a selling, weird word, huckster. Yeah, I'm selling fucking sugar water, colored sugar water to people. And it's just like the funniest thing to me. Like, I'm just like, I cannot believe how stupid you fucking people are. And, like, on a, a high, uh, like a, like a, on, 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 on just hyper speed, stupid. <laughs> so I guess I shouldn't be surprised by a satanic temple success. <laughs> God damn it, it's so disappointing. <laughs> after all we've given you, after all the arts have given you, after all the books that you have in the library of so <laughs> It almost reminds me of like what goes on with the martial arts schools. You got the martial arts schools that teach true martial arts, and then you got the shit known as McDojos. Right. Mc, yeah. McDojos. Right. Yeah, so. That, and they should be shamed. And that's what they should be fucking shamed. And when you're a culture vulture, like, you know? when you're appropriating yeah, culture, when you're turning into goddamn McDonald's, you should be shamed. So call it There's, that's what you should do. Call it the McDojos. Church of Satan. Or, or it becomes <laughs> right, right, the McChurch of Satan. Exactly, dude. They should be shamed. I would like a McSatan. Or McTemple with cheese. Satan or whatever the fuck It's ridiculous. Are. It's absolutely ridiculous. Wow. What? Why what? The McSatan with cheese. Listen, I got coffee horrible. in me. I got 20 minutes. What do we got? We got... Oh, I shouldn't clap. I'm so sorry. Again, I did that. I'm so it's sorry. Your, it's your prepping technique. Every time he's like, all right, I'm about to go, he claps. Yeah, I'm trying to see. What do we got? Anyone want to call in? Let me, let me, let me turn this on. Turn it on. You got, we got fucking 20 minutes till the end. All right, fuck. Listen to this fucking. Oh, I'm going to start. I'm going to, I got to leave at the last five minutes. I got to keep the last, <laughs> the hype is here. We made it here. all the way here. We time made it to go. five minutes. Got to go. He trips over the cord. Kills the fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get the last five minutes. Weird. So this is. The he's gonna bring the. He's gonna blame a shadow ghost for tripping the motherfucker. He's like, it was this fucking shadow, dude. Sabotage. Sabotage. So, so Shane. Yes. Let's take it back to the beginning, brother. We are. We we here. We've done the fucking thing. We've made it all the way through here. Yeah. Well, what's if? I mean, your final thoughts. What the fuck do you have to say about might is right? Oh well. You know, within the context of that, that what, which context? It's I don't I don't have a problem with books, and I think it's ridiculous when people do. Period. End of story. I don't care what the fuck it is. Um, that's one thing I would have to say about a book. I would have to say it's possible that when someone is publishing books, they're considered a publisher all the time, and not just when they're rich. I would I was a publisher. And I published many books and many periodicals, and I did many, you know, publications that are, are were respected in that moment. <clears throat> you know, so it, within the context of my involvement with that, all of that stuff. As far as a philosophy of hate, you know, I'm a person of balance. So, like, I like the, I like what Marilyn Manson says: "We love hate, we hate love." I love those poetic plays on things. I love when Levey says, "We have to know hate to know love." I think that's, I think that's balance. So, I would say, I wouldn't stop at reading "Might Is Right" and make it a Bible. I would read a lot of books that contradict that and, and, and form an opinion for yourself and accept the consequences of those opinions, you know, or, or ideals. But I would say don't limit your reading and research. To, I would say just keep studying. It's cool to read wacky books or fucking angry books or hateful books. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not going to say, oh, if Mein Kampf or whatever the fucking stupid thing, might as right or any of it, should be banned. I just think people should never stop studying. <laughs> so that's that's what I think, and I should have I should have known better when when it was presented as the Nazi Bible. When it when it was presented as a Bible to me, that's when I should have backed away. Okay. Same as with I became religious in love, and it was a mistake. So I was very anti-religious thinking, but I certainly wasn't like that for one aspect of my life, and, and it was the big failure. So. You know, that's what I think of these things. As far as what I said on that show, I've said, I, you know, I, I don't, it, I'm not 
not proud of it. And I don't like to look back and, and have a cringe moment. I don't know about the cringe moment. I don't mind about cringe moments, I guess. Like John saying, hey, your artwork represents you or something like that. I don't... I didn't mean that. No, I'm just saying, no, I, no, no. I'm just, let me finish what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want something to misrepresent me. You know, and that's the biggest thing that bothered me. It, it wasn't necessarily this one thing or the other. It was like, well, this misrepresents me. Okay, I can handle it if I was Joe the plumber and moving along, but this is now being used. It hurts other people. It is echoing hurt. These people continue to use it, and it's like reverberating to the point that I have to do something. You know, and, and so, you know, I'm grateful that this worked out. The, the anniversary just fell in, happened. I'm grateful that you participated and took this on and, and had a big heart to see past that stuff that, you know, is. is uh, it's not easy for me to have to be traumatized by things and feel trauma. So understanding, going through therapy, I understand that's what I feel, these triggers. I don't really want to do that to people that I don't know or even like. You know? So I think when you're going to hurt someone, it should be focused. And defined, focused, and it doesn't matter how you hurt them at that point. It, it should be a very personal thing, like sex. And I, I think that kind of stuff. I don't, you know, I don't know, you know, a lot about that. You know, when, when it comes to artwork and hurting people's feelings, that's a. I can't in this situation. I'm too close to only a person in history could look at it and define it. This is a big. This is something bigger than me. And Satan is in something bigger than me. So I can only move with impulse and do what I feel is right. Nothing's going to save me but myself. Right? Nothing's going to save me. Nothing, there's not one action I'm going to do that's going to, you know. But I, I can only mean, I, I don't know how history will judge me. I suppose if we have a fascist state and that stuff takes hold, I will be looked at like some idiot or a sellout or a piece of shit. So history defines your future. But I feel really good right now that we did what we did. You know, I feel proud of it. I don't know how to feel. I don't. I feel good. We we accomplished it. We did it. I had a good time hanging out with you. Yeah. You know, we have we had a lot. We just based. I thought you know, how I thought we were gonna do stuff like. I thought our conversation would be about two hours, or three hours, or four hours, and we'd be making artwork and doing other things to fill time. We sat here and shot the shit. Took I think a couple. I took a couple hour nap, while film played or something and. You know, so I'm happy about this. I think I gotta listen to it, and look at it. You know, I can't judge. This is something I can't judge. I'm just we, we accomplished it, um, and in an organic way. I don't know what you're thinking in your head. I don't know what Carla's thinking. You don't know what I'm thinking. But there's an organic pulse, and things are moving forward. And in my history. <laughs> I know exactly when we're about to make magic. I've done it multiple times. And it happens, and you have no, can, you can just watch, you can see it. And so, what the text from Car the response, the pulse here is this. Mm -hmm. I love these guys. Oh, it's so, like I said, thinking about, I would say less than five years, but Carlos, like, I like to move. Slow, methodical, thoughtful. She, said she has a five-year plan, and, and it's pretty, pretty good. So I think all of this is moving into something else, and I don't know what that means. And I'm old enough not to think that I can see the end of what I'm doing right now. So I don't know if I'll ever see anything about this. I don't know if I'll ever see David write a book or Claudia make a film or David make a film. He's a filmmaker and Claudia write a book. I will, I'll, you know, I probably will never see that. That's a disappointing moment. But it's really cool to think I'll probably never see that. It's also like cool. It's like space travel. 
So this is a this is an act of goodbye. Or I've got to complete this. So no matter what anyone thinks, I won. I won this. I got to this point and it was amazingly impossible. It took a lot. A lot. A lot of people. A lot of listening. It's not me. Like I said, Manuel, you, all these. <laughs> there's so many things involved in this. It's, it's, it's humbling. The counselor, the people help me, always, it's humbling. I've been walking through most of my life pretty sure no one even seen me and no one cared a fucking shit about me. So. You know what this does, though? It also proves that you're wrong. I'm wrong? Yeah, I guess people did care about you. We were all fucking supporting Oh, you. I don't mind being you know? wrong. I love being yeah. wrong. I love being wrong. I love not knowing and I love being wrong because that leads to right and knowing, you know, if you're moving forward. That's why I have, like, a real issue with this whole conversation with people. It's like people can't be wrong. They can't say, I don't know. They're, it's like this has this is nothing like Satanism. And they're like, you know, what? <laughs> I'm saying that to like, really, you could have a really good time with this concept if you weren't such fucking sticks in the mud and assholes and idiots and whatever the fuck you're doing. Whatever the psychology is behind this stubbornness to learn or understand is like, oh, go the fuck the other way. You know? It's just because it's a good time thinking and talking and learning, you know? Yeah. This is this is the satanic ritual. Did Joseph it's Rose so look like the guy does Hell Satan podcast? He looked like he was having a good time. Yeah, he's just hanging out. And he, he interviews yeah. me, gets grief. He get, he's gonna get grief for this. And what the fuck did the guy do? He just came to talk and hang out. <laughs> That's what's so funny. Like he, but he's having a good time. We all had a good time. If you sticks in the mud, they're having a bad time about us having a good time. Think about that. And there it is, man. So I think that's a great final thought, bro. That's oh a great God! Final thought. And you know what? I used to live next to this 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 uh, Jehovah's Witness in Hammond, Indiana, and she moved in right around the time we bought this place for like ten grand, put ten grand, twenty grand house. And and she moves in right next door, and she goes to tell me the Jehovah's Witness stuff, and I say, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. We're neighbors. I'm in the same kind of business. And she goes, what? And I go, yeah, I, I'm a Satanist. And she goes, what? And I go, right. So, you you keep that to yourself, and I'm going to keep my shit to myself, and we're just neighbors. We just say, hey, how you doing? Please? And so she goes, okay, you got a deal. You got a deal. And she's moving out one day, and she goes, Shane, Amy, come here. I go, oh, this motherfucker, she's going to give me a shot. She's going she's gonna to try to sell me before she leaves. Huh? Okay, I'll take that. I love it. You're going to betray the oath. I love that from you. Uh, Jehovah loves it, too. <laughs> I run, I go over there, I go, what's going on? She goes, she looks at us, and she was always friendly, and she was friendly there. She goes, you know why people hate you guys? <laughs> Look at each other and start laughing, her head's all like, fucking people hate us? <laughs> you know, we're having a good laugh. It was funny, it was hilarious to hear. You know, we were like, well, okay, why? And she goes, because you're always smiling. You two are always having fun, no matter what. People hate you okay, And she goes, she goes, it was nice living next to you. Have a good life. God bless you. I was like, that was the weirdest. We just laughed about that. And, and you find out, and I don't know how young you are listening, but you find out that's true. And a lot of people that live a happy life will tell you, be careful who you let know that you are in a really deep state of happiness. They like to take it from you. Misery loves company. It's like gold. It's like when people destroy countries, they loot the art because it has the essence of the people. There's an essence, there's that magic, there's that spirit you speak of. And the people. And the, it's, it, it's people. something, why do they steal the art? It's not just to degrade people. They do that plenty by killing their fucking loved ones. It's to steal the essence, the power, the feeling, this history, the stories, all of that. When we talk, we talk about the spirit. Word to mouth, your spirit, you're putting all these words to it. But the, I call it essence. Essence. Words have power. Right, but that essence, that essence of art, that, you know, that the essence, it, it moves to, they take the power, it's weird. Anyway, yada, yada, yada. You got Tired. it, man. You got it. Great closing thoughts, dude. Really? Great closing thoughts. Oh, I love it. Really? 
I'm I, loving I, it. I, I probably that's saw why it I actually, out of its mind. You know, I, and that's why I brought this up. I'm like, dude, just you know, really, smoke some really more weed. clarify it. You know, we're in the end, we're in the stretch. Let's get what's on your mind. Yeah, you know, one. I got to get whacked out of my mind right let's now. Let's get, let's get what's in it. That was deep as fuck, dude. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, it was deep. Oh, good. You know, I, I won't be able to sleep for another six hours. That's what's, what's impressive about this is the vulnerability. Of what? You. Know, of you. Me? Yeah. Yeah, but most people can't. Most people can't be that vulnerable. I just started. Know? I just started. I'm joking. <laughs> most people can't be that vulnerable, bro, and well, come out and talk about stuff. That's part know, of being. You, you sort of like, oh, you know, that's just what you do in this. When you're an artist or whatever, you give it yourself. There is nothing left. It's a generosity that most people do not understand until it's too fucking late. You know, the art dies, and they don't support. But art, and like even that show 20 years ago, was a generous act. Was it destructive? Was it hurtful? Was it, was it ignorant? Oh yeah, it was still generous. There was a life force that was there. It was our time. We put a lot into it. We had passion. I remember all those feelings. We believed. We knew we gotta fix things. You know, that, you know this youthful. Yeah, I know. The drive, man, the, the energy. I know what you mean. Yeah. So I don't remember. No, there was no one like sitting there going, "You didn't fucking kill these motherfuckers." You know, there's nothing going on. Like people, like, yeah, let's have some snack, just like today. Yeah. Let's have some cookies and drink coffee <laughs> and talk coffee, about weird right? shit. <laughs> you know. I was saying that's the that's the real satanic ritual, bro. It's like, oh, you gonna be a satanic priest and then Levi invites you over and you have fucking coffee and cookies and talk shit. Yeah, and everybody's like, man, I bet you that fucking slaughtering a baby and that, uh, drinking blood and fucking <laughs> carrying out. I was just like fucking hanging out and, and drinking coffee and at, stirring it with cookies. At 12 midnight, exactly, I'm going to play that video Carla sent me one more time because she asked me to. Well, that's over. I'm going to hang out. We're going to smoke weed on here until we can, you know, we'll hang out a little more. But, of course, I just want to thank uh, the Infernal Church I want to thank the great conversation we had at the end there. I really appreciate that, especially. I want to, you guys are really cool. Y y I shouldn't say guys, y'all are really cool. Um, and um, I just really appreciate you a lot. And, and I, uh, man, I can do nothing but look at y'all and daydream about the future. And that is great. You know, I can't say that about every young person I, I, I run across. So that's a great gift. Thank you. This is awesome. Claudia, Daffy. And thanks to all you guys that hung out the whole fucking yeah. time watching this shit, too. Nanaro. 24 hours ain't no easy fucking stretch of time. Yeah, that's, that's Nanaro crazy. is one of the great witches that brought us here oh my together. God. Such a beautiful soul. I loved her. Yeah, without Nanaro, we wouldn't be meeting here. And that's, I'm pretty certain of that. I don't know. I, I'm, uh, she, she, she had a lot of big, she put a lot of time in to our friendship and it was not easy for her <laughs> all the time so but <laughs> I think she likes to fight so <laughs> it's the women with all the fucking fight in the left hand path dude oh. so, we just waiting for him to take on we like it too. but you saw Nana take over her. you saw Nana on there she's like yeah I go like this she, she's like had she was ready she's no I go like this I go hey Nan and I, I, you know She's a passionate artist. I mean, no, it, never. It, it was the demeanor. Yeah, she, she, was, she can say no. She's, she's great like that. So I asked her, hey, would you do this? She, she's, like, she's like, yes. She knew exactly the importance. She knew the exact, I'm, I am a, she's like, she took, I, she's like, I'm going to be in history. I am able to, I have a, a moment that I can add. She, she said it. She knew what she was doing. She came on with a, a written, you saw, she's like, this is what I have. Good night, guys. I'm done. I've made my point. I've totally lit you on fire. And before I did it, I went, hi, Doug. Here you go. Mm -hmm. nice. And this is, a, like I said, I talk about that in that intro video, and you'll see it online, that these are the witches that surrounded me. And it wasn't just because they were nice. And you could see that tonight. And I was like, this really served me well. Hi, Doug. <clears throat> Everybody keeps talking about equality, yeah. and I think that we won't have equality until those, there's more women in power. Oh, I agree. And left-hand path is the place where that's going to happen. And you said that, you heard me say, what, like, for the injustice of 
when Nanro told me how she was treated or discounted or did not even paid attention to within the satanic temple stuff and and just like oh, okay you could say that I might go agree with it when you open your mouth no I'm like oh god why would you pass up on this genius of a person are you kidding me like this is the real fucking deal a real witch like studied she understands it from from old world culture mm-hmm. I don't know how old her culture is but I'm not probably a million years or some shit like I'm seeing <laughs> so she's carrying all that that stuff forward and once she started talking to me I was like oh that's just so unjust and she's like it's because I'm a woman and a person of color and she you know this is at that mo- all this stuff's happening you know it's me too all that kind of, you know so she's she goes at me and tells me this is what it is and I came to ask you questions because of this 20 year old radio show that's why she came to me and but she didn't pass judgment until she spoke to me and she would ask really hard questions but she didn't do it like she was like how do you like this new music tell me. it was trickery she talked about music play a little cello ask me a question So she was not looking for answers. She was pulling truths out of me. And she's like, I thought this was the situation. I want to help you. I want you to do this podcast. I love how when uh, we were speaking with her, she said to me, I heard you through your silence. And that's how, when I knew I was like, yeah, she's cunning. Because I was speaking to her through the camera. I'm like, I'm not going to interrupt Shane. But just know that when you say stuff, I'm, you know, I'm like sitting there like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, like, and she picked up on it, you know, Damn and I was right like, you know, I don't know where she, where else she was in the world. I'm like, see, and this is how you know, you know, you can, it's that, it's that cunning. I know? would not fuck with her, and I definitely, she was the lead of that podcast, and I just, I had to. I was fucking so hurt I could barely get sentences together. You know, it was bad news. And, you know, she really did me a, a never... Or, 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 you know, for the rest of my life. That's, you know, or I'll pay it forward somehow like that or something like that. It's, it's just yeah. amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, thanks for having me here to oh, do this also. Bobby, I have you, to say man. that too, dude, because it's a one hand washes the other. It's not just like, oh, I'm here to. It's, true. it's a two way thing, man. And it's like, like you said, this is history. You know, it's, it's incredible for all of us to be able to sit here, step in history. And you too. Yeah, I know. It's freaking crazy. You know? Meeting you through the witch's Sabbath, and now here I am. And Carla LeVay saying she's loving you. Yeah, it's But nice. it better not be too much. <laughs> Carla was cool. I, when I met her, it was Capiche? like meeting like meeting a long lost aunt. Capiche? Capiche. Yeah. You might have an ant fetish. <laughs> ant fetish? <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Let's let's play that video for Carla. And we'll come back and smoke some weed with you. I think he's gonna be right. Maybe that marries art with fashion. But is it really art, or is it just another fashion fad? And what? Stop. And what? Oh wait. Uh oh. Jesus Christ! Put the cocaine away, dude. <laughs> it's tape while I work. That Mary's art with You're watching the number one yeah. program on cable news. Enter the no Stop. spin zone on the O'Reilly Factor, the most powerful name in news, Fox News Channel. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and in the Unresolved Problem segment tonight, it is Halloween Eve, and Halloween is supposed to be a fun day in America as millions of children go trick-or-treating and enjoy various festivities. But there's a serious side to the occult in the USA, Satanists. Some researchers estimate there are more than 100 satanic cults currently operating in America. The question, are they dangerous? Joining us now from San Francisco is Carla LeVay, the founder of the First Satanic Church. And here in the studio, Dr. Don Perlmutter, author of the upcoming book, Investigating Religious Terrorism and Ritualistic Crimes. It'll be out in two weeks. All right, Dr. Perlmutter, we're gonna begin with you. Why don't you define the situation for us? There's a lot of controversy surrounding ritualistic crimes. People do not understand um, what Satanism is. There's not just one Satanic church, just as there isn't one Christian church. There's several different types of, of theologies. Some are nonviolent, some are violent. Now uh, we want to lock in on the, uh, on the uh, violent ones, because Ms. LeVay, who we're going to go out to San Francisco, she has a nonviolent 
church, mm -hmm. all right? Now, the violent ones, are, what kind of a problem are they, or are they just well, isolated? We're here talking well, they're a here. significant oh, problem they? because there's crimes ranging from vandalism to homicide with um, the, the types of things that are on the Internet, with uh, the, you go into any kind of bookstore and you can buy the Satanic Bible. And but does the Satanic Bible say kill people and hurt people? It doesn't say that, but it says do whatever you want as long as you gratify yourself, which is not a great message for teenagers to, to have. I mean, it can be interpreted a lot of different sure. ways. If, so if it feels good to you, even though it might be sadistic or destructive to somebody else, it's okay. Exactly. Miss LeVay, is that, is that what the satanic uh, philosophy is? Not exactly. That's sort of taking it out of context. What we say is life is a great indulgence, death is an abstinence, and to live life to the fullest while you're still around because we don't believe in an afterlife. It's not that one doesn't exist, but we don't know, so we don't live for that. So we feel that people should be responsible for their actions and they should stay above the law and uh, don't do any criminal acts and don't harm any animals, don't harm children, don't harm any people. We don't have any rituals where anyone is harmed in them. And uh, we do believe in doing whatever you want and having a good time as long as you're not hurting anyone else. All right, well, so process. you're the nice satanic church. <laughs> but what about well, the mean satanic church? I mean, there, well, there are some people, and I, I did a story over in Italy of a vicious satanic cult who uh, was practically practicing ritualistic sacrifice and all these other things, and it was the scariest story I think I've ever done. It was in the bottom of a uh, deconsecrated church in a basement, and they were murdering people that they kidnapped, homeless people. It was awful. And so what do you say when uh, Dr. Perlmutter and others discover that kind of stuff? Well, this isn't Satanism as how it's written in the Satanic Bible or in the Satanic Rituals, which are two books that my father wrote. The Satanic Bible was written in 1969, and it sold over a million copies. The Satanic Rituals has also sold over a million copies. And in it, we do not have any kind of sacrifices. No, all right, but I, I, I understand that. But what do you say when other Satanic cults do these terrible things? Well, what I would say is, are they really satanic? There are a lot of people going under the guise of calling themselves Satanists, and what they're doing really has nothing to do with actual Satanism at all. All right. Now, is it fair then, Doctor, to, to demonize uh, Satanists as Ms. LeVay is the nice Satan person? I, I, no, is it fair to say, <laughs> you know, they're all a bunch of... Uh, if you can't demonize Satanists, who can you demonize? Well, I know. I mean, I'm, try, I'm choosing my words carefully <laughs> oh. here. I mean, um, I don't have any sympathy for the devil, unlike Mick Jagger. <laughs> But, um, you know, this is America. Well, if you want to read the Satan Bible and, and run around saying, you know, I like Lucifer, you can do that. And I understand. We don't well, worship wait, wait, the Ms. devil. Let, let, let Dr. Permutter respond. I mean, the problem is, although the Satanic Bible doesn't advocate violence, I find it's found at crime scenes. So it's being interpreted in a way that's being misinterpreted. Okay, but what you might say to that is, look at the Catholic Church. It's founded on good, mm -hmm. all right? The whole theology is good. Help everybody, love your neighbor. Yet there have been some terrible acts committed, mm -hmm. all right, within the Catholic Church by their clergy. So is it a perversion of what Ms. LeVay uh, says is a benign movement? that these people, you know, stab people and what I described. Is that a perversion of the satanic stuff? Well, it's a perversion of that particular group, but that is not the only theology. You have the Order of the Nine Angles, which is a group that advocates um, violence. They have a guide to human sacrifice on the internet. The Order of the Nine Angles. Angles. Is that a satanic group? It's a satanic group. They say that they're a traditional satanic group, and the traditional groups are the ones that commit the most heinous crimes. All right, now what about this Order of the Nine Angles, Miss LeVay? I mean, and do you know anything about them? And <laughs> I'm not familiar with them in particular. All right, but no way. But I mean, it's, not, it's not a laughing matter, though. If they're doing pernicious stuff on the Internet or anywhere else under the name of Satan, and you're the good Satan people, um, you, shouldn't you be speaking out against the bad Satan people and, you know, and all of that? I wouldn't consider them Satanists. Why? What if they say, look, um, I take my definition of Satan from the Bible, all right? And Satan is the angel of darkness, the angel that uh, fell and then wants everybody else 
to commit immoral acts and join him in Hades. That's the Bible interpretation. Okay, now, you, may not, you may not agree with that, but certainly that through the ages has been the way Satan has been defined. We do not believe in a devil. We are not devil worshipers. Well, who's Satan? We simply, who, we simply who use it? it as a symbol. Satan is a symbol. All right, so Satan you don't believe that Satan exists or and there's no, there's no uh, force of evil in America that, that clashes against the force of good. Satan, to us, simply means adversary or opposition. And we basically play devil's advocate. Pardon and the we pun. oppose, yeah, we oppose any religion that frustrates or condemns man for his natural instincts. Okay, I got it. You're hedonist. You just want to have a good time. Um, last word, uh, Doctor. Um, the internet has really driven this satanic stuff like crazy, correct? Absolutely. If, if the general public knew what was on the internet yeah. in terms of, of Satanism and a lot of other um, occult groups, they would be watching what their children um, are viewing much more carefully. Yeah. All right. Satanism. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. You can decide. And Thanks a lot, Ms. Vey. We appreciate it. Doctor? Up next, Princess Diana's sons are set to meet... ...that marries art with fashion. But is it really art? Or is it just... All right, we're there. <laughs> Bafy, let's get you up there. And right. Say our, say our, last, say our last goodbyes, buddy. What's up, man? You know what? Of course. You know Let me tell you, Baffy. Let me tell you something. Do you have any physical yeah. pain right now? Do I have any what? Physical pain. Of course. No. You're, you're a young man. But you know what? I have physical pain in my back and in my shoulders right uh, because of this fucking show. Because I can't imagine. Here, you, well, you, right, you can't, but when you get here, you'll be like, I can imagine. So, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing just fine, thanks. Uh, I wanted to my back. Uh, comment on my, my back. It hurts. Your back. I can imagine. Yeah. It's just fun. I mean, I'm working like this, my back doesn't hurt. So, it's probably going to hurt when I'm older, though. Let's have that. Let's have that smoke. That weed. Let's hear it, Baffy. David. Okay, so Rev Avi, um, I wanted to comment on something he said um, about uh, women finding will become more dominant through the left-hand path. I totally agree. They have the power of Lilith, after all. So I totally agree. With that. It's a left-hand path is a great source for women to get more dominant roles in life. So I want to speak. I'll speak on that a little bit. You mentioned Lilith. But um, Lilith was not the, the primary other world religion. It was the cult of Isis. And that's really what that concept is based on. It, it comes from a lot of that. So, um, it, but when you realize that there was a time when women had power, when there was a mother structure that had power, and I think that there's, and it's not even what I think, there's literally a point in history where we see the shift happen and everything becomes male dominated. And that's when it, we lost the balance that, that everybody's talking about we need in the world. You know, and with Left Hand Path, we are very much feminine energy. Being in the dark and the moon and all of that is feminine current. So that's where we land. We are kind of the remnants of that, that cult of ISIS, that freedom cult that was like, yo, we're free thinkers. You know, when uh, what Carla said, we, the pleasure, it's pretty much pleasures of the flesh. Back, in, back when that cult. Responsibly uh, with. Uh, Legal, you know, like uh, consensually. Yes. Right, consensually. Yes, exactly. And, exactly. And, and when you think about, like, back when, now in the ancient days, that's where that stuff started with the, the free thought. You know, it's like, oh, we don't need to control you. Sure, orgy, sure. We don't need to control you. But then came the shift in the structure, yeah. you know, and it was like, no, nah, we want you, we want to control what the women do. And then it changed. Here's what, when you, when you talk pleasure of the flesh in Satanism, here's the, here, here's the deal. Too many people use that shit for therapy. You know, sexual uh, exploits, and, and and it's probably best to get therapy first. You know, because it becomes very destructive when you, yeah. when, you when you're not when you're not indulging with the, uh, education or an idea of like yeah, I'm entering in this in this reason, and you start entering into self-destructive behavior. 
and calling it fantasy or calling it pleasures of the flesh or calling it all these things. It's probably just self-destructive things you mask to keep doing it with satanic belief. You should just try to indulge, you know, you know, you know the deal. Be intelligent yeah, yeah, with your yeah. decisions. Be intelligent with your decisions. I'm just talking about mm -hmm. like, the whole uh, satanic, like electric hellfire club stuff is nonsensical. If, if it's for mental health reasons, it's nonsensical. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I suppose that's all. I just, I just wanted to comment on that and my total agreeance. And also say bye. Um, I guess this would be my last appearance on the special. So I want to wish you guys a happy last, what is it, like 20 minutes? No, we're, we're done. This is it. It's, we're oh, really? We're done. Yeah, we're past 12. We made it 24 hours. We only answered because you called in. We wanted to say bye. You know. <laughs> oh, all right. Love everyone. Um, Infernal Church is certainly having a party. They're, we're all getting high with you while you're having a low fever dream. Where? Where are we? Where are we getting high at? Oh, there. Um, but if you go to 20th Special Text, it's, it's a channel. That's where everyone's talking about this special, and they were going high as fuck a few minutes ago. Oh, well, they're not there now, huh? We're fine. We're it's all right. right. Love out there to everybody that was watching. We're going to look for the text right now. It's love. It's, it's love out to you. We'll get a chance to try to there look for are. that stuff when we can. You know, this has been insane. Yeah, man, thank you. Thank you for bringing us a special. It was truly great. I loved it. And for giving Carla LaVey a platform, of course. What was that? Um, giving Carla LaVey an interview, I think that's really great. We're damn lucky to have her and for her to be saying what she's saying. Well, we're working together on a bunch of stuff. I hope that you'll, um, you know, well, we'll make sure to do something with the Witch's Sabbath. On, yeah, we're doing the Witch's Sabbath together and a bunch of stuff. We should have some, Carla should have some really cool stuff up on her website by the black xmas new, new you know content and uh i think she's even got merchandise in the works i'll keep myself posted all right, all right. Well, anyway nice meeting you dude you too, you too. Nice, nice meeting, meeting. Oh, I'm sure I'm right, Shane, but great talking with both of you thank you got it. Got, it. got it you got it